everybody, welcome to the Elite League Day 3 with myself, Epidamnos. Joining me is Danok. We've got ourselves some cracking series coming along for us for today with the first series being Tundra versus Nigma Galaxy, then followed by Secret versus Blacklist. It is going to be an absolute amazing day. I can feel it in my bones for some cracking Dota games. Danok, how are you feeling? I'm feeling great. Like you said, there's got some great games coming up today and uh, really some, some hype individual players that a lot of people obviously focus on. And you and I, we seem to be just following T Secret along their journey, right? We've cast them yeah. every single day so far in this tournament. They've been looking good for the majority of it, but uh, yeah, they just weren't able to play their Dota yesterday in that series that we saw them play uh, going up against Boom. Like, Boom just completely took control. It felt like they never had the team fight that they wanted, especially in that game too. That was just a complete dumpstering. Yeah, Boom have been doing quite well, and we, we didn't know how the game would go against Secret, because Secret had pulled something out of their sleeve and were able to win quite a few series. Um especially against the Virtus Pro, but then coming out, Boom Esports, they were able to take themselves 2-0 here, mm -hmm. which was yep. I, I, I feel was clean. It was. I mean, game one, Team Secret, I don't think they threw. I think Boom Esports just really took advantage of just a couple of small positioning mistakes, and they're really coming to be one of the really scary teams throughout this uh, Swiss stage. So that was interesting to see. Then, of course, you had Talon and Nygma coming up with that second game that Nygma ended up losing, which uh, sets up this first series that we've got today. And that was certainly a series of two halves, right? Because Nygma, I think, ended on a 38 to 3 kill score in that game one, finishing in like 25 oh minutes. Gosh. But uh, yeah, ever since then, it was just all on, uh, all on Talon. And they play really well, especially WS. He's really showing himself to be quite the find for these C teams. Um, then there were these lower bracket matches as well, or we'll call them low matches just because they were between all of the teams that ended up losing their first series. And you can see there Aurora, Tundra, Blacklist, and PSG Quest were all able to get 2-0 victories. So they're all sitting one and one. And unfortunately for VP9 Pandas, Rest Farmers, and my favorite team name, Kev, uh, they are all <laughs> zero and two. And that means if they lose one more series, they're out of this Swiss stage. So, um, if all the teams um, collectively lose three games, that, like even if it is multiple teams, are they certified out of here? Yep. It, it's like you have five series to get three wins. So, as soon as you get three losses, you're out. Oh, dear. Okay. So, so the pressure is on. So, we might be able to have a look and see then uh, what that will be like. So, um, these are all the 1-1 one, one teams series that come. we're seeing here. So, the, the previous graphic was all the teams that were 2-0. and oh. Now, we've got all yep. the 1-1s. One, and then, uh, I'm sure we're eventually going to see the low matches as well, which are the teams that are 0-2. and two. So, these are the ones. These are elimination games that we're going to have uh, going on today. I think they might be on the B stream today. Uh, at least this first one definitely is between Kev and Nine pandas so that'll certainly be very exciting to see how it all pans out and yeah this is i guess the the mid and the high stream going on today on the a stream of course with tundra esports and nigma galaxy to be able to start us off and well it's going to be starting pretty damn soon i think we're uh, pretty much into the draft already yes we are draft is getting underway folks so hopefully we'll be able to bring you that action very soon and as we are oh, we actually have ourselves some cameras whoa mm -hmm, we haven't been yeah oh, that's the that's a pug production i haven't been able to be introduced with uh cameras there before but showing all of the players here on the side of dungeon very cool very cool do we have the same <laughs> though for the other, yes, we, do. we do. Production, whoa! Uh oh, big work coming in with the cameras. Matthew needs to wash his face, though. I saw a big yawn coming out from him, and uh, you know that's never what uh -oh. we want. We always want you know high energy. I guess for these guys, it's pretty early-ish in the morning, right? Uh, for you, it's what, how, what would it be about nine nine a.m. at the moment? Uh, about 10, 10, 10 a.m. It would it would have been nine a.m., but you know. Um... Uh, I, I can feel that some Europeans and some British people can feel for us when the clocks go forward by one hour and we get one hour less in bed. So it's 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 not nice. That started on the 31st, but we're, we're all okay now. We've recovered. But coming into the draft already, we've got ourselves some good bands here from the side of Nygma. It's, is the, is the, is the, uh, are the assets right this time? On, they are. On Nygma. Yeah, yeah, okay. So so it is definitely Tundra who picked themselves up. Chen, who surprisingly hasn't been banned, so Chen will be picked up for Tundra. 
And I'm sure that uh, Tundra would have been looking across a bunch of different uh, other games, right? Because they've tried playing the Chen in the past, and we've seen a uh, response coming out from Heroic, for example, that were able to do a Kunkka and a Pangolier against it, and it worked out pretty damn well. So you can see that's really the, the targeted ban for the first phase, just one of those heroes that's very comfortable going into the offlane is the Kunkka that, of course, has the Tidebringer that's going to be able to deal with all of these. Look at look at Nine Class, just looking <laughs> really cheeky. I mean, everyone says that he's, he's quite cocky, and uh, I think he would probably say that himself as well. He, uh, he got coined Nine baby by uh, KJ after the the <laughs> loss against heroic so yeah there's clearly a lot of uh, a lot of spice in a lot of these series and I, I love watching white one whenever it's during the drafts as well he always seems to be eating something like he's, he's got something in his cheek right now as he's just chewing on it there's you got to fuel a giga brain like that yeah, you got to get your sustenance in for the Dota players, man. You, you definitely need your food. You definitely need your energy. That's why we have ourselves our energy as well. Have you eaten Danok for this series? Are you of prepped? Course. Of course, I'm always prepped. I'm always prepped and ready. I had uh, some pulled pork macaroni and cheese. Oh. That was very, very tasty. I'm not sure if that would be a breakfast for me, but that does sound nice. <laughs> well, it is 8 p.m., so <laughs> for me, it's a, it's a little different. <laughs> How do you think FBZ's fit into this team? Because he's, he's been there for a little while. Um, he has put on some really solid performances, especially on his Brewmaster. I think for now, they're still trying to give him his specialist heroes as much as possible, or at least a hero that you know is going to be quite stable, like the DK, for example. Of course, it's something that... Well, okay, I was about to say, of course, it's something that you might be able to get away with on um, Samael as well, but I feel like you're kind of... Uh, hindering his impact by giving him something as simple as a dragon knight as opposed to something that has a little bit more wow factor you know outplay potential that being said uh dk you could still play it in the offlane right and then just have doom position yeah. four which some people like to do um just because dk is quite sustainable in that lane yeah i don't know if i'm a fan of um dk mid uh i i do feel like he's a bit better on the offline, because I I feel like you can get a a mid laner much better than Dragon Knight that's able to have um, a lot more impact. Because as you said, he he's he's just very bit you know jump in Dragon Tail, corrosive breath, apply attack damage. That, that that that's all around about it that all I can see from Dragon Knight here. I feel like you can get yourself a much more impactful mid laner that can scale uh, very well here. Dragon Knight is perfectly safe on the off lane, so you don't, I, I feel like you don't need to waste it for the middle unless you really want to benefit from uh, early Dragon Tails or maybe perhaps like a, an early Blink Dagger or something like that from the DK. So that's, that, that's why I prefer it off lane than would be on the middle. So I, I wonder if this is going to be Doom position four, as you said. I think they were just wondering, like, what heroes can we pick up still that are in the draft that have some level of flexibility, right? And these are probably two of the heroes that do have that. Um, so now that a, few, a bit more of the draft is revealed from Tundra, they might be thinking, okay, well, how are we going to be able to counter that? Maybe just something as simple like a Crystal Maiden wouldn't be the worst. Um, Disruptor is banned for themselves, so that would have been decent against the Centaur. You could even go into my favorite hero, the Winter Wyvern, just going up against a, a Centaur who's going to be quite beefy with some more percent damage, even as a five or that splinter blast against the chen can be quite nice at being able to defend some of those early towers especially when you've got two relatively tanky heroes that can go in front of you and soak up a little bit of that damage that's going to be coming in because one thing that tundra has no shortage of right now it's damage as soon as level two hits there could be some serious kill threat coming through from this centaur techies lane white one's still eating man. <laughs> he's still eating. <laughs> always i'm not joking almost every single time i see him on cameras you you try and pay attention to it if we ever see him uh if we ever cast one of his games again he's going to be eating whether it's a banana whether it's some like oats or something like that it's always something what do you think he's well, eating? that's what you need you, you do need the sustenance though I, I know we've already gone on along this twice but if you're if you're hungry Whilst playing Dota, I don't, I don't know, maybe maybe he gets a little bit hangry, and, and we mm -hmm. all know people who are a little bit hangry, they can, you know, misplay in real life. I, Lash out at people? So misplay in real life? <laughs> what kind of a saying is that? I might actually start integrating that into a into my my regular speech, just saying, oh, that was a misplay by you if someone just makes a mistake. <laughs> so you, you, oh. can't, you can't be hangry, you know, but... They pit themselves up Enchantress. Uh, we know how good this hero is, especially against Chen. You know, you can enchant his creeps. You can have, um, you know, like, 
If it gets yeah, late yeah, enough, the, you can have the little friends as well. Rules. Matthew, what, oh, he can't be yeah. seen drinking water. That's not good for his image. <laughs> nothing nothing seen on camera there. But, uh, yeah, I, I want to see if Edge does, if it goes late enough, goes into the Aghanim Scepter just to be a little bit of a Chen counter here. It'd certainly be interesting. Maybe they just want to give themselves, again, one of those... It, because remember what I was talking about with the Centaur and the Techies, right? Just high damage. They want to get up in your face. Probably one of the better heroes at being able to stay at range is the uh, the Enchantress. Not just for, you know, her sustain with the Nature's Attendance. Also, you've got a slow that can be quite nice against the Techies if he does go the, uh, the Disruptive Taser, which does feel pretty nice. And, uh, yeah, just to be able to hit people from range with just the one point in the impetus might not be too bad either. It's probably one of the better answers to the techies, just at being able to trade harass, because techies is kind of at the top there, with just his uh, being a universal hero and the crazy attack range, but, well, wouldn't be a Tundra game if we didn't see Tops and Sniper in that mid lane, would it? No, he, he's been loving the Sniper right now, hasn't he? I mean, like, every time we've watched Tundra, I think most of the games right now have been uh, Tops and Sniper, he is, uh, he, he's loving the hero right now. Mm -hmm. And now they're just getting rid of heroes that are going to be able to get on top of the Sniper, right? We've seen, he actually ended up losing a couple of the lanes against the Pangolier, um, that I think it was mm -hmm. Analog playing that one, um, that had a really good time against his, uh, his Sniper, and yeah, they just weren't able to really get the ball rolling, uh, so... I think it's good. They basically only have the Dragon Knight for now to get like a blink stun onto the Sniper, but Topson's positioning is going to be good enough. He's so experienced with the Sniper that he's not going to ever be the first one out there on the map. Uh, I'm kind of a little worried for what Pure's hero is going to be though, because that is an area that they are lacking. Like you've got Chen for the push, you've got Centaur that's going to be able to give you a little bit of that as well. But how do you actually start fights outside of this Centaur being able to find a blink, you know? I, I kind of feel like you need to do something to to bring Nigma Galaxy to you, like... Uh... Oh yeah, 100%. That They'll need that for their last pick, because at the moment all I see is a Techie's Blast off. <laughs> that's, that's, that's what I read about it. Hmm. Oddly enough, banning out the Luna. Uh, I know it's obviously with the Chen and a, a Death Ball strategy, it feels really nice, but most of the time you're very happy to have a TB um, on your team when you're going up against a Luna, just because of that reflection capability. So maybe just trying to slow the game down a little bit. We know that all of these heroes on Nigma Galaxy have great scaling potential, and we still don't exactly know like where this DK and the Doom are going to be, right? It could still be a mid-DK, it could still be a position for Doom, or they could both be played in the offlane. Oh, okay. Drow Ranger. Um, mm -hmm. so, at, so they don't pick themselves something that can get themselves an extra initiation here on Tundra. So, as you said, Danok, just relying on the Centaur, it seems, especially... I mean, th they do have themselves the Stampede, so they can get themselves all in position very quickly. But, I mean, the only reliable stun at the moment that they have is the Hoof Stomp, and then along with potentially a Blast Off 2. So, not a lot of lockdown, so... Nigma could potentially pick themselves something here which is yeah. going to dominate Tundra because there's not, not sure. a lot of lockdown. I'm not sure if you could get away with something like a Puck just because into the Sniper he's going to be dealing a lot of damage to you. Okay, so oh. Samael has been playing a lot of Earth Spirit in his pubs lately with a really high win rate. I think it's at like 80% as well. So I was wanting something that's going to be able to get in onto the back lines that, again, is going to be relatively beefy. Like you said, the lack of lockdown is going to make his life a little bit easier. And he's just that little bit tankier than the Puck that you're not going to be quite as vulnerable against the Sniper lane. It's still not going to be easy by any means, but... Uh, Mm -hmm. I like this little bit of a, a shift that they've gone for. And it is indeed going to be the Matthew Doom as well. So FBZ on the DK, Matthew playing the Doom, probably going to make some you know, frequent-ish rotations, I would imagine, between Kuro and Matthew towards that mid lane to try and get Samael out on top. Yeah, this is really going to be some exciting Dota here, because uh, Earth Spirit... We we have not seen this here. I well, personally, I have not seen this hero play mid, especially in the pro scene, in a very very long time. So it's going to be very exciting to see. I mean, especially with some meal on it. Not not to be a little bit biased, but um, I mean, it is indeed a bat chest moment right now in the stream, and I'm sure everyone can agree. Bat chest versus bat chest between these Bro. both teams. It is going to be quite an exciting game one. 
Bro, this is probably the biggest bat chess game that I've ever cast in my life. Like, just the amount of favorite players that are in this game is kind of nuts. The BPM is going to be crazy, and I'm not talking about heart rate coming through here. Uh, I think we're in for an absolute banger. You know, we, I'm sure there's a little bit of pride involved with this as well as to who's going to be able to come out on top, who's going to be able to style on each other a little bit more, because... You know, even though they weren't successful in all of their series, one of the players that we were both really impressed with was Nine Class, right? On his Rubik, he was just completely dominating all of the games that he was playing off of his individual plays. So we'll see if he's able to do a similar sort of thing with the techies. We will indeed as we get into game and one. Game one, ladies and gentlemen, with Nigma versus Tundra. I hope you have your hotkeys all channeled and ready to get yourself some quick bat chests within the chat because boy oh boy we're gonna need them this is a certified game that we're gonna be having ourselves here and maybe perhaps it'll even go 2-1 we'll get most of the action here but we will see what kind of draft are you favoring though um at the moment here i i know you said that the centaur you know, he kind of is on his own here in regards to initiation so a lot of weight here on the side of Toby's shoulders. Are you are you feeling Nigma's draft maybe a little bit more with the fact that they had themselves this Earth Spirit now? I think a lot of it is really going to depend on how this mid lane goes. Just because oh, are they gonna be able to yeah, get the D ward off? Nice. Um I I think if Earth Spirit gets out of the mid lane in a good enough spot that he feels comfortable enough to be able to roll in onto the back lines without just getting instantly blown up, because Again, they do have a lot of damage on Tundra. That's the thing that I'm worried about for Enigma Galaxy. But I also feel like you're putting a lot on the shoulders of this uh, this Centaur to be able to deal with. So I'm very slightly favoring Enigma Galaxy. And, well, maybe a little bit less so now that FBZ is getting the business. <laughs> Yeah, FBZ found there with Nine Clash jumping down from the low ground with the blast off. But in return, they do find Pure here too. Okay. And then we'll take Pure down there. I mean, off lane for carry. I mean, getting one kill each. And did they get 2-2 two, two bounty runes as well? Mm. Is one still not picked up? Yeah, they did. did. Oh, so okay. It's pretty much even. So one other thing that uh, I didn't notice immediately when they went for it with a previous draft, but I really like when Tundra pick up this Chen alongside the Sniper. I'm not sure if the drow on top of that as well is something that is a cause for a little bit of concern if you're just like a little too squishy if you're sitting on the back line but we could see the reason they were able to get that first blood was white mon leveling up the penitence that plus a sniper yeah. with that take aim active is just it makes him a machine gun it's actually crazy how much damage you're able to output really really quickly so i wonder if we might see a different build overall from white mon just to put a little bit more emphasis on that penitence as opposed to some of the other spells yeah, we will see. I'd like to see how this Chen will progress here on the bot. I mean, especially against the Drow, they're already harassing FBZ here with a level 1 Pentonance. Just look at that. Mm -hmm. Good job so far. Now, we're approaching that timing up top that I was talking about, right? Level 2, already picked up by 9 class. Toby, not quite there yet, but he should be able to claim it right after the next creep goes down. And Miracle's not exactly in the healthiest spot. He is lucky enough to be able to have that Cloak Aura still active because of the Centaur Corsa, but... Oh, never mind. The, cre the creep gets denied off by Kuroki. We'll get the pull, though. Oh, Matthew. He's going to be found, maybe. Wait, the the, uh, the multi-shot arrow, the, I think the final one didn't hit, but nonetheless, Whitemon picks up the kill, so... Now a second kill here on this bottom lane. White Mon really making use here of the Pentonance and just harassing FBZ here with the enchanted Vowel Assassin. I've never pronounced that name before. Vool. It's a Vool. And it's pretty good against a DK, right? Considering he gets that Oh, he just uh, ate regen. it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> the, the regen reduction <laughs> is quite nice against the DK with the Dragon's Blood if he decides to level it up, right? It really makes you a whole let, lot less tanky uh, in a lot of these engagements. The plus sides is, of course, there is that green armor type, so the Drow's marksmanship isn't going to be as effective against you. Mm -hmm. I do find it green quite funny, it though, how uh, Enigma do have themselves these two heroes that can actually just counter out the Chen here and either eat the creep or just enchant the creep to their own team. Mm -hmm. Clearly they feel like that's, that's going to be enough to be able to... Yeah. Weather the storm, basically, because like I was saying, I feel like all five of these heroes on Nigma Galaxy have really good scaling potential on them. I mean, we've seen DK's take over basically be the sole um, 
high ground siege without too much risk for themselves. And then you've even uh -huh. got a TB to be able to help out with that. It's, it's kind of weird that, like, the mid lane is the least, I guess, strong with scaling, right? Like, sure, you can get a lot just through levels with an Earth Spirit, but you're not really that scared of a super late game Earth Spirit relative to even an Enchantress, right? Yeah, I mean, the, the Enchantress is... Uh... It, there's a possibility that it can scale into a core as well. I mean, I have seen a few times where Karoki, um, I, I know they, I remember when we were speaking about it a while ago that they nerfed the impetus like ages ago. So it, 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 if it travels a certain amount of distance, then it will do fixed damage instead of, you know, scaling forever and ever. Cause I, I remember there would be times when someone would TP away and an impetus would land all the way to, towards them near the tower. But I think they'll find a kill here onto Kuroki underneath this tier 1 tower. No! Okay, 40 HP survives. Yeah, Miracle with that reflection just slowing down 9 class that little bit that they needed to get Kuroki back to safety. Should be fine to pop the salve, although is Miracle going to be okay? Looks like it. Yeah, just blast softening off him up on for cooldown. Now. Yeah, blast off on cooldown. Does he have like raindrops coming out to him? No, but Kuro does, so Kuro might look to get himself up in the face a little bit more often. Oh, even has a Hill Troll Priest as well, just to keep Miracle nice and healthy. That'll be nice. I gotta say, he's taking a lot of harass here, Miracle is, on the, on it's the TB. Expected, has the, though. Yeah, has the level 2 Metamorphosis, so he could try and attempt for some harassment here, but you've got to be careful of the counter-initiation here from Blastoff. Nineclaw's actually putting two points into it here. It actually does... 300 damage at level 2. Don't underestimate the blast stuff. Mm -hmm. That's all it is, right? They just want to go all into this burst damage to be able to try and find a quick pickoff. Obviously, it's going to be harder into Kuro with that raindrops now that I was talking about. And yeah, he's got a little bit less HP than Miracle, but in terms of, like, uh, effective HP, Kuro's a little bit in front. And we've got to get ourselves the power in Sue here, too. Danok in around about... 30 seconds, so we should see the supports rotating around. And speaking of supports, Nine Class and Kuroki are having a little bit of a battle here within the within the river. Just trying to actually take down this hill troll, which is a really good creep that Kuroki has here. So if they do try and go on to Thompson, then they do indeed have that ensnare on that little oh, creep. Look at how Although, deep Matthew is. He's all the way behind oh, yeah. the tower. Maybe they go for Nine Class underneath the tier one? I mean, slowed down with the enchant, has the blast off ready to escape if Nine Class wants to use it. The blood grenade there being committed, and I think that should be a kill with the Scorched Earth. Ooh. If he can reach it, no, 20 HP, Thompson. Nine Class is okay. And now they found themselves Matthew here, who's going to try and TP away, and Matthew will get out fine. What is this Dota going on here right now? Pure on the bottom lane, two very Sails low. Down here. Actually going to be able to survive the Magnetize there, coming out from a gank from Samil. Just gets out of the sentry range as well, so he'll be fine just to sit and maybe actually make a bit of a move here onto Whitemon if he feels confident enough. I'm not sure if you want to roll into that though, with Pure standing right behind him. And yeah, I'm sure with that multi-shot being revealed on the lane, you will want to be very careful unless FBZ can find him. Yeah, FB, I mean, some still he has to around here. It's such a huge wave that FBZ can't just be out of the lane. Like, it's almost a triple wave that's underneath the tier 1 tower. It needs to be addressed. On the plus side, We'll give FBZ a bit of recovery time in this lane because he's been suffering a little bit. He's been left solo while Matthew has started to make a few of those rotations. And it'll get him up to either close to or at his level 6. So maybe a little bit more aggressive time coming through from Nigma Galaxy very shortly. As in regards to last hits, Topson is reigning supreme right now. 58 and 7. Especially being free on the mid lane for the last minute with Samil trying to uh, get himself a kill. But they are attempting to maybe gang Thompson. As in comes Matthew now. A scorched Earth there. He's still holding his ground with the shrapnel. Look at that. He might actually just turn it around and get himself a kill here. He will. Oh, ha ha. From Thompson. And they get themselves the kill. It's a miracle here too. On the top lane. Two gills going to the way of Tundra here. Very nice rotation out from White Mon to be able to again secure that kill onto the TB. Just that additional damage that you're able to pump in onto him is so dangerous that you have to face up against. And 
Well, Toby also gets the additional bonus of just being able to sit back and farm. Yeah, one one of the weaknesses of the Doom, you've got good scaling, and you know just to be able to have such an effective ultimate on a support feels kind of nice, but not exactly a huge amount of damage when you're just level three. And Matthew hanging around here. They see him though. If, He's sitting underneath the ward right now. The white one placed. Oh, he's activated the take aim, so he's a lot slower. In comes the mill with that rolling boulder. Attempting to TP will not get away. Finds the kill. Enough damage there to take down Topson before he TPs away. And that was just the difference of Matthew standing close by, soaking up the experience. When he TP back to the mid lane, he was level 3. He just waited until he got that level 4, had that little bit of extra damage from the Infernal Blade, and... Yeah, that was uh, what ended up actually securing the kill, that dot damage from Matthew. My thrift rewarded. Perhaps Matthew can uh, try and dive pure here underneath this tier 1. He has been a diver. I mean, he's got his scuba goggles on ready. I mean, he dived tier 1 and tier 2 on the mid lane in around about 5 minutes. So this man has really got his scuba gear ready. Ooh. He's gonna actually find White Mon here within the trees, but the, his own creeps are body blocking, Matthew. But in comes the rolling boulder. So Mill, they will find White Mon slowing him down there with the enchant. They get the kill. Maybe perhaps with some creeps here too, to uh, take down that pinecone raider. There we go. Some more. You know, the Wild Wing Ripper helping him out. And that's, again, a big deal. If you could slow down a Chen Draft, you are going to be very satisfied with that sort of outcome. Of course, downside, they weren't able to secure the kill onto Pure, so White One, in a way, tanking that gank that's still involved four heroes. And Topson uses all that space to be able to start pushing out the mid lane, just 40 gold away from... Oh, gets the amp damage, though, on 9 class. Yeah, they do find 9 class, yeah. <laughs> so Bill just kicks him there with a boulder smash, claiming the life of 9 class. So it's a pretty even game so far, right? Like, Earth Spirit, he's having the good start that we were wanting. 1-0 and 2, if Nigma were going to be able to come out on top. But I gotta say, Topson and Pure feel pretty much untouched at this point. Of course, Pure did die that one time. But uh, Topson, that solo kill, plus the fact that he's just got this big lane dominator in the sniper, has put himself in a really good spot, even almost taking out the, uh, the tier 1 tower on his own. It's below half HP already. Earth's yeah, Miracle starting to recover here too, as we know, he didn't have himself the nicest of lanes with the harass coming out here as well. Meanwhile, FBZ getting jumped on there with a blast off, attempting to TP away. Is there any cancel? Such they will TP. find enough to take him out before he can TP away. As Samil just rolls himself into his death, is found here along with Karuki too. They actually pit themselves up three kills there. But the techies will finally fall with thanks to the Magmatize they're committed. By some mail, but um, that was, that, was, that was not good there for Nigma. Three Absolutely kills for Tundra. Not. Yeah, three kills for Tundra. One of them was on um, on nine class at the time, obviously that they were able to turn around and get. So that's at least a little good thing. But the thing is, that was the issue that I was talking about, right? Like you can't you can't just dive in onto the back lines like that without any support you know Samael is still relatively squishy at this point he wants to wait until he's got the blade mail so at least you could turn that sort of damage around and it was just a little bit of a miscommunication as well right FBZ TP to the tier 1 tower after a couple of people had already done that so it just took way too long and he ended up just standing there for about four seconds I think instead of the uh, the regular TP duration yeah, you see some mail rolling in, he was like, oh, I immediately regret my decision, and then yeah. dies within two seconds. And speaking of Samil, he's going to get initiated on again here with Toby coming in with a hoof stomp, and then nine class with the blast off, cancelling that rolling boulder. Radiant middle it's a big deal, having him uh, with this spirit vessel, not exactly... Oh, okay, maybe onto the yeah, drought, sure. they might be able to claim something, but where's no the TP cancel. Or he already used the Infernal Blade there and the Doom came out and he just TPs away. But at least they'll find White Mon, so we'll take down him, maybe perhaps along with some of his creeps here too. They need to get a tower off the back of this as well. I don't think it's enough for them to be able to just claim a kill onto yeah. a Chen and his creeps with the Doom now being off cooldown. You can see Pure, he's probably not going to go all the way back to his tier 1 tower, but if he absolutely needs to, he's still farming the area that's close enough to be able to back them up. Blade mail is going to be big here, I think, for Samil as well, if they're able to get it. Oh, nine class. Caught there by Samil with that rolling boulder, and of course the enchant from Kuroki. 
when the Ooh. rolling boulder again the stampede comes out Great and they're able to disengage there defensively well, they but pure. they have caught themselves pure pure maybe in trouble the metamorphosis and the pullback there they find the kill pure down enigma coming back they find themselves a tower and the aggression even through the stampede they don't lose anyone here and get themselves two and they'll get a little bit of damage onto this tier 2 tower as well. I don't think they're going to fortify because it's still just a very early rotation through from Miracle. He doesn't have a ton of farm and there's no creep wave either to be able to tank up the hits. So uh, it doesn't seem like you'll be able to get too much more out of this metamorphosis. The mid tower is being defended quite heavily by 9 class and Topson. But you just see the difference there. And I, I was even about to highlight maybe a silver lining between of Sabael dying is that he got a charge on that spirit vessel, which meant that he was able to roll in. And oh, speaking of Sabael, he's going to go in tail. again. Rolling boulder in. Uh, those, there's a blast off onto three, but I don't know if it's going to be enough to save Thompson. I mean, the hand of God is there trying to heal Thompson back up, but will fall. In comes Toby with a three man stop along with the multi shots as well. That was beautiful there. I mean,. That is definitely worth it in return for Thompson. Taking down three there in return and pure getting all of that juicy gold. How much gold did he get there from that? 616 gold from uh, those kills. Did he really get that much? He only did 370 damage in that fight. That is the definition <laughs> of a carry just showing up and claiming all of that gold for himself. Very nicely done. Yeah, I, th I think his rotations have been really on point so far on Pure. He's been caught out of position. Well, not even caught out of position. It's just involved some really ballsy uh, rolls in by Samael to be able to connect onto him a couple of times. But yeah, in terms of his responses now, it's been really solid. Great rotation from Toby as well. The damage dealer at the moment, I feel, is only on Miracle. Would you agree here? Because, I mean, we, we do have Samael trying to roll in. I mean, he does have damage, but... Not as, you know, nuke damage as Miracle with the metamorphosis here. As meanwhile, it seems like every fight is either going to be Clopson or Pure within these fights. And they have themselves great physical damage. Oh my god, they've got so much damage actually right now on um, on Tundra. Whitemon, he's level 9, so 3 points in the Penitence. That's an additional 60 attack speed for everyone that's going oh. to be hitting onto them. So that plus the, the take aim, of course, it's going to be so deadly. And he's oh even got gosh. the drums and the Vlads finished up on Whitemon. They might be able to find him though. Oh, Samael so popped the illusion mid-roll. It broke it. Did that can yeah, did that cancel his roll. Uh, or else maybe perhaps they would have got Whitemon there. That was... Uh... They'll at least get this interesting. this uh, Observer Ward. So taking away a little bit of Tundra's jungle, which is exactly what they want to do. They'll actually get two wards for the price of one, just with one Observer. So nice placement there by Kuro. They would love to be able to take away this Tier 1 tower if possible. Uh, they feel like they probably need to uh, pick off either Topson or Nine Class to be able to start this off. They're just so integral in terms of the damage output for a lot of these team fights. There's Nine Class. He's okay. Oh, maybe, maybe not, maybe not. They'll blast off away. They use the Stampede for it. They've still got Vision as well. A really deep Observer Ward placed out by Nine Class right before he got spotted there. And it's another smoke that's wasted. And all the while, Pure and Topson, they're just farming away. Right now, they're kind of in the similar sort of area. Are they going to try and cheese a Roshan really quickly here? Oh, I mean... They will. It, 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 it seems doable, right? I mean, especially Look with the machine gun. increasing yep. the attack speed. Mm -hmm. And the Vlads for the survivability, and the damage, and the lifesteal oh coming gosh. through. This just dies way too quick. Poor Roshan, he's absolutely swarmed with creeps. He's even going to get whipped there by the Kobold Foreman. Mm -hmm. I'm the the biggest damage this. dealer there. Thompson Probably gets himself the Aegis. Don't expect yourselves to be going up against a 17 minute Aegis with this draft lineup, but you know, they've certainly exploited the fact that they've got this vision advantage on the top side of the map. Enigma Galaxy really heavily committing to that bottom vision, and well, they haven't really made too many plays ever since placing Radiant's it down, is my is main attack. concern there. What's really the plan here for Nygma now? It, it feels like Tundra are quite in the lead here in terms of damage. I mean, now especially getting themselves the Aegis here too. So they have plenty to respond. Do they just need to kind of play it slowly here and just try and get themselves some core items on Nygma and then just try and join the fights as five? Is that the plan? I'm trying to think of what core item they could possibly want, right? Like maybe the Manta style on Miracle is what they're waiting for just because it is a pretty big damage spike for a Terrorblade, but 
they don't really have too much that's coming out in the next little bit. I'd say Blade Mail is really the big thing that you're hoping for for Smail. Maybe as level 12, just to double the damage from that Magnetize. Uh, but yeah, other than the Manta, I feel like you got to try and make something happen now while you've still got this vision inside of the Radiant side of the map. It's going to be so hard, though, with the Stampede, with the survivability from the Hand of God and the the mech, sorry, not the mech, the Vlads as well, the extra life on Topson, and of course Nine Class as well, just placing down proximity mines all across the map. They're littering the, uh, the Tundra side of the map, which means that you just can't make these movements up onto these small choke points. You're always going to get spotted out, even if you're underneath the cover of a smoke. Yeah. No urn charge here for some mail, too. No spirit vessel charges. That is a sad moment here right now. And not not level exactly 12 yet, a, either. Yeah, there's not exactly an easy kill for it to claim either, right? To be able to get that that spirit vessel charge that they so sorely need. Like, I guess Chen would be the one, right? But Radiant's White Mon's never going to be the one that's always just out of position on the front line. He can use his creeps to scout for him. He's got Toby, who's pretty damn tanky right now. Only 300 away from a Heart of Tarask as well, which would finish up the pipe. So that's going to help them survive so much of this damage coming out from the uh, the Doom and the Earth Spirit especially. Oh, nope. Cheeky smoke here from Tundrip. Find us a mail. Oh, a nice block there from the Toby. Blinking right on top of the Earth Spirit there to stop the rolling boulder. Now they find Kuroki here too. Giving themselves two kills on Tundra. Things are looking pretty good for them right now. Mm -hmm. Alright, so Silver Linings again. Samael died. One Spirit Vessel charge now gets awarded to him. So that's, that's a plus. Now they can actually feel a little bit more confident in making an aggressive move. Not so much though if uh, Matthew gets caught out like this. So they just continue to stagger the respawns coming through from Nigma Galaxy. Oh, they stun him with a Centaur. But now the real Centaur's coming in. Can he get the Stomp, Toby? Yes, he can. There's a second Yoink. Stomp. There's two Centaurs here. Mm-hmm. Nice big family. Family reunion. <laughs> He's like, which centaur do you think is the cousin that like everyone doesn't really like at these family reunions? Do you think it's the the war runner that Toby's playing, or is it one of those sneaky little neutrals? Uh, sneaky neutrals, they have no allegiance. Mm -hmm. Oh, they're making a bit of a play up onto this top side, moving. Oh, double stomp! Oh, and the science comes out with the multi shot too. Will they find FBZ trying to flee into the trees? They'll find both of them here, actually, both FBZ and some male, both down. As now that will give them some leeway to perhaps hit into this tier two. They've got themselves a big Chen army here. <laughs> Coming here with Dyer's the Alpha Wolf. Yours yeah, just going to be blown with them. I mean, Kuro needs to just run away from this. He should maybe get a sense that this is all coming. They end up popping the glyph for this, and I wonder if, yeah, Nine Class is very worth blasting off just to be able to completely wipe out a full creep wave. I think there were four skeletons, and that's going to allow the tower to deal with this siege creep. I know I predicted Ningba Galaxy, but I feel like Tundra's responses to a lot of their aggression have just been so on point, right? Like, you just don't let them take any of these towers. Nine Class is playing a really good game at, uh, at being able to do this, and Toby's rotation is a bit fantastic as well. Yeah. I mean, the, the stampedes all the time have been great for the disengage. I mean, nine class as well with very, very good blast offs coming out from him too. So this this off lane here for Tundra has been absolutely magnificent. Because I, I, I feel like from the draft we were looking at, it's like, oh, Sniper and Drow. I'm, I'm seeing that they can definitely get Dyer's jumped on here by Earth Spirit. I mean, if they're on their own, it's looking difficult. But they've been together as a team here and of them have really been punished heavily and Toby has been able to live up to the pressure that has been placed upon him and he's been performing very well here with some incredible hoof stumps. He has. Meanwhile, as we were all talking, White Mon's just gone and solo taken a, uh, a tier 2 tower. <laughs> Isn't that nice? Oh, smoke broke from 9 class on the cliff. Uh-oh. Look at him walking around just with this Invis rune. Oh, FBZ <laughs> seems to know that he's back there, but they're moving on forward so that... Oh, I guess only Kuro is still under the cover of the smoke, right? This is their timing, though. Aegis is worn out. You've got a blink dagger on Matthew. You want to be able to potentially deal with this, but you're going to need to address the Chen army once again, wow. just pushing it onto the high ground. I just want to watch whoever gets penitenced as well. 
Oh, oh look at this poor tier 3. It's already falling at 23 minutes here because Whitemon, he has himself the boots of bearing now. So able to apply that endurance ability on that item to just further increase the attack speed here from the troops. Kuro was at least able to get the D ward off on the cliff. And they were trying to park themselves inside of Enigma Galaxy's side of the map. I think they just need to try and make a few plays in less dangerous areas for them if they do inevitably lose these team fights, right? There's no Roshan to be worried about for the next one and a half minutes. There's still a tier one tower up top, and it's going to take them a while to be able to reach the tier three tower if uh, if a kill does indeed eventuate. My class Although, for a bit of Thompson. a backstab of his own, though. They know he's here. Assassinate comes in, the Stampede there too, they want to try and get themselves FBZ, who's going to TP in the trees, he will get out. And so will They're Miracle. Following Miracle, hold on. Now. No, He's okay. okay. No Blink Dagger on Toby, wouldn't have been able to catch up to him. Alright, so they're delaying things out a little bit, although they've just walked on into Topson. He's going to be able to back off. Tell into what, that though, Nygma are doing very, very well under this severe pressure being applied here from Tundra. I mean, Miracle has been able to farm up. I found and Toby a little Toby bit. Toby is on his own. There's no Stampede, but he blinks away. So now I have to be really careful because all the Tundra are closing in. There's all and uh -oh. Samil. He's been silenced up and instantly taken out, but in return they will find Nine Class. Miracle trying to escape. They found the Stomp there along with a second Stomp. Just stunning up the Terror Blade. Matthew gone here too. They lose themselves three here on Nigma Galaxy. As with that, it definitely looks like Tundrip. They'll push the high ground now at 25 minutes in. They are feeling strong as another assassinate with a stomp comes in. Triple kill for pure. Yeah, this is just, they've just been able to do way too much. They addressed the Earth Spirit. They found multiple pickoffs onto him. They made his Spirit Vessel timing just feel almost useless. And uh, again, the Chen plus a couple of these long-ranged artillery is just able to completely roll over the base. It's just dying so Gosh. quickly. Miracle might not be back by the time this is over. Oh, okay, they got one glyph left. FBZ will need to make an amazing jump in onto the back lines. He wants to try and find Thompson, but he needs other people there. Wondering who they can jump here. I mean, they have themselves the Stampede, the Dragon Tail's there, Target FBZ. Again. He's gonna try and move back here. Matthew in some trouble, pulled back there by the Wild Ring Ripper. Will be found, blast off onto FBZ. Taking damage here from Thompson, they will find some mail. That's two down, possibly three, possibly four. Yep, yeah, they'll find four here. The Ancient completely exposed. They can definitely end this game right now here on Thunder. Yes, and GG is called game one. Very quickly, it's going to be going to Tundra. They take this game by score. They do indeed, and Toby gets a well-earned kill at the end of that game. Only finishing 2-0, but the 16 assists tell a much bigger tale from him. I, I honestly, I, I'm not sure who I would give the MVP to if I was put on the spot and had to make the choice, because I really feel like there was even contribution all throughout. Uh, Whitemon, tons of pressure around the map. We really just helped to uh, get into a really good spot in that laning stage. I thought Toby's rotations were super on point. He had a ton of farm as well as being that front line that they really needed to enable Pure and Topson. And we just saw Topson be able to turn around multi-man ganks onto himself with, you know, either getting a full trade one for one where he still dies but gets the kill, or he doesn't even die and they end up getting a kill as a result. So. Yeah, they identified the big areas that Nygma Galaxy needed to make their plays around, and they responded accordingly. Really nicely done by Tundra. Yeah, I feel like it'd be fair to either give it to Nine Class or Toby here. I, I mean, possibly even Whitemon as well. I'm, I'm really struggling, but um, I, I, I feel like, especially when they had themselves this Centaur, I know we mentioned in the draft that they needed to find some reliable stuns in order to get themselves quite a lot of kills, and they were able to do just that. But I mean, Whitemon on this Chen, he was practically, I, I feel like, unstoppable here. I mean, a, a KDA of 8 to 16 on the Chen, only dying twice, and providing so much here with the auras. You got Nine Class jumping in and stopping these initiations with the. I mean, look at that three man hoof stomp there as well. That was beautiful. Yeah. Along I with mean, the blast off there, too. It, I, I, it wasn't I honestly, just the solo picks, right? It wasn't the solo pickups from Toby. Those multi-man stomps, like you were saying, that's 
that's the thing that kind of might tip me. Like, even there, he gets a double stomp onto FBZ and Miracle to be able to stop them. And I hope we get a review of this last fight as well, because I think he blinks in the way... Oh no, he just moves in the way of Samael as he's trying to go for that roll in to try and get that killed secured onto Topson. And look at Topson, his HP never drops below like 90% just because he's got this entire army in front of him. He's got Centaur protecting him. He, there's no Spirit Vessel that's able to go in onto him. And again, the Penitence just allows him to be that machine gun that they needed. So yeah, let's say dual MVPs between White Mon and Toby, I think. Yeah, I, I'd agree there too, both of them having a fabulous performance here. But that game one, my gosh, ended pretty quickly here. I uh, I feel like Nygma, they, even though that they had themselves two heroes here that could respond against Chen by eating his creeps and enchanting the creeps, Chen still had himself a lot of impact here, 8, 2, and 16. Along with the fact as well that they finished this at 26 minutes, I think they will need to get a draft in order changed up. And especially maybe respect ban the Chen here. This is why Chen... You see him banned quite a lot, and this is the power he can deliver. Not only the Hand of God to turn it around with the heals, but as well with the auras and the early push, and can't forget the Pentonance. No, we can't, and that's why I keep I keep asking for the Wyvern, man. It's really good <laughs> against a Chen. And uh, yeah, it felt like outside of, you know, some single target removal of Chen creeps, they really didn't have too much of anything, right? Like, it was all fairly single target damage. I guess you've got Magnetize and a little bit from the Breathe Fire, but yeah, I just didn't feel like they had enough to be able to deal with this Chen, despite the fact that Chen was picked up first pick of the overall draft. So we'll see if Nigma are able to right the wrongs that they made in game number one. They'll be hoping for a longer game at least, I'm sure of that, but uh, we'll have to go to a break first to give them time to rest, relax, and we'll be back in a few minutes.
Hello everybody, welcome back to the Elite League with myself, Epidamnos and Danog. We're coming in for game two out of this best of three between Enigma Galaxy and Tundra Esports. Tundra, they were able to take themselves a pretty comfortable game one here. 26 minutes in, it was a stomp. And that is not a pun because they had themselves two centaurs within the game. It was actually a stomp. And we're coming in for game two now to see whether Enigma Galaxy will be able to turn this around. They did have some unfortunate events here. I mean, especially with Samil on the Earth Spirit. He didn't have himself the greatest of times. And it, it kind of just all fell apart. They weren't able to get themselves any backline pickoffs. They had Stampede. They had a lot of things to add throw at Nigma here. I mean, especially the silence and the stuns as well. It, like, that fight where Miracle he was in the triangle, he was not able to get any damage off. He got stomped twice, and then he was silenced, and he couldn't spell it because he already used Manta. And not not nice. Not nice. And you're already going up against a Drow who's, like, your counter matchup, basically. So that just goes to show how well uh, Tundra did play that game, both in the draft as well as their execution and identifying the ways that Nigma might be trying to play and responding directly to them. Uh, I was going to say, going into this, I'm pretty certain uh, because Nigma went and chose first pick, they, uh, they had pri selection priority for this game, that we would not be seeing a Chen. And wouldn't you know it, there is no Chen. Uh, Nigma are still going to ban out the Sniper, though. Of course, Topson likes to play the Sniper, but I feel like just the impact of it is so much stronger when you're able to play it alongside the Chen because of all the reasons that we've been talking about. One of the plus sides is now you're going to give FBZ a really comfortable hero for him to be able to play with with this Brewmaster. I wonder if they're yeah. going to just pick a like a lane dominating position five with this first pick overall. Screw the flex on Tundra and then just look to try and bully him early on as much as possible. Yeah, I feel like that'd be good for Enigma to get themselves some of their own bullying. I mean, Batrider is not the greatest um, support on the lane during the early stages. Of the game. I mean, lane break, very, very nice to try Depends and... Depends what hero you have to play with, I think. As yeah. Well. Right, so I guess it's one of those heroes as well that is able to provide that lockdown, prevent him from getting the split off. Um, which can be kind of nice, right? Uh, even just as a support, being able to keep lanes shoved away, it makes it uh, a lot easier oh, yeah. for Topson and Pure to play their natural, uh, more farm-centric games. Also, it's a little bit of a block pick as well, because it's something that Toby likes to play a lot. So I actually do uh -huh. quite like this um, this brew pick early on. Uh -huh. Yeah, I was just going to say from the bat rider, I, I, I do like it in terms of team fight and the way that it can uh, outpush the lanes, as you said. But in regards to laning stage wise, it, it's not the strongest. The only ability that I think that you do have, which is very, very good, is of course the plane break to actually act upon someone if they're out of position and actually pull them back towards you. Mm. Be able to act upon that. But that, that's around about it. I, I don't know how you feel about Batrider early stage, but for me, I, I think it's just a flame break. But they get themselves the techies again, more than happy to pick that up for 9+. plus. Well, it might be Whitemon playing at this game. I'm actually not sure how they're going to do it this game because most of the time it is Nine Class that plays this Techies. It is Whitemon. He, he's super capable of playing it as well. And again, you are mm -hmm. a really good harasser for that laning stage. But also, I'm just considering... When you're playing the uh, the Brewmaster, when you've got the um, the Drunken Brawler and all that sort of stuff, and you have a crap ton of evasion, then something like a Batrider can actually be pretty good at being able to, you know, chase you down. That consistent magic damage as opposed to right-click damage that you're able to just avoid with all of that evasion when you're um, when you're brewed up with the, the Cinder Brew. It does end up still being able to deal a lot, but I feel like Techies kind of does a similar thing. So um, they've got a lot of flexibility, at least just in terms of their supports here on Tundra. Yeah, so Shadow Demon comes out here, a lovely save, I mean, especially if a, a blast off comes their way as they pick themselves up a third pick here. The Mirana, the good old Shadow Demon and Mirana. The destruction I... arrow. I think we might be seeing something like a Lone Druid come out here from Toby. I really don't have a lot of confidence outside of the Demonic Purge for them to be able to deal with the bear on its own. Damage is kind yeah. of lacking. Um, you've got decent supports to be able to set up for you. And like we were saying before, his brew's been taken away, his centaur's been taken away. I'd say that's probably one of his more comfortable heroes to come after that if they wanted to go something a little different. Mm, Luna. Okay. I mean, Morph's banned, so Pure's kind of in a similar boat, right? Morphing and the Luna are the two that he goes to every time. Also does kind of 
lend me towards that still, you know, all-in push strat. Now they're just going to go the Conqueror instead, which, of course, Topson is capable of playing. So is Toby. But uh, I'm... I mean, picking the Lunar into a Shadow Demon is kind of like, hmm... Not sure if it feels amazing, just because you can just disrupt the the Lunar or one of her illusions and get a couple of your own, which does feel kind of nice. Yeah, it does. Although Do you just TB one, now? I, I feel like TB is not the worst. I mean, you could possibly go into it again, not feel uh, kind of demoralized from game one here on Miracle. So if they wanted to go TB, I, th I think they could. Mm-hmm would be fine in the lane if it is going to be Toby playing the Conquer, right? You're basically only doing uh, physical damage against him, so high armor is going to be able to prevent a lot of that. I guess the downside is, you know, Techies still is a high magic damage dealer, and we saw what they were able to do with that in the previous game. Nine class... Oh, yeah. ...when paired together with Toby on his Centaur, ended up just completely bullying Miracle out of the lane. I'm sure that's really what he's thinking about right now. Like, can... Do we have the heroes to be able with, to withstand that sort of pressure? 40 seconds reserve time left for Nygma. They're really thinking about this. They do not want to drop and go 2-0 here against Tundra. I'm trying to think what are the other options that might be. Like, do you just try and outrange the, the Luna as well? Like, do you go, I don't know, a, a Gyrocopter pause one, but it doesn't really feel like a miracle-ish style of hero to be honest um he's been playing a lot of the faceless void which yeah, might be okay up against this okay life stealer as well i mean you're able to okay. survive into the conquer it's really good against the lunar because of all the magic damage that she has to dish out and you can even end up reducing a lot of the damage that the rest of your team is taking if he decides to go into something like the aghanim scepter just get inside the lunar means that she is disarmed you're still dealing a lot of that damage and you can maybe have a radiance for the burn going on that entire time wouldn't hate to see something like that. You can dispel the reactive taser, right? With the, uh, the, the rage? Uh, yes, I believe so. So yeah, that, that'll that be good because I, I feel like that ability is very underrated, especially oh, against yeah. With the know, shot, physical carries. Oh, I, I, I've, 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 I've witnessed this firsthand against myself. It is, uh, it's, it, it's not nice to play again when you're disarmed for, I don't know how long, three or four seconds. Mm -hmm. it, it, it seems like an eternity as well. I, I know it's only just a run about three or four seconds, but in, in a team fight, those few seconds can mean everything. Absolutely. So they, like they clearly... Them, yeah, I mean, they are worried about kind of what I was talking about, right, with my Lone Druid suggestion for uh, for Toby. Um, like, it kind of does a similar sort of thing. Uh, I guess with the Helm of the Overlord that they would probably be going, it just provides another frontliner for yourself that the shadow demon isn't super capable of dealing with outside of that demonic purge so um i probably would prefer the ld still just because you can have the um the ensnare as well just to provide a little bit of extra control not a, not really lacking it right they've got a conquer they've got a techies they've got a bat rider plenty of stuns plenty of slows plenty of just people on the front lines of the fight i think that's what you really want and that's what you already have for tundra I think the lane would be fine too, going into the life stealer. Maybe they feel differently. So pretty much two mid laners here for either side. This will be the last pick to determine what they have. I mean, last pick for Tundra though, on the dire side. So Nygma will have to pick themselves up something first for their mid lane. Damage. And they ban themselves out the lean in here too. I yeah. think that's a good ban here. Yep, they, they really need some damage for Samael to be able to dish out. Lesh gone, Lena gone. I don't know if you want to go and pick up something like a Void Spirit, just because they enter the Conquer again, you're relatively low, um, low hate uh, armor, that you can end up getting bullied quite heavily. Maybe they're going to go something like a Razor. Uh, I know it's not exactly exciting, but against a Luna, not too bad. Once you've got the BKB against a Conquer, not horrible in the lane as well. And it will allow you to... Even just have the capability to just keep on pushing forward with the life stealer potentially infesting into you. Not really the easiest Mirana stun combinations though outside of the Shadow Demon. That's one thing that I'm really worried about for Nigma Galaxy. Like these two roaming supports might be able to set up a stun, but they don't have the ability to confirm kills just on their own. 
You look at the other two supports, Batrider and Techies, absolutely they can do all that sort of stuff. You know, Flame Break into Lasso, into Blast Off, Proximity Mine, anyone is dead that gets caught out. Yeah, just the power of Techies, I mean, especially with the catch from Batrider too. Just, just do so well with Techies at the moment. And the Cottle, okay. Sure. Just okay, that, that's some, that's some magical damage. Well, Tundra want to end this early-ish again, right? You just have a look at the type of heroes that they have. Pure, crazy quick farmer as... Okay, yeah, that, that is some damage that uh, they're going to be able to have, so I quite like this Wind Ranger coming through. You're able to dodge out some of the damage coming through from the Kunker. Universal hero, so good scaling. And again, it's that flashy style that I really like to see Samael play, so really don't hate this Wind Ranger pick at all. I think it's a good rotator during the early stage as well. I mean, it's similar to that of the Earth Spirit, but I feel like <laughs> if you do get behind a little bit on the Wind Ranger, you can recover compared to Earth Spirit, who finds it very difficult. But, oh, Pops and Pugna. It's going to be a mid-lane Pugna coming out. Usually we see this as a position five. When was the last time you saw a mid Pugna? When Thompson was playing it last, that's when. I mean, he <laughs> he is a Pugna specialist, and if he feels like the hero could work, by all means, I'm not one to go against what he's thinking. I mean, it does give them even more of that burst potential, right, with the Batrider and the Techies to be able to just make plays with the Decrep. They're not exactly going to be making... Too, like, the Nether Ward's not going to give them insane value, I don't think, but it's just nice to be able to have the Decrep as well, to be able to save whoever is the main target for the Focus Fire or whoever Miracle's able to jump on, because the magic damage just really isn't there for Enigma Galaxy to be able to go through that. So yeah, we'll see how this Game 2 goes, folks, with a last pick, Pugna. I've not seen this in quite a long while, especially on the mid lane. I mean, most definitely as a support, as we've mentioned here, not on the mid lane, though. It's going to be an intriguing one, though. You did mention as well that uh, you're going up against Shadow Demon. They can actually use Luna's own illusions and push that back. Miracle also as well on a carry that can fight a lot earlier compared to the Terra Blade here, too, and has a lot more survivability on the lane. So we may see a much more even game here compared to game one that ended in 26 minutes, but we'll be coming into that very soon. But regarding the draft, Danog, who are you favoring this time? Uh, I think we did favor Nygma. That was indeed definitely the wrong team to favor in game one. I did put two. a disclaimer on that. I did say a condition like if with uh, Surveil okay. getting off to a good start. And he did get off to a good laning start. But yeah, a few of those yeah. Spirit Vessel timings just really didn't work out. I thought Tundra's response to that was really good. The thing that I'm always just going to come back to with this one is... I, I don't rate these supports combined together. Like, I, I just don't think the Marana and the Shadow Demon are going to be able to do enough on their own to be able to really deal with everything that Tundra is going to have coming at them. Uh, I think Matthew's going to need to have an insane game if uh, Nick McNalaxy are going to get the win here because he needs to do so much, right? He needs to set up for arrows, he needs to be in position to be able to potentially disrupt to stop a Batrider Lasso combination. You can stop a, an Eclipse from hitting someone if they don't have those defensive tools for themselves. He needs to get the Demonic Purge off onto like a defensive Decrepify. It's a lot for one person to have to do. And he's even in the correct positioning now to be able to break that smoke. Although, it might give them a hint that that high ground is warded. So, could get some free gold coming through there, as Toby is even going to confirm that Matthew is still hanging around that sort of area. I wonder if he even denies that Observer Ward. Assuming that it's yeah, just going I to wonder. get them dewarded. Look, we're nine classes, though. <laughs> I can get around the back. Okay, he might actually be able to snatch a banter in if the uh, Miracle the doesn't go break. for it. Okay, he's, he's coming back. Oh! <laughs> nine cla- Oh! That was fancy. Flame breaks him to the high ground, snatches a banter in. Thank you for that. And just escapes. Easy peasy. That was actually going to go behind the tier one tower as well and uh, raise a high five and go around in circle. This is, this is ultra teasing here from nine class. Yeah, like Devile Lama said, he's he's a cocky player. And, uh, I mean, if you can make plays like that to be able to back it up, by all means, be cocky all you want. He's going to run into Kuroki, though, but he should be fine. Cliff him with frame, Flame Break. True. That'd be so <laughs> hype. <laughs> When's the last time we really had a, a massive, like, bat chest uh, support player? 
Like, Jerax was definitely one. FY, of course, has that potential. I mean, we did see Afu go for the uh, the Aegis Steel 2.0 yesterday and get it. Yep, he did, yeah. Snatch that, but he wasn't able to escape. He was able to snatch it, but he wasn't able to escape like he did. True. Not good enough, Afu. How dare you not be able to escape? <laughs> oh, wow, look at Pure. Whoa, that's, that's a lot of damage there. The disruption and the thunderclap at level one is enough to take down the Lunar. But in return, at least they'll find the return kill there. White Mon finding Matthew there on the Shadow Demon. Yeah, nice setup there from uh, from Matthew on his Shadow Demon, right? Like he is, he got two disruptions off in that whole process to be able to one soften up the Lunar and then two go for the kill. There was trades of blood grenades, there was fairy fires used to make sure they got that first blood online. So really nicely done by Matthew to be able to stop a little bit of that farm that Pure is able to get. You just can't let him get off to a good start on his Lunar. He's just way too good. The illusions were body blocking him as well yep. within the creep wave, so he couldn't get out, along with the fact that being slowed by Thunderclap. 25% mm -hmm. movement slow at level one. He's actually got got himself level three here on FPZ, but he hasn't put any points into anything yet. So, uh, what, what could it be saving the points here for on the brew? I think it just depends if someone gets put out of position, right? If you have the potential to be able to turn around onto them, they like might this? go for another body block here. <laughs> <laughs> With this in the brew, okay, White Mon gets away. He's all right. Yeah, putting two points into Cinder Brew there very quickly is already a White Mon down to one fourth of his HP. I'm really wanting Matthew to buy those raindrops as soon as they're available because he's just going to be taking a lot of harass in this lane. Even FBZ, it's not the worst for him. Look at what he's building up. He's going straight Radiance on this Brewmaster, so doesn't exactly give oh. him the most mana regeneration for this game. Most of the time you'd go into something like an Urn just to have something to proc the Cinder Brew. But uh, when you've got a Shadow Demon, it's just so easy to be able to do that with the Shadow Poison. They might go for another kill here. Eh, they might just be softening up fewer. Oh, the blast off there onto two, but Pure getting lower and lower. Has three, three stacks of Shadow Poison, and that is a kill. Another kill onto Pure again. This lane is looking very good here for Nygma. Mm -hmm. So another one of those reasons why I was thinking, hmm, can they put this bat into the, uh, the position five role this game? Play it safe, just because you're going to have a little bit of that additional ongoing High damage. Class. He's okay, he's okay. He was able to move around there with the the cheeky firefly went into the river and then moved up to the cliff so nick uh miracle was not able to shoot but i wonder if he is going to go a few points here into feast here too to just try and push toby out of lane or whether it'll be like a few points into cool frenzy and already toby getting quite low here trading with karaoke with that level two star storm I think he could definitely look to put a few more points into Feast, especially considering the start that they've had with Pure's net worth kind of suffering. Look at Nine Class just tanking up three tower hits to try and fix this lane equilibrium, give a little bit of that free farm over to Toby, away from the uh, the consistent pressure from Miracle and Kuro. So this is, this is a nice job work. Yeah, able to grab the creep wave there nicely and pull it around right next to this Tier 1 tower. We'll give Toby some breathing room here. Doesn't have himself any regen at the moment. His courier is heading back. He wants to bring himself back a cell for the lane. And that's going to be another, I, I think, 30, 40 seconds until he gets that. So I'm not getting a lot of CS. He's at the bottom of CS in terms of cores at the moment. They're actually following the, the brew here too. But he has been able to get quite a few assists here. Brew indeed. Oh, Matthew. And, I mean, that's, yeah. that's really what a, a Brewmaster wants, right? He, the main thing that he wants is levels. Doesn't necessarily need to worry that much about his uh, his net worth. It's one of the reasons that Nigma, sorry, Tundra actually rated quite highly for Toby, is that their other two we'll cores speak. are so greedy. I mean, speaking of Toby, oh, able to get away that actually has a wind lace and boots of speed. I think if he didn't have wind lace, maybe that would have been a different story there. Could have possibly picked up a kill because. Miracles has decided to put a second point into the Ghoul Frenzy. Able to get that extra movement slow. Meanwhile, action happening on top though. Taser comes out there. They find the kill onto the Shadow Demon. But FBZ trying to find White Mon through these trees. He's quite fast. One more physical attack can do it. But Shadow Poison will claim the life there of White Mon. So support for a support. 
So FBZ still doing perfectly fine here. Yeah, just a, an instance of not great comms either coming out from Nigma Galaxy. Kuro got uh, Toby all the way down to 4 HP as he was trying to pull that wave next to the tower. And Smail had a power shot at the ready. Ooh. Good. Shackle shot oh, there. Power down. shot. All oh, able to heal up there with the magic stick. He's okay. But the shadow poison. He doesn't get the fourth one there. That could have been a kill. Onto Popton. Really nice rotation done. Nice there from White One. Even just the small things, he put himself in front of the power shot so that uh, you wouldn't be taking quite as much damage on Thompson as well. And that'll end up securing them a kill, yeah. yeah. Oh, maybe oh, the high class gets taken down by a creep, though. The power shot just hitting him a little bit there. Went through the creep, but because of the slow of that power shot, was not able to get away from the neutrals and died to them. Then, but yeah, you don't want to dive Toby there underneath that tier two. Right behind the tier one. This is dominance. This is definitely a different game for Miracle right now. But he is going to be met by Topton. He's going to rotate in here with that Never Blast. He does have himself the Rage. He's not going to commit it there just yet. He has himself the Phase Boots trying to run. I mean, there is an Xbox to spot. Miracle perfectly saving this Rage here in order to stop this. Oh, okay, never mind. He's not going to commit the Rage. Still has it. There we go. Not going to be affected by the Flame Break. He is in some trouble, though. He's Slowed dead. down there by the Blood Grenade. He's going to dodge the Torrent, but will be found by that Never Blast. Meanwhile, though, they do find a kill on the top lane here. White one and pure. That's worth it. Look at that. They had themselves three heroes there chasing Miracle for what I think was like 30 or 40 seconds. And with that, Nigma, they take response to that. They get the advantage and they leverage that and take down two on the side of Tundra, both White Mon and Pure. Yeah, you got to feel bad for uh, Lifestealer players these days, right? Previously, it was just great. We're going to have a dominant lane. We're going to be playing that aggressively against a Conquer, but. With the changes to how you know spell immunity works, level one rage only lasts three seconds, so you can't really look to fight into something like an Xbox. Oh no! Because, well, Miracle, yeah, Miracle! I mean, you're getting Toby. Yes, you may find a kill here, but this may be your Is death. Is he getting Toby? Oh no! I mean, they have themselves the flame break there. He's There's gonna that Xbox rage, but this rage is going to expire and going to be brought back there by a torrent. Miracle dead again. The aggressive plays are just not working out. They've actually made me a kill here onto Whitemon. They will do so indeed within the river. But it's well worth it to be able to oh, stop dear. this Lifestealer's momentum. That's exactly what I was talking about, right? Three seconds on the Rage and the delay Radiant's on the... Hold on. Looking to try and make a bit of an aggressive play here onto Thompson. And they should oh, nice arrow! Nice arrow from Kuroki as the focus fire is more than enough. Against that Never Blast there, some mill will just survive on 100 HP. There's a rotation Ooh. bottom as well from FBZ with Nicely the done Primal him. Split going to find Toby here. Skadoosh gets the kill. <laughs> Not the Skadoosh. Uh, but uh, yeah, he's even able to protect the tower as well, which I'm a little surprised that they weren't able to take this, considering Luna was down here as well. You had the three points and the Luna Blessing. You had a full creep wave as well to be able to protect it. So nice rotation there by FBZ to be able to protect a lot of their map control. Thompson just looking to try and backdoor it though on the bottom side. He's got the maxed out nether blast. So it should just be one more of that onto the tier one tower at bottom. And there we go. Just gets removed. Fortunately, Brew can't really do much about that without the primal split. And he did actually change up as well. Okay, he went into the urn, which I like. You know, you always just want that for easy one. Mm -hmm. Pure's been found again. Sacred Arrow comes out, and Whiteman not able to get in front of it. But the, the arrow will actually miss here. Pure is still fine. They're going to rotate around now with Blast Off there. Two's Camille in some trouble. going to return there with a focus fire, but the Blast Off will find the kill. But in return, they, in return sorry, they will find Pure underneath this tier one tower. So, in order for the kill there on Mail, they do find Pure in return. So, death on the carry once again, though Matthew might be found here, being slowed down by the sticky bomb. So just attack. getting himself into position here. Decrepify coming off cooldown, he's been bloody blocked there by the mud golem. <laughs> He'll be alright. He's playing a really good game as Matthew. 4-2-2. Two, two. He's set up so many kills that allowed them to have a really good time in that laning stage. FBZ's top of the net worth as a, as a result, and is able to make these solo plays on himself, like what he was able to do against the uh, against the Conquer down bottom. And, okay, he's gone away from the Radiance. I wonder if Lifesteal is going to have that queued up. Yes, he will. It makes a lot of sense. Obviously, two heroes that do like building into the Radiance, but right now, I, I just want to see them playing around FPC as much Radiance as possible. It's going to be a while until he gets into that Spirit Vessel, so Primal Split being up in another 10 seconds means that they have the capability to make a play right now. 
And they did just find that middle tower too there on. Mm. Some nice juicy extra gold. Oh, in the Bruce slowing down White Mon. He's okay. Yeah, it's enough though. Taser. It just pushes them away from the tower, lets them take it, opens up more space for Miracle to be able to farm. This basically gives you like a guaranteed two extra camps. So for someone like Miracle who has been suffering a little bit, who you really do want to be the one who's uh, winning like a one for one carry trade against a Luna, which the hero is designed to do, that's another big play. Gonna start trying to pressure this middle tower now with the catapult. It's still alive for the time being. A rotation in coming from Toby. FBZ still has himself primal split, so going to play a lot more aggressively here. In the mid, as you can see, they force away Tundra, and with that, get themselves the middle tower. A lot more balanced within this game two here, as you can see. Both teams getting themselves the middle tower. It's not complete dominant Tundra. Thompson able to get the cheeky bit. deny off there onto the Observer Ward, not letting Kuro get away with anything. That actually is going to make him not able to get into the level 6 just yet on the Mirana, so maybe they were hoping to make some sort of aggressive move with this Primal Split still available, but yeah, they're going to be forced to be a little bit further on the back foot. This FBZ able to claim up a nice juicy wave for himself, gets his level 10, and he's only 250 gold away from a Spirit Vessel, so might be just delaying the inevitable with still being able to uh, go for that aggressive play very shortly. Radiant yeah, we do have ourselves a nice item pick up though, quite early here. 11 minute um, Link Dagger on 9 class. Nice lasso Kuro. ready and grabbing the lasso mid leap. I mean, one more leap charge is remaining, but the blast off will connect there. No more leap charges remaining. Kuroki will be found. But that was a Link Dagger lasso reveal and Miracle he just gets out of there by activating the rage. He's completely fine. Pure is on his own though. They might find Pure coming here aggressively. Okay. The map feels safer to farm there because of the tier 1 tower being taken down, but it's a ballsy play as Matthew actually, oh. as we're talking about him, he's making they a solo are, play. Crazy. I mean, this is a bit dangerous here. Enigma. Hail. Oh, the primal split comes out defensively to try and force Tundra back. Maybe perhaps they can try and find 9 class now. He's still got himself that Firefly. He will get back and. Look at all those panda brulings, they all die there within that primal split. Yeah, not the best one from him, he was able to at least use the Dispel Magic to get rid of the Lunar Illusions, but I mean, that probably shouldn't have even needed the primal split, right? Just slightly off the mark with that Shackle Shot meant that uh, you weren't able to quickly confirm the kill onto Pure. He's able to just walk yeah. on back with the Mask of Bandits, not even needing to go back to base, and he can just farm away. Even a miracle and pressure Pure, the same miracle, network. Yeah. You're just watching Nine Class. He's hanging around nearby, and he's still got that uh, that flaming lasso available in just five seconds or so. Oh, blast off onto three, attempting to turn it around here on Tundra. They find Kuroki. Thompson completely fine. They want to go for FBZ now. He doesn't have himself the primal spot, but it's too fast. He gets away fine. Nail gets himself the shield rune. Just didn't have oh, the they need to nerf yet. that duration. Yes, they do. One. Absolutely. I, I don't know why it hasn't been. <laughs> it's just way too strong. It's 9 class. He's almost the same level as Miracle. He's having another great game. Like you mentioned, that really early 11 minute Blink Dagger. And he's well on his way towards the uh, the 4 staff as well. Obviously it's going to be great uh, just to be able to quickly force out into the rest of your team once you do grab someone with a lasso, but even giving yourself a little bit of insurance for some anti-itemization from stuff like a Lincoln Sphere to be able to uh, yeah, still be able to deal with that. To say though, Pure bottom. has been uh, recovering slightly, though they have found themselves Blightmon here is going to attempt to blast off underneath this tier 1 and attempt to TP and he will get out of the lasso there to FPC as well. He does not have himself the primal split so he may be found here. Will be indeed he's taken out and some mail. He doesn't have himself a wind run there anymore. He's going to activate that shield rune. He has been chased though by Thompson. Nice disruption save there from Matthew. He's out of mana though. To maybe turn it around. Matthew That's just has no mana. He's completely out of it. They have no capabilities of fighting and, well, he might be trying to be able to escape here, but just gets clipped with that dust. Does Matthew. Arrow doesn't even connect onto the stationary Thompson, so. They're going to be able to claim that. I, I think that gank not working out was 
Kind of a little bit of mispositioning from Kuro, right? We've already mentioned how difficult it is for this SD and Mirana to be able to make stuff happen together, but there was just no arrow follow-up, so there was nothing stopping Whitemon from getting that blast Dyer's off back underneath tower his tower, and attack. then the rest of the boys just show up, and yeah, we just saw what happened, right? Core kill into another kill, and it's all the while that you were still farming around the map. I love this Falacritory pick up there on uh, Pops, and it really, really helps. Um... Especially when you slow down someone with Decrepify, because the problem is, someone's going to break the life stream when you Decrepify them. I, I feel like the slow is, uh, is not a, uh, not enough, but combined with the Black Tree, uh, it's very, very nice here. And you just see more stacks for pure here. It's being cleaned up on the road to recovery there, able to get himself a man star now. He's actually top of the net worth at the moment. Yeah, no recoveries here. I think he's uh, feeling very comfortable with his position in this game. And you can see he just wants to be able to address the uh, the heroes that are trying to deal a lot of that um, that magic damage to them in the form of like Brewmaster tossing him up into the air. Doesn't want that to be a possibility. Just wants to be able to pop that BKB and go in with the rest of his team. Magnum's pick up now too for Toby, so has himself that torrent storm now ready. I'll definitely start changing the, the pace here if these team fights come about. Uh, there's still a bottom tier 1 tower remaining for Enigma Galaxy to try and chip at here. I think they're actually thinking of doing so with BZ. Chasing down here and attempting to be push careful. themselves some lunar illusions. Yeah, and this is what I was talking about. One of the strengths of picking the Shadow Demon into the lunar is that you just get this pushing power, even Dyer's the uh, the lunar blessing as well, just given over to your team as a result of this. I'm gonna respond though, Tundra. Have themselves a last bit there onto Kuroki. Found there by the torrent, taking out by Toby. Maybe perhaps they can turn it around. They're not in a very favorable position here on Tundra. Well, well, they will be fine. Mail will not chase. That would have been a 3v5 situation there, actually. Mm -hmm. My life steal was completely away from the rest of the boys, just wanting to get up into that radiance as quickly as possible. So he can join in with the team. Try and influence a lot of these fights. That AoE damage is going to be very significant, considering they are a little bit lacking on the supports right now. But at least they were able to take mm -hmm. the tower, so it's going to be a little bit more worrisome for Pure to just farm all these areas of the map that he has been so far. And Matthew. Matthew. Yeah, he's kind of himself Topson, but where's the follow-up? Actually able to disrupt himself and stop that blast off from having an effect. Able to flee there using the Moonlight Shadow. No follow-up onto the Pugner, though. That was, uh, that was an intriguing jump there from Matthew. Hmm. Lines are being drawn on the map right now. I, I want to say FPZ. Maybe just saying that they want to control this top area of the map. Just help Miracle a little bit further out. Or maybe just saying, look, no one's actually playing in this area. So Radiance Middle Tower we, can, uh, under we can have you farming really aggressively and Dyer's put a little bit of Tier 2 offensive attack. pressure. But it doesn't seem like Tundra are too concerned about that. They're feeling very comfortable and just allowing Topson to slowly chip away at this Tier 2 on his own. Yeah, they just need to hold off for a little while longer here on Enigma. They almost have themselves the Radiance on Miracle, and I feel like once they do have she that, then they can turn it around here and get themselves some nice team fights here. FEZ just ready with the primal split. It won't be an initiation here by Tundra, respecting the high ground and the vision. Enigma do indeed have. Radiance is about to come online very soon now. It is, but you've Critical. also got a couple of four staffs about to come online for Tundra, so they're just going to be trying to play Kite cool. Dota right now. Uh, it's going to be made a little bit easier now with Samael freshly picking up that Glipnir, so you've got a little bit more control in these team fights that you were previously lacking. They're actually going to be instantly picking up this, uh, this Tormentor for themselves as well. They would love to be able to give uh, to get one for Matthew. Monic Lens. Is Kuroki going to die? Kuroki! Ah! He died! <laughs> He tried yeah. to leap away and he got found oh, on the last uh, on the last proc. Oh, it doesn't even get the uh, <laughs> the shard for his troubles. It does go to Matthew, probably the better one uh, to have at this point in time, to be honest, right? Like you're going up against the reactive taser, that debuff is dispellable, so you don't need to use like the rage for it. Gets rid of the flame break, gets rid of the, uh, wow. the sticky napalm, gets rid of the this decrypt. Samael <laughs> really wanted nine class there, but just gets away. Thompson really wants Samael now. Thank you. 
He's going for a little bit of a chase here. He's got the amp damage as well. Oh, blink in three more seconds. The lasso's ready. Some mail. Oh, he's been caught and he's been found. Picked up there by Thunder. Oh, that's not good. They can start to pressure this tier two tower now. Bottom with E. With mm -hmm. Mail being down for 30 seconds. I mean, they do have themselves a glyph if they want to commit it. They're going to have to. Still got all their tier 2 towers left, so just to be able to remove this siege quick wave is pretty impactful. Nice timing though, just as the nether blast was about to hit, wanting to maximize every single second that they could. Still, still got it. Yeah, just delays the inevitable. But you've got the radiance now. I, I feel like they really just want to get up into that bit of a power spike for Miracle. Extra bit of damage so that when he goes in and commits the rage onto a Luna, he's actually able to, well, hopefully for his sake, confirm a kill because right now he's three levels behind. Yeah, when you were mentioning about the four staff too here on Tundra, I was thinking, it's like, oh yeah, it's going to be, uh, you know, Lightmon's going to get himself a four staff. It's actually not Toby. Yep. Nothing Conqueror, he gets himself a four staff. That's not, that's not uh, an item that you should be built up here on a Conqueror offlane. No, Quite definitely unique. not. But it is a really nice way to be able to address the lifesteal, right? You can see he's trying to get a little bit of uh, movement speed coming through with the Yasha next for Miracle, but you know, it's just a matter of what are you actually going to be going up against in the meantime. They're going to get a Roshan for themselves here for, I would imagine, pure. He pretty much feels ready to be able to go up onto the high ground. Oh, well, they're going to go for Thompson, though. He's on his own. He's going to commit the BKB and TP away. Do they have themselves enough damage? Yes, they do. He will not be able to TP away with that BKB. They get the kill on the Pugner, but in return, Aegis now in the hands of Kundra. Let's look at that net worth just starting to accelerate now here on pure 15,000 net worth. They're going to TP rotate in and protect this tier two with a lasso there onto Smail. Uh oh, he's dead again. Oh, no, Matthews, the disruption on his up. I don't, I don't know if he did that by accident or on purpose. If he wants to save himself, but he will fall there too. Yeah, I, yeah, all it takes is one mistake like that, right? Sure, Topson dies, but they get something in exchange. Uh, Nigma Galaxy got absolutely nothing in exchange for that other than a couple of creep camps from Miracle. And now, once again, they're in a position to just keep the pressure going forward. Maybe with this next creep wave, they want to start hitting into a tier two. Maybe bait out another use of that glyph so that there's nothing stopping them from going high ground with this Aegis. I mean, with uh, that cure, uh, kill being secured onto some male by Pure as well, he's only 400 gold away from being being able to pick up his phylactery so you've got so many extra slows now to be able to play around with you've got of course the torrent storm on Kunker. it's just so hard to fight up into this you can't really blame matthew for something like that he'd been playing a pretty good game up to this point but like i said he basically needs to play flawlessly for them to win and i'm not sure if that's fair enough to put onto a position four It looks like they may actually just find here a second tier two. FBZ going to rotate in. Oh, and a Sulkuras on FBZ as well. Really wants to enable this lifestealer as much as possible. And Thompson. Space the BKB, holds his ground, blast off there onto four. Boat comes in too. Karoki is gonna fall there from the Never Ward. As these panda brulings are just being decimated here, actually may find the kill onto FBZ. No, it just expires, but the lasso's there. Never mind, they do find the kill. Two down here on the side of me. Found some ale. themselves the X marks two here on some mail. He has been disrupted up and saved for some time. Going to try and escape, but the damage there is way too much for him to handle with the eclipse coming out. Now trying to find Matthew there too. Miracle only remain. Will hold his crown for one got there by the blast off too, along with that turret. He's got to get the radiance, radiance. but he's able to find Ooh, nice the armlet toggle. He just armlet toggles there in time. But Karoki comes in with the star storm, able to find something here. He wants to try and escape Miracle, but he's been brought Not back there time. by the X marks. And the torrent finds the kill. They will lose pretty much everyone here on Nigma Galaxy, but Karoki coming back with that short uh, death time. It able to get a kill with the star storm there so they will lose three here on tundra but in return they'll just take the tier two there a, a little bit of diving quite a little bit there on pure uh, yeah. i think they could have got more 
they could have probably got more, but uh, they popped the glyph just to be able to have that multi-shot as well, to be able to maybe give them that little bit of extra damage. And honestly, maybe that was what uh, allowed Miracle to be able to get that kill, just that tiny bit of extra damage that uh, they'd taken in that fight with Whitemon being the one to go down there. But you just saw how effective the four staffs were, right? Being able to kite this out fairly effectively. Topson, unfortunately for him, he was under the effects of the Demonic Purge. So even if they four staffed him, it really wouldn't have done too much of anything to be able to escape. But yeah, you just see Toby gets away to the low ground. Oh, yeah. the Oblet toggle. Yeah, it was oh, a really was good toggle. That was pretty good there. But it, oh, when so it's a genuine, cool. like, 1v4, 1v5, th there's only so much you can do, even Miracle. Yeah. Didn't have the AC for that, though, on FBZ, so that might provide them a little bit of that extra attack speed and armor that they're so desperately needing to, to be able to just withstand this consistent pressure coming from Pure. Has the Kanda finished up now, by the way, so all that crit coming out. Level 21 as well, so the level 20 talent with the uh, the Moonglaives fired out every time he uses the Lucent Beam. Gonna be nice at doing stuff like disabling the Blink, perhaps, from uh, Matthew, who's been, again, oh, holding back. Oh no, Sumail, he's been found again! The Dust of Appearance is there and he's just deleted off the face of the Earth with a Lucent Beam Kanda effect. Down again, really needing this BKB here. He's still 1,450 gold away from getting this recipe. He was just doing his best. To tr they're trying to fix all three lanes, and unfortunately for Samael himself, you got to give up something, right? Like you're, you're fixing two lanes, you're trying to do it to the third. Someone's got to die. In that instance, it was him. FBC. It might be him now as well, though. Well, he's just able to get off the primal split, though. But look the at blades. all these brutalies! Oh my! Gosh, Pure deletes them there with the activation of the Moonglaive oh, no. from that shard. No, nope. The Dust Brewmaster though. is just deleted. Matthew is Matthew. able to get away though with a blink and a glimmer cape, but is still going to be pursued here by the rest of Tundra. They are bloodthirsty. They really want Matthew. They will bring him back. He's actually still not no connected glaives. there by the torrent. They don't have themselves any detection either, and Matthew is out of here once again. Just look at this. Getting away here. Cheeky miracle little man fighting him. pure. Oof, I don't know about that choice. You are still yeah. four levels behind this Luna. Uh oh, blast off. BKB. Uh oh, Lucid Beam. It might come into play here as well. Yeah, Blasso. Miracle dead. <laughs> not good. Down for 60. Hero to hero. Yeah, it is lifesteal a favorite, but not if there's a 7, 8k differential and a 5 level advantage between the two heroes. It just was way too ambitious there for Miracle, unfortunately. Oh, no. As they're in onto the high ground. And who have they found? Oh, it, ju it just seems it's like pick-off after pick-off. I mean, Samael, he will be able to escape. No lasso there this time on 9 class. But this base is slowly falling. And there is no primal split here on FBZ. I mean, even if he just activates it, it seems like Pure just rips into these brulings. Which you don't usually expect here when you commit the primal split. No, he really needs to start delta splitting them, right? Just to make sure that that sort of thing doesn't happen. He's hoping for the level 20 talent. He's hoping... Oh, yeah. For even just level 18 to be able to keep himself a little bit healthier. But uh, right now, all Samael wants is that BKB so that he can much more reliably fight into Topson, so that he can fight into the Eclipse, so that he's not just being... They, they need to basically commit the lasso if they want to kill him. And that's the sort of scenario that he wants because it opens up Miracle's team fight a little bit. Oh. As uh, a Sacred Arrow comes into play, they've got themselves Topson, but the defensive boat is coming in. Miracle with the Rage. Not able to get the kill there onto Topson. There's too oh, much defense PC. coming out here from Tundrit. And they will back themselves off okay here. They are fine. Demonic Cleanse. Getting a little bit of help onto him just in case they did continue to commit. It, it's never really the sort of item that you want to buy when you're this far behind. But and they don't really have the money for it either. They need a gem. They need to just take away this potential for Tundra to keep playing on their side of the map. Because the vision is just all-encompassing. Oh, and a, oh, th th this is just a uh, a replay here of how <laughs> the quivers. Miracle died there after the rage expired. Yeah. To man fight the lunar. Smail just laying down the law to FBZ as he walked towards that lane, saying, "I need this BKB, bro. Do not take this away from me. I've been suffering for so long. I've been giving up my life." 
to get something in exchange for it. So maybe now they go for a smoke, but it would be a disaster if it's right underneath this mid uh, mid lane observer ward. They know in general where they're all starting to patrol towards anyway. Yeah. Roshan's going to be up soon. Up. Yeah. Oh, Tundra going to do a, uh, a smoke play of their own here, but they don't have themselves Toby. He's just acquired himself a Bloodstone now, so able to heal up here from the, the Torrent Storm. With They're the just playing around of the Observer for now, waiting for the BKB on Pugna to come up line. So it is Those now. mines are going to go off. Yep. Oh, now they know. Oh, now they, they know. know. Oh. They know exactly. Oh, it's such a... I mean, you kind of have to just pop the Rage. Okay, Illusions up onto the high ground to be able to remove a few of those mines. Oh, no, all the mines going off now. Now they have an absolute amazing idea. They know Roche is there Nygma too. There. Maybe perhaps they're just going to be the ones who take themselves the high ground and Nygma are going to completely avoid Tundra here. The Moonlight Shadow comes out they to play. See, they'll see the Lotus Pool being used as well. They would love a pick onto Matthew. That would completely stop any kind of disengage from coming forward. Once again, just using Miracle. Ooh, he actually turns off the Radiance. Maybe a bit of a reactionary thing there. FBZ. He revealed there. He is the only one on his own, though. Nine class waiting, prowling here. He has himself, don't forget, a nine second BKB, so can lasso someone in here quite easily for Pure to just rip Radiance up and decimate with the Moon Glaives. Another smoke. Another smoke play again. This is just smoke of smokes. Who gets the wrap around first? Tundra. Oh, look at this, coming through the trees here. They see Kuro. They found themselves they got a Kuro. Very now they're going to move around. Look at this. They're hiding right behind the Roshan. The Roshan. This is not a good place to be. It, it feels like they're trapped. They're oh. trapped. There's Tundra coming in to close this trap now. Pure blinked in. As they get themselves the lasso there. Onto Pure blinked in. The damage being taken there. Onto the Luna. But the BKB comes out in turn along with the damage as well. Miracle just able to actually use the infest there. Onto the prime. Primal Brulin attempting to flee now, but will be found by the Mines. It's a complete disaster and a team wipe. They lose absolutely no one here on the side of Tundra. Just get themselves a team wipe and they'll get themselves the Aegis. Uh, I'm not sure about that decision. I mean, it's a really ballsy move and it was a really quick reaction speed from Samael as well to be able to get that shackle shot in onto the Luna, but she's just so damn farmed that she was able to withstand a lot of that, get off the BKB, and then turn and start fighting. Lifesteal out the wazoo with the Mask of Bandits and the Paladin Sword and Glaives just bouncing around everywhere. He did more than 6,000 damage just in that very short fight on Pure. Do you think that they needed to choose a different target here on Nygma during that fight? Or do you definitely think they had the right idea of trying to take down Pure? Because I, I, I'm not sure whether they knew how much damage they were actually able to do. I, I think it was the right idea, honestly. And you had both Miracle and Samael hitting it onto him with the focus fire and you know fully just rage lifestealer. But when they just couldn't do it, they'd run out of everything, right? So then what do you do? You just lose the fight because they're not able to kill him. But it was the right choice. If you could take away this 28k net worth hero, then suddenly <laughs> there's no net worth lead. But because they couldn't, they get the Aegis, they get to go up onto the high ground, they get to take another lane of racks, and well, now they're just going to try and close it out, do the measured thing, go for the tier 2. Just keep pushing on forward into the next phase of this tournament. They'll be 2-1 and one if they're able to secure this dub. Gosh, 29k. Well, we're about to be 30k net worth here, almost. Um, I think here at 1,000 GPM. I think around about 800 or 900 at the moment on pure. Well, they found themselves oh, a lasso Samael. there onto Samael. He does have himself the BKB. Lovely use there of the Demonic Purge, stopping the lasso, bringing Samael further back. Is that Eclipse? It's actually able to help there. Kill FBC. There's the Infest onto Mafia, but Mafia will be... Found, slowed down there by the Crepify, caught by the torrent there too. Matthew is gone. Buyback available. Miracle will try to flee. Still chasing Miracle. Forward now. Still trying to chase, but the Glimmer Kick comes out there in time. Will be revealed by the disappearance. Matthew trying to get away. He will be able to get back there successfully, along with Miracle too. Has himself the TP to get back to the fountain, but they're going to go into the tier fours right now. There goes one. There goes two. The agent is exposed. They need to do something now here onto Nygma if they want to try and turn this back around. A BKB has just been fought here by Miracle. It's now an attempt to try and find pure, pure fountain diving here, but he's perfectly fine. Being decrepified up there by Tom. Look at him standing the in the fountain. Laying in the damage. There we go. Pure is going to be found and actually finding himself a double kill here within the fountain. 
Miracle with his BKB. Activating it there, but they have themselves the lasso by nine class. Bringing back Miracle. Miracle in trouble. He's going to fall. No buyback available. There's only two remaining here on Nigma. They lose themselves. Wymon is the fountain. Trying to take down Pure. Pure is still completely fine. Finding themselves on the rampage. Get themselves the rampage in by taking down FBC within the fountain. Where is it? Will they get the rampage before the game ends? No. Nope. The fountain <laughs> will take down Pure, but yes, GG is called. And game two will be going to Tundra Esports here, folks. They take themselves game one and game two here comfortably versus Nigma. You talk about a morale boosting victory. This is one of them. You could just see smiles on all the boys. Finally, a little bit of a grin coming through from Toby there as well. But uh, yeah, it was clear that they were having a good time. Just basically everything going their way. And yeah, just it was, it was another one of those things where the cohesion in the draft wasn't quite there, I think, from Nigma Galaxy. You saw how hard it was for them to be able to confirm any kills. I, I Honestly, I, I thought Matthew played a pretty good game. It, he did a lot on this Shadow Demon, but just a couple of big mistakes meant that uh, you know, they, they found an extra kill onto Samael that they probably shouldn't have, or, you know, he used the disruption and Kuroki just wasn't there. It, it just felt a little bit like the damage overall was kind of lacking, and Samael, unfortunately, for a second game in a row, wasn't able to get it done with a very late pick for his hero in that mid lane. Yeah, big props to Nine Class and White Mon as well, because every time I had a look at this, uh, this triangle, on the side of Tundra, it was always stacked here for Pure to just come back and farm it. Because he did not have himself the greatest early game, did he? At all. And he was just able to accelerate and farm and just farm these massive stacks. I wonder how many stacks actually happen. Let me actually take a look and uh, see if I can see that stacks. Mm. stacks There's uh, stacks? 24 oh, stacks 24? Yeah. 24 stacks from 9 class? What? That, yeah, that so is pretty... <laughs> if you want to be a rich support, pick a hero that can farm uh, stacks and make them. You know, like, uh, even just oh that. Look at that from White Mon. I thought he was fantastic the entire series, by the way, on White Mon. Just tanking up a lot of the aggression. You saw he went a little bit more of a defensive build. Like you said, no force stuff because he knows that he's going up against this Shadow Demon. He lets the uh, the heroes that sit a little bit more on the back lines, like the Batrider, like the Conker, uh, take up a little bit more of that damage for him. So going something like the Guardian Greaves meant that he was so beefy. And you see there, like, they go all in onto Pure. It's the right decision in my mind, but yeah, they were just, again, so lacking in damage. At the end of this game, I think FBZ even didn't have 10k to his name. And then it was all she wrote. It was a really clinical performance coming through from Tundra. I, I, I gotta give an MVP here, though, to uh, 9 class 100% there, if, if he stacked 24, 24 camps, camps. Like, yeah, what the camp. hell? He was able to get loads of lassos as well onto Samael. Mm -hmm. uh, and he was not, I, I feel like he was not able to have a very impactful game on the Wind Ranger here either with the fact that he was just not able to get off this BKB and by the time he did, he was still being caught by some of these lassos. Lassos were always perfect here on 9 class 2. Yeah, even just the flame break for the bounty rune at the start of the game, right? That was pretty cool. Just yeah. all these little things that uh, 9 class does that, yeah, I, I don't want to say they're underappreciated because I feel like he's getting a lot of appreciators as fans few haters as well coming through there but uh now definitely well worthy of the win uh tundra and uh yeah they moved to two and one now so they're one series win away from qualifying through does mean that nigma galaxy moved to one and two though and they're one loss away from being knocked out of this tournament after a really solid start that they had so uh you know you don't get too many chances actually you do get a fair few chances so <laughs> this will be their fourth series that they will be going into tomorrow We'll have to see if they're able to turn it around. Uh, I think we might have a interview. So we are going to go to a quick break so that we can set that one up. And then we will be back in just a couple of minutes to speak with someone from the winning team, Tundra Esports.
Hello, hello everybody. We are back with the Elite League and we've got ourselves an interview with Topson coming in here for Tundra Esports. Hello, hello Topson. Can you hear us? Hello, yes, I can hear you. Awesome. Congratulations on that victory, especially against Enigma Galaxy here, getting a very clean 2-0 here, especially within Game 1 as well. Um, this is currently your second best of three victory now uh, within the Swiss stage. Uh, how, how are you feeling at the moment between all the teams? Is everything comfortable? Do you think everything's going well, even with uh, dropping one series? Yeah, I mean, like, we just had a pretty rough games against Heroic, but uh, it's just one best of three. It's whatever. We it's, uh, we're still good. Uh, no no worries at all. Cool. Um, just speaking about the team, you when you were an OG and you came in and you know your first big tournament, you ended up winning TI. You used to be the young pub star. How is it like now playing with people like Pure and Nine Class who bring a lot of that young energy and their own new ideas? It's great. Having the having young people in team, they have a lot of energy and passion. So it's a uh, feel like it's much easier to play with younger younger players. Like uh, I feel like I'm just here to play the games, and they like, they're just doing the hard work. I'm just chilling. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. You just they're, get to pick great. sniper all the time, right? Makes it yeah. makes it nice and easy for you. Uh, just on that point, like uh, I feel like a lot of teams are letting you have this Chen sniper combination, and it seems kind of busted. You know, you just turn into a machine gun with the penitents, and you know, a fair few teams have let you have it now. Is that something that you thought up as a team, or is it something that you've just uh, identified in a few of your like uh, I just guess patch understandings? I mean, Chen is just a broken hero, so I have no. Not sure why people let us take it, but we'll happily take it every time. And uh, also, Sniper is one of our more popular picks. So then, of course, if we get them both together, it's going to look pretty good at least most times. Yeah, and, uh, yeah I, I don't know. I, I hope they let us pick it more often. I, I don't mind. Cool, cool. Uh, just on the, the tournament as well, with it being like the Swiss style, um, how are you feeling about it so far? Like, do you do you like the fact that we're playing a lot of Dota, what feels like really quickly, like lots of games every single day, as opposed to, you know, being stretched out over a longer period or even the risk of just like losing a couple of series and you're out? Um, what, what do you think about Swiss as a format overall? Mm, I mean, I didn't really think about it too much, but... Uh... I mean, I guess the only downside I have is that we don't know our opponent like only before, like just at the end of the day. So, and we don't know what time you're playing. So, like yesterday at like 11 p.m., we know that we're playing at like uh, 11 a.m. or something like. So, uh, so it's mm. uh, that's the only downside I have. But uh, other than that, I think it's been great. Uh, it, it's refreshing to have different uh, formats, and it's it's pretty good. Cool. Uh, that's all I had. Do you have any other questions, Epi? No questions from, from me. Thank you, Thompson, for coming through for your interview, and congratulations on that second best of three victory. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Right, So there you hear it, that folks. They are definitely going to pick themselves Chen once again. If it's not banned, you heard it there from Thompson. So all the teams, beware. <laughs> Chen might be coming for you if you don't ban it in the first stages. And Whitemon will be snatching that up there. But yes, yeah, a comfortable victory from Tundra Esports against Nygma. Yeah. I, I want to just touch on something that Topson said as well. I mean, he he mentioned that you only get, you know, a certain amount of time to be able to prepare for your next opponent because you're not 100% sure of who they are. I'd say it's a lot riskier to not know that you're going to be playing up against Tundra because their play style is just so different from so many different teams. They pick a lot more of these unorthodox heroes. They pick drafts like, you know, Sniper and Drow. Very few teams would think to be able to get away with something like that, but they seem to be able to make it work. Um, so, yeah, they had a little bit of a stumble against Heroic, like uh, Topson said, but they're back on the winning track. 2-1 and one now with the series, and they'll be playing again tomorrow. But that's all for our first series of the day. Now we move on to the second, which I believe is Team Secret taking on Blacklist Rivalry, one of those uh, mid matchups, I believe, which is a one-win-one-loss matchup. So again, same sort of stakes from what we just saw, right, Epi? Yep. Yeah. 
pretty much the same. So secret versus blacklist. Um, as you said uh, previously when we started the day, it feels like we are following uh, the journey right now throughout the entire stage of the Elite League. This is going to be the third time that we, we are viewing them here. So they did win themselves one game, but they also lost themselves one game. So secret, they did lose against Boom, which we thought that could be maybe potentially a 2-1 to either side. We weren't sure who would win, but it ultimately came down to Boom. But they did get themselves a 2-0 victory here versus Virtus Pro. But now they are indeed against Blacklist. And Blacklist, they did get a 2-1 versus OG, 2-0 versus Rest Farmers. So... I think maybe perhaps this next game is going to be quite even, but we will see. I, I, I'm not sure. What, what, what do you what do you think, Dado? Uh, I think so as well. I think Blacklist, they had a little bit of a rough time against OG, but OG are 2-0 now, so they're clearly not a bad team by any stretch, and they never really looked troubled at all against Rest Farmers. So clearly they are starting to hit their straps, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm keen to see what they're able to do against another one of these European opponents. Not too many times that uh, Blacklist get the chance to be able to play against Western European teams, and uh, we heard from... Who was it? It was it was 23 Savage, right? That said Blacklist are the team to watch in Southeast Asia. I'm not sure if how much of that was just trying to take the attention off of himself and Aurora and put it a little bit onto them, but uh, it is certainly a good endorsement coming through. So uh, we will need to prep for that. We'll be back in a few minutes after a very short break. So stick around. We got more Dota to come right after this.
Hello everybody, welcome back to the Elite League with myself and Dan Og. We've just come out of the first series of the day, which was Nygma Galaxy versus Tundra Esports. And Tundra, they were able to take themselves a clean 2-0 victory here, defeating Nygma Galaxy. But now we're coming in for the second series of the day, and that is Secret versus Blacklist, which... Me and Dan are kind of itching our heads as to who's going to be winning this one. We're quite uncertain here, so it makes for a more interesting game as to who will be coming out on top. Dan, how are you feeling about the second one? Feeling pretty excited. I, I haven't had too many chances to see Palos playing with uh, Blacklist either. Obviously, he was uh, a big part of Execration for quite some time, In the if you're following the SEA region. And Blacklist had a little bit of a revolving door situation with what uh, player they played in their POS1 role over the past few months. For now, they've sailed on Palos, and clearly they feel like they're able to make it work with this uh, full Filipino roster. He certainly has the potential to be a really high level carry i just see him getting caught out a little bit too much uh a lot of the time the time that i've seen him play his best was when he was playing alongside mushi and he was really able to you know crack the whip and say no you need to be here right now uh, and i gotta say for the rest of the blacklist team they've got some experienced veterans that are going to be able to you know kind of treat him a similar sort of way you just have a look at the roster overall you've got Abed, you've got gabby you've got tims these are really experienced names in the international dota scene by this point and with their experience have their games been going well so far like not just in elite league but um across dota for the last couple of months have they been doing okay uh, I was casting a tournament where Blacklist actually were able to take out the win uh, over in the Philippines on LAN against other Southeast Asian teams, and they did it pretty comfortably. Um, so again, that was just against other sea. This is a different kettle of fish altogether. So, you know, like we've been saying, it's uh, hard just with how close overall C is to even get out of the qualifiers so that you're playing in the likes of, you know, your your Dream Leagues or your, your Falachias or whatever it is. But I'm happy to see them here in the Elite League. They were able to get the win against the rest farmers as we see them there all on the screen. Uh, that is not Palace in the, in the position one seat. That is indeed Coach Dubu who has moved over. And uh, I, I like the fact that Dubu is going to coach because he always seems like he's just this fountain of knowledge. And Secret, on the other hand, they've been having themselves an okay time here. I mean, Boom even coming in with an interview that we heard on the on the first day of the Elite League Swiss stage where he was saying that they've been having themselves some unfortunate games, but they're quite happy to be coming back here and learning from mistakes that they've had in the past and starting to shape up here. If they can possibly win themselves this second series, I feel, on Secret, it could be that just that morale boost that they are needing to... Uh, get themselves further within the Elite League here and possibly get through the Swiss stage. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and something that these two teams do have in common is that they have, like, uh, a little bit of blend in players. Obviously, you've got, um, like I just mentioned, Dubu, coach of Blacklist, coming from the NA region for the majority of... Uh, I would say his main successes were with, uh, you know, the NA region. Then you've got, obviously, Team Secret, who are living up to Team Secret, with uh, a few Southeast Asian representatives coming through there. And then you've even got MJZ in the POS5 role for, um, for Blacklist, right? So giving a completely different perspective, uh, a different understanding of the, the meta. And I feel like... Um, I think I heard Ice 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 talking about it once, where he said C lacks position 5s that know how to, like close out a game and uh, I think that's what a, a lot of teams really need so maybe they've identified MJZ as someone that has a pretty good understanding of that and is able to bring a different perspective from what they're used to as now we have ourselves a draft underway which is coming out straight away so hopefully we'll have that for you very soon but just to say that Secret have indeed picked themselves up some Starbucks and got themselves some extra amenities within the team and distributing them out so hopefully they should be in a pretty good position all happy stomachs filled and in a good position to play game one. But let's see how this turns out as I think we're just getting into the ban stages. Yes, we are. Ban stages yes. are coming out at the moment. Currently, it's only Razor who gets banned up by Blacklist and Secret. They will ban out the Primal straight away. Is Primal something that Blacklist play quite a lot here? 
Yeah, I mean, it's something that Abed has been really strong on in recent times. Gabby's very comfortable playing it as well. A little surprised that they got rid of the Razor. I honestly feel like that's the sort of thing that uh, they can really lean into a fair amount. No surprises there with the Chen ban, though. It just feels way too strong at this stage of the game. You can overrun people before they're able to respond to it. Uh, I'm, I'm wondering what they want to have for Palace, right? Like, his main heroes for mine are like... They, they fit the meta pretty damn well. When I think Palace, I think Morphling, I think Lifestealer, and I think Luna. Those are his big three, and those are really, really top-tier heroes right now. So, you know, sometimes it can be you've just got a, a player that fits the team very well, and sometimes you can just have a patch that fits a player very well. And, you know, the performance... Oh, we've got a Ricky Morrow on the team. Uh, we, we, we sometimes get a patch that just suits someone's particular play style and hero pool, and that can result in, you know, some... Uh, some overperformances, perhaps, but uh, you know, any sort of win is going to give them a lot of confidence to be able to go deeper into this tournament. Final ban comes out to be Life Stealer here for Blacklist Team Secret. One more ban before we get into their first pick here. Uh, I remember when we used to see ourselves some Centaurs and Timber Saws quite a lot here for the first pick. Will it be kind of different? Do you think for Secret and Blacklist? What do they, do you know? What they tend to pick up first pick here? I, it's always just going to be flex for the most part across all teams. I think the one exception that you see is like maybe a Crystal Maiden to be able to start things off just because you mm -hmm. can secure a solid laning stage most of the time. And it's just strong for that first 30 minutes of the game. And when you think about it, if you don't get past the first 30 minutes, you're not going to have a late game anyway. So the fact that she falls off a little bit past that stage, it's not the worst. Um, but yeah, there oh, you go, right. flex. I, I like it. Four or five, doesn't really matter. You can influence lames very effectively, and you've got that late game presence. And we just saw Nine Class put on an MVP performance playing this hero. Twenty-four stacks. I still can't believe that. that that's going to be in my head for uh, like the entirety of this weekend. Getting that many stacks. That's absolutely insane. Yeah. No. It's. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I was honestly a little, little stunned by it as well. I don't think I've ever seen that high. The highest I've seen has been like fourteen. I think. Like. Well, I remember, like, going back, I, I even mentioned it, like, every time that they were getting the, um, you know, Pure was getting the stacks, it felt like every time there was a stack there. Now I can see why, because you go to the scoreboard and see 24 stacks. Seems a little bit like from what happened uh, in Game 2, though, with Secret and Blacklist. They get themselves the Batrider. In return, Shadow Demon comes out. So we've seen these heroes in Game 1 and Game 2. Just the previous series that we saw of Nigma versus Tundra. So Shadow Demon quite nice with the disruption, able to save against Lasso, but of course the Bat Rider. It could be any position, but usually it's a a support position four or five. Yeah, I would imagine so. Uh, and as well, just with the Shadow Demon and the Bat Rider, these are probably the two premier stackers that exist right now. I think the only ones that might potentially rival them are like. Coddle and sometimes Phoenix, just being able to use these spells from quite a long range to be able to get some stacks off fairly frequently. So I, I think they fulfill a lot of similar sorts of uh, niches, I guess, at least in terms of their presence on lane, as well as their stacking potential. But obviously Shadow Demon, much more of a defensive style, Batrider, much more offensive. So uh, Blacklist are obviously going, feel like they've got a response to this, and they've got the last pick overall. So I feel like the fact that they didn't have first pick, they're going to be feeling pretty happy with the draft so far. Oh, and just look at these classic offlaners being banned here too. Secret banning out not only the Centaur, but the Dragon Knight as well. They are both gone. And the final ban will come out for Blacklist. So they only have themselves one ban. What will they ban out? Surprised we haven't seen too much more of the Mars this game, uh, this tournament so far, actually, at least in the games that we've been casting. I feel yeah, like it's really fun. solid, uh, especially on someone like Gabby that likes to be able to transition into being that legitimate carry in the later stages of the game. Obviously, with Mars, it's a little bit harder now since the change to the Revenant's brooch, with it not being able to be affected by crit. But still, uh, you know, good setup with the Shadow Demon to be able to much more easily land those spears and... I mean, ever since the change to the uh, arena as well, it just becomes so much easier to land those spear into arena combinations with very little possibility for reaction time. Okay, so it's the Pangolier that gets banned and an instant pick here. Blashrak. 
Now, th this is something that Team Secret do like to pick up quite a lot here, so I don't know if that's a deny pick here, or possibly Blacklist like to play it quite a lot too, and make it a flex. It's just a great hero. It's just a great hero, it's man. I mean, like I mentioned, Shadow Demon makes a lot of stacks. He Lash, great at taking stacks, so why wouldn't you want to have this? And I feel like one of the main counters to the Lashrak is the Shadow Demon. Just being able to pop the uh, the Demonic Purge onto him means that he's not going to be able to yours, he's not going to be able to run at you quite as easily, and they've already got that themselves, so I think they should be feeling very happy with these first two picks on Blacklist. It's just a matter of now of how do you respond to this? Do you try and crush it in the lane? Do you go like a relatively early leaner against this just to be able to, you know, outrange the Lushrak? Don't take as much of the uh, the harassment coming through from him. And you've even got that great burst potential where a Shadow Demon might not be able to save you in time. Oh, so a Marana coming out again. Okay. So we saw Marana in game two, with mm. Kuroki playing it. Uh, not not it too did... many arrows hit that game, I yeah. gotta say. That's the, the big downside to that, even with something like a, uh, a Shadow Demon uh, setting up for you. This is the offlane Tiny that I was yep. waiting to see for quite some time. So they have a lot of burst damage now and a lot of stun set up. So it could be Lasso into Arrow, it could be uh, Avalanche Toss into Arrow it's a lot of magic damage that you're going to have to deal with. So I almost want to see them go into some sort of hero that they feel confident in building a pipe this game for Blacklist, just because you're going to have to deal with this early on. Yeah, Tiny here on the offlane is so great. Uh, people starting to reveal that now. Um, I, I remember someone called it a new technology here with the Tiny being offlane. But I, I mean, you got to agree with the calendar on Tiny. Well, along with the blink as well, I think you can deal like something stupid, like a thousand magical damage if you get avalanche and toss with Kanda. It's absolutely nuts, and then you got the Agnes stupid, as well. Yeah. yeah, they they get themselves up the Crystal Maiden though that you did mention that comes out on the third pick here for Blacklist. A strong support here. Mm -hmm. Just a strong landing support, right, against this tiny in particular. As okay, oh, this is the other hero that I actually didn't mention in terms of. Palace's comfort heroes. It feels like great to be able to just give him a signature faceless void. He's going to have a good time in the lane because he's obviously set up by the Crystal Maiden. And even just the, um, I'm assuming he's going up against the Batrider. Time dilation, really value against this one here. Puppy is by far the one that plays more of the, um, the Marana for Team Secret. Yeah, gotta be careful though with Faceless Void. I mean, he, he, even though he's uh, he's a he's a nice carry. I, I, I'm looking at the picks here from Secret, Tiny Marana, and Batrider, Lasso, Arrow. Um, you've got Arrow to work with Lasso and the Avalanche and Toss too. So you do actually have yourself some chain stuns that are needed in order to take down this Faceless Void, so that he can't use the Time Walk. And they might pick something else up here to further synergize with the heroes that they already have on Secret here. So they do indeed have themselves the save though with Shadow Demon coming out, so there always is that in order to save, but an Avalanche and Toss, um, if, it, if it's quick and on point, and if they get themselves a nuke hero here on Secret, I think they do have the possibility of taking down this Faceless Void quickly. And, and they do get themselves this Blink Dagger quite early on as well, on Tiny Offlane, so that's another thing to worry about, and Shadow Demon can't be absolutely following Faceless Void everywhere, but a Terror Blade comes out. Okay. I mean, it's, it's more early game, and it means that you're not really threatened by Faceless Void himself, Obviously, CM Shadow Demon, they don't exactly do a ton of burst magic damage, and you've got a lot of stuns, for example, to be able to interrupt a freezing field. So you might think, oh, Lashrak is actually, a, you know, tons of magic damage. TP hates that. But when you've got all these stuns to be able to stop a Lash prior to him having the BKB, that makes it a whole lot more challenging. And of course, you are a Skadi builder naturally, and that's going to be great against the Lashrak just to be able to slow you down quite effectively, reduce some of that uh, HP regen coming through from the Bloodstone. Uh, mm -hmm. I like this TB pick a lot. Yeah, you get yourself a BKB. We've we've already mentioned this before about how he is like the the cherry on top Scaddy builder. He he will always get himself Scaddy, especially in a game like this against Lashrak. Because I I think you also mentioned that one of the items which Lashrak heavily depends on is the Bloodstone in order to sustain in the fights. So you have yourself this Eye of Scaddy reducing those life steal heals. Then it's going to be massive. And you've got yourself the range to keep away from Lashrak too with the Metamorphosis. I wonder if they go something crazy like a Darkseer here for Gabby. I feel like it's the sort of thing where he might just put a lot of value into 
getting value out of the Terra Blade. You get a little bit of extra movement speed for the Lashrak, considering they don't have a Dispel at this point in time. Uh, you don't have a melee hero to play around with in the lane, which never feels that great, but on an Ion Shell against a TB in lane feels really nice, just because you're not able to... Like, you, you're basically forced to pop the meta. I mean, Timber would have been great as well, but... Um, I think a Darkseer as well as like a natural aura builder. Uh, I mentioned them needing a pipe, but I still feel like that. Ooh, sniper! Oh, secret! Not the, the sniper. not the Lena that I was thinking uh, going up into <laughs> the Shrek, but kind of fitting a similar sort of niche, right? Yeah, I mean they have themselves the front line here on Tiny. I I, I feel like they can get away with the sniper pick because of. The fact that um, we're always going to get a Blink Dagger initiation. I, I know I keep on going on about this Tiny quite a lot. I, I'm just a big fan of the hero, with especially the fact that his strength gain is amazing. Like, he will come out, um, what, 15, 20 minutes with 2,000 HP plus? And... I think you're just excited to see an offlane Tiny, to be honest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay, I'm a little bit biased. <laughs> <laughs> tiny offlane. But yeah, the sniper, um, the only catch that they have from what we can see is the chrono on faceless void. Maybe perhaps if we get ourselves a blink dagger on shadow demon, then they can use an offensive. Maybe the Mars disruption. Again? Yeah. Oh, there it is. Okay, there we go. Now we have ourselves a second catch along with control here too. It's absolutely amazing here, Mars, with the arena because of course that stops projectiles coming into the arena or out of the arena so even if you catch cordon within the arena or not in the arena when you're trying to kill someone else it's very very good to stop him from dealing the damage with that arena yeah definitely also like this was a hero that we were considering first pick overall for blacklist rivalry right just for for gabby to have a really confident lane for himself uh i'm i'm on board with it i i see that it can work they've got set up for the hour uh, for the spear like i was saying you've mentioned all the pluses about having the arena as well and even just their area control is really good on blacklist rivalry right like you you drop the mars or the chronosphere lashrak could just go to town so i, I honestly like both of these drafts i think this is going to be a banger of a game epi yeah, hopefully it'll be a lot closer compared to the uh, the last series that we had. That was, that was finished by, what, 26 minutes game one, I think it was? Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it, was well, not, be... uh, it was not the most competitive, I'll have to say that. I think no. this will be a different story. Like, you, you have a lot of uh, aggression that is going to mostly be focused around Arbed, especially for, uh, for Blacklist, right? Like, he is the one that you're going to be needing to make plays around with just because these supports... Don't really do much. They're there to make stacks. They're there to make sure that you get out of the laning stage in a decent enough spot. And Shadow Demon in particular is to save from the um, from the Batrider first and foremost, right? So, uh, yeah. I, I'm if I was to say I was concerned about anything, it's just the fact that they don't have anyone that really wants to build into the uh, the pipe that I was wanting. But I guess they've since then gone for a TB and a Sniper, two heroes that really don't do the most uh, magic damage. It's basically all physical, so maybe they feel like they don't need it, considering, you know, it's just one offlaner and two supports worth of uh, damage, and better to just get BKBs on the cores that need them. So with that in mind, do you feel like Blacklist have the better draft here compared to Secret? I, I honestly can't tell. I very rarely don't put my... Uh... <laughs> my prediction on the line but I, I think these are two pretty even drafts to be honest the, the one thing i guess that i would be a little worried about from blacklist perspective is just this support duo not being able to do enough damage to take advantage of some of these early ultimates or when the shrak is trying to push and they're hitting some relatively strong timings maybe you just get burst 100 to zero because of the relative lack of control from secrets end uh i feel like it's a pretty good faceless void game uh, i'm also feeling yeah. like if you do get a few of these early towers, you're going to have a lot of heroes that want to be farming a lot, and you're not going to have too much map control to be able to do so. So, um, if I had to really put it out there, maybe a very slight lead to secret, but I, I'm I'm pumped for this one. Was well, meanwhile speaking of secret, we'll be close there. We'll have to level the leap and already using two charges to get away, and they actually find themselves three bounty runes here on secret. Pretty nice. Mm -hmm. I like this from Palace as well. Like he, he gets away, and even just when he's standing underneath a tower for that extra one HP regen that it gives, he's uh, backpacking all of his stats items so that he just gets back that uh, that HP a little bit quicker. Not even needing to use a tango for it. So I appreciate the small things. I think even with having a Crystal Maiden on lane to kind of protect 
the spaceless void, I, I still think that they could most likely get themselves a kill if they play it well. Because you have got two abilities here which affect the control of heroes. So you've got yourself the pass, which can throw back a hero, and you've also got yourself the flame breaks. So even if Pass decides to try and time walk away, then obviously mm. the flame break bringing them back. And already, look at the damage being outputted here on this face. It's already, already using time walk there. It was a really early time walk usage that I was a little worried about for him, just to be able to, you know, contest up against, like you said, a lot of that burst damage that they've got on that bottom side of the map. MJZ, he of course doesn't have the uh, the time warp for himself, so he's going to be in a little bit more of a risky position, but I think they're going to be happy enough if he just keeps securing range creeps. He's two for two so far, so I think he should be fairly happy. Actually, Palace is the one to get the pull off as we look up on the top lane. Uh, pretty standard, right? I, I don't think there's going to be too much kill threat coming for Chrysalis here unless he steps really far out of position and Gabby is able to spear him as far back as possible. Puppy is just trying to pump a little bit of that harassment into the Shadow Demon, and well, none of them... Oh no, they do have a, a magic stick right now. They would love to be able to just take out the uh, effectiveness of having those Shadow Poisons. Is Tidus actually... He's going to let this camp spawn? No, he gets there just in time. Offu getting pretty close there, trying to apply some more pressure here to this bottom lane. And... Meanwhile, top Gabby falling very low there with the use of metamorphosis coming out for Crystallis. Action happening on the uh, side lanes here. Massively pressure from either side. How's mid going? Arbed's actually getting peeped a little bit here by Corden. Uh, yeah, slight lead, I would say, to the sniper, but uh, I mean, with both water runes being taken already, one of them, of course, denied by Corden means that he's going to need to be forced back a little bit. He's trying his best to body block the wave so that he's not in a dangerous position for Corden to be able to punish. Well, maybe if Gabby's able to heal up, then they can try something with a disruption and then spearing back Chrysalis, because there's no more metamorphosis anymore. Oh, who gets the Lotus? Oh, it's Puppy. Everyone went for that Lotus pool then, four people. What's, yeah, they're going to look to try and make something happen, maybe at level 3 on this bottom side of the map. Right now, MJZ hasn't gone the second point, uh, second level, excuse me, in the Arcane Aura, which we see a lot of CMs do these days. As there we go, they make the move. Avalanche. And trying to get the Firefly underneath, find the kill, but in return... Well, nice aggro swap there from Boom, so off who will be okay and not take too much damage there from that tower. Avalanche coming off cooldown again soon. Maybe perhaps they can find a kill here, actually, on Spell. I mean, he does have himself time walk. Nah, he should be fine. Yeah. He had Fairy Fire and the Magic Wand. Oddly enough, not giving the Healing Lotus over to MJZ as he was being dived under that tower, which I thought was a little odd. Uh, Palace? Whoa! Palace? Whoa! That, 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 that's what I mean. I, I thought, you know, if he got himself a hit with the, the with the tree and then threw the tree grab with the avalanche, I mean, he thought that they could, you know, do some damage there to Boom, but Boom just uh, baits them in and gets a free kill there onto Faceless. So, brought it out with the level two avalanche. I, mean, I think every game you get, let's say, two, three at tops, like bad deaths on the carry. And that was one that you've already expended while the laning stage is still there. Boom already doing a fantastic job just in terms of last hits in this lane. He's built up a 500 net worth lead. I want to dive onto Gordon. Split Earth comes down. Actually level two points into that. Will they find the kill though onto Sniper? Yes, they will. Abed no getting lower and lower. Does have a fairy fire. Will not use it. So both of the mid lanes will fall here. Now Poppy attempting to maybe perhaps try and find Tim's here. Middle doesn't want to use too many of those leap charges. Yeah. He's just going to take his time to stack instead. Wanting to beat Nine Class's record of, what was it, 24 stacks? Yeah, that was uh, shit. silly. Send a message out to Knoxville just to see if anyone has stacked more than 24. The old stats guru. And uh, I, I yeah, like we... you said, multiple points in the split earth, right? No points in the yeah. edit right now. For Arbit, so clearly he's focusing a lot more on this laning stage, and it's kind of a little bit about uh, what I was saying with um, 
you don't really have people to play with with your uh, Diabolic Edict to have that tower pressure as he might be able oh to get gosh, the skill onto Gordon. Gordon. Look at that, yeah, yeah, as you said. Focusing on the laning stage and with that they get it, so I, I, I guess that's why you level the, uh, the Split Earth if you want to do really well during the laning stage. And they actually may be able to turn around here with another Split Earth, able to avoid the Sacred Arrow there, the Pulse Nova coming out. Well, they found the kill into onto Arfu, Arfu will be okay. Blood grenade being committed down to MJZ. MJZ is okay. Oh, here comes the tree. Oh, the tree. And denied nice to deny. the neutrals. The mud golems get the kill. Very, very nicely done. And they get the uh, power rune secured up on this top side. So nice oh. leaning stage performance coming up from Arbed here. Maybe they get a kill onto Afu. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Here comes the split earth. Kaboom. Kill onto the bat. And a kill for Arbed again. He is having a great time here on the Lashrek. Mm -hmm. And he's even going to be able to click up, clear up this bounty rune as well on the top side. So plenty of stuff to be able to play around with. I'm really quite surprised. I mean, we, we, we spoke about this before. I think I asked uh, a while back. It's like, when would you ever put points into the split earth? So we saw Corden play it last time, and he put loads of into the uh, the Diabolic Edict and the Lightning Storm. But he didn't even level split earth. This is quite the opposite here from Arbed. Leveling yeah, I... two points. I, I think the thing is... Oh, hold on. We might run into Poppy again. Oh Maybe more kills perhaps coming. No uh, more leap charges. leap charges. One left. Uh, he's okay. Um, yeah, like, in order to use this edict to its fullest potential to be able to take towers, you need to put yeah. yourself in a really risky position, right? And you just need to consider the heroes that you're going up against. Like, right, okay. Sniper, able to dish out so much damage from range. Avatos combo, dangerous. Lasso yeah. potential, dangerous. Like, it, it's a lot of stuff that you just don't have the ability to withstand right now. So why not just focus on the lane? It just feels like uh, the simpler way to be able to play. Okay, is, is this where we should see Abed now start to put all his points into the Diabolic Edicts? Because I presume he wants to rotate around and take towers now, right? So I think two points and three points into Lightning Storm is enough. Yeah, I think that's fine. There's uh, well, solo kill there from Afu onto MJZ. Uh, I, I think so. Like, laning stage is done, right? So there's no real point seeking to dominate that too much further. And you'll probably be reaching the time that your supports are feeling a little bit stronger as well. Gabby, just quietly, has been having quite a solid lane. Ooh, Abed just able to dodge that one out. And he gets a regen. Oh yeah, my absolutely. gosh. It's tower taking time. Second point in the Diabolic Edict gets put up. You've got the Arena of Blood available on this top side as well, so I wouldn't be surprised to see him make a move up to this top side after he takes this big stack of camps. Yeah, Abed prayed to some kind of deity before this game began here, just to get that regen rune. That's going to help them actually take this Gets the fairy trinket stack. as well. Oh my gosh. Gives his entire team a ton of neutral items. Like, this is a huge power spike for Blacklist rivalry. Yeah. That regen go. helps Moving so straight much. up towards top. Mm -hmm. It's basically going to have full value here. He still had the pulse nova going while he was running. Just getting a little bit greedy, perhaps. But this should be a tower secured for themselves. Unless we see some TPs come back, but I'm just not sure with Afu barely short of being able to have the uh, XP for the Flaming Lasso if they want to defend this one. They're actually going hunting right now, trying to find Crystalis. Nice Observer Ward that's going to scout him out. Oh. Well, they just set up here with a Disruption. They will split her Falcon down. He does have himself the Sunder, so can uh, turn it around. Yep, Ahmed. Sunder comes out. Metamorphosis is there. Arena, though, comes out from Gabby. Gonna get back around and deleting Chrysalis on the terrible. Here. So here comes Arfu. With the lasso. Arfu wants himself Abed. Stop. He split this, but Abed he's still fine for the time being. As no avalanche he's getting lower and lower. He may be found. Yet the avalanche comes up there. So Secret will get a return kill. They will avenge Chrysalis. Do get Abed. Yep. I think. I think again. You took out the Terrorblade who is kind of like the bane of your existence as the uh, the Lashrak, right? It wasn't him that got the kill. Tim's ended up being the one to claim it up. But again, it doesn't really matter all that much. You're just trying to slow down this TB's timings so that he can't get into the Dragonlands. He can't get into that Eye of Scardi that's going uh -oh. to make your life a whole lot more challenging. Corden. Corden. Yeah, he was speared there. Now the Frostbite comes out. He is in some trouble. In comes Palace with a rotation. Chrono's here is ready. He could, could just commit it here onto Poppy. He's going... No, he will not be able to the leap. A leap is there. 
Don't know if they'll be able to protect this tower though. Looks like Gabby just wants to Dyer's cut the wave. Count. You've Zone got uh, Abed up here with Dyer's two points? Three points in the Diabolic Edicts. Are they gonna just oh, Chrono? Yeah, I, I think it's yeah. worth. Let's Earth? Oh no, he's too far away. Uh, well, it's it's oh, worth if they get the fear. kill. <laughs> fear misses. Afu. They go to the low ground. Oh, the oh, God's Rebu misses there too. Oh. Time walks forward though. That should be a kill. Yeah, there we go. Actually goes to Tim's, interestingly, there with the Shadow Poison. We'll find the tail on tower top two. Yep. So again, they were able to make something happen. They were able to get multiple uh, objectives, not just a hero kill, but a tower as well. So while it might have taken a little bit longer than it probably should have, they, uh, they still get the objective that they need. And Gabby, he is off to an absolute flyer. 14, uh, sorry, 1400 net worth ahead of the TB from that lane. Don't really see any reason for Abed to just not walk mid. Like maybe he's going to be watching out for where Afu is. That's why Afu is not immediately like TPing out to anywhere. He wants to have that TP response available to wherever the Lashrak ends up pushing. Right now Abed yeah. just sitting inside the ancient camp, so not really going to reveal himself anywhere, but he is still in that slightly vulnerable period, at least until he picks up this uh, the Sanj for the full Kaya Sanj. As net width wise, uh, how the carry's doing? Uh, they're pretty close to each other here. Awesome, uh, terrible. Who do you think comes out carry wise though? Terrible or faceless during late game? Or is it kind of hard to say? <laughs> I think it's kind of hard to say, especially as well, like at that stage, CM might dish out a decent amount of damage oh. as Palos, he gets focused. Toss, last oh, no, note they missed. Not, does not mark. Just a little bit of panic coming through there, MJZ dropping the freezing field, making a little bit more chaos. And yeah, that's a, that's a big kill missed out on for sure. You would have loved to be able to try and slow down Palos' game a little bit, take away Dyer's that tier 1 tower, but won't be successful. I think they could go something again though, Danog. They have a blink dagger on the way for boom, so this blink dagger reveal, they could do something with it with the uh, level four avalanche. So coming out right now. So oh. maybe it'll be Blacklist that end up making that move. Oh, the there we go. being drawn on the map. That's where MJZ says we need to try and invade. We need to see if they oh, built okay. up any stacks for Cordon to be able to pick up, and they're right. I'm just a little worried about Gabby's mana pool, but he's got a clarity being pumped in right now. Oh, th this smoke might break actually between uh, both teams here. Ooh, ooh, he's pretty ooh, close, smoke break. broken. Oh, neither of them want to jump in with a blink tag and just <laughs> immediately backing off there. Secret obviously wanting to play to their advantage. They've got good coverage of Observer Wards on both sides of that mid lane, so now that they know that they're not inside the smoke, they've got that uh, that way to be able to find the better side of the engagements, especially with that fresh Blink Dagger on Boom. Like, have a toss back into a lasso. It feels, feels like a guaranteed kill. Yeah, who really goes first here on the job? Neither team actually want to initiate there in case anything just goes bad. Oh, they found the plus off who? He's okay. Chronos stay ready. Boom, rotating down below here with a blink. So, perhaps if uh, Alice shows they could get a kill, but Gabby also here with a blink. Gabby's there. Maybe he they wants go to be for able the to jump. get that. Well, Arena, here is that. Chronos stay ready. They could Chrono too. Avalanche comes out in return. Rotation now from Crystalis with the Metamorphosis. Chrono is there. Palos has nice to be careful. Field. Boom is still okay for some time. Palos will time walk away. This fear. Boom is still alive, but he may fall here from the Shadow Poison. They do find Abed though there in return. Tim's getting incredibly low. Assassinate onto the Crystal Maiden. MJZ is down a long <laughs> Double assassinate from Corden. Oh, that's what you like. The refresh when you get a kill with the assassinate. Another assassinate coming in. Boom onto Gabby, but Gabby will get the kill with Boom actually still hanging around here in the team fight. Actually blinks oh. away from Chris Bliss, trying to find him there with the metamorph. This radiance. Okay. He blinked north. He blinked north. That was so crazy from Gabby. <laughs> Just the balls on this man to be able to go past. They're still hunting for him. They think he's down here. He's completely broken their ankles. He doesn't have a TP though, so it might be a bit of a challenge to actually get out as yeah, they spot him while it is still one second of daytime, but once again, Gabby gets his way out. Does Tim's get out though? Uh, the assassinate's ready. Corden not gonna commit it though. 
I mean, that was a uh, an OS frog moment with the uh, the assassinate refresh. Another assassinate coming in, and boom, he gets another one. Radiant's bottom tower has fallen. This feels a little easier to confirm a lot of these kills, Radiant right? And well, Arbit's making a bit of a rotation oh. towards there. They're trying to try and get a pick off onto Cord. Yeah, they'll finally great get some spear attack. again. That's a dead sniper, and that's a lot of gold going the way of Abed. Five hundred gold. Actually choosing to farm the creep camps instead of going into mid and helping out that uh, that siege creep potentially take the tier 1 tower. Maybe feeling like the creeps can do the job on their own. That is a very deep farming position by Palos. Really wanting to bait out multiple movements towards this top side to potentially open up the bottom. But no one took the bait outside of Chrysalis knowing that he couldn't die. Honestly, even if he did have the, uh, the Chronosphere available, still not enough damage for Palos to be able to deal with the TV. So, uh, so... Um, satisfying watching those assassinates. There goes one. <laughs> there goes two. Oh, both for the support. So dumb. There. Yeah, yeah. That's some OS frog stuff right there. Oh, and it's going to happen a lot more going into the Ags next. 1500 gold away is Corden. So he just wants to make sure he's building that one up. He's going to have level 2 assassinate after this camp. And Lycan Puppy's positioning as well, realizing that this is some area that Blacklist have been consistently trying to invade. And with the Tier 1 tower, it's going to be a little bit easier to continue to protect Corden. Mm -hmm. This early purchase up of the, uh, the Aghanim Shard for Puppy as well just makes it that much easier to quickly clear out oh, a lot I mean of these spit. creepers. Alfu is dead. Alos gets the kill. Nicely done. We have ourselves Boom, who's hmm. covered here by the Moonlight I... Shadow. You want to go for Timbs? I want to see Palos rotate top here. Yeah, go through the Twin Gate. You see Crystalis farming underneath Vision for now, so you know exactly where he is. And you've got Arbed, who now has plenty of farm to be able to take him out if you're able to get a good use of that Chronosphere. But Palos revealing on the lane might force Crystalis to make the uh, direct move away from him, and that he does. He's moving as far away from that Faceless Void and Lashrak as possible. Oh, wow. Okay, yeah. Combining all of those There's spells that together. Combo. Yeah. <laughs> Avalanche and Toss, Secret Arrow, and Assassinate. That was... I mean, the Courier took such a weird path as well for, for Palos, so he's not going to have the Yasha available for this... That's not even a fight. They're just going to take this tower for free. A little worried for Blacklist, considering they haven't been able to take advantage of Arbeds having a, a pretty good start to the game. And it's really only, I guess, two towers, and the th sec the mid-tier one is very low. But I was expecting at, last, at least that one to be opened up by this point. It's still looking pretty even between both teams here. If we have a look at the net worth, just... A little bit less gold here for Boom, but I don't think he minds here. I mean, as long as he has himself blink with level 4 and Avalanche and Toss, then can still look for something here. Maybe perhaps pick off MJZ. Or is he actually going for Palos here? Once we get the Avalanche and Toss with a Sacred Arrow, it will connect the rotation coming in. Oh, the Star Storm, it will actually be enough. Puppy gets the kill, but in return, Boom will fall here from the Freezing Field along with that Diabolic Edict there too. That was a beautiful pickoff coming out there from Steve. I think it was Poppy's uh, shard. Yeah, the shard uh, attack. The, the leap damage actually did 120 damage to the Faceless Void, and that was what ended up killing him. Very nicely done by him, just to be able to work that one out, guarantee that he got the double Star Storm onto him. They're looking to try and pick another one, but Afu's positioned very aggressively. It's going to get picked off quite easily, even wasting the Moonlight Shadow out of that one as well. So. I mean, no Faceless Void to be able to make plays with for now. Maybe they'll feel overly confident to make an aggressive move themselves on Radiant Secret, knowing that there's no arena, but you've still got that Chronosphere available. And I feel like it's worth committing Faceless Void just for a little bit onto this mid lane to open it up for that Tier 1 tower. It really isn't going to take that much time to be able to take it out. But once again, they're just looking to try and invade, take away this farm that Corden has. But Puppy's positioning has just Radiant been on point scanning. at all stages. Oh my gosh. Oh, it leaps away, avoid. He's yeah, been MVP so far. Him or Gabby. Like, Puppy's just been the perfect support this game. Really solid in the laning stage. Constantly getting away from ganks. No deaths so far. And he's popped like two separate smokes now. Yeah. And got a kill onto the end. Oh! 
Aggressive last though, finding Abed. Lovely stuff from Arfu as now they'll attempt to try and take down Tim's here. Gabby able to PP away there with a BKB. They will find two here though on secret. It's possibly three as Crystal Maiden stunned up there by the assassinate. Double kill for Crystalis. Was not expecting that blink initiation there from Arfu with the lasso. They were not indeed. They just get turned around upon as soon as that smoke attempt again fails. They've just got that increased level of vision. They even get a D-Ward off from Puppy as well. And that's what having that tier 1 tower up mid, it's gone now, so obviously it's going to become a little bit better for Blacklist. That tier 1 tower being up means that all of your smoke movements are a whole lot more predictable. Like, you can't go through that left-hand side of the uh, the high ground ward because the tower is probably going to, to pick you up, right? And it also means that your movements have to be a little slower. So Puppy was just in the perfect spot for where they were going to be moving. He picks them off and, yeah, another great team fight going the way of Secret. Yeah, that was uh, great. That even caught me by surprise. I wonder how uh, Blacklist felt when our food linked in for the Arbad was just going to be able to get away squeaky clean there, but turned out not, and they actually get themselves three kills out of that. And then Aya Scaddy mm. now obtained on the Terrorblade in 21 minutes with this Yasha. So I'm not finishing the, uh, the Manta style here, just going straight into the Aya Scaddy with the Dragon Lance. That's definitely going to help out Swords. Out Epi, we're about shrimp. to have some five-man Dota coming up here. Like, oh, here we go. Oh, Lasso again. Ah, but, I mean, the secret arrow does not connect, but slow down here. Disruption got is there. Just got his Just got delivered. Ahmed is dead, yep. Yeah. We will find a Chrono, though, one to two. Arena is ready. Lovely spear there onto the Terrorblade. Stopping the usage there of Sunder as they turn it around. I'm likely finding themselves two, possibly three going on. At oh, ah, foo. Taken out. They will lose three there. So Blacklist, how about not having the greatest time, but they're able to punish this and say, you're not going to get away with this again, as they find themselves free to the lovely turnaround there from Blacklist. Gabby is saving Blacklist right now. Like, what an arena to be able to interrupt that. The Chrono, I thought, came a little bit late. You actually had the potential to live there on Arbet. I know how crazy that seems, considering he was on 200 HP by the time he was put inside the Disruption, but he freshly had that Bloodstone delivered while he was inside the Disruption. So, had the potential to turn on the Bloodstone as long as he just didn't get that initial tiny burst of damage coming through, but wasn't able to get it just there. I mean, a, a double spear, I think that was. Nope, just single. He doesn't have the shard yet on the Mars, but he's got it in his quick buy. So, I mean, he's been playing really well, and it looks like he can just look to emphasize that even further. Yeah, I love this at the fact that Puppy, you know, he, he said he's been MVP right now. Um, I love the fact that he's got himself a spirit vessel here, too, that he's had for quite a while. I, I think in that fight he was able to actually apply it onto Abed. I'm not sure. He did say he himself the Bloodstone. Hmm. I'm not... it, it was at the very end that he had the Bloodstone. No, I think it was Tiny's Avalanche that ended up getting the kill onto ah. the Lesh. Wasn't able to um, get too much of that HP back yet. Level 15 on the Marana. That's uh, leveling the same as uh, Oz here at the moment. Actually, a higher level than Boom. Wow. I think it was Puppy, right, that went the increased attack speed from the leap uh, when we previously saw him play the Marana. Yes. I guess that that was against Money Monkey King Barbire, so maybe that was why he did it. Um, but this game, I feel like the Moonlight Shadow would be quite good. Oh, the smoke broken. Oh, no, the last one again. Abed has just been bullied as the Sacred Arrow comes out as well. He is found and taken out along with Tim's there too. They will lose two on Blacklist. As maybe perhaps they'll try and go for more here. The arena coming out defensively there with the BKB from Gabby. Will get away along with maybe Palos as well. He's been found out here. Nice man to dodge there. Stopping the assassinate, but in comes an avalanche. And a toss there too. Do they have anything more for Palos? He will able to time walk himself away. As himself the Chronosphere is actually going to turn it around here and actually go to War 2. Actually taking him out along with maybe perhaps Boom as well. There's the assassinate. Avalanche is on cooldown for three more seconds. It's all because of this time dilation. Stopping mm. that cooldown from coming back. Look online. at the Courier. Uh, Courier just trying to say, hit me instead. Hit me. Don't worry about <laughs> Palos. And well, maybe provide that little bit of confusion saying, what the hell is this guy doing here? Allows him to get on back. They get a return kill, but again, it's just that initiation coming through from Afu. They do find Boom, like though. They might be able to Avalanche. get Boom. Yeah. Abed, though, he wants vengeance. Coming forward here with his Blink Dagger. They do indeed find it. Getting the kill there onto Boom. 
Do they go for Roshan at this point? Do they feel like they've got the damage? They're all positioned up on this top side. It's just come through the Twin Gate to be able to position up there. And they don't really have too much control on Secret around this area. No Tier 1 tower to be able to play with. Gabby making sure that the creep wave on Blacklist's end is going to start pushing in a little bit more strongly. And yeah, they want to just quickly burst this one down with the freezing field from MJZ. He ended up saving his gem as well. It, like, as he was dying, he immediately sent out the courier so that he would yoink it away from the grasp of Puppy. Going to just now. Oh, Lasso. Hold on. Well, Gabby. I mean, take you lots of damage there from Secret. Wow. Radiance oh, how, how much damage? Um, who, who the most damage? Like, Mar Marana Poppy, 1,300 damage here with the leap and the star storm. <laughs> Jeez, this, this has turned out to be a real MVP here on the Marana. And now they find and themselves out there, there too. There's Gets the, the Bloodstone off this I time. Mean, it yeah, he does have himself the Bloodstone, but it's going to be found and It's, it's into a Scardi. That's yeah. the downside, right? Like, Asgardi was so effective against him. It's... He desperately needs this BKB on the Lashrak. And I feel like th this is the reason I was wanting them to have the pipe, right? Even just maybe the passive 10% magic resist that it provides, let alone the barrier, is probably enough to be able to survive through this initial burst so that maybe, you know, Gabby gets off that um, that BKB and the arena and they're able to turn that team fight around with the Aegis. Maybe, you know, the, the previous fight, the Lashrak doesn't die down bottom and it becomes even a better situation for Blacklist. So... It's okay, the, the Glimmer Cape on MJZ isn't the worst, considering most of the initiation is going to come single target as opposed yeah. to AoE. So if he's on point, this this ward is giving them a lot of vision though. Oh, Palos, he's been found there by the Lasso Sacred Arrow, comes in along with Avalanche. Look at that, they're just able to take him out again, and that Aegis is gone within a matter of just one minute. It was able to get that Aegis, and now it's gone. And he just Boom's still just hanging around. To farm. Hold on. They might find him again. This is not the place to farm. Apple, he's just able to get off the time walk there. Will they turn it around? That they have themselves the Chrono Spear. Gabby is not in position yet. They will not. They actually smoke up here on the side of Blacklist. That was uh, kind of interesting. Palos, he got killed then. He's like, okay, I'm just going to go back to farm the ancient and then almost <laughs> got jumped on again. Yeah, remember what I said about Palos and getting caught out of position just a couple of times? <laughs> that was one of them. We were ready to get one of them, but it was just really good positioning by Tim's to say, what the hell are you still doing here? Get out. They clearly have vision. Uh, Abed is kind of solo, though, away from the rest of the team that have gone for this smoke. Obviously, he still needs to be able to pick up this farm, but uh, Lasso's still 15 seconds away, so maybe he won't die. Moonlight Shadow. Can Boom find? Is he looking for something? He has himself the alacrity trick. Yeah, Tim's has uh, had the Wisdom Rune yoinked away from him. He's pinging it out right now. They, of course, knew that no one was in that area because of that Observer Ward that he just got rid of. And, well, that means Puppy's almost level 18. 28 minutes into this game as a position 5 Marana. The only person in this game that has not died. Hey, who has died, cool, though? though? Also. <laughs> He got, I mean, he got you feel so much more confident on Arbid as long as that bat rider is out of the map, right? Like you don't have yeah. that same lockdown potential to be able to kill him. Now you might get the bloodstone off if you don't land that combo, and that's probably going to give him enough time to build into this BKB for himself. So big kill that they were able to secure onto Afu there, who was just trying to influence the lane. He wasn't going for any kills, but they recognized it on Black. This probably because of this observer ward they've got on the top side. So they get themselves that the torment now too, and the shard going to boom. Okay. That's quite a nice shard on Tiny. Yeah, most like, this is about the time that he normally buys one anyway. So just to be able to get one for free, great. Almost into that Kanda, by the way. Sandrin Yasha for Chrysalis now. What what would the stat resist be for here? I mean, he does have himself a BKB as well. Is it for maybe perhaps spear in the bashes? They've got a fair amount, right? The yeah. uh, the frostbite, the spear, attack. the split earth. There's a lot. I think he just also wants to be as tanky Radiant as possible so that he can live through that initial burst. Yeah. Nice BKB though now for Abed. This is going to be really nice if he gets it off. If he does get lassoed or before he gets lassoed. 
very important. It has a, a greater healing lotus as well, so 900 oh. HP that you're able to instantly return. Puppy's only got one spirit vessel charge available, so he needs to make it count. Smoked up here on secret. Trying to find something. What do they have vision on right now? They're all, oh, look at this, they see themselves. Gabby was near their triangle, but this smoke has expired now. So I'll see Gabby hanging around here. They're actually not going to go full for it here. I think maybe perhaps they may just push the tier twos. I mean, waves pushing in on the middle and the top. Gabby cuts the wave though. Doesn't reveal for too long on the wave and that extra burn damage makes sure to take out the range creep. So yeah, top seems like the play. No glyph for another 50 seconds. So I think the right play for Blacklist is maybe to make an aggressive play of their own. Bot lane is really the only one that's in a good position and you've still got this Lashrak to be able to play around. So they might just trade tier two towers here, but they'll be able to take the tier two tower first here on secret. Meanwhile, maybe perhaps they can force rotations here. I mean, they have themselves a catapult wave. Oh yeah, boom. Oh gosh, here we go. Tree grab here onto the tier three. He actually backs the himself this off time, though. Yeah, I, I think they really want to be able to take this tower. Maybe they're a little hesitant because Abed isn't quite yet at level 20. Once he gets that, though, 20% damage reduction during Pulse Nova. So whenever he feels like he's in a dangerous spot, he's just going to be toggling that one on. Ooh! Oh, oh, foo! Oh, he was about to get power and but he activated his Manta on the faceless to stop the targeting of the flaming like that. That was very close. Oh, oof. Jeez. Way too close. <laughs> the vision like that they've got right now on secret they don't see that they're all grouped up here they do have that moonlight shadow though they do yeah they still don't know they haven't revealed on the lane even with this tb illusion i wonder if they want to put that up onto the high ground and that's where chrysalis generally puts it good arrow connects that's a great oh, arrow yeah although the disruption comes out but we're, we're one it brings him back even through a disruption okay that's something new that we've learned as they're okay here on blacklist Fascinate comes through, Abed's still okay, and they don't get anything from that initiation, but uh, what a weird mechanic that was. So even when you lasso someone with a disruption, you can bring the disruption bubble with you. <laughs> that doesn't make sense. A lot of things that don't, don't make sense, though. I wonder if they really want to make something happen now on Blacklist. Like, really, all you used was the BKB on the Mars, and I'd have to say that lasso being off cooldown is a much bigger deal. It's the sort of thing that allows you to put the the uh, the Lashrak onto the front lines to have him be the one pushing out a lot of these towers. Remember, they've still got this vision to be able to play around with to the northeast side of the uh, the ancient camp area. So that's exactly where they're looking to play. Yeah. <laughs> Look at this TP illusion. It's dragging the creep wave away so they can't hit the tower. <laughs> Palace eventually takes it out. So. They'll get it, but by the time that they get back there, you've got TP up on Afu. He's got the lasso back available. And I think he might even just try cutting this bottom uh, top wave a little bit, maybe. Maybe even mid. They just oh. want to slow down this push as much as possible. Boom. Okay, he's alright. He blinks away. Gabby's rotating in, though, on the outpost. Roshan possibly spawning up in three more seconds. We'll see the real time it's coming back. Uh, around about now. Five seconds! Uh, bet, okay. He's walking into Boom. Oh, the boom. boom here too, yeah. Crossbite's there as the rest of Blacklist uh, found the tiny, tiny down as they now have going to scout out the Roshan with that bit been spawning back in about five seconds. And looks like they're just going to take themselves a Roshan now here on Blacklist. Yeah, there's really nothing that I don't think Secret could do about it. Afu, he's the, the Aegis Thief, but even he won't be able to do too much about this. Maybe put a little bit, a bit of pressure onto the tier three tower top. It's already so low, and that's where Chrysalis is sending his illusion need to be forced to pop the glyph here. He's not even hitting the tower to force that sort of situation. He's giving up the TB illusion as well, so a little bit of potential miss micro there from Chrysalis. I feel like they could have got at least a small objective, even though it's only a glyph, out of that uh, Roshan exchange. Can they use the second Aegis properly though this time? Because uh, last time uh, Palos was, uh, he had himself this Aegis, he died on the Aegis camp trying to farm and then almost died again. He's looking a lot tankier though this time at level 21, 2,700 HP, going for a Scaddy here, has himself a BKB, could survive. I think first, first death was okay, in my opinion. Second death that he potentially stayed around for, I'm like, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> 
A 900 gold right, away from that. Yep, they've got MJZ with that Glimmer Cape now, so if someone does get picked off, he's in a uh, position to potentially save them. Uh, you've also got a Lotus Orb that the Crystal Maiden is working on, so clearly he just wants to be able to enable whoever it may be. Probably Arbit, just to be able to stand up on the front lines, not have to worry about the tossback or the um, or the lasso. And I feel like the answer to that is what Boom is going for, the BKB. If you BKB, you can still toss the people back. And uh, that's just going to be pretty much as effective as what you were wanting from the Batrider at that stage. Yeah, the aggression's kind of laid off now, as you can see on Secret. Oh, I say that. It's, it's always the cast of Jinx. Oh, it's always. Anytime we say something, they do the opposite. They're going to go Abed. for initiation here onto Abba, but he has been able to activate Stop that BKB, BKB there. They won't get themselves to lasso. They're going to go on the retreat here onto Secret, as now Blacklist are going to engage. Gabby here, ready. Link Dagger coming off cooldown. They found themselves off through, but a lasso coming down that one. Two faceless into a sacred arrow. Do they have enough damage to take down the faceless? Yes, they do. Look at that lovely stuff there from Secret, but they blink forward down to Gabby. Found themselves in the arena on two. Boom. Gonna attempt to TP, but it's cancelled there by the Yules. They'll find themselves off through along with Boom there through two kills. But they do take down the Aegis. That was a lovely play there with the lasso with the sacred arrow coming into effect. Taking down the Aegis. Feels really easy to be able to make that play though, right? Secrets Draft is pretty easy to execute. That's why I gave them that a little bit of edge, at least in terms of pure draft, but it's just gotten to this stage where it doesn't feel like they've been able to get enough of that map control with this, you know, they've, they're getting frequent pickoffs, but it's not really resulting in anything. No Aegis for them, no tier three towers, despite having the small opening to be able to do so. And here we go, Palos is able to put himself up onto the front lines, even preemptively putting that disseminate onto him to try and reflect back a little bit of that damage. Aggressive glyph as well. They want to punish the fact that both of these hero displacements are currently in the graveyard. Another 15 seconds of no lasso, no tossback. I mean, they don't even have metamorphs this either. So all that Chrysalis can do right now is watch on. They will take the tier 3 tower, but they won't for any more. Both Boom and Arthu They've got a smoke. back alive. They're going to go for it straight away. They want to try and quickly pick off someone farming in a quote-unquote safe area Radiant on the bottom side down. of the map. Let's see if Secret take Radiant's the bait and choose to leave attack. for now. I think the fact that they're not dealing with this mid lane push is going to make them a little bit more cautious, though. Doesn't seem like they're going to be able to run into anyone. They're actually, again, going for a smoke of their own. Oh, they got a smoke, though. There's, there's no one here on the top side. Well, that they know that. They don't have themselves uh, any vision currently Oof. at the moment. Oh, wait. Okay. They, they've actually just got vision there on Palos with a deep observer ward there, and they're going to go right for the smoke. This smoke is going to break right on Gabby, though. He, he's close got yet. A there it is. On Gabby. Oh, nice last though. Do they have themselves this? Oh, no, lovely save. disruption from the hands of the Shadow Demon, though. Tibbs will fall. Arena will come out. They turn it around here. They find themselves boom, boom, dead. As MJZ will be found there by the assassin. Oh, they found the sniper. That's caught Corden. Corden will fall. It's the two for two. Crystal is now with the BKP and the Metamorphosis. Wants to go uh, for the Lashrak here. Abed activating that BKP, but is he able to get away? Another arena coming out with the spear. Crystal has to be careful here. He's been stopped up. Where's the something? There it is, but I don't think it's going to save him. It's not. The wipe. Secret of gone. There's also a buyback here coming out from the Shadow Demon. I think they pretty much just lose themselves some supports, and that's it for a team wipe. Perfectly fine here for Blacklist, as now they go possibly to uh, to clean up the base here from Secret. Yeah, I mean, they have no additional uh, glyph refresh now. You've already lost the Tier 3 tower, so they could easily just move up into this base. All they're waiting for is a creep wave to be able to play around with and they've got it bottom. Gabby is playing out of his mind right now. Even just some really solid saves coming through from both supports on Blacklist. MJZ with the Glimmer Cape, you had the uh, the disruption to be able to save him from that initial go on and just the fact that Mars is alive with that fresh refresher means that he's able to twice then nullify the damage coming out. You can see here he activates the Bulwark as well to put a little bit of the damage onto him instead of the Lashrak. So they wanted to be able to take out Arbed. They weren't able to do so. And oh, hold on, they're committing. Oh, Arena again. Oh, they found themselves put it. This is very close to the fountain, but there's no follow-up. But they do get this the kill there onto Boom. Oh, Fu coming out with the lasso here. What's the bring swap into the fountain they have? Who's this? They found themselves Arbed. He is able to get himself out though. Wind with Waker. The Wind Waker. 
So he is just out of there. They do find themselves two. The buyback here from Boom here also. And Mirana. No, they found themselves three. The secret. They are just being picked off time again. I mean, beautiful last though, but unfortunately, we have a win wake now on Arbor. So he just gets himself out of there. It was an even better uh, disruption coming through from Tim's, right? The response that they were wanting is Gabby. He's the one that's getting gone on. Still a couple of seconds left on that refresher. They really want to take away this vision that they've got. They're all hanging out for him, though. Yeah, they're going for an initiation here. Chrono in five more seconds. They have it available now. Palos, he's got it ready. He's going to commit it there. Chrono wants to two. They find a sus boom. Boom, step up. No, buy back here. As they find a sus a second. Refresher. Chrono here with the refresher. All coming up from Palos. Finding Corden. Double kill here for the faceless. A lasso comes out in return here onto MJZ. But he looks like he is going to survive. Yes, he will. And it's team wipe there. On to secret again. GG is called. And game one will be going to Blacklist here. Absolutely amazing stuff from Gabby on this last pick of the Mars. I feel like this had a massively significant impact in this game. Oof. Yeah, I mean, that, that was a performance worthy of last pick overall in the draft, I gotta say. You know, we were debating what they wanted to go for, whether it was something to enable Arbet a little bit further, whether it was something to just prevent a lot of that damage coming out from Gordon and Chrysalis. Honestly, it, it didn't even feel like it was either of those things. Gabby was almost like soloing a lot of those team fights, getting so many clutch spears off, being able to, even the small things, right, using the bulwark to redirect some of the attacks, and I don't think they get out of this challenging early mid-game situation, if not for Gabby. He just played out of his mind. Yeah, he had himself a great time here. I mean, uh, as you said, with when he was using the bulwark there, during that team fight, he was never so patient, because usually with the... Uh... The refresher orb you, you do have that pressure whether you want to use the arena the second time coming out but mm -hmm. with him saving that during the bkb usage there from yep. the terror blade that really helped him clear the fight around as soon as that was broke the bkb expired the arena came out spear in and chrysalis was caught in place and as you can see there during the early stages of these team fights was able to do quite a lot here with the arena but i gotta say puppy in the early stage of the game with these arrows really having a enormous effect here, and Abbott pretty much got bullied around about the middle and the start of the, uh, the, the game here. Yeah, he did indeed. That was a lot of that damage again coming through from Gabby. Of course, there was a lot pumped out from Palace. He didn't have a, I mean, a bad game by any stretch. He was 11, 2, and 14. So if you're just looking at the KDA, you're like, oh, he, he did his job amazingly. But he was caught out a couple of times when he probably shouldn't have been. And it was Gabby that put them back into... A very safe spot to be, you know. <laughs> we see it just as we're talking about it, right? Another oh. great arrow from Puppy to be able to connect through onto that with all of their great burst single target damage. But then look at the follow-up. They're just able to get two kills absolutely for free. Yeah, amazing stuff here from Blacklist. But that actually puts them one game up hit. And then that best of three. Absolutely amazing synergy coming out from the arena there too. I mean... I wouldn't think that they were combined with the Chrono, but actually picking themselves off with, um, we're picking Secret off here. I mean, look at that. Arena used, then Chrono used. That picked off another hero. Oh, hold on. I I've just got an Arena saved here. I'm just going to save it for the, the time this being. This is the Bulwark play as well. As soon I didn't as that think we got to it. Yeah. Boof. Wait for that. Wait for that. Wait there it is. That. Go again. <laughs> yep. They get an because he, he saves the less, you get another Split Earth off which means that you're not able to get, like, the perfect Sunder that you're wanting at the right time. Like, it's yeah. just this big flow-on effect. It was a really great team performance coming out once again from uh, from Blacklist and I think from Gabby especially. Good chrono there at the end, though, by Palace has to say, locking out two of the cores and, uh, yeah, the <laughs> great timing for the refresher to be able to come out as well, just to put it without any shadow of a doubt, being able to kill off Corden at the very end and, uh, yeah... Unfortunate for Puppy, who played nearly a flawless game, in my eyes, that they weren't able to get the win, but uh, yeah, Blacklist, they were just on a different level. Yeah, it's kind of unfortunate here for Chrysalis as well, because obviously, of course, you want to dish out your damage with the Metamorphosis, but then when he's taken out with a Chrono and he has himself buyback, he's like, oh, right, okay, I, I feel kind of useless about my Metamorphosis right now. We've had this conversation before about when Terrorblade um, is ahead and he has the opportunity to take the Aegis. Not a very good Aegis carrier, because if he's used the Metamorphosis during that stage and comes back without a Metamorphosis, it's kind of hard to have that impact that you would do 
when you do have the metal. So there's a, kind of a little bit of gamble on here, but yes, Blacklist rivalry, they will take team one out of this best of three. But we are going to go for a short break here, folks. We'll be back with game two to see whether Secret will be able to equalize this or Blacklist will be able to take this series 2-0.
Hello everybody, welcome back to the Elite League with myself, Epidamnos and Danok. We're coming in for game two out of the best of three. This is series two with Blacklist rivalry going up against Secret. And Blacklist, they've been able to take themselves a game one. It was kind of both teams, they were putting up a good show here. But in the end, Gabby with his Mars gameplay absolutely helping, accelerating the lead that Blacklist had. They get themselves the victory. And now we're coming in for game two with the draft underway as we will see whether Team Secret, they'll be able to equalize this or will Blacklist be able to take this to zero? Dan, mm. how do you feel uh, this second game is going to go? Or are you quite unsure and just waiting to see out with the picks? I mean, you heard how I, I, I reacted to the drafts, right? I, I actually quite liked both of them. It just came down yeah. to execution at the end of it. And finding those little windows where you can make a uh, a misplay or a something that people have just forgotten about happen. So I, I think Boom being caught off next to the Lotus Pool when... Uh, sure, it was a bit lucky that Blacklist got like a five-second Roshan respawn to be able to immediately take advantage of that, but they didn't yeah. get any map control when that was happening. You knew they were Roshing, right? You even heard Rosh go with that scream out. So the fact that they weren't able to claim anything, I think was a bit of a misstep from Secret, but... I mean, as well, going into this draft, everything's flipped. So Blacklist are playing Dire. They were Radiant. Blacklist have uh, first pick. They had second pick to give uh, Gabby that last pick, Mars. So everything's completely different. I want to see if these teams have the strategy to be able to respond to those different sorts of situations. As Interestingly, Blacklist, they come out again with the Lashrak. So is this always going to be an Abed pick here, or is this kind of flexing a little bit on Blacklist? Can they put it as a position four, maybe? I don't like it as a possible. You keep trying to push it, Epi, and I hate it. <laughs> I, know, like I know, I know, I know. <laughs> The, the the one person, like I said, FNG is allowed as a POS5 Lashrak because I feel like you could just become this weird enchantress tower-taking substitute as the uh, as the Lash without giving up too much control. And you're someone that builds into the... That, that will get the shard relatively quickly, which actually is pretty good value in a lot of these team fights, even though you can't really be that, that frontliner for your team. So I, I think 
yeah, 90% of the time it's going to be, 95 is going to be played mid. Uh, I thought Abed played the early-ish game quite well. We saw in the highlights of that previous game, he dived Corden a number of times. Uh, of course, helped out by Tim's a little bit and was able to get a few kills. Wasn't all that impressed by the tower-taking aspect of it, though. So we'll, uh, we'll have to see if he's able to clean a little bit of that up and uh, <laughs> go on forward next time. What's up? I'm just laughing at Afu's name. Mute and play. <laughs> Mute and <Yeah>. play. <laughs> uh, I suppose he's not been having a good time in his pubs at the moment if his name is Mute and play. Yeah, that, that's how I feel too, yeah. I mean, it just depends on what time you queue. I never play Dota on weekends anymore just because oh. oof, it, it is rough. <laughs> Weekend Dota or morning Dota, get me out. Just give me some nice afternoon or evening Dota and that's where I shine. Yeah. I, I, I actually understand that. I know where you're coming from as well, because um, uh, some people that I know, they, they say it's like, oh, when, it, when it's the weekend Dota, everyone everyone gets off from work, and people who don't play Dota as much come in to uh, play when they shouldn't be the rank that they are and ruin the game. I was like, that's why you play in the afternoon, because you're with the people that play this game for 12 hours a day. <laughs> and they're starting to get tired, and you can find that little advantage of them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I, I, I totally get it. Uh, Oracle ban, okay, that's a little interesting, coming through from Secret. I know, obviously, connecting through with a Lashrac, it, it feels kind of nice. With the Primal Beast being banned, though, I, I would have thought that was the main thing that they would be wanting to potentially have the Oracle for. Yeah, I guess maybe they're just going to emphasize a lot more magic this game. You know, they, they say, alright, if Blacklist really want to go down this greedy route going for a Ooh. bunch of... Uh, yeah, this is, this is a Dubu call right here with this Phoenix. He was one of the best Phoenixes over the past few years, and he clearly sees a lot of value in this hero. They're saying, look, if you want to take away some of our supporting uh, style with heals, we can just get another one that's actually even harder for you to be able to take out. So now, Secret, they kind of need to go into something that's able to deal with the egg a little bit more effectively no Marana, so you won't have that increased attack speed. It's been banned out. I uh, actually quite like this pick. Yeah, cool Phoenix, and Phoenix is especially nice, particularly against the Conquer here. I mean, the Sunray, it, it scales Ooh. very well throughout the, the late stage of the game, and Phoenix is one of these heroes where you don't really need to buy items on the hero. I mean, items do help, of course, but uh, yeah. it's still quite impactful with, with the spells that Phoenix has. Tranks, Wand, maybe an Urn, maybe a Shivas, and then probably like Scythe after that is something that you can even consider as a Phoenix. Um, but yeah, yeah, like you said, you really don't need all that much. You just need levels to be able to make it work. There's something that can eventually, not like you're going to be focus firing an egg, but it's something that's able to, uh, <laughs> you know, stay at, at range from the Lashrak. And I feel like they've got pretty good control, actually, in terms of, you know, just Jakiro, Techies, Conker. It's going to be hard for Lashrak to do anything prior to having BKB. So now you, you're just forced to play even slower than he was last game. So, so is this... Can this? they move Windranger carry here and put it on Crystalis? Or will Corden play this on Secret? I uh, don't think you need to make that decision yet anyway, right? Because you've got last pick overall. So you're going to be the ones to be able to make that choice depending on how these lanes pan out. Blacklist are the ones that need to make the next uh, few choices. So I feel like Team Secret's bans are going to be the thing that reveals what they think they're going to be going up against. And yeah, they've the world is their oyster right now. They've got plenty of options. I'm wondering, could they like pause one gyro or something like that? Something that can hit the egg. Something that builds a BKB, something that can stay at range from the Lashrak if you really want to. I think it could work. Oh, and Faceless Void. Coming sure. out again for Palos. Okay, he'll play Faceless Void a second time here on Blacklist. Good against Wind Ranger for that time dilation. Uh, I guess you could build into the Nullifier on the Faceless Void. Good against the Wind Ranger. Considering there is no Shadow Demon, there is no Oracle. Offensive dispels uh, at an absolute premium, and with Phoenix Tusk, there's not going to be an Enchantress or anything like that, so yeah, I feel like it's going to need to be a Nullifier sort of game from this Faceless Void, because they don't have the greatest way to be able to lock down whoever is playing this, whether it be Crystalis or Cordon. <laughs> there goes the Mars. So yeah, definitely respect that Mars after Gabby played that, he was a monster on the Mars, so that will be gone, along with Nargus Iron 2. Final bands remain for both sides. 
still some reserve time to think about what they want to pick up for the last hero here. I mean... Uh, I want to see a centaur come out for Blacklist. centaur. Yeah, just something that's going to be able to run away from, like, a lot of the slows or the, um, the Conquer Ultimate or the Conquer Ags. So you can get away from a Wind Ranger that's trying to chase you down. You can enable your Lashrak a little bit further. I, I like it. I think it, it should be able to get a lot of work done. Only downside is double melee into a Jakiro lane is very shaky, for sure. I mean, especially if Wind Range is on that lane too, it's not nice. <laughs> it's not pleasant, and it is a Centaur. Centaur comes out for Blacklist, so having themselves that Stampede, able to en uh, enable them to engage and also disengage. And I'd say that's a really great spell to combine with Lashrak, because he loves to stay underneath people with the Pulse Nova. Maybe a life stealer into this? Into the Lashrak feels not too bad. It, it sucks against the Faceless Void, but again, if yeah. you can get a Aghanim Scepter and you can disarm him, then it feels quite nice. Oh, oh. okay. A Lycan, something a little different coming out here. So is that what, a one Wind Ranger, a three Lycan, and a mid Conquer, I guess? Let's see. Yep. yep. Seems like that is the way. I I don't hate this. I mean, you, you want to run out, run down the Phoenix and you want to make sure that you're using the egg at a bad time you're basically wasting it in a lot of these team fights also again they've got multiple heroes now that are going to be able to keep at range away from the Lashrak uh, and I guess they don't exactly have the greatest heroes at being able to deal with the Helm of the Overlord creep either like Lashrak is okay but if you're putting yourself your body out there again you are in a bit of a dangerous position the plus side is these two supports are actually quite good at being able to save Lashrak early on into the game, as opposed to needing items to be able to do so. You know, we saw needing the Blink Dagger on the Shadow Demon previously for the uh, disruption. We saw CM needed a while to get into something even as small as a Glimmer Cape. This time around, you're going to have Sunray, you're going to have Fiery Spirits, you're going to have Tusk with the potential for a Snowball save for a lot of this early aggression to allow the Shrek to maybe get off that Bloodstone BKB combo that she needs. She? He? I think it's a guy. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, I think... Again, it's going to be a pretty even game, this one, again. Uh, I feel like the Centaur pick was great for uh, for Gabby, just for all the reasons that I mentioned. Plus, just another way to be able to provide that extra little bit of lockdown that can't be blocked by Lincoln. Similar sort of thing to the uh, the Lashrak Split Earth. So, I think we're in for another banger, Epi. I'm excited. Yeah, I mean, especially with the, the last pick, Lycan. I mean, mm -hmm. another unconditional hero that we don't see very often. But do you happen to have an understanding of why maybe perhaps they've picked it up here for Boom? I know Boom plays it quite a bit, but there is there any other reasons other than Boom just playing the hero? <laughs> yeah, if you've got bad wave clear, by all means, go Beastmaster, go Lycan, go Helm of the Overlord, go Lone Druid. If you're lacking damage early, especially, to be able to face up against it, I think is the, the main thing that they're really looking to oh, have in okay. consideration. Uh, also, just against a Lashrak who might be looking to build up a bunch of stacks, you can, yeah. if you're really good, use the wolves to be able to like body block a bunch of the camps. So oh. I'll see if he gets active <laughs> enough for that. Yeah, I can, I can see what you mean with zero damage, because if Lashrak doesn't have himself the best of time on Abed, which he, he didn't have in game one until he was able to, you know, come back a little bit and still have impact, but just the fact that he was bullied. I mean, if they don't have damage, because of course Faces Void needs to scale, um... Gabby, he's more of um, just setting the stage ready with the hoof stomp. Then, <laughs> yeah, I, I can see what you mean. I, I can mm. see now why the bit the lichen. Wonder if that, like, again, it's probably going to be quite some time until they can get active on blacklist, at least in terms of pushing towers. So I wonder if again it's going to be another uh, split earth lightning storm sort of game from Arbed, just to be able to force them to be a little bit more concerned about the damage coming out without him actually needing to be near people, if that makes sense. Like, Lycan has a bunch of units. That's one of the big strengths for him, right? So Diabolic Edict yeah. isn't going to be as effective against that. Um, right. Which always feels a little bit more challenging. Oh, Fu just guess... snatching that Observer there. D was that. I guess it is a bit better, the Edict, than it previously was against Lycan, just because previously it used to be magic damage, and Lycan Wolves actually have pretty high magic resist, like 40, I think. Um, so the fact that it's pure now just makes it a little bit easier. 
Yeah, I do remember when it used to be. It, it, it had a whole series of changes. Didn't, didn't it used to be physical as well, like a very long while ago? Or am I dreaming that? I swear uh, it used to be physical. Maybe it was physical and I'm a, just a complete idiot. It probably is, actually. <laughs> so, <laughs> but now it's pure. That's the point that I'm trying to make. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so yeah. So it's yeah, a little yeah. bit easier. Pure so much better. Uh, top lane, though, uh, with having a Phoenix 5. Uh, I mean, with the faceless against Lycan, how's this lane looking? I mean, Lycan and Techies, it seems quite dominant here. It seems like Palace might have quite a rough time here. Uh, yeah, Palace will have a rough time. Less so because of the Lycan, more so because of Apu on his Techies, just because Phoenix, his influence in the lane is really like a, a roller coaster. There's a lot of ebbs and flows. It's basically, do you have Fire Spirits uh, off cooldown? If so, you're strong. If not, you're horrible. And uh, the thing with the Techies is that you're basically constantly a threat because of your attack range, because of your high attack damage, because of your relatively lower cooldowns with like the Sticky Bomb, just constantly able to put in this sort of... <laughs> engagement onto the phoenix luckily enough oh. mjz was able to land that uh that fire spirits up there so he didn't actually end up dying able to stack the small camp there as well and heal up with the healing self gotta stay away don't want it to get cancelled oh feels bad what's happening down bot one thing, yeah, okay, I was wondering if Gabby was going to go into a blade mail here, basically saying, you cannot focus me, Crystalis. Like, I will not be the target of this, uh, these early skirmishes. You're just gonna have to try and focus Ooh. down someone else. Yeah, I do like that blade mail early on. I mean, I still remember the times when, um, Centaur, when his retaliate was very strong. I mean, if you would focus fire up a Centaur, you, you would actually just kill yourself as Winrich. <laughs> yep. Pretty much. I mean, honestly, I feel like he's not the main target anyway. You're probably going to be wanting to use the Focus Fire onto the Lashrak, especially, just because he is going to be a huge part of Blacklist's damage in this early game. Uh, yeah. Well, I say early game, probably like 20 minutes or so is when he should be starting to maybe get active. It's... It's a challenge, though, right? Because at that point, you're going to have a fair few levels on the Phoenix, and maybe he'll have a few points in the Sunray where you can... Um, get a little bit of that blind per second starting to queue up onto him. And looks like Abed did indeed go the Diabolic Edict here, so... Actually not putting anything into Split Earth at the moment. Option to do so. Maybe he just has, as a result of that last game, a lot of faith in his supports, right? They did a great job of saving him, allowing Gabby and Palace to be able to come in and make that counter-initiation play happen. Like, uh, and, and I would have to say, like I was saying before, Tusk and Phoenix have a better early game relative to the CM and the Shadow Demon, at least in the form of, like, pure save. Mm-hmm. Some contests there for the water rune. Oh, Abed actually denies it. Cleverly done. Knew he wasn't ever going to be able to claim it because of the X marks. Also ends up making Corden take a bunch of damage from his edict. Pretty nice, but both of them don't even have a uh, a bottle here, so they're living life on the edge here. Yeah, he has a Sage's Mask and a... And a... Clarity coming out to him on our bid, so as soon as he's not in danger of getting hit by the Tidebringer, I'm sure he's going to try and pop it. Maybe he might even be saying to some of his supports, hey, can anyone go for a kill? I want a TP to refill. <laughs> Doesn't matter if it's a one-for-one -one trade. Yeah, and there's a level 3 Tidebringer, though. Lots of damage. There we go. Pops the Clarity. Moves back. Going to stack a camp for himself. Maybe. Yeah, there we go. Stacks the camp for himself, now gets the bounty rune, and he should be just fine to be able to go back to that lane. Although, overall, Secret winning out in all three lanes right now. Yeah, they're doing alright here. I mean, really applying pressure here to this top tower. They haven't been able to do some damage to this tier 1 tower top, but... we are still having an okay time with 10 denies here. I don't think you're really in any danger of that happening. I mean, most of the time, the answer to Lycan, especially when he gets his ultimate, is just TP away as well. 
Um, and that's really, I think, what Secret are going to be playing around. But the thing is, you've got a Techies that you're playing alongside with as well. So he's just going to be wanting to try and follow up onto Boom. Speaking of him, you've actually got Tim's rotating. Oh, blast off there. Lovely nice. snowball usage, though, which dodges the blast off as they may find Boom here. They will do so indeed. Getting the first blood there, taking down the like and lovely stuff from Tim's there with the rotation of that snowball. Yeah, I was wondering a little bit about Gabby, but they just oh manipulated the lane. God. That that was so cheeky. I saw that Corden, he was he's quite low in HP and mana. He got the torrent off on Abed, just X marks himself, snatched a regen rune right in front of Abed and just X marks himself back. Easy game, easy life. As Tim's goes for a bit of a wander towards that mid lane. They want a free kill here onto Poppy if they can get it. Just leveled oh. up the ice shards. Will it be enough With though? They don't want to dive with a rotation from Alfu. Blast off is ready. It's going to come in. It will connect there onto Tim's. Not onto Abed, though. But they don't have the range on the X marks to follow up on that, as indeed it is only level one. It's got a very short range there, a 550 Ooh. cast range. So Tim's I'm, will be. I'm in. tracking MJZ. Look at the pings on the map. They're following him with the wolves. They're making sure that he's not able to go for this Wisdom Rune Steel. He's going to need to go for the Icarus Dive Away very, very oh, shortly. Fire Spirits. Yeah, yeah, just to make sure he doesn't die, and he'll be fine. I mean, the thing is, these are all really good plays that uh, Blacklist Rivalry are making. Not, like, sure, you might not be able to get the kill. It would have been a bonus if they did. Ooh. But look at what it resulted in, right? You had, uh... Oh, they're actually stealing this away. Okay, this is yeah. even bigger. Even voting for it. Yeah, Tim's made this. Now it's all gone. One creep is left for Abed. <laughs> Scraps taken. Oh, no. All right, so that, that's a nice little recovery there. What I was going on yeah. about before was just moving people out of Palace's lane so that he could recover some of this. The main danger was the techies in the lane, but by making that aggressive play, they uh, they had to TP techies mid. That meant that he was much more capable of laning into the Lycan. And even just that movement from MJZ previously, techies was forced to try and chase him down and wasn't able to do so. So it just gave him even more time solo. And I mean, I think he was last on net worth for all of the cores, and now he's pretty much second. Gabby might be dead here if they commit the focus fire, never mind. Stampede out. Gabby is okay. Meanwhile, Chronos here. Activated there onto Afu. Bash is there, finds the kill. Nice pick off there for Palos. Seeing TP's coming in here, having to be very careful. No boat. Focus fire there too, along with the ice path. Lovely stuff. It actually finds the kill onto Abed, and Tim's not able to get off the snowball. Will fall there from the power shot there too, and Chrysalis just rotating in, getting a double kill there on the mid lane and the post four. That was optimistic from Tim's for sure. He was completely dead underneath the tower in multiple stuns. No focus. Uh, sorry, no, no boat Radiant's even needed to be able to secure attack. that one. Gabby doesn't actually have any points in the double edge right now. I guess wanting to focus a lot more on his survivability rather than giving any of that HP away and of course just making it that much more challenging for Chrysalis to be able to right click into him with the retaliate. Now he's got the blade mail as well to be able to play oh. with. Oh. Yeah, that's, that's, that's really intriguing there. Just change it around. I mean, I mean the, this is why they're pro players. They they know how the, the, the abilities work and how to work it out well. Uh, yeah, I just love players that don't go for the cookie cutter build every single game, right? They actually use their brain and think, what is needed in this game? Do I need a little bit of extra armor for this lane? Do I need to change up my item or skill build to something that's a little bit unorthodox as they get a free kill? Oh, they do, yeah. Boot. They're going for Corden right now. The boat comes in. Abed in trouble. Is found there and taken out. So it will be a one for one with Boom activating the shapeshift now, trying to find MJZ here as well. He'll get himself a double kill. This Helm of the Dominator starting to work out now, but Palos does not have himself time off for another 10 seconds. Maybe perhaps they can get the kill. The X Mox there connecting Chrysalis onto the face of the point. He's going to bring him back right into a torrent. The Focus Fire coming out in return as well from Chrysalis with that Shackle Shot, able to get the triple kill here on Boom. So that is very nice here for Secret. They may even find themselves a tier one tower. This is why you pick a Lycan against a Phoenix, because there's just absolutely nothing that he can do about it. You know, all of these supports that don't have anything in the way of stuns, that don't have the greatest escape potential. Like, Icarus Dive is okay, but still, oh at this point of the game, it's just, yeah, not good they enough. Found, they found stacks again in the same area. They've just taken it out with Macrapire. Puppy's just solo got it. He's got himself three stacks. 
which Tim's made on that um, on that camp that they took previously. Mm-hmm. Easy game. That's the thing. You like you know what you're going up against. It really feels like Secret are using their brains a whole lot more effectively this game, just to be able to find that quick pick off. Tim's. He's the main focus right now. Well, Sticky Bomb latches onto him. Gabby, uh, he's acting as a little bit of a bodyguard, even yeah, dropping they... the seeds of Serenity, just to provide him with that extra couple of seconds of survivability. Power shot doesn't hit. Well, at least they take the bottom tower now. Blink is the next item for Gabby here. A bit unkillable here on the Centaur at the moment, because if you just... Mm -hmm. Turn your physical attacks upon it. I mean, like in physical, the uh, Wind Ranger, physical damage. Blade Mail, it hurts. <laughs> MJZ about. Oh, nice die. X marks! Catching him back, the Supernova comes out, but they have enough to take it out and they just uh, destroy that egg in literally two seconds. I don't think he noticed the X mark, otherwise, he would have probably popped the Supernova as he was at the end of the Icarus dive instead. Much safer place to be able to do it. Yeah, they just end up having a spell on cooldown for 100 seconds, even though his death timer is very, very short at this stage. So, a bit of a misplay there for NJZ. And now they're even going to open up the map even further. You thought it was easy for them to take those stacks previously? Well, now it's going to be just that much less challenging. They just ping out a uh, faces for it. They're gonna scout him out though with the. Oh my gosh! Look at that War pine. Is. Wow! War pine raider. That's a lot of mm -hmm. damage. Hitting him with the nut shot. <laughs> Seed shot, but I like calling it the nut shot. <laughs> um, I'm just seeing now what blacklist could really do. I guess just play around Chrono. Wait for Arbed to. Get himself some core items here. Is this a Yules on the way for him? It is, yeah. yeah. I like it. You, you can dodge away some of the damage from the boat, which feels great. You can maybe uh, toss the either the Wind Ranger or the Lycan up in the air when they're committing their ultimates, just to give your team, again, that little bit of extra space that they need. Because once again, they've got good counter-initiation on Blacklist, right? They've got the Chronosphere, they've got the Sun Ray, just level 1, plus Supernova, you've got Stampede, you've got Snowball Save, a lot of stuff that's uh, going in their favor in that sort of scenario. You just need to try and delay it for as long as possible. That's a nice Observer Ward there, placed by MJZ. Palace has to be careful. MJZ will need to be on point here with the save if Palace goes out and just freely farms that. Look, they're coming from both directions. Oh yeah, here we go. They got the X marks here onto Palace. The boat's gonna come in. It will have an effect. It doesn't time walk away. Doesn't have enough time. The Supernova does indeed come out defensively there. It will be a one-for-one -one trade. Now here comes the Stampede, but they're not able to follow up. They've caught themselves. Gabby, Gabby in some trouble, activating that Blade Mail there, holding his ground whilst being healed up there by MJZ, but it's only a level one Sunray. It's not going to do a lot. Boat, uh, not Boat, uh, Snowball Save comes in there. They caught themselves the Shackle Shot onto Tim's. Tim's attempting to flee there with the Eye Shot usage, but caught there by a Torrent and the Power Shot as the Wolves will get the kill. Bringing back Gabby now there with an X Mox here too, but Faceless Void is back alive. Is the Krona will be committed. Nice it's found there onto two, stopping that TP there from Boom. They will find themselves the kill there onto Corden and Boom there too. Just hanging around a little bit too long here on the side of Secret. Diving that here too, so they will pay the price for that. Hanging around far too long. Like the, the initial movement was great. You know, you found the pickoff that you were wanting, but just not recognizing that it's only 14 minutes into this game. The death timers are so short right now that, yeah, Palace able to come back after being the initial target that was being focused down. And uh, great Chronosphere just catching two at the very edge. It was a good Sunray potential save from MJZ, but yeah, it's just a little bit too early and only the one point in it wasn't able to recover that HP that they needed. But at the end of the day, it ends up working out in Blacklist's favor. It was a 3k net worth lead and it's down to one as a result of those turnarounds. What can I say? It's Arfu right underneath the... Uh... Tim's here with an invis ready to commit the blast off along with Chrysalis rotating in here with the shackle shot. There we go. Focus fire comes out. Nice snowball usage, but I still think you might be dead. Power shot's going to be committed as he comes out of snowball there. Finds the kill. Very nicely, nicely done. done there. 
had to be pixel perfect, and he was. Even if he had that blink dagger, I don't think he would have been able to get the save off. And the blink away. Radiant mm. are scanning. Just having a look at overall the uh, situation with shards on blacklists in particular. Sorry, we're seeing aggressive moves actually come out from Secret in the meantime. I'm seeing MJZ with one queued up, and I love Phoenix Shard. I think it's one of the best ones in the game. But if he's able to buy it, that maybe means... Ooh, he's going to be able to get away. This is a deep dive. Oh, no, he's caught there. Oh, just able to commit the Supernova there before the Blast-Off has an effect. So Supernova Not comes Afu. off. It doesn't cancel the TP, but the Snowball does. Afu will be found there with that aggressive dive. Again, another good play coming out from MJZ. Perfect use of Dyer's the Supernova, making them commit all of those spells just to be able to kill him. Radiant's they will still be able to secure a tier attack. 1 tower for their troubles, but Dyer's then just giving a little bit more time for fall. Arbed and Palos to get into those next items. Mjolnir now for Palos, so he should be able to take out anyone if he's able to find him. So yeah, what I was saying before about the shards was if you go ahead and buy one on the Phoenix as opposed to wait for the Tormentor, maybe you get one for free on the Lashrak, and that's going to be a pretty big deal this game considering some of the heroes that you're going up against, right? Like, just lay out those split earths on the ground, make sure they're split up, not on the exact same spot, and then it just becomes a little bit more challenging for the Lycan and his units and the Wind Ranger to run around and try and focus people down. Oh no, they call themselves Tims here again. Torrent. Casting him up in the air, Snowball comes out for the time being, but it looks like he may fall here. Warus Punch comes out, but the, the Black Dragon Order. finds the kill. Boat coming in now defensively there too. Abed trying to flee underneath this tier 3 tower. He will get out, but now you're starting to see this dominance coming out here from Boom, since he has himself this Helm of the Overlord now. Yeah, they wanted to make that turnaround happen, but Palos just didn't have mana to be able to drop the Chronosphere. He had it available. Maybe they go for it now onto Crystalis. Yes, he will. He's going to commit it. Try and find the wind there. Though. They do get the kill, though. But thanks to that split earth there, Still too. Stampede. Stampede will be committed. As they're trying to chase Arfu as well as Gabby finding Puppy here. In their side of the map, Arfu will be found, and it looks like they'll find Puppy there, too. So... They'll take out the two supports there with the carry. Some nice job there from Blacklist Rivalry. Mm -hmm. Probably should be able to get a mid-tier one tower as well, although TP coming in from Cordon on his Conquer to make sure that that doesn't happen. He really needs to make sure that he can get into this Aghanim Scepter just to prevent follow-up uh, chases like that. But uh, yeah, again, it, it wasn't the perfect counter gank coming through from Blacklist where you know, Palos didn't have the mana to be able to cast the Chronosphere, but at the end of the day, it works out for him. Now, net worth lead slightly in their favor. Win probability dips in their favor for the first time since the laning stage, and yeah, it was just a, a really solid initiation coming through, and they do have the damage output to be able to go through this Wind Ranger prior to her picking up the BKB, and it's going to be quite some time until she actually gets into it, considering it looks like Crystalis is committing for the Glypnir. Yeah, we saw when some some male was trying to play the uh, the Wind Ranger desperately needed the BKB. It is the same for Chrysalis, I think, well, in this regard. He bought Blink just before he died as well, so didn't waste any of that gold. He spent the last millisecond of his life making sure that he was able to farm the camp. Now I'm just walking along the lane and uses that Blink to be able to get back to, I want to say, safety? No, he's alright. Anytime I see a Wind Ranger win running aggressively, that is when I'm <laughs> very, very concerned. Uh, Abed now getting himself some stat resist and increasing that magical damage further soon with finishing off this Kaya and Sanj. Uh, Chronosphere still on cooldown for 30 seconds as Secret, they're still hanging around here bottom as three. They will eventually back off here. Who's that drawn on the Is map that there? Makes things a lot easier for Boom as well, just having that little bit of extra lockdown. And again, Corden, he's got the Ags now as well. So if they took a fight right now, it's going to be good for Secret. Boom stomp. Onto Puppy. But a Gladeneer onto three. Very Triple. nice. Blast off there too. The Supernova just comes out in time there also. It's the Stampede committed there defensively. They'll try and disengage here into Blacklist. Lovely nice blocks there shards. with the eye shards from Tim's. They get out. No one died. No one died. It's crazy. Or maybe MJZ. 
Although he still has the Icarus Dive if he really feels like he needs it. So that is huge. No boat, no uh, no Torrent Storm, no Shapeshift. This is a big window now for Blacklist. And I want to see what they choose to do with it. Are they going to push out lanes? Are they going to take some more of these towers because they've only taken one so far? Or are they going to just sit back and farm their next items? Kind of feels like Secret want to go for a bit of a Roshan play considering they feel pretty weak elsewhere. That might be the case. Supernova on cooldown, Stampede on cooldown. I mean, Kratos are available, but I, I still think this is fine for Secret to go ahead and take a Roshan. It's pretty much the only thing that they can do with uh, any kind of reliability, right? And you've got the Focus Fire, so you should be able to take it very, very fast. It's a good decision. Vlad's as well certainly helps. Able to find that now. Aegis in the hands of Crystalis, very nice. That'll help against the Chronosphere coming out here from Palos. Trying to complete this BKB. Radiance Middle Tower is under attack. Still can't help but feel like it was a bit of a missed opportunity for Blacklist to maybe just push the lanes out a tiny bit more aggressively. Maybe do a little bit more to take some of these towers when all of them are revealing off the map. Like they still are getting the key items that they need, right? MJZ with this creep wave. They're even going to stampede, so make sure he gets out of there. And Tim's, maybe? Yeah, yeah he's okay. able to. Uh, close to getting the shard on MJZ, and you just had these Shivas, I believe, finished up on Gabby. So, a couple of big it. items for themselves. And almost a BKB as well on Palace. So, there's a lot of stuff that's going to enable them to fight, but I just wanted them to have a little bit more, I guess, map freedom to go for some of those smokes that were a little bit less predictable, I guess. And for Secret, there really is no need for them to stop. I mean, you're playing with a Lycan, you're playing for the early-ish game here. Um, especially when you've got this Helm of the Overlord, when you've got the Aegis as well, to be able to cap it all off. Mm -hmm. There we go, BKB up for Palace. Just Charged, lacking on just vision. 50 gold away for MJZ love to be able to get it and defend this tier 2 tower if they can. I mean, they have the BKB obtained now on Palos, so maybe they can nice try attack. something with a Chrono. Even though that they smoke up these wolves. Tim's has been with a lot of vision. Yeah, Tim's has to be a little careful. Did they see that? If they s I think they might have seen Tim's get hit by the smoke, and they're still going to just get the tower for free. With the Helm of the Overlord, as they go for this full-on smoke of their own. Shard now up on Phoenix. x Mox out is going to bring back Gabby. Lovely snowball save there, but in comes Boom now with the shapeshift. Supernova coming out there in return. Are they going to focus the Supernova here? It will actually come off. Arfu will fall along with Corden there too. And Puppy! Puppy will fall. They lose three. Chronosphere now being committed here just onto three. Crystalis. Crystalis down. Boom is still hanging around here. I mean, what target is he going for? He's going to try to attempt to go for Abed here, but a lovely split earth actually saves him. They take down Chrysalis. Boom will retreat here. As with that, even with that Aegis, they will lose themselves four. And I don't think they lost anyone here on Blacklist. They didn't. It was a great Sunray coming out there from uh, from MJZ, just hitting onto multiple people, doing 3k damage, but Palos just able to lock in onto the backlines that they were really needing. They just didn't get that key initiation that you're really wanting. And I'm a little surprised, to be honest, that Chrysalis was playing that far back. You've got the Aegis for a reason. He needs to be the one getting in. He needs to be the one finding that key target that they want to pick off at the very start of this team fight. And the rest of the team just kind of dies around him. Saving the Chrono, especially there for Chrysalis. He's able to get through that Aegis, and then by the time like, he comes back alive, all his team are dead, and there's no one here to protect him. So he locks within those eye shards there, as meanwhile they actually do find themselves another kill here on the bottom, with the help of Tim's there, as he got very close to death there, but turned out to be fine, and Albert gets the kill. I think this is a BKB now. Yes, it is. BKB now on the Lashrak. That is definitely going to help within these next team fights. Yeah, Tim's has been incredibly clutch um, with a lot of his snowball saves, right? Just to be, again, it's the delay. That's all they need. They need to make sure they're not getting hit by the boat. They need to make sure that, that um, the ice path is wearing off from Puppy. That's really the things that they're concerned about at this stage of the game. And you mentioned the BKB for the Shrek. That's important, of course, but I would say Lycan's BKB is far more important in that regard. They just need to make sure that they can run in without worrying about 
anything, essentially, stopping them from uh, being able to take out the egg, or stopping them from chasing down Abed, for example. Basically, the only response that they will have to that would be the Chronosphere. Yeah, I guess there's the Tusk as well, but I don't think Lycan's all that worried about that. Chrysalis is still kind of suffering here in terms of farm. Still trying to get this BKB here. He's around about 1,200 gold off. Love a man after my own heart, MJZ, going the exact Phoenix build that I was talking about. Tranquils into the wand, into the shard. Hey, when are yours after that? But then Scyther Vice immediately afterwards. He knows that if the fight goes long and they've got the ways to be able to prolong these fights with, you know, um, all of the sustain that they have on their team, then you're probably going to be able to get that Scyther Vice off onto the Wind Ranger or the Lycan, and then it becomes very easy to be able to burst them down. Gonna invade the triangle though, maybe. Oh. For that, a pause. Oh. oh, hopefully we get another pause. There we go. Tim's resuming while disconnected somehow. <laughs> I don't know how that happened. But anyway, hopefully all is okay in the Blacklist camp. Is this game going how you expected, Epi? Um, honestly, I thought they would have a bit more dominance here on the side of Secret because things were looking good for them. You know, they were, they were stealing... Uh, multiple stacks here and the fact that we saw ourselves boom having himself a good time like they were even diving behind tier two and now this pace has completely just changed uh now the item spikings are starting to come out into effect as you see during the time 26 mm. minutes in blacklist starting to have a great time now they're getting themselves bkb we've got a millionaire and a black king bar on palos so these spikings yeah. start to come out now. Blacklist is having a great time, which I, I, I wasn't expecting. I thought Secret would still be able to keep on the pressure, but because they haven't been able to do so, now it's gone into the favor of Blacklist now, and they're the ones on the aggressive, like literally with this smoke as they're about to invade the triangle. Mm hmm. Here we go. Go when ready, and they absolutely are. You've just been able to finish up the BKB on Boom at least, but maybe it won't make its way out to him before this team fight breaks out. They see Puppy like farming. A, just a free kill onto Puppy, yep. Yeah. Yeah, this coming in now easy. with that split earth and the walrus punch there too. Dust of appearance finds the kill. Easy peasy. Meanwhile, Gabby actually scouting out for Arfu here as the stomp comes into effect there. Trying to find the kill. Being disarmed there. Lovely oh, the from MJZ coming in with the Icarus dive. They find the kill onto both the supports. Very, very nicely done once again. Even Tim's realizing that he's not really needed. He doesn't provide any tower-taking threat. So just want to make sure that you're not losing anything on your side of the map after a great couple of kills that they were able to pick up for free. Palos, he might run into Boom here. He would love this. That is worth dropping a Chronosphere on, but... Oh, they're going to back off. Start to pressure these Tier 2 towers now. Well, they happy to do so. I mean, even... Without Aegis, Blacklist seem like they're on a roll here and don't feel like sure. they need this Aegis at all. They're starting to the very well. Is great. Yeah, I know. As in comes a stomp there as well. They're going to try and find Puppy again. The Dust of Appearance is there. As uh, that Jakiro is gone. Down and dead. Dominating spree here for the Phoenix. They'll try and attempt to get themselves the Tier 2 Town out. And Secret really can't respond here at the moment, finding it difficult to do so. They're going to even get the Helm of the Overlord creep as well. They were able to lock in onto it. More stuns to be able to put it into place. Even potentially using the Yule Scepter for that purpose. A free Wisdom Rune as well for Palos. Bringing him closer to that dangerous level 20 talent as well. Just to get that extra attack speed inside the Chronosphere. Everything's coming up Blacklist right now. Oh, maybe perhaps they're going to try and jump Chrysalis, Chrysalis here. He's stuck. Oh, in between the tree line there, the stomp comes off. That's a lot of nuke damage. Goodbye, Wind Ranger. Chrysalis just found and taken out. The Boris punch there as well onto Boom, Ooh. but he is able yeah, to but... flee with the shapeshift. That's the bad thing, though. You don't want to just be popping shapeshift to flee. That's your aggressive tool. That's the way to be able to get it onto the back lines and take out this pesky phoenix that's just been the absolute bane of your existence. Oh, no. I mean, he's going into a nullifier next, and it's going to be quite some time. As, uh, yeah, Afu probably going to die here. Yeah, he's found. Bashed up. Will not be able to TP away. Will be taken out. Although, Boom's just TP'd into three heroes here on Blacklist Rivalry. Is going to be met with a death here. 
Was not expecting them to be there. Did not have themselves any vision near this outpost and will just be deleted. A couple times it feels like Secrets players just haven't been really looking at the minimap, right? Like, there was, uh, when Crystalis died previously, Lesh was TPing in the middle of a creep wave under full vision, and I feel like you don't TP back in that sort of situation unless they know something. They knew he was there, they made the punish happen, and, uh, yeah, I feel like everything's kind of gone downhill, like you said, ever since that 14-minute dive up on that top side of the map beyond the Tier 2 tower. That's the last time they had the win probability on Secrets. Doing really well here on Blacklist Rivalry right now. They take themselves that middle tier 2 tower. They're going to go ahead and get themselves a second one. I mean, Roshan is up for the taking if they want to. It, it's going to move bottom in just a couple of seconds with it turning daytime. So they could go for that if they wanted to. I think, uh, I think Secret are aware of this too. They want to smoke up and try and find themselves a pick off now. Because if they don't and just let them get themselves this Aegis, this could mean trouble for them. Over on into this game. I just laugh at Gabby going to Dagon. He's got Dagon 5. Get up, hold on. Team fight. Oh, they're going to go they for Tim's here. Will they be able to get the kill with the shackle shot? Yes, they will. Tim's will fall in return, though. Gabby coming in with a stomp there. Chrono's fit is ready. Chrono. It connects onto three there. Palos laying into Puppy will find the kill. Corden, though, is he able to activate the Torrent Storm? Yes, he is. The Stampede coming off now. But Corden in some trouble here as Palos trying to pursue him. Bashing him up, there we go, finding themselves three. They only lose the support here on Blacklist Rivalry. Now trying to oh, find Foom here fight. also, but Foom still not against the void. Happen, but healing up here, he's still okay. That shapeshift now going to expire. They find Boom. there we go, four dead on the side here as Secret. They will early lose the support. A worthy trade here for Blacklist Rivalry. Now they can possibly look to take themselves the tier three bottom. They can indeed. Was anyone, was anyone able to claim that gem that was on the ground as well? That's the one thing that I thought they might be able to come out on top with. MJZ, I think someone on the courier oh, picked it up no. as they found Crystal another. Crystal is! He's going to be found! He wanted to go for an aggressive play there. Onto Abed! Oh, that's a rage GG coming out there oh, from Puppy. Dear. Oof. Just caught out of position over and over and over again, I think was the story of this game as a celebratory Dagon 4, I want to say, picked up by Gabby at the end of that one. Uh, who, who do we even give the MVP to that game? Because I feel like Gab Gabby didn't die again, but I feel like while his laning stage stuff was clever in the fact that he wasn't going at all into the double edge, that he went immediately into that blade mail... It kind of was the supports that delayed the game long enough for Palos to look amazing again. Like eight, two, and uh, sorry, nine, two, and ten on that faceless void. It's certainly a lot of damage to be able to have to deal with. But I, I kind of want to give it over to Tim. So many snowball saves that he was able to get off there. Yeah, I, I would agree there. I, I think Tim's had a dramatic effect within this game too here, especially with what you said about the snowball look, save. Look at that! Like, uh, even just I there, know. to go for the first blood, he makes that early rotation when the lane's in yeah. a good spot for Gabby. He dodges out the blast off so they don't get turned around upon, gets the first blood, and then, yeah, Bob's your uncle. <laughs> yeah, he did, did a superb job. I mean, even with the eye shots too, there were some parts where I, I think that they were being engaged upon. Uh, near close to the river and he was able to use eye shards and, and block the pathing there for boom so he couldn't further pursue it's just little plays like that just you know these small mechanics which actually turn out to be really big and actually able to keep you in the game much longer and with that they're able to get their timings here on blacklist rivalry and start to come out on top as you saw they were the ones with the superior damage Another snowball save that we're seeing in the highlights right now dodging out that boat making sure that the phoenix is able to get off that egg then suddenly you've got the ability to turn around with the stampede run over the entire fight split up the damage coming through from this secret roster and yeah it was just divide and conquer yeah i feel like gabby also worked well here with tims because th there were certain situations where tims was being a little bit too aggressive here mm -hmm. uh, and the stamp uh, stampede always came out at the end to always save him but yeah that that kill did you see what happened with the kill in the end um after after they called gg I assume it was just yeah, a death out of so position. That, he, that was it. he saw that um, Lashrak was very low, but obviously, of course, doesn't have the Agnim, so can't use the invisibility during Windrun. Mm -hmm. was, was trying to run up to the high ground, got the near, 
committed the focus fire and the wind run at the same time to catch up, but was yulesed up. And then Tim's came in with a snowball whilst um, the wind ranger was yulesed up, and that you know they just had a split earth and then just laid out all nuke damage, and then you know Chrysalis got absolutely nuked there, so they, they just turned that around there. So I understand how they wanted to end it there. Yeah. Even just at the very last retreat there, you had the, the region on the Lashrak, right? And he was able to uh, still be nice and healthy after all this happened. Is this Does it happen right now or in about 10 seconds? I feel like we're seeing a long replay, so it was just back-to-back -back uh, all happening. It's here. Yeah. It's here. I think it's here. We don't see it, though, because we're looking at the Tier 3, unfortunately. <laughs> oh, there oh, we, we go. go. That's, that, that's where you see it, yeah. So it goes up, gets yours up, and there's the split turf, and then they just get that pick off there, and they, and they call GG. Very clean by Blacklist in this game in particular. I was impressed. This is the level of Dota that they need to be playing if they're going to be ones to advance not just past the Swiss stage. It's great if they are able to do that. And now they're sitting with two wins, one loss in terms of series score. So one win away to one and two after a really impressive opening series against Virtus Pro where that had them one and zero. It's uh, yeah, a little bit of dangerous territory for them after they were looking so impressive to be able to start off this tournament. But... C will be rejoicing uh, with a lot of strong teams coming out here. Talon, they've looked very strong. Aurora, we saw them turn around their performances as well. And now uh, even Blacklist looking to put forward a lot of strong showings. I believe we might have an interview in a little bit, but before that, we need to set it up. So we will go to a very short break, and then we'll be back with uh, hopefully an interview. I'm crossing my fingers. Hello everybody, welcome back to the Elite League. We're coming in for an interview with Dubu. Dubu, can you hear us? I can hear you guys. Awesome. Thank you. Um, you. Unfortunately, as, um, ever, as you were saying there, the, cam <laughs> <laughs> the camera <laughs> is actually, yeah, this uh, this is a this bad camera here, bad focus. We'll, we'll, we'll just have to speak to a blurred vision. Oh, it's working. There we go. That'll do. Maybe, maybe if you're close, it'll sure. work. But yes, um, <laughs> good job, Dubu. Uh, well, you got yourself a second best of three here within the Swiss stage. You guys look pretty comfortable here at the moment. 
Uh, just a question for you, though. Um, of course, with the Swiss stage, uh, you guys have had um, some close qualifiers for Southeast Asia for quite a while, but I think this is um, the first stage of this year where your team's coming in to play some other teams internationally. How do you think you are doing so far against them at the moment? Um, I think we are playing pretty okay. I'll say 90%. Nah, 9 is too high. 80%. Yeah, I would like to see 20% more of improvement. Coach is never happy. I, I understand that and I appreciate that. Uh, I have a question about uh, how you went about joining the team because it was like mid-January, right? And I think that was around the time that uh, Blacklist had just won the Asia Pacific Predator League. They, they came out, they looked really dominant through all of that. And yet since then, one of the main carries of the scene in Raven, you've changed him up for Palos, and you've also gone a completely different route with your position 5 in uh, taking up a South American player in MJZ. Was it uh, a directive from the team? Is that something that you thought needed to change? Uh, tell me a bit about what you feel you've contributed to the team since you joined. I think when I first joined the team, it was like um, quite rushed because Qualifier was gonna start in like three days, so I mm -hmm. fly basically like one day before the qualifier. So we had like one day of boot camp. After that, we after the loss, um, we were talking about what were the problem in the team, and then how we can improve or how we can move forward. And then we concluded that we need the better position five player. Not better. Uh, if I say better, I feel bad. <laughs> but anyway, we need we need to change on our safe lane. <laughs> yeah. So we were looking for um, position five options, and then me and MJG was were friend on Steam, and then I've talked to him if he's interested or not, and then he said he definitely said he said yes. So yeah. Cool. Now that's uh, that's a lot of good information. Thanks very much for that, Dubu. Um, I did have one other thing. Obviously, you started out in C. You had probably your your best big tournament performance when you were as a player with MVP. Uh, I think it was sixth, right? Or no, were you a player then, or was it yeah. still a coach? Anyway, uh, then you, then you went over. You had your stint in NA. Lots of success there. How has it been now coming back to C? Obviously, you had your playing stint on Bleed and now going to coach. How has the scene changed in Southeast Asia since you were last there back in like the 2016 to 2019 years? Um, I feel more the competitive level in C definitely became higher. Back then, there were only like one or two good teams so it's like pretty much um, qualifiers are kind of free but not anymore like there are so many good teams that if you don't play good <laughs> we might not qualify yeah cool uh, i have one last question for you um when we interviewed aurora after their win uh 23 savage actually said that he viewed you guys as the best team in southeast asia how do you feel about that that feels really nice, and I'll say he has good view, <laughs> good sight. <laughs> yeah, yeah, smart guy, smart guy for sure. All right, uh, easy. Yeah. Thank you very much for taking the time with us, Dubu. Uh, good luck for your future series. Just one series win away from getting through to the group stage, and uh, hopefully, for your sake, uh, you guys are able to do it. So, thanks again. Thank you so much, guys. Bye bye. Thank you, Dubu. Oh, so they get themselves a 2-0 oh, yeah. victory there. Absolutely great stuff coming out here from Blacklist Rivalry. But we have ourselves, what was that, two 2-0s two now? Uh, absolutely Ooh. nuts. We're, we're, we're finishing quite early here. We're on a roll <laughs> um, during going through all of these. We, we do have ourselves two more series for you guys to come, though. So don't worry. There's more Dota for you. We're not leaving just yet. There's plenty of days left. We are halfway through the Swiss stage as we're just coming into the third series. So, mm -hmm. what games do we have next for you to come? So, we should be having OG, Entity, OG versus Entity. Yeah. Take it ahead, Danok. <laughs> 
Yeah, no, it's it's looking real good, right? We, this is two teams that have ended up facing up together a lot in recent times, right? They, they honestly feel around that similar sort of level. You've got a little bit of crossover from, you know, uh, players that have played across both rosters with, like, uh, no one being on old G, and then you have DM, of course, who played offlane for OG. Now he's on Entity, so I'm keen to see what sort of the, the dynamic is like, what the banter is going to be for a lot of those. But uh, to make sure that you're not missing any of those, make sure you are following uh, ESB Dota on all of their socials. Of course, there's this mainstream as well as the secondary one where there are some other games going on as well. But why would you want to leave this stream? Uh, Epi and I, I think that's it for us for today, but we've got another two lovely casters to come for the next series of the day. And uh, hopefully you guys can stick around as well for some more great Dota. So thank you for watching. Keep it locked in here and on the other stream at the same time. And we will see you after another break.
What is up, everybody? Welcome back here to the Elite League, brought to you by, of course, Fissure and ESB. I can't believe we're here so early. Like, normally, we're the stream that's running, like, three hours behind the others, but we're uh, two hours ahead of schedule. Some no, of we'll get there. Quick work. <laughs> yeah, I guess now we're making space for the long series, right? But I uh, hope you're all having a great day. My name's Cryptic. I'm here with Z Quixotics. Before we get started, Zach, talk to me, man. How are you feeling? I... I'm so ready for this, man. I've been, I've been hoping. <laughs> I love this. So, I mean, we've gotten to see OG play the uh, last two days. They look great. Them, yeah. um, they've been improving. I feel like day one, they had like a little bit of a strange draft or execution. I don't know what they feel like for game one. But since then, I feel like they've looked better and better, starting to find yeah. their identity around their their latestly formed team with the uh, with Tomato and Whisper joining in. And they're going to be playing against Entity, who's looked pretty good. Two O's in their series so far. And boy, oh boy, they run the Monkey King Courier sniping, which I feel like is just so fun to watch as a uh, spectator. I know a lot of the viewers, it's fun for you guys too. If it shows up in your pubs, you're pissed. But in the games, in the pro seed, it's so fun to watch. And uh, they'll do it. I saw them. They did it earlier, I'm pretty sure. So <laughs> we'll see if OG gives it to them. Yeah, I feel like there's a big difference between like a an idea in a pub game versus an idea in a pro game, right? You're like, okay, this Monkey King support works. We can execute it because we have a game plan and everyone's in on it, right? Everyone's in on it. In a pub game, someone's like, where's, where's my support? I'm losing my lane. This sucks. But uh, we'll see. We'll see if that happens. We got some teams to announce. Of course, OG, you and I have had the pleasure of covering all their series so far. Tomato, BZM, Whisper, Ari, and Seb looking very crisp here in this tournament. I'm excited to see how they do this. Uh, they surprised us with drafts pretty much at every stage of the game so far. Oh, we got cameras. Very nice. Always happy to see Whisper. Good stuff. Front and center there for his team um but yeah yesterday i was like come on no team's gonna pick doom and mars on the same team and they immediately <laughs> picked mars so that was cool um their opponents entity watson no one dm katomi and fishman now you and i definitely hoping for the monkey king we'll see what happens obviously but this team has been very fun to watch we got we covered a lot of them through qualifiers right like we got kind of it's interesting we've actually covered a lot of these two teams yeah, which means we can totally, definitely provide accurate insight into the drafting, right? And throughout totally. the game. Oh, definitely. <laughs> yeah, it's been it's it's always cool to see these teams. Uh, I feel like we always have a blast watching them play. So looking forward to them. Uh, I believe they're just getting into the draft. So hopefully we'll have that up for you guys soon. They're getting their cameras ready. You know, everyone's oh, getting is. ready to play here for you guys. Yeah, I was about to say I'm a big fan of, uh, I think that was Katomi's camera. Uh, that would have been very good. <laughs> yeah, just the just the top of the hairline. That's all you need. Um, but we got a draft. We're, we're just getting into this one. No delays here, everybody. And a lot of the bands I did anticipate, right? The Lesh, Centaur. Uh, is I think the Centaur is a little bit surprising. But inside info, because Zach and I are so just tuned into the Matrix right now. 
Uh, Centaur is the hero they typically run the Monkey King off lane with. So they're kind of looking at it as a way of potentially dealing with the four position Monkey King that they like to play, but we'll see. Yeah, I think it is just a... Uh... Some teams still like Centaur. I know he's dropped off a little bit, especially after his nerfs, but I think Entity still still likes the hero, plays around it well. Uh, Batrider, another hero that they play pretty well, uh, very likely to be on Karaomi. And this is, one, just a good pick, but it's also a bit of a steal from OG. Something OG has tend to do, done, what am I saying? They What they've been doing in their drafts lately is they pick this uh, very flexible support and offlane opener and like we've seen a lot of bat rider doom for example this time banned out and it's like well most teams would run doom off lane and bat rider for support so like here's how we'll play around that then they're like haha surprise bat rider off lane doom four so stealing that bat rider uh taking away that flex for whisper where he can claim that hero if he thinks it's good their response is going to be mars uh, another hero they've prioritized a lot for whisper he's been looking fantastic on it Dude, he literally salvaged like two really rough early games on his Mars. And so mm -hmm. I am not surprised that they keep going back for this. He plays this hero very different from what we've seen other people do on the Mars. Like a lot of times, uh, it, it's very Amar esque, in my opinion, where he's just like staying in the lane and farming, like going Deso as his like second item sometimes. If he's just like, yeah, why not? I can get Deso. I'm still farming. Um, and like only really rotates when he's needed so it's, it's kind of interesting like we don't see him like getting his blink and like kind of roaming around with his team he just goes back to the bottom lane and farms and then makes one rotation with arena and just goes back to the bottom lane and farms it works yeah it seems like i mean we've only watched two series of them so far so it could just be coincidence but it seems like sure. currently what they've been doing is giving uh a little bit of uh, priority to Whisper, where they pick his hero pretty early. There's a lot of good offlaners, but in the game itself, they kind of let him do whatever he thinks he needs to do, which maybe is join the team. Maybe it's farm up for like 15 minutes in that bottom lane. And they've also been picking Tomato's hero pretty late, giving him a really good game. And then BZM, they've been picking more stable mid laners and kind of like, I don't want to say sacrificing him, but it's hard to prioritize all three lanes, right? And so. Lately, it feels like they've been putting more emphasis on the side lanes and BZM. They're like, do your best out there, buddy. We'll help you with the uh, the ruins later. But here's your here's your very stable mid laner. Go get them. Yeah, dude, I, I can't wait to see where these drafts are going to go for these two teams, because I would imagine with a Batrider pick, we're not going to see the Monkey King. Uh, just unfortunately, as much as I, I, I say that, but you know, maybe Entity will surprise us. Maybe they'll run a five bad. Maybe they'll do something weird with this. But yeah, I, I like where they're going on the bands as well. We've been seeing a lot of Razor lately. I don't think it's really been winning now that I think about it. I feel like Razor has not really won much. I feel like my guess without the insider info, Falcons best team arguably right now. They've been winning all the big stuff. They have a ton of Razor players. They make this hero look amazing. Coming up to this thing, a lot of teams were like, okay, what are they doing right? Let's try this Razor hero. Let's practice it. Everyone was running it in their scrims. They're like, oh, the Razor's so good. But that means everyone practices against each other's Razors. They come in here and they're like, oh yeah, we know how to handle Razor. So maybe it hasn't been, maybe it hasn't been working out so well here. Uh, we're going to see a Hoodwink pick up here. This is really good with uh, the Mars. There can be some counter synergy with uh, Breaking Tree sometimes. You got to be a little careful of that. But I wouldn't be surprised to see a Blightstone on that Hoodwink. And then you have a lot of physical burst coming out along with two potential stuns. Like if you lead with Bushwhack, that is lots of burst into the follow-up spear. That is a really dangerous combo. I just have to point out, these guys respect banned Watson's Pudge. That is sick. Like that is not something we see all that often. They are going to go ahead and pick up their Bane, an Entity Classic. It's one of the Heroes Fishmen. Uh, has honestly kind of forced into the meta in certain games. Like a lot of other teams <laughs> kind of avoid this or don't go for the Bane and Fishman's like, no, you guys trust me. It's a, it's a good Bane game. And they're like, how do you know? He's like, well, it's a Dota 2 game. Like every game's a Bane game. Um, so yeah, interesting. Uh, we're gonna see the Bane as the uh, five there. Now, I gotta say, if you ban the Pudge, you're typically looking or hoping for something like a Naga Siren. 
but you don't have 18th pick here. So I don't know if you can go for it. And they actually preemptively pick a Brewmaster being like, all right, we'll pick the Naga Siren. We dare you. Yeah, I like that a lot. It's like you said, they're, they may, they might have the same read. Maybe it's a bait from OG next level, big brain play. But yeah, the only real reason you see Pudge carry nowadays is because of it's a, uh, it's a pretty strong illusion hero counter with that agonims. So sidestepping that brewmaster, another good illusion hero and combos really well with the bat rider. We've seen this several times now where you just throw out the cinder brew, throw out flame break. That could be it. It could just be some casual harass or you then commit uh, pop firefly run in, hit them with the, uh, the, uh, the Q on the brewmaster second slow, and then just like fight. Uh, Luna going to be grabbed here. If she keeps her distance, I mean, she's like pretty strong with the the, uh, the magic uh, loosened beam to secure range creeps from afar and then her passive, but she's relatively short range. She can be knocked back. I'm wondering what five support they're going to pick for her here because I think she is going to need some help against this, this Brewmaster and Batrider lane. I mean, the obvious one is Crystal Maiden, I think a lot of the time, but this also is not a bad clockwork game. You're against Bane, you're against Brewmaster. If there's a, or an Al Alchemist game, mm, yeah. yes. I yes. mean, that's, that's what a... I meant, obviously. I don't know why I would say anything Slip of like the tongue, clockwork. Clock, clockwork, Alchemist. I mean, they're very similar looking, uh, mostly in stature. That's true, that's true. Okay, so that's pretty cool. I mean, it's, is it Alchemist? Mid, or is it actually an alchemist support because wouldn't already, you like usually... to know <laughs> i would like to know what the heck why didn't they tell us <laughs> seb show us give us a sign the other team can't see your cameras don't worry oh uh, that's alchemist five i believe okay great uh what is so you could run it mid it means you're last picking your hard support which i feel would be kind of out there and in a way you leave it open right because you could do that but i i feel like the reason they picked this alchemist here is because they're willing to run the alchemist support we talked about how og is willing to play heroes that no one else is really playing and as long as they see the value in it they're willing to do it sometimes it doesn't look great and then people say like why are they drafting like this but other times like it all comes together and you're like wow they're so so next level right and uh I think this is this is one of them. You know, maybe we'll look silly. They'll just pick the Crystal Maiden last pick, and we'll be like, "Oh, yeah, okay." It was just a mid alchemist, but uh, should be cool. What do you think about the Morphling pick? It's the response. I mean, the Morphling into Marana has looked pretty good. I think we saw yesterday Tomato on the other side of this matchup just destroyed the Luna. I don't know why I said Marana. I realize I said Marana now the first time. Same they're anime. Both okay. heroes. Yeah, they're both from the anime. Main, they're, you know, main characters. Uh, but yeah, the opposite side of this. Um, Morphling kind of destroyed the Luna in the matchup. He like morphs into Luna, waveforms in, pops the shard and is like, I'm you, but doing like twice your damage. So good luck. Um, so I think for the most part, it should be pretty more favored, which is why they go for it. I'm just mostly curious how the Alchemist is going to potentially turn the matchups here. I'm just going to let Seb cook and be like, okay, I'm just, you know, do your thing, Mr. Mad Scientist. But it's, uh, yeah, definitely an interesting development for the draft. I, I think Entity's draft is very straightforward. Like this makes a lot of sense to me. Every pick. <laughs> yeah, make make space for the Morphling. You got a Bane fairly strong laner. Not as strong as he used to be, I feel like, but still pretty solid. And then uh, in Fishman's hands, of course, I'm, I'm confident in that hero. And then Brewmaster, Batrider, good lane. So I think mid here, just a solid playmaker, most likely. Entity is not last pick. So just something that isn't going to lose too many matchups and probably provide a little bit of jump like I, I know you have fiends grip and we probably will see a pretty good blink timing on bat rider if it's uh anything the meta usually goes like but I, I think having one more hero to go fast is good because you need to potentially slow down this alchemist core so kunkka i like that we don't see too many kunkka spirit vessels nowadays but i i wouldn't hate it if he did it although 
We could see Brewmaster do it as well. Um, but I, I do like this. It's a strong laner, not a lot of bad matchups, and he can play a very fast tempo. And something I really like, when you look at that OG lineup, there's a very high potential for stacks. Luna carry, but possibly an alchemist as well. So Kanka is a hero, possibly good lane, get some help from supports. All right, let's go run to their triangle, guys. I bet there's a huge stack there. Let's tide bringer it, you know, throw in the AoE spells, like steal all of it. Yeah, I wonder, like Kanka is one of the few heroes in the that is melee that Alka actually doesn't beat mid. So I think they're going mid lane. Yeah, so we're going to see the OD come out. I was trying to figure out, I was like, uh, it's not a great Husker game. You could look for something like a Monkey King, uh, but I love this OD pick. It's one of the better heroes against the Morphling as well. It gives you uh, great harassment into heroes like Kunkka. Gives you a good save as well from Fiend's Grip. It actually checks a lot of boxes. So BZM, he has a lot of weight on his shoulders here because it is not like a super easy to execute hero. But I think for the most part, the five alk with a luda that's what i'm keeping my mind that's what i'm going to keep my eyes on in this game and if it works out dude we're going to see Hubs a lot beware. more alchemist we're going to be seeing a <laughs> lot more alchemist if it works i'm sure they can I'm, I'm trying to imagine how like usually what you see is uh the the potion spam and when you do want to fight the acid spray reducing armor is pretty good especially for a hero like luna who does uh, hit pretty hard in the early game compared to other carries and Batrider is a hero who likes to sometimes make stacks in the enemy's jungle because you're pretty confident you can farm it sooner uh, but if you do that alchemist can help steal that with the acid spray uh, so that could be cool how it plays out later on I am you know that's a little bit of a question mark but I think it'll be fun regardless and I'm really excited to see OD as well because there was this period of time where there were a lot of melee mid heroes uh there still are quite a few like kanka but even at that point it was like why don't people want to play od it seems good versus these heroes it seems like kanka is popular like oh it's, it's a good response to x mark here you can save people who are being like fiends gripped lassoed stuff like that um and we've seen these kind of drafts come up before and then people still don't want to play od but this time og pulling it out and i'm excited to see like were we justified in thinking OD is a good hero in the situations? Or maybe there's a reason no one was picking it, right? <laughs> maybe it just falls flat. Well, we'll see. Welcome to the stream, everybody. It is game one here of our first qualifying series. The winners of this match will move on to the round robin group stage. So every series is very important here in a Swiss style group stage. It's one of the reasons I really like this format, but we are at our first qualifying series. So we'll see what happens. Entity and OG going head to head here for that first spot. Katomi, they're actually just a little bit afraid. They don't know who's on the other side of that tree line, so they will not risk it. He has full vision of this, though. He sees all of these heroes here. Yeah, I, I think they want to get in here to one place ward, play aggressive, which actually this is all scouted by an observer on the cliff below them. Uh, but two, I, I'm wondering if they're going to block the camp. OK, yeah, there it is. So you have a bat rider for support and then a Kunkka in the mid lane. There's a very high chance this lane is being farmed. So they're going to go ahead and block actually both of these. They're even going to use no, actually, okay, wait, that observer is just outside the box, I think. So they're just scouting it out. Yeah. Blocked hard camp. I'm surprised it's where it is because it's uh, one unfortunate sentry could potentially take out both. But either way, yeah, we'll see how, uh, how they decide to take advantage of that. I think they're aware how, you know, a lot of people have been playing the Batrider in Katomi. He's definitely not an exception. This lane should be pretty good for tomato i believe and so we might see the bat rider kind of peel off and go play around those stacks he's gonna try ain't nothing there all right so i have a theory about this od hero you ready okay before his agonim scepter change the hero was actually just a meme. You're like, ha 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 ha, I'm removing you from the game for eight seconds. How fun is this? And like, Seb might die. Seb is gonna die, <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> well, uh, remember I said this lane's gonna be pretty good for Tomato. Um, I definitely s meant DM. I feel like okay. I'm gonna throw Seb under the bus if I talk about it, but unfortunately he 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 went for the uh, unstable concoction spam as one does with Alchemist Five support, but they immediately backed out. He stunned himself, and then they just walked in with the Cinder Brew Flame Break and then ran him down. So a bit of a rough start there, but really, really, it's good play from Entity to recognize like we haven't seen Alchemist in a while, but actually this is exactly what he does. We know it the second he pops W back out and then he can't really do all that much. Yeah. It, you know, the copium here is that Tomato did get a, a few things of solo XP, right? So there's that. But yeah, they're they're super far behind in the lane right now already. Uh, they have the level two advantage. They've got a full uh, wave still available for Entity here. So this bottom lane is gonna be pretty rough. Yeah, the nice thing about Luna, though, is that uh, even in these lanes, you kind of just, like, spam out the wave, and then you go jungle, right? So I, I yeah. think Tomato will... I think he'll still be okay. We've been seeing him play really well throughout this this tournament so far, and don't expect that to change, really. So we'll see how it goes. The lane's not over yet, anyways. They can still come back. Acid Spray and Concoction is a pretty nasty combo once you get some levels in it. Yeah, plus more points in Lunar Blessing, just more damage for the Luna, right? So, yep. It is a. I can see the lane. I understand what the idea behind it is. It's definitely an unfortunate death there from Seb, but, well, he's going to take a lot of damage here as well. Can't really. Well, he's going to channel the Concoction, try and figure out who to throw it on, and. It will just pop again on himself, so. It's a zoning concoction. They're super zoned right now. He's gonna get a Lotus, oh, maybe? He should get this if he clicks fast. Well, he, did, he didn't get oh, it. He didn't turn fast so, enough. Turn rates, baby. Gotta worry about those. All right, Top real lane, quick, Ari. Though. Well, hold on, hold on. Ari, one more hold auto on, attack. On, one more, one more. Bushwhack. One more, one more. He's actually out. He's out. We got a blood grenade. Nope. He's gonna go for the deny. All right, go ahead. Um, what were you gonna say? No, I was gonna start briefly talking about this top lane where uh, we were kind of focused on that bottom lane, the fun out five. But top lane so far, kind of okay. I think Whisper had a early lead for a bit there, uh, but Watson's caught back up. Uh, you know, like maybe a few CS behind, but not too bad. Looks like Fishman. Nice nightmare. Gonna grab the the Lotus for himself as well. How is it still Whisper, there? He, I, they were chasing Ari down, I guess. Oh, and, that's uh, true, right, yeah. Whisper must have been prioritizing lane equilibrium or something, thinking he could get it later, but... Sneaky Fishman with the, with the nightmare. So, mid lane is interesting, because OD is definitely a hero that matches up well into this game, but it doesn't necessarily, like, beat the Kunkka, right? Like, there's... He... He doesn't have enough damage early uh, to, to to kind of sink into this hero. He, he does have two points Astral. He'll probably start maxing Arcane Orb at this point because that is where a lot of your early game damage comes from. Um, it's also your only farming spell, right? Like in the past, OD's Astral used to hit in an AoE and that's why we saw him as like a big farming hero. Uh, that doesn't do that anymore. Yeah, it's uh, oh bottom lane Seb in trouble. I think he's gonna fall here. Same. I've seen this one before. Yep. Uh, Alk fives maybe not panning out the way they want it to. Did he self stun? I, I don't think so. Did he? He just got. He just got. I missed yeah, the exact got, start of it. He took a lot of damage from the neutral camp, is what it was. He was. They were fighting over a hard camp. Took a decent chunk of damage, and it was just a, the knockback from Brewmaster Fat Rider, which we're seeing here once again being put to pressure on the Tomato. He has a salve and a stick to play with, so he'll just start backpacking all. Oh no! No! Okay. Well, that does give away the ward spot. Um, but yeah, Tomato just loses a fresh salve. That is super unfortunate for him. Super fortunate Tomi for Kataomi. He's feeling great. 
Yeah, and they actually just aggressively place a, a sentry here. Level 5 here on this Brewmaster. They're just going to chase Seb under the tower again. Did he deny himself? Uh, I was going to say, go maybe he goes for the deny, but it doesn't look like they'd let it happen. And now Tomato, because that salve is canceled, a little bit fragile, does have 12 wand charges looking for Katomi, does manage to Can get the, the kill stun? thanks to the rotation in from Ari. He doesn't know there where to throw it. There is a Kunkka on his way down here, and that He's got is, boat. A, is a very dead squirrel. Oh, trying to do some damage back, but they're a little bit too tanky. Double Bracer on this Brewmaster. Early lead here for Entity. Fishman's yeah, here with the I, rotation bottom. I feel like this OD pick was supposed to do a little bit better not sure if it's uh like we said it's out of the meta for a while maybe bbzm hasn't been playing it a bunch or maybe this is why we don't see it as much um bottom lane i i have to imagine this is not what they were expecting for it either tomato big bait here oh no said this is the stun okay not as much of a bait now uh he's out okay fishman wasting a lot of time from og Okay, uh, over under, how many stuns have hit the Alchemist versus the enemy team? Bounty. <laughs> how many have been thrown? Um, I think, I think at least three self stuns, four maybe, versus I don't know how many he's thrown. Um, again, just an early lead for Entity. They're not. It's not like an overwhelming lead. It definitely makes a difference, though, with this Brewmaster and the Kunkka both having their ultimates available. As you can see, Luna does not feel safe to be anywhere near this lane. Meanwhile, Mars not having a great time top, falling a little bit behind Watson. It's it's kind of just a slow start here for OG, but Entity have to be very happy about uh, their kind of state of the game. Fishman's going to be able to get some stacks in the triangle. Batrider is already level 5, and he's the one clearing up stacks in the enemy jungle now. So they are going to be just farming on all of these heroes that they can. Yeah, I mean, they're just going to try to line up some timings. Like, right now, the lanes are all... Uh oh Reese. Seb's going to get found in the bottom lane, a rotation in from no one as well. But you time the boat, you know it's going to hit. Kill goes to the Kunkka. Very nice. Again. Yeah, like all these lanes are going fine. You'll see like small rotation from Kanka to use the boat, but besides that, you can line up some timings. Like DM's probably telling his team, like I'm having an amazing start. I'm gonna hit this radiance so early. Like just let me finish it, and then, then I'm still gonna keep farming. I don't know. We've seen this guy do this quite a lot. <laughs> he could also, you know, get the team to play around him at that point because it'll be such a fast radiance. It'll be really strong. But we've also seen DM perform very well when he's allowed to play pretty greedy just keep farming on his own and then have like some crazy mid to late game impact. But curious what they go for this time. I feel like you can bring some earlier pressure to make space for the Morphling, uh, especially because Tomato did not have the greatest start, but that he will recover in the jungle if you leave him alone. Uh, the question mark is this Alchemist. I don't really know where they thought the Alchemist's strength was. He's not like the greatest laner in the oh, world. No. Oh, they're gonna find Tomato at half health. Yeah, I mean, this is just a really sick ward. It's not going to get dewarded at, at all, right? Like, the they know exactly where he's going to be. He can't be anywhere else, and so they're just constantly finding these really easy rotations. Uh, this yeah, game is falling ward. apart really fast. And Seb... If they actually get vision of him, he'll end up dying mid lane. The boat does get committed this time to take down Ari, who's also really struggling this game. Barely level 5 on the support hood wing. And Seb, bottom lane. They are going to go for the dive here. He does have chemical rage this time, though. So, should be able to pop that. Try and keep himself alive for a little bit as the rotations are going to come through. BZM is here, but the Cyclone's going to put him into the air. And Whisper... Can't really deal anything. The rotation's a little bit too slow. Just super long TPs. He's looking for Katomi. Another Cyclone comes through. And Brewmaster recombines underneath this tower. So they're not going to find anything for this first rotation from the Mars. This is a really rough start for OG. Yeah, I was going to say that Mars at least is having a pretty decent game. right? And he's 
He's uh, maybe not crushing his lane, but he's like finding some stuff for himself. But yeah, first rotation not connecting at all hurts a lot. I, I guess you can also say Brew Split did not get a kill or the tower at that point, but took less heroes for them and they didn't rotate. So I think Entity's overall pretty happy with that. And they're going to yeah. work on the blink on the Mars. It's still a, a while off, oh, but so off of that, if they could find some kills, OG can get back in this. We've seen OG fall behind, but play very patiently until they find right, like the exact perfect fight. So there's definitely no way we can count them out. But I I think this is not the way they envisioned this draft going. So uh, it's not like they picked a late game team intentionally, thinking like, oh yeah, we'll fall behind, but we'll win later. Uh, it's just something they're going to have to do now uh, based on what's, what's uh, been going on so far. Yeah, and I do think, I mean, the OD is a very scary hero as this game goes on, right? We, we've seen kind of the funny moments of, like, Morphling getting caught from an Astral and instantly dying. Bottom lane, big Fiend's grip out onto the Alchemist. Katomi gets the lasso. Alf's gonna get the stun off in the last second, but you've lost Ari. You need to clean this up and get something. But Whispers Arena can't even finish off the Batrider. He's too damn tanky. And now he's the one in trouble as a wave for comes through from Watson. Sanity's Eclipse will help finish off the Bane. Seb throwing one more stun to try and get the safety, but a Flame Break pushback is going to ignite that Cinder Brew. And he's just going to get slowly ran down here. Seb not having a great time on this. Well, actually, he might turn around on a Katomi. That, uh, the Chemical Rage one is more? still standing. No, 50 HP. He will live. A nice fight again from Entity. They get a lot of rotations into the bottom lane. Radiance bottom tower is under attack. That helped DM finish up his sacred relic. He's thousand gold off of the Radiance now. I think they're gonna park him top, let him finish that. Morphling's gonna hang out down here. Just farm up. So Seb's. I don't know. I'm curious if he's going to be dedicated to just like shove out bottom, make space for Tomato to farm, and if Seb dies, Seb dies, whatever. Um, but with the Grievel's Greed and the Acid Spray, like he gets a little bit more out of this than any other support would. Yeah, I can understand that. And that's kind of why I get the idea of the Alk pick. When it, the map is so huge that if you're able to. Well, top lane, unlucky for Whisper. It's gonna be a rotation from Kunkka as well. All right, he does get the courier. He uh he tried to get the astral in mid lane to stop the Kunkka TP, but it was just barely out of range. Um, but uh, I forgot what what point I was trying to make earlier. But oh yeah, the map being as big as it is, like there's a lot of different areas uh that supports can soak for experience in gold. And Alk definitely is one of the ones that can take advantage of it. It is an unorthodox pick. We'll see if it pays off. Obviously, like, right now, not looking so hot, but he's still managing to stay pretty healthy in terms of net worth. Yeah, I guess that's a bit of the, uh, the Alchemist effect. Would have liked to be even further ahead, but he is farming up, and Seb has tended to play, like, greedier position five so a little bit par for the course perhaps they're rotating they really on to here. morphling can they chain stun they got the sp they got the spear oh, such a sick rotation from whisper dude it's one of those things that you cannot throw the arena first you have to go for the perfectly timed spear onto that arena formation sick. yeah that was just a really good bait by by Seb and just the actual perfect execution from the Mars. In the jungle here, we're gonna see Seb get caught out, at least for the moment, no one. Does have X, does pull him back into the Torrent Fishman close by as well. They'll just commit the Fiend's Grip, they don't care. BZM, not gonna make it in time for the Astral. I think you're not too sad about that. He's telling his team like, oh, that was Fiend's Grip, it's fine. But you're still happy to pick up that kill for the Konka who Went blade mail. He's gonna get a halberd. I, I kind of like this actually. He's a really active, high utility build, especially because he knows his brewmaster has such a fast radiance. He's like, yeah, we have the damage. I'll just provide a lot of utility. How are they gonna fight back if they're disarmed? If I have all this evasion, free hoodwink kill. Maybe not. 
Yeah, maybe less free for sure. BZM does drop the Sanity's Eclipse. No one taking a lot of damage. Seb here on the Alk will be able to chainstun up the, the Kunkka, and that is a massive win for them. They're looking for more. Concoction on cooldown for another three seconds. Fishman has no Nightmare quite yet. They can actually get the Bane. This would be huge. Going for the self-stun. You can wake him up, and it will be able to connect. And with that one, they might just find themselves two kills. Okay. A little bit of over-aggression here from Entity at the Tier 2 tower ends up going OG's way. During Man, all even... of these last few things, though, I'm not sure if you saw Katomi. He's got a Blink Dagger now. Yeah, he's been having a great game. He's looking at BZM. I don't think he has the damage on his own, though. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Ooh, he's gonna get the TP out. Just barely outside of a ward vision as well. That is oh. so close. That was a sick ward place from Katomi, but he was on the, just one pixel away. I, like actually one pixel. That was so close. That could have been that could have been the the OD kill because he would have blink lasso, dragged it back to the team, Radiant and they probably run him down from there. So yeah. a bit sad not to get that, but they will take the top tower, so not a total loss. Uh, I mean, that fight was good for OG, and I, I want to highlight that. Even though it's 5 to 12, it looks really good for Entity. Ten of those kills are on support. Six of them are on Seb, four on Ari. So, you're getting kills, but the cores are still still kind of farming. You still got to respect him. We saw a really sick play by Whisper at that bottom lane, and then good rotations in that mid lane to punish that slight overextension. Uh, just showing, you can't count OG out. Lasso mid lane onto Seb. The boat committed as well. Dude, this boy's tanky. The arena's gonna trap three. BZM coming in as well, trying to finish off the Bane first. Should be able to do it. No one with the TP, or I'm sorry, or just classic walk away. Watson hiding in the trees. Looks like it is just gonna be a one for one trade. The arena for the boat. Okay, so Whisper was sitting on like 3,500 gold, has decided to opt for a first item BKB, Dying now going the Deso. We see him do this in in some games, right? Where he's like, all right, I don't need Blink Dagger. We're going to play to just like have Arena as a follow-up, and I will build damage. Yeah, I think especially versus... Like, once your team's starting to fall behind, it's hard to... It's hard to blink initiate guarantee kills if you are behind and you're just trying to like recover on the different cores. Like that playmaking potential is not fully there. And the BKB actually has stats to help you farm and actually also like dissuades the enemy from wanting to go on you. Um, so I, I think he'll, he has a Deso and blink queued up. I'd be a little surprised if he goes Deso next oh, before it. the blink but yeah he might he might indeed this whisper baby top. he's doing it they're, yeah, doing they're gonna get roshan they just finished up manta on morphling as well should be a fairly easy one for them to grab hoodwink just barely seeing the bat rider there we'll back away as we're gonna also see fishman come to the bottom side with this fiend script drops a aggressive ward and sentry in the lane and bane is hunting the bonus night vision does, it, does Bane have bonus night vision now still? He does, doesn't he? Just a little bit. Maybe. I don't know. Bat Rider. I think. And some trouble. Big God's Rebuke from Whisper. And now Ari with a sharp... Oh, that sharpshooter was facing the wrong way, but the arena comes out and they've got the Bane. BZM's got to be careful now. He needs to run. Oh, no one gets him on the X. No Astral available. This is going to be a great find for Entity. Under attack. This is a sick game. It's very bad. It's and getting forth. close, dude. It's getting real close. Some of this is the alchemist effect, which is mm -hmm. uh, there's like it's 2k, but that, it's a little more meaningful than usual because alchemist has inflated net worth. Uh, I, I will highlight alchemist is getting kind of close to the OD's net worth. I don't know if that. Is that a good out game or a bad OD game? Uh, not okay, fully no, sure. Course. A little bit of, yeah, a little bit of both here in this uh, game one. Let's see who gets the Tormentor. It's between Alk and Hoodwink. I think it's better on Hoodwink. Yeah. 
Her the boomerang is actually such a sick ability. Although Berserk Potion having a basic dispel might be kinda cool versus like Nightmare and Enfeeble. True. Well, you don't have it yet anyway, so. Both teams smoking up. They're looking mid. Whisper. His smoke gets popped. He knows something's coming. BZM on the OD holding his astral at the moment. There's going to be the lasso. Seb looking to get on in there. There's going to be the spear out to cancel. Can he get the astral to save himself? He can. And now Fishman falling low. Need to be careful. Yeah, they're just going to lose the OD here. There's nothing that they can do. Seb now on the run. Stunning up the Mars on the backside. Still holding the arena at the moment. As they do manage to get a stun, chain stun onto the Bane, there's your arena, but a great Cyclone from DM just puts it to a stop. The flak here from the tower, leaving them in a pretty awkward spot. Spear will catch and actually send no one up onto the cliff. Why did it not stun him on that cliff, actually? What? I don't know. It just, like, bumped him. That's very weird. How peculiar. Mars did end up going for the blink first. Whew. Got to have some playmaking potential, so I'm glad. I'm happy to see that. Um, it's boring. <laughs> it is a little boring, but I, I don't know Give if you get that deso. kill there without the blink. <laughs> yeah, true. Maybe you get a different kill with the Deso, though. Uh, it was... So, Entity feeling just a little bit stronger, right? And that they, they have a lot of different ways of locking heroes down in these fights. Ari's about to be deleted in the top lane. Oh, so close. I mean, he's probably still dead. Yeah, there's another adaptive strike coming through. Could tell me with the auto attack. Yeah, I think... Looking at the teamfight execution, it's like Fishman goes for a Fiend's Grip, and then you have basically a couple spells that you can throw to interrupt it, but someone's got to put themselves in a bad position to do it, right? Unless it's Whisper blinking in with his BKB, getting the spear off and, and like trying to delete the Bane, but that hasn't happened. Yeah, I think it's also, it's also tough because Fiend's Grip from the back, he's working on an Aether Lens, so he's going to be pretty far back. Like you said, you gotta run in to get it, but that means you're going into boat. It means you're threatening lasso, like we're seeing use here on Mars. You got like Brewmaster Radiance in front of you. It's really hard to get there. Torrent Storms online as well. So it's really tough to cancel this Fiend's Grip. I think OD's gotta be in the back to Astral, whoever gets Fiend's Grip. But with that Mars kill, they're actually oh, just pushing no, tier OD. Three. Oh, BZM! Oh, what a pullback at the perfect time from no one here, just to make sure he doesn't get the self astral. Dude, just a blind torrent from no one onto the side there sets it up. That's all he needed. I mean, Ari's doing a decent chunk of damage here with these acorn shots, but Entity will claim this lane of Brax. They don't lose anything. They have 35 seconds still on the Aegis. They claim themselves two core kills. They're now 8,000 gold ahead and are really starting to push this game's advantage. Is actually just more farm for the alchemist now now he'll sit yeah. top lane and farm all of this he just walks into the torrent man that is rough tries to go for the four staff astral but yeah that is a massive pickoff a lot of damage coming from watson who for the most part he's just been like chilling and farming right he joins a couple fights here and there but he is pretty farmed here at the top of the net worth and that was his Aegis. I, I think they'll just chill a little bit. He's got his Conda off of all of that. He's going to work on the BKB. I guess they don't have to chill too much. If they find a fight, they can just keep going. But if they wait for the second Roshan, I think that'll also be okay. So they'll just see what they they find or don't find and go from there. Yep. Radiant Scan just barely doesn't connect. I mean, they, they saw them smoke under a ward. So they are not looking to play on the bottom side here. Tomato might grab one more wave mid, but needs to be careful. Yeah, he's just going to use the Mantas, <laughs> and he's going to split push. He's going to meet They're still towards looking, though. They see DM, for sure. Seb's going to break the smoke, pops the Concoction, Whisper, ready to go on the backside if he can find his opening. DM will be the one that they find. They get the Spear, they find the Kunk up of the Lasso is connected onto the Luna. Big Sandy just Eclipse drop, Whisper with the BKB, trying to do his best here to survive. A waveform in from Watson. He's isolated from his team. They're turning their attention on over to him if they can finish the job. But he just pops the OD with a Conda. And now Alchemist stunned up on the backside. He's in trouble. Tomato just getting ran down from all these Brulings. And it's going to be a big win. Just too far behind on OG is Tomato. Now, 
running back to the fountain. Dude, I thought for sure. There's no way Watson makes it through that fight, but this man playing to the limit. It was a little close. The Conda hit got him probably a little lower than he he was expecting. Immediately turns on strength. He's like, whoa, that was a little close. But once he does, he, he has the shard, and it's just the... Uh, yeah, I mean, he, he was just shifting strength the entire time after that. No worries. And they don't quite have the damage because of the... Well, I think with the OD they could have, but OD gets killed pretty quickly. He's, like, surrounded by the Brulings, hit by the Conda. Uh, his health was just gone so fast. Yeah, you need a BKB on the OD to, like, kind of play this game, but he also needs a Blink Dagger, right? Like, it's so rough to play the OD into something like Brewmaster and Kunkka. There's the AoE blind that's causing him to miss a lot of his attacks from Arcane Orb, which are... You know, kind of important for this hero's damage. A little. But then also, you have just the constant X, the torrents to follow up if you go for an Astral. It's it's so rough. So he's actually going for Blink, going to hold off on BKB for now. And try and play with that instead. I will say Ari has managed to find a lot of net worth now. I mean, you said earlier, if the Alk is approaching your mid OD, is it a bad OD game or a good Alk game? Well, how do you feel about the Hoodwink? Hoodwink's definitely a hero who plays greedy, and I think after the start they had, I mean, maybe he was considering other items or not, I don't know, but he went the Maelstrom to help have the wave clear. Just like one Q, QW pretty much instantly clears a wave. So we're in that split push portion. It'll sometimes get you picked off like Whisper up here, but you kind of got to do this, drag out the game a little bit. Try to uh, buy some more time. Seb about to walk high ground. So is Tomato a huge torn boat combo is going to set up three heroes. The BKB comes out right away from Tomato. You've lost the Alk and OD tries to force after the low ground. No shot at escaping. No one. This guy deserves a tip. That was so sick. The tidal oh wave even to find the OD. Come on, man. I thought they were finding the Kunkka. Hunk of no, found dude. three of them. Oh, playing in that. his water park now. Yeah, with that, I mean, this this tower is gone. They have a fortify, but as soon as you use the fortify, I think you're losing everything. So here's one. Let's see if they want to respect this and wait for Roche, but I don't think they have to. Yeah, there's you one tower. You have Mars Maybe they'll just Arena get one technically, set. but no BKBs on your Luna. So yeah. They might just get defend. one set and wait for Roche. Yeah, okay, looks like it. Well, they'll go set up for Roche. While we have a moment here, uh, I do want to highlight, I, I really like Entities warding this, this game. Off of the early lead they have, they have placed so many deep wards, and in, in weird spots too, so it's not been easy to find. And they've been blocking a lot of camps too, which we don't see much anymore because the map is so big and sentries are limited that it's it's pretty painful to use sentries to block camps and then you can't deward the rest of the map but because they've been so ahead they kind of have a little bit more room to do so and the fact that they were winning the lanes they kind of know it's like what is og's recovery plan it's to jungle so we don't have to block every single camp but if we block one camp here one camp here one camp here right it's kind of spread out that the supports are the ones who have to unblock and they like they're also wasting time moving around while unblocking, you don't always know it's been blocked, so like it still gets a block off, right? So they've just been reducing OG's farm while also then having the vision to go find pickoffs, and it's allowed them to play so aggressive this whole game. Hoodwink gonna break the smoke, seeing them come through the portal. Nice movement from Ari. He's trying his best eye to the trees, pops the bushwhack, still on the run, but you're gonna be chased down by Wanson. Nice attempt, but. Very difficult to get away from these guys. Katomi has BKB force. Like he's sitting on two thousand HP on the Bat Rider. It's a lot of health. Yeah. Fun fact, I think about Bat Rider, he has the highest base HP of any hero in Dota Two, if I'm not mistaken. I'm gonna fact check you. It's if you're he wrong. has very low base, or he has very high like base strength or something but his strength gain is like really bad it's something like that 
It's like pretty nuts. He's like one of the tankiest like heroes for no reason. Katomi, top lane, play Glassdose, found BZM. We're gonna be able to find DM as the rotation in as well. Astral's there, Sandy's Eclipse comes down, but god damn, this Batrider. Just so strong. Oh, Maybe it's the highest like base me. HP of non-strength heroes. Maybe that's what it is. That is correct. Tiny okay. is actually the highest at 30 base strength, but Bat that's Rider and Spear Breaker at 28. So that's what it is. Okay. As a universal hero, he is up there. Nice. Yeah, I was just thinking back about it. And I'm like, wait a minute. There's what? There was one exception. Now that I now I remember. Bottom lane, you don't have an OD. Seb realizing, okay, maybe I can't afford to throw this stun. Don't know who I'm gonna connect it on anyway. The split comes out from DM. He's gonna go ahead and just cyclone up Whisper onto the backside, making the space here for the Mega Creeps. Those will be secured. Watson still protected by that Aegis, even by a BKB, just for good measure. And Your Entity, full mate. control of the game, it feels like, since the start. Mega creeps are just more creeps for, for the Grievous Lasso Greed to farm. Lasso out. They've got Whisper. He gets the BKB. He gets the damage on. But they're just so tanky on these heroes on the backside. They can't do anything. The Disarm hits the OD. Tidal Wave pulls back the Alchemist. And just like that, Entity claim three as they're looking to for uh, looking for the Tier 4. He's looking to close this game out. Tomato. He's like, yeah, let's just tap out, guys. I, I don't even want to fight. Let's, let's, just, let's just go next the GG. I think this starts in the laning stage. I don't think OD did as well as they were hoping for. Entity pretty happy with that win there. Look at that. Smiles across the board, mostly. Uh, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> some of them still very serious in the, in the zone. Uh, yeah, I, I don't think OD had the effect you wanted it to. It, it's pretty hard to shut down a Kunkka, but I think he wanted to shut it down a little bit more with a, a last pick, counter pick like the OD. And then, yeah, Seb did not have a great time in that bottom lane. That Alchemist pick did not pan out for them. He's still cooking, you know? It's fine. It's one of those things that uh, he had to take a moment to kind of experiment on the Alk, see how, he, how it felt. I will say this. I understand the hero. I get why they pick it. The problem is the Batrider Brewmaster lane has just been incredibly strong and very consistent. It's DM's like most played off lane hero in uh, in like the qualifiers up and through this tournament. It's basically Centaur and Brewmaster. If you give them these heroes, if you give them the first pick Batrider as well, they're gonna do this. So it's very much just Entity getting so much comfort picks in this game. And yeah, I think uh, they played it just exceptionally well. Definitely. At 10 minutes, they've got all three top net worths on the core by like 1 to 2,000 in their counterparts. So um, the, the net worth didn't look that crazy. That was because of the Alchemist. But in most other games, we would have seen like a uh, 5,000 net worth lead for Entity by 10 minutes, which is usually pretty bad. Uh, it's not it's not great to be in that position. Yeah, that's usually the, you know, those are definitely your sad games for sure. I mean, there was definitely some moments where you can see, like, OG, they have, like, an idea. They have, like, an execution on how they can target, but you're just so far behind, and the the entire team of Entity is pretty tanky, right? Like, when you factor in this a couple misses from Radiance, how it can such massively affect your team? Uh, Watson is just never in under threat. Like, this was the fight right here. I'm like, surely he dies, right? No, just turns around, pops the OD with, like, a 500 damage nuke. And then he's got the uh, the Luna Shard. The Again, those Glaives running where he's just got, oh, casual 20% damage reduction. Goes All quite, attribute shifting. <laughs> yeah, it goes pretty far when you're like 4,000 health as well, you know? Yeah, it was really hard to kill him. He had so much space too, just off of uh, Kanka and Brewmaster having such strong games, the support with the great vision setting things up. And even if you aren't making a play with that vision, you know when they're trying to make plays on you. So you can just dodge it. We saw the first rotation from OG not pan out either. Uh, so it, it just felt like a very clean game from Entity. I, I think OG had room to experiment. So before, you know, before any viewers and fans are too upset with that, I think OG coming into the series, they want to 
they try stuff, right? And this is game one of a series. They're also two series up, so even if they end up losing this, they still have more chances to get through. And I think they wanted to to try some new stuff. We see Alchemist, OD, heroes we don't usually see in a draft. And unfortunately, they didn't quite pan out this time. But I'm I'm glad we got to see it. And I, I wouldn't be surprised, though, coming into game two, that OG just... Okay, tone it back a little bit. Let's let's get this game to win. Let's try something a little bit more standard. Yeah, and I think Entity have no intentions of changing things up, really, right? They, this is exactly mm -hmm. their bread and butter. This is what they love to play in every game. And so, no, well, if they happen to get it again, I imagine they'll run back a very similar draft. You and me, we're definitely hoping for the potential, like, Centaur Monkey King offlane. I think those are always the most entertaining. And maybe we'll be graced with that one but for now we've got to go to a short break and we'll be back in a little bit with game number two of og versus entity in this qualifying series we'll see y'all in just a bit
Welcome back, everybody. It's game two of Entity versus OG on this qualifying series. About to begin, which uh, Entity looking as good as ever, I'll be honest. This team has surprised, I think, a lot of people coming through the qualifiers of some recent tournaments. They are looking exceptionally good here today, and I love to see that. My name is Cryptic. I'm here with ZQuixotics, and we've got some probably spicy games lined up based on the OG drafts that we've seen so far. Yeah, I mean, that was definitely, we were saying we might see some experimentation coming in uh, with this being, you know, all the teams here are 2-0, and so they have a little bit of room. Uh, I, every team has a different approach to that, so I'm curious, like, whoever ends up winning, we can ask them in the interview about, like, what their team mentality is with, do they feel the experiment, or is it like, yeah, we were tryharding all the time, I know that draft looks funny, but, like, we fully believed in that. Um, that's, I, I always hate to say, oh, they're experimenting and, like, you know, maybe like <laughs> throw under the throw them under the bus if they're like really trying. But uh, yeah, I mean, I think it's fine to experiment here. So it's always it's I think it's cool to see some new heroes. I mean, aren't you guys tired of seeing the same the same stuff all the time? What? Right. So let's mix it up. People always like XD, you know, ALK support a little, but at the same time, it's like, what, what do you want to see? The same goddamn five heroes picked every game? No, at least we're getting some variety. Um, I will say these bands make a lot of sense coming out from Entity. They, of course, ban out the Doom Chen. Again, not letting those slip through. They will go ahead and focus ban out the Bat Rider and the Timber Sauce. So all comfort picks from OG already removed from the pool. We're Disruptor, Kunkka. I would love to see... Oh, okay. I was like, I was. I would love to see one of two things happen. Either you ban out the Brewmaster um, or you ban out the Shadow Demon and play for uh, your own kind of hero uh, core that you'd like. So uh, they go for the Brewmaster and they pick the Shadow Demon. I like this a lot. Centaur. Yep. It's Monkey Kid. Give, it's time. Give me the Centaur. <laughs> you ban the Brewmaster. Now, I will say Shadow Demon versus Centaur. You have the Disruption. Kind of good versus Stampede, Ooh. but it doesn't matter. Let's go. Let's do it. Halfway there. Halfway. Here's the thing. You don't even have to commit to the Monkey King, right? Like, it's not like they always do it. There are times the Monkey King is respect banned, and obviously you can't, which is already great for your own drafting that they have to ban Monkey King versus you. Other times it's left in the pool. They don't do it, right? So it keeps you on your toes. Uh, I mean, like, you could ban Monkey King here, for example. You're wasting your bans at that point. That's what Entity's thinking, right? So it's like, oh, we leave it in. And then you get Monkey King, and you're like, oh, God, I should have banned it. So the power is in your hands when you do these weird strats, which is why... I think it's cool when teams experiment with some different stuff like OG trying out Alchemist there, right? That means in the future, if it had worked really well, other teams would be like, oh, do we ban Alchemist here? We know they flex it, right? So sometimes you got to you gotta try things out. You got to get it to that state where it does get respect ban. Last last uh, game we saw like the Pudge banned out, right? Only That's only happening to Watson because he plays such a sick Pudge, right? Yeah, absolutely. And it's one of those things that... It is surprising that people are worth like that are looking at his pudge and being like, we should just ban this. We actually don't want to deal with it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We're going to see the faceless void get banned. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if they go for the pudge ban here again, because you could still pick a Naga Siren on 18 here for Tomato. It's a hero he's very comfortable on, but you have a lot of options in terms of what you can ban here you could go for the monkey king you could be a little bit afraid for it you probably are going to be seeing a mars ban come out from entity would be my guess there's they do ban the morph so that leaves in luna as well as the you know naga siren potential if they don't ban mars i'm gonna be shocked i feel like that is the the go-to ban when you have a centaur and especially into whisper who's been playing this hero constantly yeah, it combos well with Shadow Demon as well. It's also good versus the Monkey King because that arena, if we're, you know, I'm just, just throwing it out there, you know. So I, I think it would be a pretty solid ban here. Uh, from the side of OG. Lifestealer. Oh, Lifestealer. Oh. Okay, you know what? I mean, you don't want... So the thing with uh, the Monkey King support potentially is that you need to be able to leave your offlaner alone. And I, I think there's two potential ways to punish it. One, wreck the offlaner. So you pick a really strong support and a strong carry and you you punish the fact that it's a 2v1. But the reason Centaur is so good is that he is pretty functional in 2v1 lanes and can be on his own. I think the other approach is you leave it as a 1v1. Yes! You leave it as a one-on-one. -on -one <laughs> and that way while Monkey King's running around, 
you're not committing too much in that lane. Like, oh, they're still winning 1v2, right? You just leave a life stealer there. It's like, okay, you you run around killing couriers. I'm going to go 3v2 your other lane, right? And then, then you're like losing there. And so you're going to enforce the Monkey King to go try to do something. So I think banning out the life stealer, he's one of the carries who would have been totally fine versus the the centaur um, and the support, whoever it is, could have left. But he's taken out. I think you now potentially need a strong support down there because I don't know another, like what's the other carry you could pick to just leave in the one-on-one -on -one versus centaur? And centaur does not end up super massive. I mean, the morphling is the one that like trades and draws the lane, but even then that's not great. Um, there's not much that I can think of. I mean, maybe mm -hmm. just gyrocopter or a weaver would be the two. Um, yeah, and I, I agree. I think again, it's you like don't, you don't push up. Centaur out of lane, and yeah. so they're gonna pick up the hoodwink most likely for Ari again, which means it is gonna be the five position Shadow Demon. I'm curious how well this can potentially stop the Katomi Monkey King kind of roaming around and I don't think it can. You know, causing. <laughs> yeah, it, it's like, it's going to be interesting because I feel like that is something you're going to have to address. If you're going up against Entity, you have to have studied their Monkey King Centaur games. Mm -hmm. They go for the Bane. They've ran this exact lineup probably half a dozen times in the last month. Like these three heroes. So I have to imagine that they are very much ready for this. Yeah, but the thing is like, Entity has the experience of actually doing this many times. And OG, maybe they've done it in scrims, right? But the receiving team has theory crafted how to respond to this, but how much practice do they actually get uh, for it? So uh, it's going to be pretty cool to see this less track pickup. I'm going to stick that on uh, no one in the mid lane. He has been playing really well. They've actually prioritized it quite a lot in many of their series, but they were kind of like letting it slip through this time. A TA that's pick, a that's pretty one. cool. Um, that is super cool for the lane. That You're wondering could, what, what carry beats Centaur. That's actually yeah, it. Yeah, that could be it, where you help out a little bit, and then you just go make stacks on the Shadow Demon for TA to farm. It, it does mean your Centaur probably will still get a good amount of money if you do that, but you'll also be pretty happy. He's going to need a really early Helm of Iron Will. Because, like, the physical damage that's going to come up from TA is pretty overwhelming, and it's safe, too. Like, if Centaur wants to try and play in the wave, he's going to take side blades, and then eventually you just get caught from a meld strike, which is, I believe, five armor at level one mm -hmm. or something. And that is pretty huge. I was struggling to think of a hero, but, again, we, we talked to Tomato after their win in their first series, and he had played a TA, and we're like... You know, what made you feel like going for the TA this game? He's like, honestly, I hadn't played it in months, but it just seemed like a good TA game and goes like 19 and zero. So it's something he's at least had some practice on now recently. And uh, I feel like that's a good lane. It's a little bit scary into Lesh though, right? Um, Potentially, Diabolic Edict can shred the refraction, but as long as you're near creeps, it's tough. And then your usual harass of lightning storm is only one proc of damage. So while for most heroes, it's annoying the same way, um, like Zeus spamming lightning is also annoying. Um, with the refraction up, I mean, you just eat the, the damage tick and it's like, it's no big deal. And then you can shove out the lane pretty fast uh, without even using mana. So if he wants to try to clear out the wave to run on you, you can kind of see it happening, do the same thing and then run away or just like back off on your own. So I think she'll be okay, but there can be some outplay potential there. And yeah, you can be in trouble. You also can't use meld to get away because Diabolic Edict hits Invis heroes. Yeah, exactly. I really like the Naga Siren ban here. I think that makes a lot of sense. I think you still might consider the Pudge ban, but I think when you have so much magic damage already on Lesh and Centaur, if you pick a magic damage carry like the Pudge, you're probably not going to have a good time. So something like a Slark could be on their mind as it is good into the Mars as well as the TA. We'll see, though, what they want to do. 
Yeah, someone like Faces Voids probably. Oh, I don't know. I, I think banned, you, they banned it. Oh yeah, I missed that. I was gonna say it's probably off the table because of the Shadow Demon with the disruption save. Um, who else? This is like this is the classic hard part. It's like Shadow Demon, right? What do I lane into that? Because uh, it's so annoying later on. Um, we've seen Phantom Assassins picked into Shadow Demon, but I don't know if that's really the matchup you want here. It's it would have a jump to get line. out of Mars. Yeah, I feel like Phantom Assassin and Slark are probably the my two go-to picks for Watson, and I know he plays a Slark. But you do have OG coming out with a mid-pick next. Meepo, that would have been a good one. Dude, this hero always just eludes my memory. I mean, he dropped off after the uh, the the nerfs, but the a nerf couple of players, disperser. yeah, a couple of players, you just gotta respect it. And Entity is definitely one of those teams with Watson. I mean, you don't want to get Meepo'd and Monkey King killing your couriers, dude. It's just like <laughs> it's too much. You gotta limit the cheese to one at a time. <laughs> Mid lane pick. We've seen. I mean, if you're looking into Lesh, we've seen the Razor many times. It's a little bit rough into something like the Centaur, but they will just go for the puck. A very straightforward hero. Great at catching the Bane as well. That is something that they, they struggled with last game, was finding a way to stop the Bane's Fiend's Grips or just get vision onto uh, Fishman. And I think that works quite well. Coil, of course, for Centaur Stampede. Checks a lot of boxes. Yeah, and uh, Shadow Demon's Disruption does something similar to maybe the idea behind OD Astral last game, which is that if you can't get to the Bane, you can save whoever is being Fiend's Gripped. But having to use or like save Astral just for that feels a little awkward on your mid hero. But Shadow Demon, a much more meta support, um, he's perfectly fine holding Disruption just to save whoever is Fiend's Gripped. So last, last pick here. Pick here. Carry. You now know it's a TA carry mid puck. Ooh, Damn, PL. that is a good PL game. Yeah, it's a really good, really good pick. All right, I'm you all are for now on a definite timer. Yeah, I'm all for this entity lineup. I think it's really cool. I think you're gonna have this Monkey King causing chaos. And if you spend too much time looking at it, Watson is going to be sneaking up that net worth and you're going to have some PL problems. So you try to focus on Phantom Lancer, all your couriers are dead then because you're not looking at the Monkey King. So I think Entity's got a nice nice uh, play here. I mean, They could even just run a regular Monkey King support. I don't think they're going to, but they could. And I, I think their lineup is still pretty solid here. Yeah, not with what we've seen with Katomi on this hero. So I, I honestly, I'm with you. I think... If Watson gets to take this late game, if he has a decent enough lane, he's going to be very strong. Bane versus Mars Hoodwink. It doesn't seem like it's going to have a great time. Granted, that's what it was last game. Uh, you had a Morphling in the lane, which is quite strong. So they were able to just kind of leave the morph eventually. You can't do that as much with the Phantom Lancer. Mm -hmm. So it's we'll hard. see kind of how that lane develops. If it ends up being a little bit better for Whisper, which could mean an earlier blink timing. Um, if he wants to try and play active. I think this is going to be pretty close coming out of the lanes, but yeah, I very much worry about the late game and how much effect this Monkey King is going to have on the courier play because if he does which what we've seen over and over again, which is kill your mid lane at like two minutes, three minutes into the game, then yeah, you're going to have a bad time. Yeah, and I, I think that is the big question mark is looking at that lane how does TA do versus Centaur? Can they punish it? Shadow Demon, not the strongest support for punishing this kind of stuff, but he does offer some unique tools, so maybe you know, maybe they can capitalize on that. I also think what we see here, like after this pause, will be very interesting because there is a let's say like a standard of what Monkey King can potentially do. We know he wants to snipe couriers, right? So if he did the exact same thing every single game. 
you could prepare for that. You drop the sentries where you know he's going to ward, you stand in the right places. Like, for example, we might see someone on OG stand by this tier 3 top lane tower and look for a Monkey King to come through. They might go and preemptively capture that Watcher so that Monkey King cannot get it. My question, Karaomi knows that teams have been studying what he's been up to. They have to mix it up. Last game, we saw some really cool wards from them where they put it in, like, weird spots. That's what I want to know is, like, what is his plan for adapting when uh, it's likely OG has a plan for this? Yep, he's already on his way. Uh, like, he pinged that top watcher. He's like, I'm going for it, guys. I know my game plan. I know what I'm doing. I'm going to smoke, turn into a courier, and just beeline to the enemy top watcher and then get that ward placed into the enemy base. And this oh, is I'm... what he does every single game. I love see smokes this. collide. Seb has boots. Seb knows this ain't a lane. We're just yeah. walking around this game. He's going to get the boots right off the bat. Um, you can't catch a Monkey King, though, dude. With, with Windlace and Mischief coming to check the providing watcher, move speed. He's coming to come and check. Okay, so if you guys don't know, uh, usually the game plan you see from the Monkey King is to come up here, um, hop through the base, or just like walk in with Mischief place an observer so this time he's going for a very shallow one which i think got scouted i'm pretty sure the base it's... has vision of where monkey king broke this the the mischief so they're gonna know this is there mars was even waiting in the arena oh they already committed a sentry back here though uh they might get another one just to scout this then we'll see or to uh, potentially d ward this um but you use a courier in the base or an observer in the base to see the couriers come out this the time he's committing to just killing his lanes couriers it looks like he won't know the mid lane unless he just camps there and then usually on the way back you like potentially get the watcher this time he got it first so seb already removed it and you you'll look to block the small camp he's waiting to see seb before he does that i am so surprised they committed that sentry early uh, yeah, I, yeah. I, I was I was toggled on Dire Vision. I don't think they saw the Monkey King place it. Um, oh really? Okay. So the, yeah, I was toggled on it just in case. I did see the sent the obs come out, but they did not quite see the Monkey King place it. So he's gonna have potentially the surprise from that. We'll have to see. I thought I saw them ping it, but maybe after they put their sentry and they didn't catch it, they were like, "Oh, it's gotta be, it's gotta yeah. be over there then." This Model is a pretty perfectly. Yeah, this is a pretty deep oh. sentry though. Surprised they didn't do it closer up. Tomato. Blood grenade take damage. Yeah. Uh, you gotta be careful. Uh, you are still playing into the Monkey King at least the first couple of levels, or at least like that first minute and a half. He's gonna try and wrap around here, start trying to get the damage. He's done. on the way. He scouts his first courier. Target acquired. And Seb. That's going to be the sentry and Seb. tangos. Bonk. Okay, number one. Can we get a counter going? <laughs> I can't have you. No one. Seb's like, it's back. over he here, can... clearly. You never... Dude, this is, the, this is where the mind games begin. This is where you start becoming mind flayed, and you're like, where is he? Well, he's going to your mid lane. He's waiting for your puck's bottle. And if you don't know, when you're going mischief, they have an observer set on this cliff, but you don't see Monkey King on the minimap. You have to like physically move your camera and look for a moving tree or whatever. Ooh, Puck, look. Look at this, adjusting the courier path. He actually has to. Monkey King is missing. If he doesn't, it's definitely dead. This and... is actually a required evolution for Dota players. Ever since we all got our own courier, Dota's we've all become lazy. And you need strats like this to force everyone to start moving your own couriers around. He's going like into the base to try and find it. He's like, where is this thing? The tomato. Uh, he's about to, to take snipe that some one. boots. Ibizium oh, no. knows. Oh, I mean, it doesn't matter. That courier is dead on my screen, baby. <laughs> the high fiving <laughs> tree. <laughs> Boom, baby. Gets another. Oh, dude, that's devastating. No boots now for your TA. He didn't get the bottle, but he does see Puck's courier now with their their clip observer in the mid lane. So we'll oh see God. if he gets. Oh, he might courier. get another one too. Uh, oh, we're at three God. guys for those of you not counting. And he's looking for BZMs. He knows it's here. He's gonna get it, right? I imagine. If he goes the wrong way, oh, okay, he's gonna miss it this time. If he went the other way, I think he would have caught it. I know everyone else is like watching lanes. Our observer doing the correct thing, like actually paying attention to what's happening. Meanwhile, Zach and I are just having a fun time watching a Monkey King cause chaos, but 
We promise, guys. It makes a difference. It matters. All right. Have a little humility. I will Link say, a, a lot of the times when we see the Monkey King, he puts a lot of pressure into the mid lane, and BZM dodging out that Courier initially Dyer's makes a huge difference. Well, killed. goodbye, Courier four? number four, I think. He's going mid. And... He might get five. He might get Pucks here. Dude. BZM's heading back I think for it's... it. Or yeah, is he? I think it's going to get delivered, but I think he's still going to find it. Oh, I think he's actually looking for the courier that went top. No, he sees it now. He turns. It, he's turning around. No one he's told him. <laughs> he's, he's looking. Will he see it? Will he see it? Oh, oh it's God! dead. It's dead. You gotta hide it on the. Oh, Make sure you no. tip BZM after this. <laughs> Jesus. Tip him. Bottom lane, Fishman. Actually, some Dota action besides just couriers. Nah, he's fine. Okay. Radiant structures are fortified. Five couriers dead for the side of OG, but they're gonna get a nice disruption on the top side, DM. It's a good stomp, but Katomi's here, looking for Seb. This might be our first blood, and it is for the Centaur. You leave him in a 2v1 lane, and it doesn't seem to matter. Yeah, you pick up your levels, and for those of you that are worried about griefing your offlaner, like when executed well like this, like killing the couriers, helping him with the creep equilibrium, coming back for a gank, Centaur's ahead of TA. It, I mean, it's really close. It's like 20 gold or something, but like he's on par despite being left 1v2. And it's partly because of this hero, Centaur, is just good in these lanes on his own. He's going to max retaliate, so even if he can't play the lane, he can jungle really effectively without having to use mana. So, I mean, this is a very practice strat from Entity. Yeah, I mean, TA also had like, what, 2,000 net worth, but her entire treads were sitting in the fountain, so... Mm -hmm realistically you're sitting on like a 600 net worth templar assassin in the lane yeah. because you just can't get your items so seb has to like when he dies comes back to lane by tp'ing in with the boots with the completed treads we just up here. two couriers hiding under the tower here We'll take down the Watcher. He's tired of that thing scouting him. Seb making some stacks here on the Shadow Demon for his team. We're going to see level 6 slash the rune is bottom, so it will be Fishman grabbing it. Uh, Katomi coming to the mid lane, though. Does end up missing with the Primal Spring. BZM falling incredibly low, and they've got a Blood Grenade out as well. Down to juice a sliver of HP, but it's not going to be enough to finish the job. It's going to be Seb, who dies instead. A 3-hero rotation in at the 6 minutes. That's pretty standard, right? That six minute rotation. Yep, and off of that, you didn't kill Puck, but you forced him back. There is a catapult and diabolic eating going on this tier one tower. It's probably dead here. I am so shocked that Katomi actually decided to go back for BZM instead of going for the courier. He could have gotten <laughs> another courier. Would have, been, would have been his sixth one of the game, but instead he's like, I guess I'll hit the Puck, guys, whatever. Unfortunately, due to this pause, I think if they're looking around, they might notice that uh, Karomi is uh, right in front of their tier three tower at the top. He's in his tree form, but I think he's I think he's in vision. It's close. He might be. I'm trying to toggle, but because it's a tree, it stays in vision. So I don't yeah, know. Yeah, it's like I'm not sure like replay bug or like what they can see, but they might know he's in there. Yeah. Either way, you have no fort for this mid lane. Edict, about a quarter of its duration left. And with that catapult, like you said, the mid tower, it might not die here, but it took a ton of damage. Yeah, no, something we've been... That is uh, a big win for Entity. Yeah, we've been focusing on some other stuff, but uh, bottom lane, I will say, is going OG's way pretty well. Uh, Mars doing, oh, no. I think it's like 700 over this PL. Make that a little less. So, Whisper. What have we been doing? I mean, he's doing actually quite well in net worth. Watson struggling on the PL for sure. And I kind of... Ooh, mid lane. 
Lesh catches a coil. BZM trying to finish him off. It is going to be close. Oh, my God. Oh, the face shift. Just dodging out that last tick of the pulse perfectly. And that is a very value solo kill going the way of OG and honestly very needed. See if they can get a return kill here in the bottom lane. Seb's actually coming through the twin gate, so if they don't do this soon, uh, they're, they're going to have some problems here. They... Oh! A little bit unlucky with that Boundless Strike timing whisper. Bob's the stick has the range offs, but here comes the Lesh. Disrupt comes out from Seb to try and make some space. You've lost one. Make it two. Make it three. Very good play here from Entity. We see the Stampede coming in there. It's another reason this hero is so good for this draft is while DM just focuses on playing his own lane, catching up if he has had a hard time, you can still contribute around the map with that Stampede. Yeah, I really like what teams have done to play around it. Like, it's almost never used defensively uh, for the Centaur. It's it's almost always uh, used in this scenario like this. We're like, oh, okay, well, let's... Uh, get our team closer into the fight or Radiant's save like our mid lane or our carry or something right so yeah the hoof oh, stomp God. change no. is part of why Dying's all that's possible crying. because now that you can move with hoof stomp it's actually much easier to just like face boots in and stun in the past you had to stampede to get close dm probably killed right. here no stampede for him this time it is four points retaliate so he's doing at least a little bit of damage back but they will clean him up. Kill goes the way of Tomato on the TA, who is sitting at the top of the net worth. Unsurprisingly, right? It has been basically 1v1 in the mid or in this top lane. Kinda, right? You have Seb doing stacks, trying to do what he can, but no one. Potentially cutting off BZM here. Nice stun. A lot of damage dumped in. Finished off with the help of Fishman. Nicely done. Very nice. No one saw. Like, Fishman was messing with the puck. Puck. Thing, like, I'm fine, right? But he was actually just setting up, waiting for where the puck was going to go. Nice kill for them. Fish man. Now Light looking at there Into Split Earth. The Primal Spring. Just to add in a little Don't bit of extra Don't mind damage. if I do, guys. <laughs> yeah. I mean, here's the, here's the thing about this, right? This Monkey King has hardly participated in the game of Dota 2. But he is the highest net worth support because he has seven courier kills. And it's about to be eight. <laughs> that is a dead man of boots. Come on, bro. Stop. He's going for the Mars courier as well. He's just beelining it into the base, dude. Guys, you got to move your couriers around the base. Until, until people learn to do that, this strategy will be viable. They see it, but uh, yeah. <laughs> Smoke up, OG. Ooh. Dude, wait. Dude, Seb? Dude, no way. Dyer's oh Seb. my god! Okay, nine couriers. He's like, surely he backed out of the base after we just saw him, right? Look, Tomato's on it. He's yeah. been moving his courier around consistently. It's the evolution. Like shift Q. We've gotten lazy having our own couriers. He buys his Orb of Corrosion and Tranquil Boots from the Enemy Fountain and heads back out onto the map. Classic stuff. This, this is a cool adjustment. We don't usually see... Usually he gets like drums or yules, if not both, because it's more move speed to run around killing couriers. But I'm wondering if this Orb of Corrosion is to help deal with refraction stacks or something. The damage threshold is five or more, right? And so it I can't remember. Does five Only damage per second? Five. Yeah, yeah, five. Oh, the courier for the road the courier again. Whisper, you gotta move him around, man. Oh, keep getting this you. is this is so demoralizing because Seb's like clearly there's a ward here, right? And there's just not. Coil misses. Oh God. He's getting See, to now the mental win. Now you're your mind flayed. Now kill his courier. Get it, dude. No, no. Get his courier. Come on. No. Kill Ari's first. Has been killed. Oh, he's actually taking so many tier four shots. <laughs> Who cares? He's got tranquil boots. Mars. He's actually he's stampeding into the mid lane because they get a kill on Puck. Oh my God, Katomi able to dodge out the spear or the arena, the gods rebuke, the spear. Com he's. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> 
is under attack. <laughs> he is tried Dota to spear him. He wanted to spear him baby. into the fountain, right? He was like, spear him into the fountain, but no. He's not in range because he's on the left side. Bro. The God's Rebuke dodge as well. Okay. Daya's middle tower. Under attack. You are men your your mental game is spiraling if you're on OG at this point, right, guys. Even, Someone. It doesn't even matter if you kill the Monkey King. Your Mars arenaed in his own base at 12 minutes. You are that is the impact you need. This whole game, it doesn't even matter if they're winning right now. We PL is going to win, right? Like that's that was our take in the draft. PL in the late game is really strong here i mean it's not like a free win right but like it's going to be really good all of this this chasing of the monkey king it is not chasing the pl oh nice bushwhack from ari trap comes out will slow him tomato needs to hit a big meld strike but he just gets away Yeah, I mean, let's let's just look at the state of this right your offlane centaur is more farmed than the mid and offlane of OG and this hero was here literally solo right 2v1 your mid your monkey king is level three at 13 and a half minutes so there there is that fact he doesn't care. does it matter probably not it really doesn't it, it, one fight that he doesn't die in and he's gonna get like four or five levels and that's what usually ends up happening Radiant's when we see this hero is under attack. yeah Bottom we might lane. see oh okay maybe dodging not, maybe not looking for a courier oh they see they him see though the monkey king Radiant hoodwink turns the courier around she's like not this time i'm getting my goddamn Whoa, boots get one courier anyways bushwhack is there get the courier. it's so close dude hoodwink has like literally 2000 of her 2800 net worth on that courier and she has not gotten a delivery in probably eight minutes <laughs> she finally gets it this time though Man, what if Monkey King Q could kill couriers the same way Tree Toss can? I would probably uninstall the game. I'd play even more. I'd play so much Monkey King, actually. I'd take it away. <laughs> Top lane, we're going to see no one with a rotation. Four points in Edict. Akaya completed on his way to his Bloodstone. He is incredibly farmed. Do you manage to get the fortification here to dodge out some of the damage, but Edict will be back up in five seconds. You got another creep wave coming in. They're bringing in Seb. They brought in Ari. You need more than just these two to find the kill, but they don't have it. So. Nice grab from the side of Entity. BZM making his way here as well as Tomato. Does have a completed Desolator. I mean, Tomato is very scary. If he actually gets to hold a hero, they're dead. They actually just stampede away. They are not risking anybody getting caught by this Blink Arena, by this Mars. Yeah, and in this time, PL is still just farming. He has his agonims. He's working on his defusal. The timer's ticking. Yeah. Tomato with Blink, he's pretty close. I think we will see them really start trying to get things done. We have Blink on Mars. Uh, Blink is queued up for Puck, but it's still pretty far away. But I, I do think they need to try to get some stuff done once they have the Blink on TA. Top tower is under attack. I'm just, like, trying to figure out, like, where the... I mean, they have to find something with the Blink Mars. Like, this can't keep going on. Entity stalling out this game... The fact that they're three to four thousand ahead at sixteen minutes, are scanning. it 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 doesn't seem like much right now. But instead, they've actually found Tomato in the mid lane. Whisper's gonna come in, hits a nice oh. arena spear. Monkey King trapped onto the backside, but Tomato, he's in so much trouble. Boundless Strike is there, meld to dodge out the the spear lands, but they still manage to finish the job. And Shadow Demon's caught on the backside by Fishman. They end up losing two. This game is completely out of control for uh for OG. Dyer's middle tower is under I don't think I've seen them lose with this strat. They haven't. It's been a literal 100% win rate. If you looked at their win rate on the combination of Bane, Centaur, and Monkey King, it's a literal 100%. They have not lost with this. 
This is good. It's that's why I was shocked that they gave it to him. And we knew, right? That's why they banned the Centaur in game one. It wasn't because of the Monkey King. It's because of the fact that they run Monkey King exclusively with the Centaur. Part of it, in the same way a lot of people in pubs and talking about this, like, oh, it's really bad. You can't do this, guys. I mean, there's a degree where that's true to pro Dota as well, where they also have their beliefs of what's good or not. And I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of teams are like, it's we can't ban Monkey King support. Like, it... It's 2v1 in the lane. It can't be good, right? But Entity is practiced. They've done it. And I, I'm not saying there aren't answers to it. And I think once it gets figured out, right, we won't see this as much. But every team thinks they have the answer to it, and they do not have the answer to it yet. It, it just... Part of the answer is you got to move these couriers around. Mars kill in the bottom lane from that replay. Yeah, I mean, just like... Things are not going well, mid -lane. right? Like... Whisper is just so alone here. No way he makes it out, right? Yeah, Nightmare there just to put that TP to cancel. He's killing the live game as well. Back to back deaths. Painful. There's, I, I honestly just don't know what the avenue to get into this game is for OG. Because your Monkey King, like I said, after a couple fights, he was level 3 at 13 and a half minutes. He's almost level 8 now. He's higher level than Seb. He's the same level as his hoodwink. Fishman sets it up. Like anything that they find is they're just gonna take. Like they don't mind committing a fiend's grip to grab the, the shadow demon here. All yeah, they wanna do is just stall the game out and go late. Yeah. Phantom oh, Lancer yeah. here. Nice play from Watson. Good mind games and Stampede comes out the other way. They wanna find BZM. He's gonna try and get the safety stomp just off the mark. Doppelganger up to the high ground and he's like, I don't know what you're doing, man. I'm gonna just TP out over here. He won't jump. But a boundless strike from Katomi to cancel it, and he ends up dying anyway. Mid lane, more action as Fishman's gonna get caught in the arena, but here comes Watson once again. Fishman survives with its brain sap heal. Now, Seb, he can't do anything. This is just way too much damage from Watson. Level 15 Phantom Lancer. It's pretty much online. He has a Yasha, full Yasha on the way. Uh, okay, so for OG, you're as usual. They have they've given Tomato his space. He is pretty farmed. He will do the damage if he's allowed to hit, and that's kind of what they need to find. They have blink daggers. They need to find the ideal fight, which OG has been pretty good at in the past. But this is this is the tough one. It's a tall order. They're even gonna find Tomato here. I mean, look at that damage. He did a nice job at holding the Meld Strike to dodge the Mischief there, but Fishman sets up your great stomp out from DM. The Split Earth, the follow. Ari's going to go down as well. Yeah, I mean, you, you're very comfortable taking that death on Katomi if it turns into this. And now, right next to Roshan, don't mind if I... Uh, don't mind if I yabba-dabba-do, I think someone used to say. We should bring that back. I love that. It's one of my favorite catch raises. I don't know what the condition... I keep saying this. I don't know what the condition is for OG to get back in this game. Uh, we spent a lot of time talking about this Monkey King, but it is everything else that happens alongside it that makes this game very difficult. Not only do you have a pretty free lane on Centaur, he ends up doing well. Your mid lane, like Lesh, is top net worth. And you have the late game matchups. Yeah. Fishman, I mean, Nightmare. It's... Into the Fiend's Grip. Gonna get canceled out from Whisper. Tomato with the Execute, but there comes the Stampede. No one looking for his target, Watson. Not gonna connect there. Okay, wait a minute. Wukong's out. Seb takes a boundless strike. Finish the TP. Nice disruption. No one actually just gets popped by Tomato Whisper with a great arena trapping them under the tier three or tier two tower. Spear back catches Lesh again. Entity. Yeah, gotta be careful. We were wondering, you know, how do you get back in this game? Well, you extend a little bit too far. Maybe that's how. Coil holding them down. Watson is quite low, and that's gonna be four dead. Now DM on the run. If they can stay on top of him, it's huge. Disruptions available from Seb will put him back under, and Tomato should be able to come in with a Meld Strike to finish the job. Can't believe Seb was alive through all that. He almost died at the start. Disruption lived long enough. Okay, that that's what OG needed. The overextension from Entity, they were kind of fighting 
a bit deep. Like, you see in the replay, they're on both sides of this tier 2 tower, like, fairly deep in. When really, if they want to push this safely, it should just be, like, one focal point at the front so that the whole team isn't diving under the tier 2. Bro, like, the tier 2 probably what? did, like, a huge chunk of damage this fight. Sorry, we'll come back. I'll, we'll come back to this in a moment live. But, yeah, you're right. Uh, like, there's just... You're way too deep in the enemy base there. There's not much you can do. I want to point out, Fishman just solo killed Tomato on the uh, on the Templar Assassin. That's a good way to get momentum back after throwing that tier 2 fight. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he just came bottom with a little bit too low of HP, and he just nightmares and feebles him, instantly breaks the refractions, right? And then just right-clicks him for 7 seconds until he dies. Monkey King Decent caught on the strategy. <laughs> or is he? Nah, he's never caught. Bottom tower is under attack. The thing is, before... Okay, so before that bottom tier 2 fight, what I was going to say is that, uh, like, Monkey King, even for us as the casters, we're caught up in it, right? So everyone's po paying a lot of attention to it, and it does open up the rest. I do think Entity should have been in a really good position to close out the game, but that bottom fight is exactly what OG needed. And something they've always been good at finding is just the patience to eventually find the right fight. Uh, it's still a, an uphill battle from here. Whisper going to fall here to the gank from Karaomi and Watson because they killed Watson in that bottom fight because he kind of had to dive. If they, they figured out the real one, Tomato does have the damage. Puck has the damage if they're like hitting the right hero until... He finishes this Heart of Tarask or Eternal Shroud. We often see the Illusion heroes get one of these. He's going to go for the Heart this time. And killing him after that is oh extremely Easy difficult. M. Very nicely done here. Nearly gets caught from Fishman. He actually holds his ground. Thought he might be able to kill the Bane, but instead... Gets the Fiend's Grid, steps up for DM to finish him off anyway. Backside of fight Seb on the run, dies to Watson. Stampede committed, looking for Ari now in the trees. And a sharpshooter will not get you out of this one. A three for one trade. I mean, they did get the Bane. The Demonic Purge ends up finishing the job. But, dude, sick play from Fishman just to bait with the wand at the last second. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Bane's one of those heroes we don't see too much anymore, so uh, it's it's easy to underestimate or like, oh, I think I've got him killed, right? Suddenly, like, brain sap heals a huge chunk, and you're like, oops, forgot about that. I forgot about my reduced damage from Enfeeble, all of that stuff. And uh, I'll catch you here, and I... I get no one? Blank Spirit, dude, Tomato's got the damage. There is no shot. Those yeah, deaths are very helping. costly. Yeah, the disseminate damage, amp and shared damage is going to be huge for them if they're coming back into this. I like Tomato's choice to just commit. He's going to go Daedalus, and they're looking for some big kills to get back in here. Okay. They get the Monkey King. Monkey King. We, they even go ahead and drop out the coil, but now they're going to find out Watson as well as Fishman are nearby. Ari. Bye, Ari. Thank Go you. Ahead. Give his life for this one, but they're thinking, like, could we fight potentially? No, they don't want to risk no it. coil. Yeah, it's pretty scary. Guys, I died to lag. That wasn't uh, that wasn't me. I would have never died. You've seen how many times I've gotten out of that. That was uh, that was not on me. Uh, maybe both of them getting a little bit of lag. Quick pause here. All, All right. right. Are we back in this on OG? I got some with theories. With those recovery kills. Okay. I got some theories, all right? Mickey, a evolutionary kind of carry player, has played a lot of Templar Assassin. He likes the Mjolnir, okay? Okay. I think you could make a case for some Mjolnir pickups on Templar Assassin. You're going Gleipnir on your Hoodwink and Puck late game with an Aghanim Scepter also likes Mjolnir. So you could potentially go down that route if you want it. Um, you also have the, the, well, I mean, that's about where, that's where I had my, that's, that's all I got. Just get, get a bunch of Mjolnirs. <laughs> I haven't made that'll, that'll, that'll that deal yet. with them. You need Aghanim Scepter, Mjolnir on the puck with probably a Parasma. I'm so down for far Mjolnir, away, but, you know. I'm down for Mjolnir on puck. I think TA will, I think she should commit to 
the single target because I think if you can find the real PL, which you also have the Gleipnir in the works for the Hoodwink, you find the real PL, hit him with uh, Demonic Purge, Disseminate, and then TA just lays into the real one. Like, I think it'll kill everything else because of the shared damage. That is, dude, if you actually get the Disseminate on the right PL, it could theoretically shut down this hero. Yeah, that's, like, that's I, just I the hard part, happening. though. That is the hard part, is finding the real PL and getting the Disseminate off. He does have a blink, so as long as they know the real hero, they can do it. But that's just, that, that is the hard part. Easier said than done, especially when he uses Doppelganger. One of them will take the same damage as him, right? So it can yeah. be... It can be a bit tricky to know who who's the right one. I wonder if Tomato goes for like an Aghanim Scepter this game. That could be cool. Just like rat it out. Yeah, it, it's like it, it'd be a little bit difficult for them to to keep up with him going back and forth between the map. Like you do have Bane and stuff and, and Monkey King that are you know pretty good at uh, catching heroes from fog, but. It might be a way for them to kind of stall. I mean, do you even want to stall out against a, a Phantom Lancer is the issue. It's like, we'll have to see. I mean, it's only 27 minutes of the game. It's a 4K gold lead. BZM here is going to get caught for the moment. Beautiful dodge out of the stun. In some trouble. The Centaur's got him. Disruption from Seb. He does have a blink. Will he get out? One second. Orb. Very nice coil. They BZM have to escape. And he's got Watson. Er, Watson. He's got Katomi. Yeah, which play damage finishes the job. So, a one for one trade. You get Stampede. That's pretty good for OG. That was a big rotation. Yeah, I think Katomi had Yules. If he Yules BZM there, they might, might be able to kill him later. Um, yeah, pretty happy. With oh, maybe we're killing him now. Very quick response from BZM. He's got those fast fingers. BZM was also doing pretty good work about moving his courier around. Mm -hmm. He's almost got Lincoln Sphere, which is very important. If you can stop things like Fiend's Grip or Nightmare, or, uh, you know, a lot of times you see like Monkey Kings go for Orchids and stuff. Instead, he's got a Yules this game. Ari, just quick TP out. Now, cancel here from Katomi. Yules to buy a little bit more space. The rest of the heroes uh, taking another fight, and the other side of the map is no one. In some trouble, but a disarm comes through and actually protects him long enough. Beautifully done. Tomato. Gotta be careful. Whisper tries to throw the spear, doesn't connect. He will blink to safety on Tomato. BZM takes the orb. So, a good find from Entity. I didn't notice. Watson had his heart killed on the courier. What an ironic twist. So they're gonna wait for that. It's almost up, and then they'll be so much stronger with that. And it'll line up really nicely with Roche. They should just wait for that. Uh, at this point, it's pretty even. OG has stabilized the game, despite all the Monkey King shenanigans. At this point, we're just playing, like, regular Dota, and there's a Monkey King 4 support who sometimes kills couriers. But I, at this point, I think it's not worth it to overcommit to that kind of thing. That is true. I think that's actually a really good point. Uh, bottom lane, BZM, sitting right under a ward. Doesn't quite know, but he does see some of these heroes walk in through here under these uh, TA traps. So BZM will blink TP on out. I feel like they right. should probably I look mean, to pick up made. a... Oh, okay, there it is, the gem. I, I was checking earlier. I didn't see it. Um, yeah, I think they need this gem to start clearing out TA traps and get the vision advantage, make sure they, they're comfortable like wherever they're playing. You don't want to surprise TA Silence to, to screw you over. Especially like on Fishman. He thinks he can Fiend Group somewhere. He's actually just silenced. They're gonna stampede. They're looking for no or they're looking for Tomato. He's got a BKB TP on out. He should be fine. Seb on the other hand though. Not as lucky. Good find by Kataomi. Recognize the disruption save could uh, be the problem there. In the end, just BKB gets out. They don't have any way to deal with that yet besides the Fiend's Grip, but he wasn't there. Little bit of a pause. And we're back. G's are out. <laughs> Roche is up. 
But with Seb dead, and they're right by the tier two, I wonder if they, they want to try to get this Die first. Diabolic will make quick work of it. But I feel like this is where they've thrown, you know, when they're like pushing towers a little aggressively. But I guess with Shadow Demon, it is it is pretty safe to do. Radiance top tower is under attack. Yeah, you also just finished up the Orchid on Phantom Lancer. He's going back for his shard. Ari is uh, realizing he's stuck between two heroes. He doesn't want to be. Dude, what a sharpshooter dodge, but the blink out. Fishman here as well. He's trying his darndest on this little squirrel, but three heroes too much. I don't think they should delay Roche too long. I because I, you slip up once, TA will destroy that Roche. So I, I don't, I don't think you should give that window to OG. I hope they look like they're headed over. Okay, yeah, and I don't think OG will fight this without the hoodwink. They might be able to take some tier two towers at the trade, or at least maybe this top one. Yeah, once you hear that roar, you know what's going on. Seeing if they can bait anyone in. Oh, well, looks like Monkey King was going to TP back. Did he get it canceled by Seb or something? Yeah, it did. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, or he canceled it himself, but I think Seb canceled. Roshan's um, banner. Yay! I can't wait for this item to get reworked. I believe they should build, make it build a catapult for your team. Or a siege, siege, uh, siege wagon or something like that. I I still like my idea of we have the flag bearer creep model, like put it and equip it to a hero for five minutes, it disappears on death. But oh, it's that bottom lane. We'll come back to my super relevant and important topic in a second. It's now that second. So you just put it on a hero, right? It's just an AOE buff that affects heroes and creeps differently. I think it heroes, it gives them like potentially damage or armor. Um, kind of like a Vlad's and then for attack. creeps, they get like, I don't know, whatever you want them to get, but it'd be fun. Parker Fishman sniped. Let's grab there, ward up onto the high ground. Will definitely be known about now. I mean, no one just goes as a Shiva is trying to find his opening onto Whisper. He's gonna be able to make it out for now, but they've caught the Ludwig on the backside. DM and Katomi will clean that one up. Watson's yeah. cutting no off Lincolns. DM. Does he know that? Ooh, maybe just out of range. Yeah, might have been. No, I mean he had range. range. Yeah, just maybe didn't realize the Lincolns was down. All right. It begins the high ground siege. Puck making quick work of those illusions. You don't have an arena for 50 seconds. Katomi goes in, gets the stun on the Whisper. The follow-up from no one is there, and that is a very dead Mars. He's going to buy back into the game. 15 seconds for the Hoodwink to come back. Throws the Spirit off the mark, but Watson just getting it done. Tier 3 falls. No one has an Edict up again. Tomato doing his best here on the Templar Assassin to just cleave through some of these illusions. Do what damage he can. BZM goes in once again. This age is protecting this Phantom Lancer for three more minutes is so problematic. Gleipnir connects, Scions, he's going to be able to man to dodge. They do manage to connect onto no one. Demonic Purge is there. I mean, that's a great target if you can manage to bring him down. You've got to commit the coil if you want, but no, nope, Stampede is there. The BKBs get him to safety. They do protect their tier three. Coil does come out onto Watson, but that is it. Whisper with the spear does end up connecting, but the Fiend's Grip comes out, saved by Seb, but now BZM needs to get to safety. Whisper, the great arena, trying to buy himself some time, throws himself at Yules into the air as well, but he is dead. That is going to be a dieback now. And nobody on Entity is dead. Instead, it's going to be Watson getting aggressive onto the enemy high ground. Looking to get on top of Tomato. DM with the stomp to follow. And TA goes down. No buyback. Ari will be next. Entity running them down one by one. And that might be the end of this game. Really cool choice by PL to take Cloak of Flames. Just another way to burn the refraction charges as well as giving him some resistances all his illusions get it too so he's just like canceling blinks all over the place there's no okay so tier twos are still up on the side lanes so despite that being such a dominating fight unless entity wants to go straight for the win they can't actually get more and it yeah it looks like they're just gonna back off and start pushing in the side lanes 
Bro, Katomi has a freaking Wind Waker. He rich. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. I like his blink choice too. Kind of realizing yeah. like his team does enough damage, he just needs to help prevent the disruption saves. So he can blink, duels, stun, all that. He can use it to uh, save teammates as well. Yeah, this is really rough. I mean, he just like he's not threatened by coil like an Ags coil ever now. Like if if Ags coil eventually comes out from BZM, he just wind wakers out of it and just doesn't care. Mid lane, boundless strike, Yules coming through, but BZM with a silence should get the safety. Well, yeah, okay, but he's gonna go right Fishman's into Fishman. No, him. he's got a fiend's grip. Does he even need it? He has an amplified damage rune. This dude's a carry now. Looking for Ari Stampede coming through. Silence will connect. Gleipnir is there, but the Yule's out from Katomi, putting a stop to this potentially as, well, Acorn Shot sells him up enough. Fishman on the backside runs into the real carry that is Tomato. This gets two shotted there. Radiant are scanning. This is a really hard game Radiant for OG at this scan. point. Watson is level 25. He has his doppelganger talent. Finishes up his Bloodthorn on his way to a Disperser as well. Blank Boundless Strike. Katomi gets the Yules as well. Stomp not going to connect. Tomato able to blink out. Whisper, who was lane cutting, dies solo there to the Lashrak. But high ground siege. Second tier three tower about to fall. You drop the Wukong's command, and why not? God, my head makes space for them. <laughs> Should you pause? I actually do find the real lots in there, but. Can they actually kill him? I mean, they're doing a lot of damage, but he's just down to half HP. He's got a heart of Tarask. Still holding on to Manta. He's perfectly fine. Yeah, they'll wait for the rest of the team to reconnect. No one to teleport. Just back off cooldown. They might just meet with him top instead, finish off this tower, so that next time they do win a big fight, they can clear up the whole base. You're going to scout out a haste rune here. Oh, Blink Spear out, does nicely connect. Seb instantly Just dies gone. to DM. Hurricane Pike to safety. Ari on the run as well. They are not done. They want so much more Whisper with an arena there just to stop Monkey King. Not the best feeling in the world as he's still going to survive. BZM forced to blink away. I mean, that was a necessary arena. Yeah, you would lose more, but it does mean this fight coming up here is really hard. You're going to lose this bottom set. You're going to wait for your Shadow Demon. They'll try to poke as safely as they can. Oh, but actually, looks like they found Hoodwing in the back. Maybe looking to cut some... Oh, Blink Stop from DM! He's caught Tomato, forced to BKB. BZM with a nice coil onto three, doing what damage he can, but Katomi comes in with the stun. Wukong's command is out, forced to blink away. And five heroes still alive on Entity. As they look for the final lane of barracks, I mean, we said the clock was ticking from OG from minute one. This Phantom Lancer is way too strong. Dyer's top tower is under attack. There's the tier two. I'm gonna run it down for the Megas. They probably could just force it without the Megas, but. I, this win will secure them their spot into the next group stage. So they'll take it nice and slow. Make sure they walk through the steps. Ooh. As a quick Yule's on to DM, the spear back. I mean, can you even kill the centaur? I doubt it. Does take a lot of damage thanks to disseminate for the stampede. Gets him back towards his team. And Arena just coming off cooldown. That is what you have to play around with. They got BZM here on the puck side of stuff, but he's dead with no buyback. Oh no, it's just a matter of time before they finally connect onto the puck. Ari trying to make his way back to the base. The sharpshooter's not going to protect him. Seb catches a Fiend's Grip as well. Three fall on the side of OG as Tomato just getting pushed around in his own fountain. Spirit back, Whisper. No, it pins him to the side of the wall instead. 
That is it. GG's are out. An entity will be your first team to qualify to the next stage. What a performance. I think so OG. Well yeah, OG showed uh, some fight there. They got caught up in the Monkey King pace, I think, and uh, they did manage to find one really good fight in that bottom tier two. I think a bit of a combination of Entity going a little too aggressive, but OG recognizing that, capitalizing on it. But at that point, it was still the PL kind of had his momentum going. Uh, so they pulled that game back. Look at Entity, there they are. First team to make it on to the next group stage. Yeah, this was this was so well played from them. I, I'm a, just very impressed by how they've done this. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I I just I have to wonder if you can give this team Monkey King ever. Uh, they got their like dream trio opening: the Centaur into Monkey King into Bane. They have a hundred percent win rate on this, at least as far as we have seen. So yeah, not surprised. Incredible performance and very well deserved victory from them. Definitely. I I think teams will continue to try to... Well, some teams don't. Some teams ban the Monkey King. But other teams, I, I, I think they will attempt to deal with this Monkey King strat. And I think it is something you can play against. But it takes a lot of moving pieces. In the same way, the Monkey King strat requires the entire team to kind of be on the same page of like, DM needs specific heroes. He needs to play a specific way. The, the rest of the team needs to help with like courier calls, things like that. They need to play a certain way. Same with the Monkey King. I think the opponents also need to do that. And right now, it is the advantage of the team doing the strat who has more practice compared to the teams who just theorize how to deal with it. I think eventually a strat will be figured out. But not this game. <laughs> I think I figured out the strat. Okay. Ban it. Don't let them pick Damn. this stuff. That's it. That's like sick, you actually. Dude. I don't think you want to play against Entity having this Centaur Monkey King offlane. Like, maybe there is an option where you can come up with a safe lane duo that massively shuts down the Centaur. But this is a first pick Centaur, and then they always protect ban for it. So you don't have, like, this 1-5 combo that just shuts him down in lane. He'll, just, he'll sit in trees. He'll sit at his tower for as long as he needs. He doesn't care. DM, he, he's a stone wall. Just max retaliate, AFK lane, don't care. My Monkey King is getting stuff done. Eventually, they're going to go deal with him, and then I will be able to come back into the game. Yeah, Centaur doesn't need a lot to contribute, right? Even when he's having such a terrible game, just Stampede, eventually you get a blink. Maybe. Sometimes you don't even. Uh, but AoE stun, right? Like, that is useful no matter what. So, it is... It's one of the best heroes you can get for this. But the thing is, it, like, it feels a little awkward because... You don't have to run this strat. So when you ban Centaur, Entity's like, oh, okay, we'll just take a different Regular strong heroes. off laner and we'll <laughs> our play Brewmaster. normal Dota. Yeah, we'll take our Brewmaster, which we saw them play to a very strong effect. So it is such a good tool for Entity to have uh, this. I, I'm i going to call it a cheese play, but I don't think it's like cheesy. I think it's like a really well executed strat, uh, but it is different from other teams and it, it's going to force teams to ban it looking forward to see how it does in the next group stage versus the uh the teams waiting there because they gotta know what's coming for them if they give entity this monkey king this this centaur i think i've seen them run it with like a tide hunter as well but you know it's coming you know it's coming you have to right if if mm -hmm. you're not prepared you're gonna have a bad time so it's yeah very very fun strategy to watch i, I think you and I, we've studied this at this point quite a bit because we've cut, we've covered entity playing this strategy like five times now or something, and it keeps working. And we're just like, why does this work? Like, what are they doing, or what is the enemy mm -hmm. team doing that is causing them to lose? Um, and yeah, it's it's pretty devastating. They do this exceptionally well. I, I love watching it. I hope we get to see more and more of this into the next group stage. But yeah, entity very sick performance every single game of the swiss stage matters and that is uh you know three wins gets you through so they are automatically into the round robin og yeah they lose this one they still have two more series all they need to do is win one of them and they will also be through to the next set so og down not out i'm super excited to talk to entity though because we haven't had a chance to interview them after the strategy so 
We'll come up with some questions for you guys, but we're gonna go to a short break right now. We'll be back with an interview with Entity in just a few moments. We'll see you in a bit. As promised, everyone, we are back nice and quick here because we have an interview lined up with Entity. Uh, Zach, do us the honors. Who do we got? Uh-oh. 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 He can't hear me. Uh, well, we got Watson. What is up, man? Can you hear me? Can you hear me, Watson? Hey. Okay. Very nice. So we are here with Watson, of course. All right, we're gonna we're gonna figure out Zach and I. But congratulations! Thank you so much for joining us on an interview. You guys are the first team to make it to the next stage. How are you guys feeling? Uh, good, good. It's all, yeah. Love that. Um, okay, so I got a couple questions for you. Uh, we've watched you guys, Zach and I have watched you guys play this Monkey King strategy. I think to perfection. I don't think we've seen you lose with it. Um, how, like, how, what is the team comms like during these games? Are you guys having as much fun as like we are watching it? Is it just like Katomi clowning around? Like, what is going on here? It, it our secret, uh, uh, it's our favorite strategy. Katomi, you know, <laughs> just chilling, and we see like he kill couriers. We have networks, and it's very funny. <laughs> He give us an simple. Who brought it up? Because it's definitely a different strategy, and it it does require like some different stuff. Especially the off laner might get sacrificed. Did Karaomi bring it up? And he's like, guys, I really want to snipe some couriers. Or did any of you bring it up? Yes, and like, hey, yes. can you learn how to do this? No, it's Karaomi call. <laughs> Were all of you Love open it. to it, or did he have to do some convincing? We, we, we tried this once and it's worked and we start to play with this. Yeah. Nice, but. nice. Um, I do have one question for you coming into, um, coming into this series here. You guys had won your last two series. So you had three series essentially to try to win one. Uh, what is your team's mentality coming into the situation of do you still just try your very best, get the win right away to guarantee your qualification? Or do you feel like you have a little bit of room to explore some new ideas that you guys want to practice in these official games? I just play our best, all games. And pick out the same. Yeah. 
I got a follow up question about that, actually, because it is a very different style of group stage, right? It's the Swiss group stage. How do you and your team feel about kind of the Swiss group stage as opposed to kind of the traditional ones we've seen in other tournaments? I think it's better. So I can see us too. Thank you. Yeah. So is there is there any reason you like it better? I mean, we won three games and we will not play like two more games. And we just go next It just stage. gets rid of the pointless can... games? Yeah, we can chill a bit, uh, go practice something in, on scrims, not on official games. Yeah, I for like me that. it's better. Mm, gotcha. Zach, do you have any other questions? No, I won't make you reveal any any strats. I know you're going into the group stage. You're going to want to bring your best there. And yeah, it sounds like you, you save the practice for the scrim so you can maybe surprise some people. Yeah, we have strats already. Secret strats. <laughs> Dude, we're really we'll excited to, to see you guys there. Uh, you guys have been a lot of fun to watch. And so big congratulations on making it to the next group stage. And uh, Watson, thank you for joining us. Is there anything you'd like to say before we uh, cut you free for, you know, a little bit of a break? Uh, thanks, everyone. Follow my Instagram and bye bye. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Hey, Watson, congratulations again. Thanks, uh, thanks for joining us and yeah, have a great rest of your day. Yeah, bye. Thank you. Uh, man, they're such a fun team to watch. I love it. And apparently, they might have they might have something even more secret cooking up or maybe that's the mind game maybe they got nothing else he's just like yeah we just put it out there i like it i like it a lot yeah that was that's interesting yeah i i kind of like the idea of it potentially just being mind games like oh yeah we have way more strats ban these we don't care and you're just like all right whatever but it uh, just frees up the monkey king <laughs> <laughs> just more monkey king uh Speaking of more things coming up, we've got a lot more Dota to be played. That is just our first of these qualifying games here tonight. We have another one packed right uh, right now, getting ready to begin. It's going to be Boom versus Talon, South America versus Southeast Asia. Both these teams coming off some amazing performances so far this tournament. Boom currently at 4-1, and one, Talon at 4-2, and two, both of them winning their series. So excited to see how this goes out. But we're going to go to a short break right now, and we'll be back with our final series of the evening. Everyone stay tuned for more here on the Elite League. We'll see you in a bit.
What is up, everybody? Welcome back here to the Elite League. We are into the final series of the day. My name is Cryptic. I'm here with Zeke Exotics, of course, and it is Boom Esports taking on Talon for this next qualifying spot at the uh, next group stage, the next round, whatever you want to refer to it as, but I am super excited to see these teams. We'll take a look at Talon here. We got VTune, Schwan, WS, uh, I think it's Hokum and Ponyo. I'm sure the Hokum is wrong, but I will do my best to double check that one. Uh, very excited to see these players uh, go head to head as they've had a lot of success in this tournament so far. Talon taking down Rest Farmers and Nigma in their previous series. And uh, yeah, they look good. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. We haven't gotten to watch too many SEA teams. They do have a stand in if you haven't caught them. Uh, v Tune had to stand in for the carry who wasn't able to make it. Uh, their opponents, Boom Esports. We have gotten to watch these guys quite a bit. We got Picasso, Slatums, Illich, Knight, and Panda. Uh, we've been covering a lot of SA Dota. Excited to see these guys come compete on the international stage now. SA LOL, am I right? All these haters coming in here being like, <laughs> this is a pushover region, SEA pushover region. And here we are, both of them at the top of the group so far, looking for that second qualifying spot. Uh, I'm excited to see how this is going to play out. We're going to see the draft pop up now. So we're through the first phase of bands. First pick overall will be the Shadow Demon and an immediate response in the Tiny, which is very popular in South America. They love this hero. Yeah, we haven't uh, we haven't gotten to see as much tiny lately, you and I. But he does just offer a lot. You can flex him, which, like you mentioned, actually South American teams still tend to like the tiny core in the right matchups. Whereas uh, other regions, we don't see it as much unless it's like a really good matchup. Uh, so you do have that flex potential. Shadow Demon, a bit of flex between four and the five, but otherwise just a really solid support. Uh, I see how we got that Razor band. We've been seeing a lot of Razor lately. He's been very popular. I think Talon's another hero that's been playing it quite a bit. Um, I am curious though, like where they would where they would uh, plan to run the Razor. If you are going to ban it this early, you have to have a hero in mind that you just do not want to lane into it or play into it. Typically, the big one that comes to me is always like Troll Warlord, but you don't ever want to pick Troll into a Shadow Demon in the first place so it's likely mm -hmm. that we're not seeing troll um despite that being a huge pecaz classic and i think that's what we're gonna i'm gonna be keeping my eyes on personally is to see what type of hero what type of matchup they give him uh tiny crystal maiden the first two picks here pretty straightforward very solid support duo none of the broken ones though we're not seeing the the like shadow demon bat riders disruptors that we've been seeing that kind of taking over the game I don't know. I think Crystal Man's pretty good. Maybe broken is a strong word uh, after the recent nerf to Crystal Clone, but I think she's still really strong. And I do like this opener True. because it does mean your safe lane will be pretty decent no matter what you end up playing into. And the tiny could be your four support, could be your core. So you haven't revealed too much with this pick. I guess that's true. We haven't really seen a lot of tiny in the mid lane lately. Even like into heroes like Puck, it's just been very kind of it falls flat a little bit. I think Dark Mago is one of the only people that we've seen really have success on it. Um, Kunkka picked up now for the side of Talon, a very solid, very stable mid lane hero. We see this find a lot of success in this tournament. Yeah, you've preemptively protected it with the Shadow Demon as well, so the enemy won't have uh, a save versus X marks. And Kunkka's got a lot of tools to cancel channeling, so Crystal Maiden ult has been 
really powerful in some early fights, but uh, it'll be a little harder to find a, a good Crystal Maiden ult now that Kunkka's in the game. We're seeing a Marana here for sure, right? Anytime you see the Shadow Demon Kunkka, it's a lot of times paired up with something like a Marana because you can take advantage of obviously the arrow setup, but it also allows you to go max arrow, which is very good if you can get away with it. But we'll have to I see. I wouldn't mind seeing it. Shadow Shaman. Interesting. There's not a lot that you can throw to cancel out the shackles, I guess, besides Avalanche. But good early tower pressure if they manage to group up around these. Yeah, I'm... Shadow Shaman is still a hero that I'm a little bit out on. I, I do see that Talon has played him, so uh, they like the hero, clearly. And he's very good in pubs, but in the pro scene, he's been harder to make him work because in the lane, although your damage is pretty good, you're really short range, so sometimes it can be a little a little iffy to, to get your damage in, especially against many of the, like, just before this, we had a lot of strong supports such as like Hoodwink, Venge, Techies. They were all really popular. Lion. Uh, many of those have dropped off a little bit, and maybe that's making Shadow Shaman's life a little easier, especially as you see this Crystal Maiden. They might uh, run the Shadow Shaman into that lane. Um, after that, I mean, Hex Shackle is nice. We don't see a particularly mobile hero quite yet, but... I mean, lockdown's always good. The ultimate's always good for pushing towers. Can You can still use it for Roshan, even though it did get nerfed from there, but uh, it'll still help a lot to open that up, which Kunkka is not that good at, neither is Shadow Demon. So in that way, it is filling in several gaps that they, they might have. Okay. I mean, going through a decent chunk of the reserve time here on this next pick... A lot of times we see like a like flex picks grabbed here, but you already have shown like what is likely your support duo. I don't think we're going to be seeing the tiny flex that often. It does feel like if this is a Shadow Shaman 5, this should be a pretty good lane into the tiny, right? And then you can run Shadow Demon 4, play some stacks for the triangle. Man, do I look stupid. Grimstroke CM support into a Morphling pick here for Boom. <laughs> So probably mid tiny or off lane tiny. It is one of those things that this hero does get flexed into the off lane occasionally. And now Grimstroke CM, one of our favorite support combos. Uh, I like this a lot. Great now that you have a uh, multiple avenues for stopping Shadow Shaman as well as Shadow Demon. Just the Phantoms Embrace, super annoying to play around, as well as you know Inkswell set up with heroes like Morphling and Tiny. Yeah, I like that both of these heroes have a way to cancel. A channeled shackles as well really luna into morphling luna. Huh? yeah that's that's a little surprising we've seen morphlings do very well against the lunas because you can copy her uh and especially you get the like if you have your shard which has been uh like it's not that crazy to buy especially into like a shackles um you just get that damage reduction plus your attribute shift is so hard to to deal with Luna is a natural Scotty builder, and she does just hit like a strong timing, which I mean, right now, these four heroes, like if you just look at Talon Draft, they're pretty good, right? Kunkka could be off lane, could be mid. You have a uh, um, early active playmaking power there. Shadow Shaman with the ultimate can push objectives early. Shadow Demon pairs really well with the Luna. So maybe they're just going for an early tempo draft and they're trying to push the timing before the morphling is ready to go i th i think that's what they're going for because i feel like if you go late into the morphling it's going to be pretty annoying I'm trying to see okay i actually really like these uh off lane bands you still could run the off lane tiny you have last pick for boom so you can flex this a little bit but darks here would have been pretty overwhelming the Enigma would have been very good as well. Yeah, I think Boom needs to be worried about tempo heroes. Something like a Lycan could be a little bit annoying, but you do have the Crystal Maiden at least to help out in the lane. You don't want to pick a Beastmaster into it. Or do you? 
Maybe it's just a bait. Okay, they banned the Beastmaster. Wow, okay. Really respecting the potential tempo. I suppose, I mean, Crystal Bane used to be really good versus Beastmaster when he could only go boars, but I guess with the axe build, there's a way to, like, kind of sidestep that lane counter nowadays, and you have a Shadow Demon potentially positioned for, you can still swap these heroes, depending, uh, but, like, if you just made stacks for the Beastmaster, yeah. he would just use axes, hit that timing, I, I guess is what they're worried about, because I, I do think... I mean, it seems Boom has the same idea. It looks like Talon might push for a pretty fast timing, and Beastmaster is a classic for that. Yeah, I think that's actually quite smart. That's that's what I'm thinking as well. As soon as I, as soon as you mentioned the Shadow Demon, it's like true. Yeah, they just stack. He double stacks Triangle. Beastmaster uses a single board to stack the other Ancient Camp, and by like ten minutes, there's like five stacks in each of those camps, and he just goes back and has a Helm of the Overlord. So, mm -hmm. it's yeah, it's pretty cool how they could play that. There's the Brewmaster ban. Hero that has been super annoying to, for a lot of teams to deal with. And it will be the offlane Omni Knight. This has gotten a lot more attention lately. And has been quite funny to see. I think... I'm trying to remember who it was that played the other day that we got to watch. I think it was Toby on Tundra. Who was just like running around as an Omni Knight. Just un, like, un, like couldn't die. Was just popping heroes one by one. But... Boom Esports here now can decide if they want to put the tiny off lane or pick a new mid lane. We'll have to see. They're running out of time. And there it is. Storm Spirit. Four Slatums. And this is a classic hero of his. Paired with a Crystal Maiden is quite nice too. We always talk about Storm Spirit needing some sort of hero that can amplify him. And... Yeah, he's got it in the form of the Crystal Maiden. I like it a lot. Yeah, you can potentially dodge out X callbacks uh, if you, they had swapped this. Because you, we've seen some Omni Knight mid. It's not that popular. I think offlane Omni is a lot more common. But you still got to be careful of running a melee hero in there who would just get wrecked by Omni. So you kind of protect that with a, a ranged hero like Storm. And then he is going to be able to jump the back line to find the Shadow Demon the storm or sorry the uh the shadow shaman uh so i think it does provide some of the initiation they they wanted like i know tiny has some as well but uh, a little bit more would help out make space for this morphling who i think he's still looking pretty good here as you go into the mid to late game but talon has a pretty formidable draft for like if they if they come out of the lanes in a good spot like just really pushing the tempo yeah, I actually really like what they've come up with on Talon as a way of trying to just beat the Morphling early because we've seen all these late game matchups where Morph is on par with Luna. Morph mm -hmm. wins. It's not even close. Like it is, it has been a massacre in team fights in the late game. Like Luna tries to center ground with BKB, Morphling just waveforms in, has an extra item, doesn't even need his own BKB and just kills her. So it's very likely to be uh, a timer kind of scenario for the side of Talon. Maybe the Omni tips this in a different way, right? Where, okay, we'll, we'll bait the Morphling in and we'll just throw the Guardian Angel on, on the Luna. And that's going to keep her alive instead, right? So there is potentially some ways to play around it. I am curious to see how this one's going to play out, but I am super excited. We've got... A game now underway. It is Boom Esports here versus Talon, North, uh, South America versus Southeast Asia for the next qualifying spot into the round robin. We'll see as both teams smoke out, which ones uh, are going to get these types of good advantages. JK, we're paused. Suck it, chat. Some friendly tips into the friendly disconnects. Packet loss. I'm sure you guys are all used to it by now. Coming up here. I'm pretty excited to see this Omni Knight offlane. I feel like it's been a little hit or miss from what I've seen of it, but I have not gotten to see that much of it. So I know it's been gaining popularity. Looking forward to see it for ourselves. I think this is the, is this the first time you and I have watched it? Yeah, we haven't seen it. Um, yeah. it there was like one morning we were waiting to cast. We were watching, uh, like I said, Tundra running the offlane Omni, and it looked hilarious, but... Um, yeah, this is the first time we've actually seen the hero on our own stream. So I'm excited to see how it actually goes. I am curious to see how it plays into a morph lane. Dude, For the okay. most part, it should be okay. Like, I think. 
here we go. Here we go. It's, it's cooking time. Okay. We got Shadow Shaman. Chef Zach. Hex now amplifies damage up to 25%. Ponyo playing the Shadow Demon with Disseminate. Shared damage, which is effectively an amplification damage to that hero, 35%. Okay. You combo those on the same hero, then double conda omni knight luna just delete one hero share that damage out delete multiple heroes is that what they're looking for kunkka title tidal wave bring them all together to nuke one guy honestly i would i just want to go into uh like demo mode right now and just clown around with this and just see how much damage you can actually get out of the amplification and see if it's like additive or multiplicative because if it's additive damage that's pretty nuts that's like 60 percent bonus damage um and it's pure damage that comes out of the omni knight mostly right so once you have the hammer of purity shard as well which most omni knights end up going for and then of course you get your 50 base damage talent at level 10 this dude can nuke you for like 1100 pure damage every like 10 seconds, which is pretty good. If you factor that 25% hex amp or even just the disseminate amp, that's a lot. That can kill almost any hero at that stage of the game. Yeah, plus you'll be having glaives bouncing around, the Kunko, lots of AoE damage. I mean, if Boom clumps up and they do manage to get some uh i mean it doesn't have to be both hex and disseminate right just disseminate in combination with a lot of this is pretty cool um the the shared damage especially if you put it on a hero like morphling like maybe you're not killing morphling but you're doing so much damage to him because he's becoming so tanky that that gets shared out i mean that's kind of cool uh will they do that or will they maybe like focus on the hero save morphling for later we'll have to see how the game plays out but I'll laugh really hard if we get to see that lineup. The the Hex Disseminate Nuke. I want to see someone's health bar just disappear. I wonder if Disseminate is like pre-mitigated damage on like an ally. Like, because you know you can throw it on an ally and it reflects damage, right? Like, I wonder if you throw it on Omni who has like Guardian Angel and he just like walks in and kills everyone. Because there was kind of that meme for a while early on where like Shadow Demon uh, and Dazzle would just like <laughs> it was like, Shadow I Demon Dazzle, Nature's Prophet. He would like TP into the fountain, get graved, and they'd throw Disseminate on it. He would just instantly kill the entire enemy team. Um, that was hilarious. I was a big fan of that. That that should have stayed in the game. That was amazing. But um, I guess we can stop theory crafting. I, I believe I'm reading the wiki because we were paused. I believe Disseminate spreads damage before damage manipulations. So I think it would work on Omni, even as he is, even as he is like immune to certain types, but not 100% okay. sure. Perhaps we will learn here. I'd love to see that. All right. Both teams got their wards placed into the mid lane and a very aggressive ward from Talon up onto the enemy high ground. Does give some good vision of the top rune as well. Pekaz just kind of chilling at his bottom tower. It doesn't look like he has any intention of being near these guys. He just takes both watchers. He's just going to slowly make his way back to his team. I mean, if they find someone, you could start shackles for the kill, but I think you want either shock. Pretty sure it hurts your lane a bunch if you take shackle level one. Step lively now. Yeah, I feel like most people go ether shock. You do have an Omni who has Hammer of Purity and Purification, so it's pretty easy for him to secure range creeps. But the only time you go Shackles, I think, is if you're just right-click trading with the support. But Crystal Maiden is a pretty good support at trading with Crystal Nova, so... You might just want right. to throw the Aether Shock and run. We'll have to see. Yeah, I think the nuke damage is like easier to work around. All right, into the lanes we go. It's going to be Storm Spirit versus Kunkka here in the mid lane. Slatums gets the level two first, which is pretty typical. You can just push the lane a little bit easier. And we're paused again. Psych. A little bit of lag. Yeah, it looks like it's uh, maybe some server issues. I'm sure they're updating it for Crownfall. It's actually a 
causing some game problems right now. It's actually, we're technically mid-April, right? If you think about it, April 1st, yesterday, April 30th, 31st, 30th, the end of April, you know, later on. So we're mid-April right now. Any moment, crown fall. Copium? Facts, not copium. Daytime. Actual uh, facts. I will say there is like a 1% chance that the patch comes out on my birthday, but there is about a 99% chance that patch okay. is coming out oh, on oh, Thursday oh. the 18th. <laughs> or next uh, year's birthday. True. They didn't say which year in you April. Die. Uh, yes, no, it's uh, lives on. likely to be the case that's coming out, I would say, around the 18th, or at least the week of the 18th. Maybe they surprise everyone and drop it early on like a Tuesday or Wednesday, but Thursday is typically the patch day that we've seen from Valve, so... Just got it's, it's so close. Just a little over two weeks away. Almost there. But in the meantime, we all get to watch some great Dota. So, yeah, true. top lane. They got some uh, a D ward on Boom. I, I don't even know how they knew that Observer was there. Uh, must have missed something, but... Illich is a good chunk of damage here. A beat down. We'll throw the avalanche here. Bombs the stick, so he's gonna be fine. Vtune actually in trouble from Knight. Stroke of Fate comes out. Who's getting the first blood? It's gonna be Knight, and Illich first. still lives. Bro, what a bait from the tiny and really well played from Knight on the Grim Stroke. That is huge. Yeah, that was really nice for them. It was almost such a clean tiny kill too, but. Pretty tanky hero, actually. Like we were talking about it earlier, he's got the highest base strength in the game, plus the stats he bought. So not an easy hero to kill, even though he's got such low armor. I have the All right. We'll see what ends up happening in that lane as it develops. I, I think Tiny making a good choice to go for a Wraith Band here, knowing, like, I just need the armor, right? That extra two armor goes quite a distance when you have zero. So, basically giving him a, you know, equivalent of, like, 15 to 16 extra, like, 15 to 16 percent extra Denied. HP. Mid lane, even though this storm pick was after the Kunkka, it's not really a pick meant to crush this lane or anything. And in fact, I think Kunkka has a pretty good time uh, to start out. Even though you're a ranged hero, Kunkka just Tidebringer, you know, does Tidebringer things. Unlikely to see a kill here until we hit level six. And it's more if Kunkka hits six first, Storm will die. If Storm hits six first, it's still pretty tough to kill Kunkka unless Kunkka has already taken a lot of damage. Just because Kunkka is such a, a tanky hero. Um, rotations aside, right? I mean, that might change things. But that is something to keep an eye on the denies as we go through the laning stage. Like, if Kunkka just picks up a couple extra denies, all you need is like a moment where you're level 6 first and then you can kill that storm. Yeah, and at the moment, storm... He actually is doing fairly well. Um, Kunkka did end up going for a bottle, though, which you don't see that often in the mid lane anymore. Like, people really just like the double bracer build, but um, against the, the amount of harassment damage you can take from the Storm Spirit and the fact that he needs to be spamming Torrent to, like, secure range creeps, it's a good pickup. But yeah, all the lanes, very even, like, like almost dead even across CS here. It's really just that first blood that's tipping things a little bit in favor for Boom from this top lane, but v still having a great time on the Luna, nonetheless. Where do you feel like this, uh, like, I, I'm trying to figure out, like, when this Omni Knight's, like, pressure is really going to kick off. He's got his double bracer going for his phase boots. He's kind of just built to survive the lane, maybe. Do we see, like, you don't have, like, a big stack taker besides the Luna on the side of, of town. I guess you have Kunkka, so maybe we see the Shadow Shaman start stacking for him. 
but can you afford to leave like an Omni Knight solo down here? Mm, potentially. Uh, we'll see if he takes a point in Repel early. I think with Repel, he's not really. Ooh, Omni Knight and Shadow Shaman started on the Morphling, but actually, maybe they're turning it. Oh, the shackles. He's not morphing. Fakaz makes it through with the waveform, trying to finish off the Shadow Shaman. It's going to be Panda to do it. That was very close. All right. Almost He's going to need some regen. A little bit more damage, and he'll have that. I think as you get more points in Hammer of Purity, reduce that cooldown, uh, maybe we'll see a kill. He does end up committing to the purification. So, I mean, that is the more normal core Omni Knight build is to either max Q or max E and just, like, focus on those two. You don't need repel early, usually. Um, but it does make you a lot safer, and that's where, if Shadow Shaman wanted to move around, we might. Storm in the oh. mid lane, pretty low. Yeah, they gets both, but guess what? Slayton's gets level 6 immediately after, and both supports rotating in. Shwan, he's got that rung hangover now, and Slayton's will grab himself the two kills. Actually, both of them go to the supports, but he gets the six-minute power rune, and that is going to be a lot of experience going his way now as well. A great series of events from Boom. That's two deaths on Shadow Shaman, so now he's got to walk out slowly as well. I don't think they'll find another kill in the meantime, but they do get a D-Ward in the middle while they have this space. Radiant Fusion. When the heck did they add a slow the hammer of purity? Am I stupid? Has that always been there? I forget when, but it was after no one wanted to use hammer of purity because it was it was not good. You know what? Real real honest take here. They added this because they got rid of the immortal cosmetic that was used for the shoulders, you know, the decay or whatever it was called. <laughs> and they're like, we got to find a way to put this back. All the hat people are really mad. Degen aura. Degen aura. That's what it was. Yeah. So now they've now they added it to hammer purity. Huh? Problem solved. Mm, I'm trying to find where it was. Did it always have it? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe it did. I mean, definitely not because his old shard was the Degen aura. So I'm guessing they, that's probably when they moved it. Oh, it looks like when they Slayton's reworked into the it. bottom lane. Huge rotation here as they will be able to bring him down. No problem at all. No points in that repel. And Slayton's getting getting work done early. He is still very far behind the Kunkka in terms of net worth, but these kills helping him out quite a bit. And Schwan grabs in a regen rune. Very good rune to take away from a Storm Spirit. Definitely. These are the kind of rotations and kills you want from a storm. And now that he, well, man, if he had, if he had that regen rune, he'd certainly catch up and farm. You have so much potential there. But I, I think it's. You always want money, right? But Storm does not need to be the richest in this game. I feel like, like he's, he's functioning more as a playmaker and trying to help out, especially this Morphling. Um, if they have the same read that we do, which is that Morphling will win the late game, just trying to help him out. For example, getting that Omni Knight kill makes Morphling's life just that much easier. And actually, they're going to try again. He's TPing back down here. Still no repel. If you, him, if you can get him before the level 6, it's massive. I'd also like to point out that all five of the kills so far are on the supports. This is a very deep dive. They're going to TP in the Kunkka. The Freezing Panda is level 6. The Freezing Field doing work, but Schwan with the boat will keep him alive. Very nicely done. Great rotations from Talon. They were, I mean, that was so close. That would have been a really sick follow-up kill because Omni Knight TP'd out. You kill him a second time. Now he, now he has to walk out. Um... And after that, you could probably just like ignore this lane because Morphling would pick up like two levels over the Omni Knight and be totally fine. But fast rotations from Talon, making sure to prevent that, maybe recognizing like, yeah, it would be really bad if Omni Knight died a second time. We got to save him. Uh, Kanka just using this, like he got some kills, but instead of like pushing anything, he's just farming up stacks. Looks like he wants his blade mail before he gets too active. And it does become really hard to do anything about him. Once he has that, Slade was just stealing a stack over here. Or not a stack, just stealing the camp. Might be in trouble, be though. Careful. Yeah. Still has Shackles available. I don't know if they're going to finish him off. He's got the Healing Lotus coming. Rune's going to be top. Slade him as well. 
just turn this one around. As uh, children will be picked up by the Shadow Demon. So Pakaz has rotated top. They've managed to push the Luna a little bit further back into the jungle. And it looks like they might try and grab this top tower. We'll have to see. Um, yeah, what I was saying earlier is all five of the kills are on the supports of Boom. And so Storm Spirit's net worth is really rough. But you have a pretty farmed Grimstroke in CM at the moment. Like these guys actually have a lot to them, uh, to these girls already. And we'll see if they can convert that to actual pressure because it is really powerful if you get like Soulbind, double spells, all of that. Uh, and that would be the supports being able to put their net worth to good use. Uh, but if you can, then yeah, it's, it's gonna be a bit of a shame that Storm did not pick up those kills. And these are supports where it's a little harder to do. Like if you had, I don't know, like a tiny four support, right? You're just like getting that fast blink. It's very easy to put that money into to action. But Grimstroke, Crystal Maiden, they're still kind of backline supports. So really depends if they can find us or not. Good scouting of the ward there. That was just play, so takes away a little bit of vision from Talon on the bottom side. Schwan does have his blade mail. He is top of the net worth here on this. Kunkka having a fantastic game going straight for the Aghanims afterward. Kind of just a standard build we've been seeing a lot from this hero. Followed closely by V-Tune, though. And that is very nice for the Luna, because you absolutely need to stay ahead of this Morphling. Yeah, we kind of focused on other lanes after that first death, but since then, V-Tune has just been farming extremely efficiently. And he's he hasn't picked up any kills or anything like that. This is literally all just money from last hitting. Slaydums, uh, Inkswell going in aggressively, but it's just a bait. He's got all three heroes. Inkswell will stun them up. Soulbind onto two. Panda trying to get in range for the frostbite, but five heroes as the response. He will be pulled back in. The boat's connecting, and Schwan chops him down with the amplified damage. Nice bait from uh, Talon there, just kind of expecting this rotation. Yeah, now they're coming in. Four heroes pushing that mid lane. Omni Knight, not as rich maybe as he would like, but he's still pretty tanky. Still provides a good chunk of burst damage. I actually skipped his ult for now. Sometimes see Omni Knights do that. Not all the time, but... Yeah, I mean, I guess you don't... It's not like tons of right click. It's like a combo of spell damage, especially in this early game. So maybe deciding he doesn't need it for now. Uh, but we were saying a bit of a tempo lineup, and uh, I think we saw a bit of it there, right? They just go get that mid tower off that kill. Now we chill till boats back up, and then probably see them go again, maybe to that bottom lane. And these fights have all been going the way of Talon without like your supports having like the, the level six is available. I mean, Shadow Demon has it now. But you had a huge level advantage early on both Panda and Knight. And they've been unable to connect on these rotations. So definitely uh, like pretty rough for them there. They might get lucky and scout V-Tune coming back in. Instead, the smoke's going to pop. And Illich with a blink reveal will find two. And those are very valuable kills. Taking down Schwan on this Kunkka should open up this mid lane tower. Great blink reveal. Not sure you could get more than that. Double kill and the mid tower, it looks like. Whoa, Pakaz, interesting. So I've seen him do this a couple times. He's actually just going the Falcon Blade, Dragon Lance right into the Phylactery as opposed to going for like a Mask of Death and like a Vlad's, which we've seen a lot of heroes go for. He just wants to get the, the Conda like right away. See a replay here is... Again, the smoke wraparound scouts another smoke at the exact same time. And yeah, just a really good read there from Illich. All right. Omni starting to struggle a little bit in terms of net worth, but it's all been space for the Luna, all for V-Tune. Boy, does he have space. Oh, top lane. Dude, no there. way. Slaydums is going to get solo killed by the Shaman. <laughs> Bro just hexed him immediately into the war drop. 20% damage amp. 
That is Cost a pretty level he's three hex, now, dude. Holy. Blessing. I mean, That's he went into that with like half HP, though, is the problem. Yeah, getting caught off guard by that. That is, uh, that's a bit rough for him. Uh, if Omni Knight is struggling for Talon, Storm, he's been active, but still his network, like, he's dying a lot, too, in, uh, I don't know, he's not even dying a lot, but, like, getting low and then having to go back, I don't know. But his, his net worth is, uh, not as high as they'd like. Radiant structure. Absolutely. Bottom tier one tower should be an easy grab here. That being said, they're smoked up, looking for a smoke rotate or looking for a, a blink initiation here from the tiny. War drops there. They know. Okay, they're not on the watcher or on the twin gate. They're looking for Slatums though themselves. Very close for both teams getting caught out there. How do you feel about this blink omni? I think it shows that they're trying to put a lot of emphasis on V-Tune, have him hit this insane timing and just send him forward. And then you have Disruption behind and you have Omni who is, with Blink, will always be in position to cast Repel, Purification, Guardian Angel. Like you're just making sure you can always help your Luna. Maybe you can't help this Kunk on the mid lane. Disruption, gonna buy him a little bit of time. Yeah, get get up from there. there. Nice save. And Illich is the one that's dead. V-Tune with the Eclipse just destroying him. Banda pulled back in with the X. In comes Slatums. Dude, he is so tanky on this Kunkka. They do manage to bring down the Shadow Shaman, but looking for the Luna. That's the big win if you can get it. So much damage out, but they just lose the, sh <laughs> the Storm in the process. And Schwan still alive on 50 HP, unable to finish the job. Waveform in from Bakaz, looking to bring down the Shadow Demon now. Okay, Garden Angel, not Tried enough to, to save him. him. Triple kill for the Morph. I mean, that gets him right up to the top of the net worth now. That is huge. Yeah, we were saying Morphling versus Luna in the late game looks good. Talon was getting some tempo together, pushing things forward, but Morphling is not being slowed down. Storm is, maybe Tiny is a little bit, but... Morphling's up here. If he just copies your Luna, now you'll be pretty scary. You do have some instant initiation, so maybe you can. Like, one or two surprise kills on this Morphling would be huge, and Ka's gonna have to be careful of that. Maybe that's part of why he opted for this build. It makes him a lot tankier, uh, at yeah. least in this early game, compared to like some other builds you can do where you're actually pretty low on HP. And he's going to go with Sanj and Yasha, so having a little bit of status resistance there to play against the Shadow Shaman, cool. which is a little bit scary sometimes. Christina X, Cotton Knight, Silence up, Kunkka really wants this haste rune. They're trying to prevent the X back. It does end up connecting. <gasps> Ooh, Ooh, that adaptive strike so cool. almost does it. That was incredibly close. I think it was down to like 20 HP. Ward still scouting the whole bottom side. They didn't manage to find it, and Slatums will use this as a green light. He's not going to be able to solo him this time. Inkswell helps lock him down. The match damage to follow up is there. Avalanche catches Omni. He does have one more Guardian Angel, but the silence and the root, he can't get out of this. Panda with a freezing field sets up for Ponyo as well. And Omni Knight. Ooh, almost Ooh, burst Slatums. You gotta be careful, man. Triple kill for Panda. Yeah, if he had a different build this will be interesting to like go back and think about later but if he had a different build besides blank he would have done more damage with hammer purity he would have been tankier and maybe he can get some kills here at the same time we did see him save kanka thanks to his blank earlier and as long as the timing with luna lines up it looks like maybe around bkb maybe they'd start moving but this blink you're not really like an initiation hero, so it is a blink to save. Uh, and unless you have heroes saving, it doesn't, doesn't really pay off. Illich will die here. Find himself yeah, a little that... time running through the trees. Two ults nice committed for that. Bottom side. But I think it opens up Roche. It's being pinged. It's going to come here in just about 20 seconds. He's got... I mean, the blink Shadow Shaman is so scary now. It really is. Like... Those types of initiations from the Storm Spirit probably don't happen if 
he's got a blink, right? If he Radiant sees it coming, he can just blink to extend his, you know, either extend the Storm Spirit's reach, but... 20 minutes, Roshan's gonna fall bottom top lane. They're gonna go for their own Tormentor. Getting either of these shards for Boom is very good. It is taking them a moment, but should be able to clean it up. Illich, I'm, got I'm it? sorry, what? Oh, Grimstroke bought and, del and delivered it just in time. Dude, how many times have we seen that happen where like a support buys it and then it ends up being given to them for free? I would have been uh, very sad. So, yeah, goes to Illich. That's a little unfortunate. Yeah, it's actually really good on both supports. But I understand why Knight got his shard so early off the strong start he had. He actually has gone back for a Midas, which is pretty funny. Um, but I do think Grimstroke looks pretty strong here if he gets some big items, such as the like eggs. maybe Blink Ags could be really sick. Yeah. I mean, we've seen Lunas in fights being taken by the Morphling. Well, add a magic immune Luna from the Grimstroke as well, and suddenly very scary as well. So, yeah, I can understand him going for the Midas, especially after the start that he had, right? Like, both of the supports. You have th your 307 on the Grimstroke. Your Crystal Maiden is 6, 3, and 4. Like, they've gotten so many of the kills. Mm -hmm. So they're like, all right, we can play a little greedy. Crystal Maiden going kind of standard stuff. Has the Glimmer Cape drums. Going for a four staff can eventually get boots bearing. The shard for the Dire does end up going to the Shadow Shaman, which is fantastic. You can very easily cut waves with just a real quick shackle. Yeah, speaking of supports that'll scale really well, Shadow Shaman is a classic for it, right? And having a great start. Um, actually, just to put into perspective, the fact that Grimstroke and Crystal Maiden are actually quite close to Shadow Shaman. Uh, we got some rich supports this game. Yeah. I mean, he did get the 1400 from the Tormentor, but yeah, it's still surprising. They're going to jump right on top of the Kunkka. The save comes through from the Disruption. The sh Morphling, he did get the Strength Morph off. He pops the Shard. He's got his damage reduction, but can he get to safety? The Torrent Storm just playing with them, throwing him to the air over and over, and Talon get massive kills. You said, so man, much. the blink counters from from Omni, it's there. Yeah, that Morphling was controlled up for so long. I think it was like uh, from eight seconds, seconds of crowd control with like a gap yeah. in the middle. Uh, from like first the Hex Shackle, then into like all of Kunkka's stuff. And that is a bit of the struggle this game. There is a good amount of crowd control from Talon, but it's it's kind of focused on two heroes, the Shadow Shaman and the Kunkka. So maybe if you can, you know, get a pick off on one and then BKBs, like maybe you can start ignoring it. But you're not quite at that point. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. And you know, one of the benefits of having a Shadow Shaman, you just war drop here, and this should be a, a pretty free tier two tower for the side of Talon. Game's still very close in terms of net worth. Like, it's kind of been a little back and forth. The, the biggest lead we've had so far this game, I think, was just over 2k. So, both teams managing to find uh, quite a bit of farm on the map. I will say, the Kunkka now, on his way to a BKB, is going to make this very difficult. We've seen how hard it is to bring down these heroes. If you don't find the Shadow Demon, and if you don't find the Omni Knight, I don't know who... Uh, who you can actually burst. Speaking of Omni, he's going straight for the Conda, like you said. He said, why not? I'll just build a Conda. I can do that. It's fun. That guy's got a Midas, guys. I want to have fun. Can you get a Conda? Wait. What if Morphling turns into Omni Knight with Conda? He has I was the thinking shard. about that. It could be, it could be pretty good. Uh, repel yourself. It's the same way like Rage is a really good steal. You, know, you could repel yourself and then throw out Hammer of Purities with high agility. I don't know which is actually better, like Luna or Omni Knight, but you're probably happy with either. Yeah. Oh, they're following the courier, the courier. trying to find Panda. And, he's about to get oh, nuked. Glimmer Cape? Eh, yeah, he's gonna be, it's going to be rough there. Not much you can the do. The nuke wasn't as much as I thought, but maybe he doesn't have the Conda yet, I guess. Yeah, we'll get there. They still did 1,100 damage. That's true, that's true. But I want to see her just die immediately. You know, like, 
I want to see Blink Hammer of Purity, Radiant's and she's gone. Down. I don't want to be that Crystal Maiden, but I want to see that happen to a Crystal Maiden. All right, someone called PETA. Zach's kind of <laughs> in here. Oh, Shackle out oh. from the Shaman. He's got the Storm Spirit. The Avalanches will be able to get him to safety, but Tiny sacrificing himself for the cause. Throws oh, the Gunka into no, the tower, matter. but there's no follow-up. This is the really threat close. that Shaman offers, man. It is so scary with this Blink Hex. Yeah, and it used to be that you would you would really save your ultimate on the Shadow Shaman. They're gonna for... go Knight. That's just instantly killed. Oh, there it is, you got your wish. The amp from that level three, or that level four Hex. It was just 1,400 damage from the Omni Knight immediately. It is gonna get that ward removed right away, but you did pick up a kill for it, and it got you that tier two safely, so uh, not too bad. Oh, Morphling. Gotta get no a hex to the bottom. Way. There's gonna, I mean, he's already strength New morphing, gun. but the damage from Omni, will he go for the morph? He is, goes for the repel waveform, and now TP, you can't stop it. You could exit, but it is on cooldown. So that is what I say. That's what I'm thinking. It's like eventually he's gonna be able to just turn into an Omni, and maybe instead of having, you know, the damage reduction from the shard, he just has a BKB from Repel. So maybe yeah, that is that actually repel, gonna be better for him. That Repel saved him. He was X initially, but the the X couldn't go through the Repel and got him out. It was kind of close on timing though. Actually, <laughs> I don't know if he like mentally did the math and checked that out, but. It's because I'm sure he did. He just knew. I mean, repel is six seconds. So as long as you cast it, um, you get X relatively soon and then cast it, you'll be okay. Well, they've just instantly killed Storm Spirit again. It's actually just instant death. The hex into this Omni Knight. He had 1600 HP, took 1600 pure damage from the Omni Knight. Stick build. That is ridiculous. You, I mean, we were joking a little bit about the damage amp combo with the Omni Knight early on, but it, apparently it's more than enough. First set down at 27 minutes. I don't even know you have to stop, but. Blink oh, Maybe after you kill more Blink. No, uh, no, he's out. He's like, I can do this too, homie. I will also be Omni Knight. I'm surprised they didn't go for that, actually, because the off the hex, I thought they could get the shackle. Maybe he was just scared of where the other heroes were. They don't actually have vision in this area. Uh, Roche is also up soon, so maybe they'll just chill in that area, wait for that. You wouldn't want to throw a fight here and lose that, because that would kind of delay your... Like, I think they're set to win in the next five to ten minutes if they get this Roche and just push it down. But if you lost the Roche, you're delaying this game another like five, ten minutes while you wait for the, the third Roche for your team. So I think playing it safe right now is a good call. Well, we'll see what they decide to do. There is a Parasma picked up on the storm. So rather than, you know, tanking up, trying to get like a BKB or a Lincoln's, he's like, yep, more damage. That's how we're going to win this one. And... Honestly, I don't hate the idea of it. If he's not getting jumped, he will destroy these supports. But he also needs to have detection to see them, right? Shadow Demon has a Glimmer Cape. Uh, Shaman can just hex him if he, if he doesn't get instantly killed. Oh, instant Ward Sentry. There's going to be the Hex and Tiny deleted again. Dude, this hero has 2,400 health. And he's just gone. He had... That damage amp is ridiculous. This is cool. Me I love seeing this. This is so fun. I mean, once at this point, the execution is pretty straightforward, right? Just like, I blink hex, then you guys just fall up, right? It's not as like, the co the execution is not complicated for them. They're pinging because they're coming hey guys, to the portal you see on the bottom doing side. On again? They scan this. He gets the hex. He gets the shackles. In comes Slatums, though. Can Pekaz turn around with a BKB? He's trying to wait for him to safety. He does get the repel off. Storm's out as well. But he gets pulled back in with the X and Slatums. Will bite the bullet once again for Boom as the rest of the team will disengage. Pekaz TPing to safety. 
I mean, they almost got him. It was really close. He got out with like a hundred or so health. So it required the instant reactions from Storm going in to cancel it like any longer, and they pick up a more fun kill. They're gonna get a Storm kill instead. Perfectly happy with that, and they're now gonna see Roche here. So uh, they're gonna pick up the Roche on two, and then. I imagine go top, take that tier two, and then just start poking at high ground. Yeah, I like I mean, this I'm, a lot. Imagine this, so you you just keep X marking Luna, drop Repel on her, and walk her up. And you just repeat that. You don't have an answer to that. Uh, I don't know if there the is only, an answer to that. The only thing you could do would be like, a toss back with like a stolen X. Like if if Morphling's able to like X the Luna or something, that would be sick. Because it it overrides the previous X marks. Uh, mid lane, uh, rinse and repeat. I see a long shackle out from the Shadow Shaman. Can they finish the job? They can't. Oh, Omni's not quite close enough. Wait, Omni had blink actually. He could have gotten here a little sooner maybe, or maybe it just came out when I clicked him. Yeah. I don't know, but. It's so scary though. Like even though you don't kill the storm, you put the fear in him. You're like, man, I gotta, I gotta be scared of just a shadow shaman. If I don't see the shadow shaman, I can barely show anywhere because I could just, I could literally die 100 to zero. Mm -hmm. And he's going for status resistance himself, and you do need it. Like he's gonna get his shackle duration talent most likely at 15. Well, maybe not. The serpent ward range is also very good. But if he wants the shackle duration, top tower is under that's still quite a bit. I think this game he'll trust his team to have the damage and he'll just go shackle duration. V tune finishing off the top tier two tower. That will be the last Radiant's one. Top tower has fallen. How many Kondas do we have? Conda check. More flink done. Luna done. Omni done. Very good. Very good. Very good. Perhaps Shadow Shaman should get one. <laughs> Why not? <are> scanning. <laughs> He's actually got a Aeon Disc locked in his backpack. So if he gets jumped by the Storm Spirit, he can pop it instantly, turn with oh, the Hex. Oh, I forgot you can put Disseminate on Luna too. Yeah. That's kind of cool. Ward's dropped up onto the high ground. Repel onto V2, and you talked about this. How do you deal with this? You have to get a toss back from Illich, but he's just running the illusions into the base. Fortification. Does come through, Slaytons comes in, they manage to get on top of v Disruption out from Ponyo. And very nicely done, toss, but the Hex is out, v -tune, save for the moment, does finally pop, but you still have another Guardian Angel. He's got BKB, he's got Satanic, and Panda gets one-tapped by the Omni. That's not looking good. Slayton goes in, tries to get on top of the Shadow Demon, saved once again, but the damage, he's got him this time. Pekaz on the run with the BKB, trying to survive, does have no waveform, but the Shackles are there! They pull him back in with the X! Can they finish off Pekaz? They do! No buyback. Knight, forced back into the base. It is Slayton's, basically, versus the world right now. One more set. There's no way to defend this. You can maybe try to fight through the Megas, but... I don't even know, actually, because you have 60 seconds without a Morphling. Uh, maybe they're playing it safe, thinking he might have buyback. But after you take this, there you still haven't bought back. Cool. Okay. There's a lot of damage on over to the Shadow Shaman. He will survive. I mean, you finished Dark Portrait on this Grimstroke, but it's not mattering at all. Yeah, it, die it actually dies so quickly to the Glaives. Looking Luna's for not more. even like focusing it. Slatums does not find his op his target. I mean, 25 seconds, no more flank. You have to put V Tune into such a bad position in order to find this fight. And yeah, you do have a blink toss available, but you don't get the right one. And now Tiny in trouble. The break comes out. The BKB will protect him. In comes Slatums. They've got the Mega Grease, but can they actually finish off any of these heroes? The Omni Knight just keeping them alive as Slatums will just continue to bounce around the back line and does not find his opening. Morph is back, but the damage is done.
Talon, they've got Mega Creeps. V Tune is on to the tier four. Slatum's with a nice pullback, but an immediate BKB to cancel. He goes for the back line. Aeon Disc will keep him alive. Morphling trying his best to stand his ground with his BKB with those shards, but it's not going to be enough. They've done it, man. Slatum, well, wait a minute. Slatum's doing some sick moves. Big Inkswell stuns up too. Can they turn this around? Panda with a freezing field gets third, but can they bring down this Omni Knight? He's just tapping down Slatums, but it's finally gonna be enough. A triple kill comes through from the double buybacks. You are still 12,000 gold behind. And Mega Creep secured. It is gonna be an uphill battle for, for Boom if they wanna stay in this game. I'm trying to think of what they can do. I mean, I don't think they can even get anything off this. Almost team wipe, just Shadow Shaman or Shadow Demon surviving. Uh, they could like maybe get a tier two, but I mean we see like there's a lot of towers, right? So there's so many fortifies in play here. For Boom to win this, we're looking at another like 30 minutes. You gotta keep winning team fights, run it down the lane. They fortify, you back off. You win enough another fight in your base, you run it down. You take one tower, another fortify, you back off. Like you gotta repeat that so many times to actually, actually bring this game back. Uh, they're gonna keep fighting on. They're gonna try it, but it's not, it's gonna be so hard. Yeah, it's just, you're also playing into a Shadow Shaman who now has a, a Shadow Blade. <laughs> so, you know, he's just gonna roam around the map and be like, I'm looking for my victim. And it wouldn't surprise me if you see like a bots too come out eventually from someone like Omni Knight where he can just constantly be on top of the Shadow Demon. But he's opted to go yeah. for Kai Assange, so just further increasing his damage potential of his Hammer of Purity. As there's a double Wisdom Rune here. Oh, that's, that's good stuff. Luna TPing back. VTune's like, I want my 25 talent. I'll take those. Gets him a level and a half. Yeah, I also don't think they... They haven't actually done the combo we talked about, which is like Repel, X, all that on the Luna. And I, I think that's part of why they lost that fight. They kind of like grouped up like, oh, we got Megas. We kind of did it and they got caught off guard by that. But I mean, if you do just go back to that, there really is not much of an answer. Especially if you time it with Mega Creeps coming into the base and you just throw like you don't need to win off of one time, right? You just like throw a couple attacks on this. These towers, Glaives get to work. OK, call back, wait five seconds, do it again. They are going to smoke up. They might just catch him off guard because you can now walk into the base. Yeah. Morphling's going to show here. Oh, there's the hex. Bye, just gets four yep, Instantly dead. He also finds a timeless relic. We want to talk about magic damage. This guy's got plenty. They pull him into the fountain. He gets that ult off and that, you know, keeps him alive for a moment. But they managed to find the kill. Now Kunkka on the run trying to get away. Pops the boat. But Bacaz has to be very careful. He cannot afford to get found. They get on top of the Shadow Demon. Great find here from Slatums. But your base, you gotta go back to addressing it. 12 HP to on that the... tower. Saved. I wanted to see his death time, uh, death recap on Bacaz to see how much damage the Omni did. But, yeah, it's it's pretty I'm nuts. pretty sure he literally died to two combo hits. I'm pretty sure Shaman Hex shackled and then it was luna q and omni knight e and i think that was it i think that was like all his health that would that would make sense i mean omni's hammer of purity is over 150 percent pure damage based on his base damage and he is walking around with over 200 so that's like a literal 600 damage do twice plus the conda active and then his basic attack as well so Damage wise, that's I think if I checked is uh, a lot. That math checks out. All right, Talon, they'll wait for Roche, or at least they'll check it. We'll see if they actually wait. It is a two minute spawn. I think maybe they're feeling a little, you know, you, you're like, you're feeling good, and then you kind of lose two fights. You're like, maybe, maybe we play it safe. I like, I think we're still good, but let's just not throw, guys. Uh, I, I do think waiting for Roche would be a good call. They did get Morphling buyback, so as long as you can find that kill, fantastic. But he's alive, so you still got to respect it. Uh, maybe you can catch him off with the, the Hex Shackle again. But you got to wait for that. Yeah, I think Omni, he's also pretty close to a BKB. I think he got tossed back 
in that fight, but he was in pretty deep. We're, we're still not really seeing, like, I don't know, they have Megas, and like some of these fights are getting a little wacky, I get it, but I really think just sending Luna in as the focal point, I know I keep going back to it, but like, if Talon somehow loses this game, it's gonna go back to that, and it's gonna be like, why didn't we just send Luna forward? Like, why is like Omni Knight back at the fountain and stuff? Like, why is like that happening, you know? Um, now, I think they still have a good spot, because I mean, they have Mega Creeps, and they haven't lost a single tier two tower, but... Uh, Sometimes we see these crazy comebacks, and I, I think that's where it starts. That's true. Radiance Middle Tower has fallen. Well, they got a tower. They did it. So Ancient is exposed now. So now you do have to be very careful. That 12 HP tower did not live long enough. Can't believe it. Unbelievable. Grimshake's got a hex. Maybe. Okay, he sold so his Midas for it possible comebacks first toss in the fountain classic uh then soulbind on luna and maybe omni knight or the kanka i'm not sure who maybe maybe kanka because he has the shiva's aura um double illusion radiant vortex like everyone wombo them with Avalanche Toss, Morphling into Luna, Glaives bouncing everywhere. Okay. Double Conda hit on the Soulbind. There you go. There you go. I, uh... Kill one hero and all that. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be tough. Uh, There's so many saves on Talon. Third Roshan will go the way of Talon. Very quickly picked up. Refresher for the Kunkka. Oh, one of man. the better ones you could ask for. And now... We're gonna see the Roshan's banner. Makes a big difference when you've got Mega Creeps already. You turn them into what I like to refer to as the Giga Creeps. So that gets dropped. Which lane though? Which lane? Where oh, is it? They were they is were it? deciding where to put it. They put it in the top lane. It's a little out there, so you actually can kill it if you're able Look to leave the, the size base. Of that creep. It's pretty big. Those pretty big are creep. Enormous. All right. Real stuff happening in the bottom side though. D Ward. Panda, very careful. You could die any second. A single hex into an Omni Knight is uh, very scary. The creeps in the top lane have as much health as the uh, the heroes do on Boom. Oh, Panda. Oh, in comes Storm. Nice two hero vacuum. The follow up not quite there as Omni Knight goes I in and deletes delete the Grand Stroke. No, that hero was necessary. Paka stuck inside, pops the BKB, looking for the Shaman. Ponyo as well, just dance on, but they're just focused on the throne. v -tune. he wants out of this game. Paka gets deleted. The Omni Knight is the true carry this game. Triple kill for WS, and the GG comes out. This guy has absolutely dominated on this hero. We got to see some fun, fun burst there. Yeah, look at these guys. They had a good time. Like, man, you remember that time my Hex Shackle killed that Storm, guys? Hilarious. <laughs> Everyone having a good time there. Which one, dude? Which one? <laughs> That's true. Uh, which was my favorite example? <laughs> yeah, that was a cool combo. We we have not gotten to see that, you and I. Uh, so fun to see it in action here. The Omni Knight off lane. So much utility but still an insane amount of damage and initiation obviously lacking there you don't know hero has everything but this time you had this shadow shaman with the the blink hex shackle plus your kanka kind of covered those bases and the laning stage kind of was going okay for morphling and that was like uh oh is this is omni knight struggling but with the other two lanes going so well they just helped get Omni Knight back into the game with some rotations, and from man, from there it's just so scary. You just show yourself, blink hex, you're dead. I think this game would have been very different if a lot of those early kills ended up on the Storm Spirit instead of your Crystal Maiden and your Grimstroke, and like they used that time. It was like, all right, I guess I'll get a Midas. Like we got a scale. We'll see what happens, but. Slatums ended up being super under farmed this game as a result, and he had so many deaths. Um, 
I mean, he finished the game with only six, but, like, all six of those deaths were, like, in the first, like, I would say almost all of them were in the first, like, 25 minutes of the game. So, really slowing down his, uh, you know, ability to play here, which definitely struggles a lot. Yeah, it's a lot of, like, lately, it's, like, who is your playmaker? And if they have a good game, they can they can make plays, you know, to, to keep it simple. And with the Grimstroke and the Crystal Maiden getting the kills, they're not really playmakers. They're follow-ups. And they can cast, like, Inkswell on your Storm, but if he goes in and then just dies because he does not have very much, then the play doesn't really work out. Or maybe the supports pick up another kill at the cost of your Storm Spirit, which is like, okay, go go team. I'm, I'm glad you guys are getting kills. You know, I'm, I'm really poor over here. Uh, but yeah, like you said, it it could have been totally different if the kills just work out slightly uh, another way. Like if he just gets like even one of them, <laughs> it could have gone better. Yeah, this is just a lot of fun to watch. Like he he not only does he go for like a really good spell damage build uh, going for the Kai Assange, but also finds a timeless relic. So the damage coming out from each hammer of purity is just nuts. There's no mitigation for this. It is just straight pure damage and it's all being amplified every single time from this shadow shaman. And they did such a good job of playing around that specifically. Like he's not going in on the Omni usually unless shadow shaman finds a hex and then it's just deleting a target. Eventually he gets <laughs> so farmed and they're so far ahead that it doesn't matter. And he just can go in with impunity, but yeah, it was, this was so well executed from the side of Talon. I love this draft. This is sick. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. I'm trying to like think back on it. Like, what, what exactly went wrong for Boom? Because I don't think their draft is that bad or anything. Is it just the execution, or do you think they should change? I mean, it's easy to point out to the storm and say, like, okay, it didn't have as good of a game. Maybe we could pick a different hero, but it does feel like it could have worked. I feel like it could have. I feel like there was definitely a possibility for Boom to win this game. Like I said, I think Storm not getting any of those first, like, seven kills that they got, uh, even though he was involved with them. Like, his his double kill in the mid lane went to both supports, the Crystal Maiden and the Grimstroke. He rotates bottom, kills uh, Omni Knight, kill goes to the Crystal Maiden. And then there's like another fight where he rotates, gets two kills, and they both go to Grimstroke. It's like he didn't get any kills in the beginning of this game, and his net worth struggled because he's not farming. Meanwhile, like Kunkka's just chilling, clearing waves, clearing stacks, and he's like ends up being like over a thousand gold behind it. At uh, he's twenty seven hundred gold behind the Kunkka at ten minutes. Like that is that shouldn't happen especially when you have like a seven kill advantage on your team that early and your storm spirit was involved in six of them and actually that is one thing that is potentially lacking here that we've seen become a little bit more popular is the ability to clear stacks really quickly like a lot of teams have at least one of those heroes and you can do hard camp medium small camp stacks but you can't do ancient stacks on the side of boom which means you can't do your own you can't really steal them from the enemy team and True. we were so caught up in like watching the Omni Knight, all that stuff. Luna was just quietly farming, right? Like Tiny did okay. He's not like, he's not poor at 10 minutes, but he didn't really stop the Luna. And Luna just, she was going through the jungle, clearing everything. Kunkka and Luna were doing stacks and they just, it just felt like they were richer. Cause at the start of the game, like the kill score wasn't like that bad, but they were just farming more efficiently. So maybe that's one thing you could change. Not that like any of these heroes in, individually are bad but one of them being able to do stacks to open that up for your team maybe that could have helped them keep up a net worth and then like compete in these fights a little better yeah it was a lot of fun very exciting game and uh well played from town but we've got to go to a short break and we'll be back with game number two of boom here versus town the winner of course advancing to the next round of this group stage so we'll see you in just a bit everyone stay tuned for more on the elite league
What is up, everybody? Welcome back here into our final series of the day. It is Talon taking on Boom Esports. My name is Cryptic here with Z Quixotics. And I mean, Talon looks super convincing in game number one, pulling out a very fun strategy of Shadow Shaman Omni Knight. He just hex the hero, give him that 35% damage amp, and Omni comes in, just gives him a little one two, you know, deletes them from the game. You know, I love seeing that. That's some good stuff. Yeah, there's something. There's two things that are particularly funny in Dota is one, seeing someone just completely melt, deleted instantly, or seeing a bunch of heroes focus one guy. He's so tanky, his health like doesn't even move. I don't know. The two extremes are just comedic in Dota. Yeah, they really are. We're going to jump into the draft here and take a look at what these teams are banning out. So a lot of the same stuff from game one. The Rays are actually banned a little bit earlier. And that means if you're a talent here, you probably have to ban out the Shadow Demon unless you want to give that one up over to Boom. So we'll have to see if they do want to get rid of that. No one wants to play against the Shadow Demon, and especially after seeing that last game. Do not blame them. No, you do not. Uh, it does mean, let's see, Kunkka is still in the pool if they want to do that. Boom has been opening with Rubik a lot. Let's see, Primal Beast is out of the picture. Timber saw might slip through. I don't think Boom has really been playing it as much, but that has been a hero that's been uh, pretty popular. Illich is very good at the Timber saw. A lot of the South American offlane players are very good at it, just because of kind of like the Whisper effect. When Whisper was playing an SA, he really pushed the the envelope on Timber saw. They'll actually ban it themselves. Okay, so they will ban okay, it and go for the Kunkka. Kunkka. Okay. I like this idea because if you don't, you either do you do one or the other. I think you either ban Kunkka, pick Timbersaw, or pick Timbersaw, ban Kunkka. So I like this. I feel like this is safer, and we saw last game just how strong it can be. Yeah, it's a very solid hero. You just bring so much. It's, it's just so hard to shut this guy down in the laning stage because of Tidebringer. Go for the less track. Here have been gaining popularity. I'd say at this point, as long as your team has a less track player, a good amount of teams are willing to pick the less track pretty early, uh, just because of the not? the damage it brings. Yeah, and we we keep saying it, haven't seen it happen yet. You can technically flex less track to a support if you really end up in a bad matchup. Like for example, this ends up being a Kunkka off lane. They pick a mid hero who's going to shut down that less track you can swap it but we haven't seen that part happen yet because a lot of the times these first picks are going to mid heroes that are pretty consistent like like the kunkka and they go hmm we've been countered with leshrac but actually it's kind of still okay so we'll just run kunkka mid anyways and they go well yeah we picked leshrac to play against kunkka if they do that and they did it so yeah i guess we'll do it too uh, so there hasn't really we haven't really reached that stage of like flexing everything around yet i really like the bands of the shadow shaman and the life stealer life stealer just in general very good against kunkka also gives you a potential save for the lashrak if he goes in kind of deep um and shadow shaman obviously this is a hero that talon loved to play around and i think after last game um he inflicted some damage so they're just gonna let that one disappear doom will get banned out from the side of talon very good hero against this lashrak so it makes sense that we see that one getting the attention ban there I wouldn't mind seeing just like a Crystal Maiden, for example, here. You'll give some mana over to Leshrac. Uh, it is, you know, we said last time there's ways to cancel uh, the the ultimate from that Kunkka, like multiple ways to deal with it. At the same time, still, still a pretty good support, especially if you don't want to reveal too much here. I don't, I don't hate that. Batrider is still in, though. Ooh, this is a e this is an SEA classic, actually. Something we see Talon and only a couple other teams like to play. The ET definitely works great with the Lashrak because the Spirit is what carries the um, magic resistance reduction part of mm -hmm. you know his passive natural order. But yeah, I like it. Could work out quite well. We'll have to see. We've seen some hit or miss performances from ET. I think it's part of the reason why this hero has not been 
terribly popular. Like some teams like him, other teams don't. Uh, but Leshrac definitely seems like a good pairing. Uh, let's see who else they they bring in. I think a lot of it comes down to the laning stage, where like sometimes ET is pretty solid in the lane, but then other times it's it's it just kind of awkward compared to like yeah a lot of other potential supports. Uh, for now, they're gonna grab themselves the Rubik. Pretty good support. There's already some good steals here uh, from the Leshrac, especially if you can steal the uh, the stun, the split earth. Very nice steal for Rubik. ET is a little more awkward because you kind of need the combo of spells, Spirit and Stomp for that to like really work together. But Spirit is still a cool steal in terms of your own scouting. You can even find a new hero to steal a better spell from. Or if you can steal the ultimate, I mean, that's fantastic. And with your extra cast range, it's actually so long. You can uh, really control the whole fight. Okay, they'll grab the Crystal Maiden for themselves. So still not revealing where this Kunkka is going. Could be mid or off. We've seen this hero flex actually quite a bit. It's typically a mid laner, but teams do tend to move it to the off lane if they want to. So for now, I think... Boom, pretty solid draft, pretty straightforward. We'll see what Talon wants to do here with the Elder Titan combos. Like you said, there, there's gotta be another hero they're planning on playing this around. It does kind of mean that Boom probably don't want to play a Morphling into it. So yeah, it protects, allows them to just get the Morphling earlier on. Okay. Maybe pick your off. Well, I don't know. they'll they'll probably pick a support here, I guess. If you want to save the Leshrac flex, you can pick an off lane here, and that way it could be your mid mid Leshrac, could be a support Leshrac. At the same time, if you're still relatively happy with it, like you just get a support. Yeah, it looks like they're gonna go Tusk. I I will say I find that interesting. So Tusk, another hero that actually Tusk and Morphling. There's not great steals for the rubik so like that part's kind of cool but i wouldn't say tusk has the greatest combos right now like leshrac you kind of set up for but leshrac doesn't make use of tag team like at all um yeah. snowball save is pretty cool for some of these heroes here and uh you do have that bkb cancel so um always useful like no matter what we see here later and the uh, multiple ways to like cancel crystal main ult, so that's kind of cool cause troll that's very good this is a really strong safe lane and this very much shuts down the tusk because you can't really tag team a hero when you're playing into crystal maiden in general like you have so much attack slow and then the root but now you have the miss chance as well from troll so this tusk has almost no impact in this offlane like the only thing he can do is try and isolate cm and kill her with the help of an offlane hero or just rotate so Pakaz, regardless of the off lane that they pick here, should have a very good lane. I mean, is there any hero he's worried about? Maybe they just ban the Centaur because the hero is super annoying. They've already got rid of the Brewmaster. They got rid of the Enigma on Talon. Is Razor out? Yeah, Razor's out. Um. Yeah, I wonder if you... I mean, is the, can you flex Tusk to the safe lane? But ET's not really going to be much better in this lane, but... Yeah. Also yeah, relies on right clicks for damage and just gets yeah, yeah. his chance. To, like, it is a very good Troll Warlord game. Like, if they try to rotate even, right? Imagine Elder Titan comes through the portal and comes bottom. Maybe you can get the Crystal Maiden with the two of them. But if Troll Warlord assists and hits him with the Whirling Axes, you're going to miss a lot of damage. Yeah, so maybe an offlaner who is relatively self-sufficient can jungle early, and then you just roam mid on the tusk a lot, or like do stacks a lot, because it does feel like you have to sidestep this lane. I mean, unless I feel like there's Centaur some pick. is the obvious one, right? The one that like we just see kind of get left in lanes a lot of the time, but yeah, I, I wouldn't mind else? it. It is a really good steal for Rubik, but tied. I mean, mag? it's to a degree inevitable um oh death prophet okay yeah i was wondering like maybe you could run a ranged hero with this tusk uh but i don't know if she's like well i guess they think it could have been strong enough so why not um
They are going to have to pick here. They'll reveal where the Kunkka is going. So now's the time where this is a Leshrac mid. Do you want to pick something different against that? You know it's a Morphling carry as well. So where do you think Kunkka will get enough from and what can you shut down? I feel like Kunkka can just go mid and you pick uh, an offlaner who's a little bit better versus the Morphling. I don't feel like Morphling ET is that strong of a lane. Okay, so never mind. They'll swap it. They'll put Puck into the mid lane uh, where Puck should be okay. You can dodge a lot of flesh track spells. And then, I, I mean, Kunkka will be fine in the off lane because I don't think those two are particularly strong. I thought they were going to go Void Spirit here uh, on Boom. Like, it looked like a pretty good Void Spirit game. There is almost no lockdown on Talon. And you can pick, like, these, like, mobile heroes. I mean, Puck is great for this reason as well. They went Storm Spirit last game, but I like the, the Puck or Void Spirit. I think would have done really well this game. But Puck, obviously, a little bit better of a lane matchup versus the Lesh. And Kunkka should be fine into the Morphling. Like, the Tidebringer spam is annoying. Elder Titan, he can just kind of hopefully rely on the Rubik to keep him back, like Telekinesis in the Torrents. I think it's okay. You know, I don't think they'll struggle too much up there. I wonder if we'll see Kunkka build a Spirit Vessel. We used to see it a little more. It dropped off. It's pretty decent here for Leshrac and Morphling. And he makes the most sense to build it. Instead of building, like, say, a blade mail, he could get it, get the spirit vessel, and then go into, like, the ags like usual. But maybe he does want the armor from blade mail since you are going to be dealing with that ET aura. Well, Mars is still available, so they will just go back for this hero. I mean, your idea here is to just bring team fight instead. Like, mm -hmm. it doesn't win you the lane. It's not going to really shut down this Pekaz Troll Warlord at all. But maybe he doesn't die. Like, you can spear back the troll if he tries to get aggressive. Uh, you do have God's Rebuke to throw into the tag team, which is at least some damage if you're, like, slowed or missed. Like, you can at least rely on the God's Rebuke damage. I thought they might just pick a hero that can sustain, like, 2v1 or something or just kind of bide their time. But opting for team fight. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. I, I'm most curious to see how these lanes are going to play out. I think that is going to decide a lot in this game. Yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised to see some some creep dragging up top. I think if you try to play this lane directly, I, you could definitely kill Crystal Maiden if she steps out. Uh, but as long as that care, uh, the positioning is careful from Panda, it's a uh, it's a bit tough. I feel like so. I, I feel like creep dragging should be pretty viable. Crystal Maiden is so slow, so Tusk if he gets Actually, even without move speed items, I think I think he could still do the creep dragging, uh, and I, I don't think Crystal Maiden would really be able to punish it. And Mars just, uh, just like plays it safe till he he gets the creeps delivered to him, and then from there maybe like his game will be fine. That makes sense, actually. I mean, I don't even, I don't hate the idea of him going boots first, like just as, uh, to get away from like the whirling axe spam from Troll Warlord, because that can be a little bit annoying. Um, but yeah, I think you're right. We'll probably see him doing a lot of creep dragging against that kind of troll crystal maiden lane. But here we are. It is game number two of this qualifying match for Talon and Boom. Both teams smoking up, heading out towards the mid lane to get their wards placed. Puck, of course, usually gets there first thanks to the orb. But Lesh is a darn fast hero. So the extra legs is extra move speed. In most scenarios. Persona Puck Crystal Maiden would like to too. have a word. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. That's true. Where did my bonus move speed go? Also, Marana lately. She just got her move speed owned. Yeah, it's so funny. She's, She's so slow. Sagan's getting old. She can't uh, run as fast as he used to. Took a lot of damage in the anime, I think. It's true, actually. <laughs> Spoilers. <laughs> 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 it's all right. It's not a good show anyway. It's, I don't think anyone's missing much. Go watch Arcane instead. That thing owns. Sentry Fighting scouts words. the ward. Well, that's nice. And quick D ward. Telekinesis pulls Ponyo into the tower. A uh, double blood grenade thrown. Unfortunate there. And he might live. Whirling axes from Pekaz. First blood. Who's going to get it? Nobody. Wait, Slatum's? snipe with the orb? Dude, he actually... If I was him, like, would you chase that? Would it be worth it, you think? 
Maybe, Maybe if he changes the angle a little bit, but I think it would be really... It'd be pretty risky. Pretty, pretty baller, but pretty risky. Talon get three bounty runes. They get a D ward. And they get two blood grenades out of boom. That's pretty good. Yeah, ET's not going to miss too much either. He just makes it to the base. He's going to TP out now. So it didn't really miss all that much during the laning stage. So long as... Yeah, there it is. Okay, get the TP out. Top lane. We'll see if uh, they do the creep dragon we were talking about. He's going to block the small camp. Yeah, it looks like he's stepping up. I'm going to grab those creeps. Might lose his courier if he's not careful. Ah, uh, he's paying. There's not even a Monkey King in this game, and he's watching it. What a guy. Yeah. Crystal Man going to do what damage she can, but like you said, very slow. Tusk, relatively fast base move speed as well, so he just walks on by. Going through a lot of tangos, but he bought an extra set for this very reason. He knows. He's like, I got a creep drag. I'm going to tank uh, a lot of damage from the creeps and the Crystal Maiden, so just has a bunch of extra regen to play around. I like that. Good yeah, recognition for the lane. Crystal Maiden wants to get the XP from these, or at least like contest, but she's not oh. a good hero for this. Yeah, and immediately being forced to TP out. Uh, good pressure from the Tusk to make sure... It's, it's tempting. Like, you want to run over to where Troll is to also get your own XP and cut the next wave. But you can't let the position 5 just bully your offlaner like that. So I like that he stuck around, forced a TP, and now he's going out. Uh, but he wants to get that creep wave, but it's a little scary. Gets the reblock on the small camp, too. Pretty nice. So that's very good for him. The other lanes are fairly even for now. Haven't missed anything too exciting. Oh, Knight almost clipped Ponyo. It's okay, though. Didn't happen. That would have been very funny. It would have been pretty good. Ponyo doesn't have a TP because he used his earlier. And it's really awkward. As a support, when you teleport to lane, you don't really want to buy another one because 100 gold is a lot for a support in the early game. But at the same time, like you don't have that ability to rotate. And you're kind of like, I'll get one when I die. But you also don't, don't plan to die. So... Uh, he would have been stuck on that cliff for a while. Maybe you don't plan to die, but... Oh, it's true, true. Sometimes it's their job. That is a legitimate thing. You die, you go TP out, fill that mid-bottle. Cause with the quick fingers managed to get the Lotus. But bottom lane, we're gonna see them get aggressive on tonight here. Ponyo. That is expiring. They don't have a blood grenade to chase him, though. So, ET just forced off lane. I mean, they're doing great in this bottom lane. Kunkka, not the highest CS by any means, but they're winning the trades. Yeah, I think we're approaching that point where soon we'll just see Morphling and Kunkka take turns farming, and the supports will probably start roaming around. Probably in another about two minutes. Five and a half minutes, a lot of times we see supports make their way to that mid lane. See if you can get a gank off before the rune, or just like everyone sits watching, waiting for the rune to spawn. And it is unlikely to see a kill on either side. Morphling, ET just don't really bring that much damage in the early game. And then you can harass with Tidebringer, but Morphling's one of the best heroes for dealing with that. Yeah. He's almost level 3, which will help, so you get a little bit more damage, but... Mid lane, seeing these two supports making this rotation over the water runes, but Slatum's managed to get one. I mean, it is a very <laughs> slow start. Uh, Tusk took a second to start channeling the Watcher, but uh, that let Panda pick up the Bounty Rune instead. He's gonna trap him for a little bit, but... You don't have that much damage here at level 2 on Tusk. Oh, actually, with the creeps helping him out, maybe. Well, he'll take it easy from here. So, Pekaz, definitely the big winner at the moment. Very much having a free lane, as expected. Uh, not really a whole lot the Mars can do. I mean, you can go for a spearback play, though, if you're a little bit out of position. He does have a healing lotus and the stick and there it is yeah your uh, tag team not super effective when you miss all but one of the attacks and now just turning around on the mars has multiple stacks of fervor built 11 stacks of fervor built up actually holy heck that's actually crazy you almost never see that many this early 
Yeah. We also see why you pick Mars into this, though, because you can just spear back, helps to protect you there. And even though this lane, I think, will, like, Troll's getting what he wants, Mars did not get totally shut down, thanks to that creep dragging and thanks to Mars being relatively... Um, Maybe self-sufficient isn't the right word, but you got tools to not die thanks to the uh, God Rebuke and Spear. Rotation in, Telekinesis pulls him onto the high ground, and Knight will be the one to claim first blood here. Five minutes into the game, Tusk trying to close the gap. Needs to be a little bit careful. He's got a healing lotus. The coil connects, and there's a Fade Bolt. He's just going to take the double kill. I mean, we saw last game, he went for a Midas on his Grimstroke. I don't think he's going to do it on Rubik, but that is a fantastic start for him. He is rich now. Anyo's turn to look for the kill. Oh, Cliff. Another oh, nice... <laughs> Good snipe, though. There's not a lot of damage on Astral Spirit. That's pretty funny. It's a rare to see an Astral Spirit kill. 50 damage. That's very funny. That's like a Jakiro Ice Path kill. I love those. Or like the Yules kill, like when someone comes down from Yules and dies. Yeah, yeah. It's rare, it's rare. All right, well, good start for the side of Boom, but honestly, they're not struggling too much. Uh, like, Kunkka is not really behind the puck. It's kind of, ex I don't know why I said Kunkka. Uh, Lishrax actually in front of the puck in, turn of net, uh, in terms of net worth. But, yeah, they're chilling. All lanes yeah, very the kills, even. The kills actually helped Puck get back into this, really. I think if they avoid that, then Talon would have been starting to really build up a lead in that middle lane. Crystal Man has okay. some stacks for Slatums, too. So, with that, Puck is fully recovered. Yeah, that's nice. Oh, he's got a lot of stacks. There's a whole other set over there. Okay. He's got Good stuff. coil. I wonder if they'll look for that Mars. They're actually close. I don't know if they know this, but relatively close if they wanted to go for a kill. I mean, see the tusk, but... Yeah, CM likely just to soak some XP in the mid lane here. They have a fort to keep the tower alive. The Edict obviously very scary at uh, pushing down those early towers. And Slatum will spot the Tusk. There's the coil. He's going to snap it into the Frostbite. Tusk, no chance of getting out of this one. Telekinesis just for safe measure. Slatum will pick up his first kill of the game involved in all three. But top lane, Mars has to spear away this troll. He will finally connect on it. But I don't know if he's going to stop. He's going to continue the chase, at least putting in a damage. And yeah, pops the ultimate just to guarantee that bonus attack speed. Gets the vision as well. Finds the kill. Schwan will TP in. Pakaz might regret this decision now. That will give this Lush a little bit of space now back into this one. That is nice. I decide if you're okay with that on Troll. Probably not, even though you did get the kill. I feel like he probably would have jungled more in the time he's dead here. And lane, Mars, gonna finish off Knight, unless he can get the silence. He's trying to dodge the spear, but instead sends Puck back right into Schwan. He's got a waning rift up to the high ground, and Orb will be able to dodge out the arena, so he is safe. Very close. Very good stuff here from WS as he almost gets himself another kill. But top lane, we look for the Tusk now. Tries to go for a shard block, but uh, Troll Warlord, pretty difficult to get away from at this point. And he should be able to put a lot of damage into this tower. Tusk is not having a great time. This is a bit no. of the downside of picking Tusk, and then your lanes kind of get countered. Like, if you can't go anywhere on the Tusk, it's I think Mars is dead. Is he out of here? Well, if he gets help he from is... some teammates. Never mind. That's going to be an X boat onto the Lesh in the jungle because he's in so deep. But again, he's against three melee heroes where he can just pop whirling axes and not really worry all too much. It's really just the Lesh that has the kill threat on him. So, how do you feel about Morphling versus Troll in the late game? Hmm. That is a very good question. I, I think Troll wins, 
If it's a if it's like a straight up fight. If he if he's able to get on top of the Morphling, get that first root. I think Troll Warlord can win the fight. The problem is, is so many things have to go right for the Troll Warlord, I think. Because as soon as Morphling gets space, you're never getting back to him. Mm -hmm. Right? Like he has waveform, he has the ability to morph into the troll himself, has like the whirling axes if he wants. There's not like a great morph target this game, which I think is one thing that's nice. You could just turn into a puff though and just get more mobility and a silence, so <laughs> that is true, yeah. Even harder to get to. Yeah, kinda of, I, I think I agree. I, I was trying to decide like who feels comfortable going into the late game and do they like who feels forced to make plays. But it does feel a little bit like it would come down to the execution. Like there's potential for both teams the further you go. As an amplify damage puck, just rooting up the Mars and he should be dead here. Wait a minute. Is he? Oh my God. Wow. Very oh, nice escape from WS Holy here. Heck. I can't wow, believe he got shocking. that actually. All right, well, that's huge. I mean, that's an Amplify Damage Rune Puck with a Coil Pop, and you don't manage to find the Mars. It does cost you Arena, but, Radiance dude, dodging out those attack. ganks are massive. We're gonna look for Ponyo Tusk here. So X lucky. comes out. Oh, yeah, Tusk not so lucky. The Boat comes out, the Torrent. Ponyo, he's just gonna get donated over to the Troll Warlord as he wants to start farming the bottom side of the map, and you're probably wondering why. Well. He has a Battle Fury and 90 gold, and there's a lot of Ancients for him to pick up, so he's going to be very happy. Well, except he didn't stack it, so that is less happy. He's pissed right now. I can't believe I didn't just do that. He's taking a moment to collect himself, just sitting in the trees. <laughs> What's going on? He, like, who wants on, Battle Fury? Yeah, yeah, he doesn't want to like, start get here faster, Battle Fury. You know? All right. Kunkka finishes blade mail. Has boat. Oh no, just kidding. Does not have boat. But I think when he has boat, they could maybe look to make plays, try to get that bottom tower, perhaps. It's hard to I kill V2 in this game without Puck getting a silence first. Yep. And I know you were talking about the Kunkka, like whether or not he's gonna go blade mail. I look back on it, and it is just too good of a blade mail game, right? Like. You're against the Lesh, like Morphling might throw an adaptive strike, and if he's not in waveform or something, can do a lot of damage back to himself. Mm -hmm. So it's yeah, that's just, true. it's too good to not pick up and just be tanky and you know, kind of this un immovable object for the side of Boom. Yeah, I think that makes sense, especially against that Lesh rack. Being able to reflect the damage is actually so good, especially because you have like the rum buff as well. Yeah. Mid lane, looks like we might see a fight as the Coil is going to come through onto the Lesh. Knight is here. Does have a potential for a Telekinesis pullback, but a great stomp Watch out, a Gobold! And he's looking for an X here, trying to grab the Elder Titan. He's just going to throw the boat. Does not want this hero to be able to get away. And should be an easy pick. It is. You're in kind of deep, but no one from Talon can really respond, and that should be the mid-tier one tower. Witchblade finished up on the puck as well. Oh, Mars, wait a minute. They scouted him. They know he's here. Sladems will orb away. He'll pick up the tower. Rune will spawn bottom, so... All right. Not easy for Mars to do anything here. He's going for a Yules. Uh, even with that, like killing a hero like Puck, really difficult. Yeah, it really is. They're going to do a little bit of team bonding in the triangle, finish up some ancient stacks. Your troll alert is starting to pull ahead, but dude, Knight is enormous on this Rubik. This is what happened last game. He got a couple early kills and he just had a Midas. This game, he's just playing Rubik. There's tons of great farming spells for him to steal. So he has a huge amount of network on the four position. Yeah, this, this game, it's easier for Knight to translate a good start into helping his team. I think for Grimstroke is a little a little more awkward. Oh, maybe the snowball's coming the through, but Sladems is here on the backside with a coil. They get the Lesh first. They manage to take down the Rubik, but a very worthwhile win as Sladems has got a regen. They'll just put that bad boy to use immediately. A two for one in the mid lane as they have managed to fight around this tower so much. 
Rubik has a stronger Pulse Nova, so actually kills Lushrak first. It's, you're very happy with that. You're getting even richer. Rubik's getting pretty close to that Mars. 500 away. Ah, uh, a little that's more now. A 700. Now I look lines. bad at math. I don't know what you're talking about. Blame NA. I, I like that Yule's on Mars this game. Uh, it's a same. It's a pretty good item in general, but also against Kunkka X. Really nice to prevent some of the uh, potential cheese plays where you just like X yourself forward. No punishment. He's looking for the Morphling. Commits Tries both. to go Ooh. for the Manta Dodge, but now you do not have it to get out, V-Tune. High risk, high reward play there. If he gets the Manta Dodge, maybe he gets out, but no. Nah. Very difficult to time. Nice kill. They should. Very uh, nice kill, yeah. They have Coil. Snaps immediately here onto the Mars. Waning Rift to follow it up. An X into the Torrent. WS will just get pulled right back to his Death Spear. I mean, he doesn't have an arena. Get your Yules er first! Oh, okay. He gets it delivered. They should. Oh, yeah. I was like, they should get this, right? Yeah, they do. So, so scary. Man, if he. Uh, he's, he's already having a rough game, man. If his Yules doesn't even get delivered. Gets delayed another two minutes. It's so sad for him. They are going to find Troll Warlord here. Do they have the ability to chain stun him long enough? Ultimate is available for him. He's trying to just run. Split Earth connects. But dude, Wait. because plenty healthy pops the battle trance. A Yule's from the moment to try and keep him alive. But his team, they've showed up in droves. They're going to be able to just turn this right around. Two dead now looking for Ponyo. Illich. Dude, the reach from this Rubik. What in the world? He got a stolen spear, spear as well, so it's so good. It's getting really scary. Ten thousand gold lead for Boom here, at just seventeen minutes. Um, I mean, trolls working on the BKB and off of that. How do you kill this guy? I don't know. It'll also line up well with this axe that just finished on Kunkka. Stolen Spear so into just... a Freezing Field? Oh my goodness, the damage onto the Mars already. He's got to get some spells out. There's the Arena. You lose Crystal Maiden, but you are not really getting out of here for the moment as Pekaz is ready to go. Slate him still on the backside. Gets a Silence. Gets a triple kill as he snipes the Lesh as well. v will survive, but they're just going to turn their attention on over to the Elder Titan. Trying to dodge this one out, but there is too much damage. Boom. Showing up in game two, not wanting to give this one up at all. Dude, that spear in a freezing field. The silence also catching Tusk. That was perfect. Very nicely played. Things are getting tough. I mean, they were already tough, but like, what is actually the recovery for Talon at this point? They are... Like, I don't even know which core you can kill for pickoffs, it's it's really tough. And uh, Boom has been really quick on the rotations as well, so they've tried a couple times, but each one doesn't work out. And the more that fail, the next one's even harder because of that. So we're reaching yeah. the point where even when you bring like two to three heroes to surprise, say the Kunkka, with the Aghanims and the Blade Mill, like he's so tanky, I don't know if you can kill him until the before the rotations come in. And do you wanna guess who's doing the most damage in this last fight? Is it Rubik? It is Rubik. Stolen Lightning Storm. He got five Lightning Storms off in the fight, combined with the oh Fade Bolt God. and the initial spear, or the initial spear onto the Mars. He was destroying them. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Has because soloing up Roche, a classic Troll Warlord move, does commit the Battle Transport. Obviously, it's the only way to like kind of get your health back. But bottom lane, Slatems has got his eyes sent here onto WS Mars. He's got a Yules. Knight might just telekinesis him and break it. We'll see, but uh, pulls him right back. The X into the boat. Going to get dodged out, but you've got so much damage. Nice bulwark toggle. He does not give that up. Pekaz now top lane getting ran at. Turns around maybe thinking he could go for the Tusk himself. We'll be able to dodge out that stomp and... He just gets himself a freebie. Doesn't have an ult, but has four minutes left on the Aegis. And Panda, he's coming in now. Just setting up kill after kill for these guys. 5 to 24.
This is, uh, it's really falling apart Radiant for Talon here. He's gonna take their Tormentor. He's got Battle Trance in three seconds. Oh, both these shards are so good too. Oh, Rubik actually bought his own too, so. Yeah, why not? Uh, how farmed he is. Arena stolen, doesn't get the Bulwark either. And now Illich, he's stuck here. The Tidal Wave comes through doing a... He does so much damage just from this Torrent Storm Blade Mail. Schwan almost dead and Slatums is still so healthy as he joins the fight. Yules will buy him a little bit of space. They get the spear to follow it up. V2 and get speared back the other way. Slatums is still alive. The freezing kill from Panda doing so much work. V2 really wants this puck and he is trying his best, but he's out of resources. And here comes Pakaz, Knight with a double kill. He, he tried so many times to steal spells this fight. He ended up getting Bulwark twice, but finally gets the spear at the end of it. If they kill Puck there, it might actually be okay considering the state of the game, but yeah, without that, and the fact that Troll lives through everything, still has his Aegis, he takes the tower, he's actually free to just even poke at high ground if he wants to. Uh, you could run to this bottom tier too, you got two and a half minutes on Aegis. You really could. I mean, How he just takes feel? Tormentor and then they chill, I think. Like, you're almost... What? What's your next big item here? Okay, Shard goes to Panda. That one's amazing. Really smart that he did not buy that and have it on his courier when they kill it. I would have been very sad. But, uh... Boy, this Rubik is the same net worth as the Lesh now, who is working towards his Bloodstone, still very far away. They're gonna smoke. Talon, I kind of agree. I feel like they need to get something done here, right? They're gonna run into the BKB troll, though. Oh, that's not what you wanna the find. The last guy. The last because guy. Because does not care you. at all. <laughs> Literally. This is this is how bad that was. It wasn't that five heroes found Pakaz. It was that Pakaz found five heroes, and he <laughs> literally just walks at them. That is how strong this guy feels right now, and he's he is absolutely correct. I mean, he's six thousand gold ahead of the enemy Morphling. He just does not care. As long as he has like a teammate te teammate nearby, he's like, yeah, let's just go. Let's send it. So they don't even care about that bottom tower. They're just going to start working on this tier 3. He doesn't even have back door down yet. He's like, I don't care, guys. Let me just start Jesus. fervor stacks. You know, you steal the Spear of Mars. Telekinesis plus Spear pulls Tusk down into the grave. And because at max fervor stacks, will clean up this tower so damn easily. One more fortification will be available once it falls. And we'll see what they can do here. Backdoor protection XD. <laughs> Says Troll Warlord. And just waits for those creeps to get a little bit closer. Melee barracks is dead. I mean, you gotta save the fortification for your other lane, right? It's you're gonna lose that one eventually, but can you stop them? Is the question. I don't think so. I you have one more fortify if you want to use it here. Yeah. I think they'll stay though. They have twenty well. The top lane did get the creeps killed. Oh, Puck. He is in so much trouble. He was baiting on the illusion. Ends up going in, but misses the silence. Gets caught from the Yules. And now Vtune in trouble. Knight? Yeah, he's going to go down as well. Okay, two fantastic picks from Talon. And that's the Yules effect from Mars, right? You said it's a good Yules game. But Puck a little bit too greedy. Yeah, I think if Boom just steps out together a little sooner, like literally a second or two faster, uh, they don't lose anyone, but they don't have to feel too worried yet. I think from here, I mean, they got they got a lot of gold out of that. What are almost we? Almost 4,000. Yeah, Bloodstone is almost done on the Kunkka. I don't think there's very many BKBs on the side of Talon. Yeah, Morphling doesn't have his. Has it queued up, but he's 4,000 gold away pretty much. So, uh, Torrent Storm is going to be absolutely insane in these fights coming up here. You have Basher finished up on Pekaz, and on top of it, he just hits his level 20. So, he's going to get his bonus Berserker's Rage Armor, which further reducing 
what you can get from tag team, but also making that natural order uh, a lot less valuable, right? It's all bonus armor, so very valuable for Cause as he's going to just take the uh, Tormentor for himself. They actually all have good shards this game, too. Pux Dude, is... this is so good. Yeah. Pux is, like, debatably the worst, tied with Troll, and that's saying something. Like, those are both pretty good shards. So, yeah. do you think... Step back, side, side talk. Should Tormentors give you a choice? Because it actually feels like some of the supports that are meta all have to have good shards because it's actually so painful if a, a support with a bad shard gets it like that rider for example I mean, he's still meta but um he's like the exception to the rule right yeah but I, I think you're right i think there's a lot of heroes that are meta because not only are they good in game uh, in terms of the lane but their shards are very good and being able to secure those on tormentor is definitely a factor. It's one of the reasons Crystal Maiden is so good. Oh, mid lane. They've caught the Mars. Telekinesis is there. He has no BKB. The coil comes out from Sladems. Yule's good perfectly Yule done to snap. Sick Blinks moves out. there from WS. Gets the blink as well. Illich trying to chase the spear. Not going to connect onto the buck. And Mars silenced up. Slowly walking to his death. And they found Ponyo as well. I mean, that was as good as you could possibly ask from the Mars, but they just have so much chase. Yeah. Sick, sick Yule and Blink, but... I mean, it just goes to show that... It's not like they were outclassed as, like, players. I, I think the draft made this game pretty hard for them, and they tried their best, but the top lane, like, they did not know what to pick into this troll Crystal Maiden comboed with a Tusk. I think maybe that's where things started to get a little funny. I, I think if you pick someone besides Tusk, the top the pick in the lane fallen. will be a little easier, and the game as a whole will be easier. But Troll had a great time. Uh, mid... Okay, actually, you know, Leshrac did start off on a good start, but thanks to some rotations, they end up turning it towards Puck's favor, which uh, they can rotate because, you know, the side lanes were totally fine, so... You know, maybe it does go back to that draft. And I, I like Picasso's decision to actually just go back for an Eternal Shroud. If he doesn't get bursted this game, then I don't know how Talon actually play any fights. And so he picks up an Eternal Shroud. This item gives like 600 HP, which is just absurd to begin with, but also pretty much mitigates everything this Lestrat can do. So, this is a cool recognition of, of, you know, what I was saying earlier, the only real kill threat onto his hero. Yeah, also very good because of that ET, right? Where yeah. otherwise maybe you could oh, depend on your base magic resistance, but like you said, one of the only ways he dies this game is chain stuns into like the immense amount of less track damage. And now that's gone with this Eternal Shroud, so... Uh, you got any other ideas? Uh, Ags on Tusk. It's in the, the works. The fountain? 3,000 <laughs> gold away. He's yeah, an Ags like... away from an Ags, as you like to say. <laughs> <laughs> um, Roche? I don't know. Maybe there's some sick Roche steal here. This is this is kind of it. Like some desperate play up here. And if this does not pan out, I think that's it's it. Dying Maybe we'll fast. get some amazing Eternal Shroud. Or, sorry, you got to uh, just go in, order. I feel like, on yeah. WS. Smoke onto the backside. They're scouting with the Elder Titan. Good shard block. Pakaz pops his BKB. He's picked up the Aegis, but they've caught the Mars. They've caught the Lesh, and Pakaz just throwing axes for the backside. The Torrent Storm just doing so much work and falls down into a first hit bash. Meanwhile, Sladem's just single handedly destroying the backline. Knight with a stolen split earth destroying this Morphling. It is an absolute beatdown. A clinic from Boom here in game two. We're going to a game three, ultra kill to put a stamp on it. Let's go. Yeah, we had a lot of a lot of two O's on this stream today, so Boom wants to make sure that people people get their uh, their Dota for the day, bringing us to game three here. Strong performance to come back from that game number one as well. Yeah, this was just a sick draft. I, I think it, it does kind of come back to the draft a little bit here. Have we seen ET win? No. No, we haven't.
I don't think so, at least. I don't know if we have. And I like, I kind of get the idea of the hero, but it just feels like so often it just doesn't do enough in the lane. And in theory, you're going to like amplify your teammates, but when your teammates are behind because you didn't do on the lanes, it's like not enough. Then combo with like that Tusk pick that I think Troll CM was like great. Or I guess they already had the CM, but they like picked the Troll to like combo with that. And I was like, I don't even know. I don't know what you pick into that lane. And now you have two side lanes that just don't feel great. Dude, this is just kind of where it starts right here. Knight just coming mid, gets the first blood, and then Tusk comes in and is like, actually, I have no mana for tag team. There's still a coil on Puck, and yeah, suddenly your Rubik is like 700 gold richer than he was previously with those two kills, and he just continues to dominate here this whole game. This is the fight where he steals Lightning Storm, I think, in a moment. And yeah, and then he just throws five Lightning Storms. You can just see all the damage <laughs> that he's just dumping on these heroes. Yeah. It's actually ridiculous. So, yeah, I mean, really a stronger Tusk probably does pick up that mid kill and trades there. But because that lane was so bad, he was just creep dragging. So he was under leveled, didn't have anything, gets killed there, uh, recovers Puck's game, who was having a rough time up to that point, uh, laning against that Leshrac, even though I think I think Puck can do OK. But I think I, I think Leshrac is playing well up to that point. But the rotations absolutely helped from there. You got that ticking time bomb, you know, Troll is farming, but you don't really have the heroes to make the plays to to stop it. This was like the perfect troll warlord game. Like on, on like that's the thing that's so like demoralizing when you see that pick come out and you're like crap. We have ET Tusk how, we can, and Mars. Like we actually can't do anything ever to this troll warlord outside of bringing the lesh and like arena stunning him and hoping it's enough damage to burst him. But that never happens. And because of that, like, Pekaz just has the freest game, gets a really good time Battle Fury, and there's, like, what, a five-stacked Ancient and a, a triple-stacked Ancient on the other side, and he's just off to the races this game. Like, there is no controlling his hero um, after that, at that point. Yeah, so, I'm a great game for them. I I'm excited to see what we, what we get in Game 3, I imagine little bit of a draft adjustment. I thought Talon's game one draft was absolutely sick. Uh, maybe they were trying something new here in game two, uh, or maybe just Boom had a better plan for this. I don't know. But yeah, I mean, very different from game one to game two. So I guess momentum's with Boom coming into game three. Let's see how well Talon can reset. Recognize like, yeah, we, we owned it game one. So it's not like it's not like we're out of our league here. We just have to uh, maybe tighten up the draft a little bit, adjust the way we play, and uh, I mean we can we can definitely qualify today because whoever wins here qualifies, and that'll be a nice nice weight off your chest. You don't have to worry about making it to the next stage. Yeah, well we'll see. I think Kunk uh, probably gonna be fairly contested in this next game, so we'll see if it gets through the bands. But for now, we're gonna go to a short break, and we'll be back with the third and final game here of the evening. Stay tuned for more on the Elite League. We'll see you in a bit.
It is game number three here between Boom Esports and Talon. The winner moving on to the round robin group stage. My name's Cryptic. I'm here with Z Quixotics. It has been a very cool series so far, but one of these teams will come out the victors as we get ready for game number three. Zach, talk to me, man. What can we expect going into game number three? Uh, game number three between these two teams. Uh, I'm sure we'll expect a uh, very fun game. For the draft, I don't know. Uh, I think looking back at it, I think they'll adjust the way they they picked the Tusk. Not that I think Tusk can't work, but you need winning lanes for Tusk to work. He wants to win his lane and he wants to roam effectively. And they did not know their safe lane matchup. And that meant Tusk was in a lane he couldn't win. That's already an unhappy Tusk game. So I, I think we'll see an adjustment there from Talon. Coming in here, it looks like the, the bands aren't too different. And I think the openers for both teams have been fine. It's just, uh, yeah, how that draft developed for Town in that second game was not, did not make their life easy. First pick seems to be the priority for a lot of these teams, right? Because you're either going to get the Kunkka or the Shadow Demon. This time they're like, ban the Kunkka. Maybe we have to ban the Shadow Demon as well. Um, because... You know, we're going to leave in some heroes. There's been some really strong ones uh, for both these teams. But I think a boom, they're probably not going to leave the Shadow Demon in. That hero has just looked so good. Yeah, if Shadow Demon gets taken out, we might look to Primal Beast. He's uh, he's one of the top heroes who True. is still left in the pool. Uh, could be a strong again. support pick. Chen's actually still in the pool, I just realized. And I... Don't think he's even been prioritized in this series. I guess there haven't. I, I just over. I think it was banned in place of the Kunkka. I'm. I feel like it was. They actually respect ban out the Rubik because they've opened with it multiple times. They grabbed the Shadow Demon. So now the questions: Do you go the Chen for Panda, which I know he can play? Do you? I mean, we'll have to see. Run back of match one. To grab the tiny yeah this is actually the same opening pick and opening response pick from game one we said we didn't feel like that was a massive outdraft in game one maybe more just like the way it played out the supports ending up with the kills rather than the storm set him back so i mean maybe they feel good about just repeating a lot of it uh, some there's already been like some different bands though. So like last time, Talon had Kunkka as their next pick. So they're gonna have to go for something different this time. The thing is, you ban this Razor, and again, it gives you the potential to go back for a Troll Warlord, but you don't have 18 pick to surprise enemy team with it, and you're playing into a Shadow Demon. So it is not a fun game to pick up a Troll Warlord. Now. Depending on what they decide to do in this next phase, we'll see as they get rid of Puck and Doom. I think they're looking for the Lashrak again. It wouldn't surprise me if they do. So you, maybe you ban the Lesh here. Lesh has looked pretty good throughout this tournament. Last game did not quite pan out, but I don't think you have to feel too bad about that over just like one game. It'd be fine to see another Lashrak coming up here. It's Flesh or Brewmaster, I think, are what you're looking to ban. Oh, they go back for the Shadow Shaman. Yeah, I forgot about that one. <laughs> oh, man, that was good. Game one flashbacks. Don't let him have it. Okay, so next pick for Boom. Probably going to just be a typical five. Could just be the Crystal Maiden. Um, they don't have their Rubik to fall back on, but... Yeah, it's just going to be the CM. So... We'll have to see what Talon respond with and go from there. Probably not looking to the Bat Rider anymore because of that Crystal Maiden. Maybe, maybe Boom can go back for it if you move Tiny to a core roll again. Although, actually, Bat Rider to Shadow Demon can also be a bit annoying for you. Uh, since that is a save for your lasso target. But in a way, it also means like your four supports being countered by the Shadow Demon, and maybe that frees up one of your core heroes. So 
Could be something they still still look to do. There is the Leshrac. It's just it it's too good with those bands, the Puck and the Doom. It just makes so much sense. Pairs really well with the Shadow Demon. I like it a lot. We'll see what Boom can come up with for the mid lane matchup. I can't imagine they're gonna put uh, Tiny there anymore. We've seen it in the off lane a couple times. You could still just run it as a four and pick a different, you know, two set of cores that might be better at dealing with the Lashrak, but we'll have to see. Some teams like to run Marana here once you have the Shadow Demon. I believe Talon... Yeah, I, I've seen them play Marana, so... If they want to go for that, it could. It does kind of reveal both supports, but I think it's okay. You'd have a stun in... Potential stun in every lane. It's, it's maybe not the easiest comboing with a Leshrac, but... It's an option. Go for the Batrider. Okay, so they anyway. do go for the Batrider. Yeah, you and I talk a lot about how Crystal Maiden can counter it if you can get on top of the Crystal Maiden. I mean, you definitely bring the damage. So maybe they have an off laner in mind that'll help them out here. Brewmaster. Uh, That's who I'm feeling. Yeah, we definitely have to think about Brewmaster for Talon. It's been such a strong combo. I mean, you could but... preemptively pick something like a Weaver to war to like prevent that pick from coming out, but then you're just showing your Weaver into an, a blind pick 18. So chances are you were going to see a flex pick and the other support, and that's going to try and hide you know where that hero is going, and then they'll have last pick for Pekaz. But you could just try and pick a mid counter and a support here. I don't even know what is the mid counter to Lesh. Yeah. Like, I feel. I mean, traditionally, Queen of Pain has not been bad, but she has not been getting picked pretty much at all in this tournament. And the only other mid heroes that feel like they could be good. I mean, the Primal Beast is an option. They go for the Hoodwink. I mean, Primal Beast with a Blade Mill actually could do a lot of damage to the Lesh. Yeah, it's just such a pain into the Shadow Demon. Yeah, it really is. There's other like ranged heroes, maybe for the mid lane that Sniper. that way you don't get. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm actually kind of open to it, but wait, who has uh who's got the last pick here? Boom has the last pick. Well, maybe maybe you save that sniper for the last pick. I feel like picking a carry here. Well, I don't know. Maybe you do want the carry for the last pick. Could you pick another flex hero here? Then you don't know tiny mid, tiny off lane. That's why I don't mind the Primal Beast, because you can put either or. I think Primal Beast is probably better into the Lesh, but... I actually, I don't mind just picking Sniper and putting him mid into the Lashrak. I think it's fine. Like, neither Shadow Demon or Batrider are going to be good at ganking this guy. Hmm. But you yeah, do have kind of for it. to, like... You, you do have to, like... Think about your carry pick, though, with a sniper. That's the scary part because it doesn't feel good. They actually just go for the troll anyway. This, it has to be a Brewmaster pick. There's no way you don't pick Brew here. I mean, maybe I'm wrong. They pick it into Shadow Demon. We've seen Brewmasters become a massive problem for heroes like Troll Warlord. Is there something we'll else? A, yeah. I, I'm I'm surprised by that troll pick. I feel like that troll's life is like pretty tough into Shadow Demon and Batrider Lasso potentially. Yeah. There's the Brewmaster. See Pilot dies so happy about it. He's like, what the heck? They pick troll. It it is okay. we've seen this over and over again where like Brewmaster just kind of sits in his lane, goes double bracer, and eventually closes the gap into his radiance. Once mm -hmm. he has radiance and like four points in his uh passive, he has like 99% evasion while brewed up, and Troll Warlord cannot do anything about it. You basically just press if you ever press his R, you just press your brood up and kite the troll Warlord to wherever you want him to go. 
So it is a pretty rough matchup for sure as the game goes on. Once Troll, if he gets to like a BKB and an MKB and he's like actually really far ahead, you know, then, you know, we don't see that type of interaction. But I don't see how you kill Brewmaster before he ults this game. Okay, so Talon's going to look for their carry here at the end. They might feel they have enough tools to deal with the troll, and so they don't need to worry about a carry that is strictly good into the troll. I feel like you just mm. ban Morphling still. You either ban Morphling or Faceless Void. Yeah, I was thinking Faceless Void. But Morphling could still be good. It didn't work out last game, but that's just partly because of how ahead troll was. But now that you have these heroes like Shadow Demon, Batrider, Brewmaster, it's going to make Troll's life fine, a lot yeah. harder. Yeah, and you can maybe make space for the Morphling better than you did last time. Okay, yeah, it is the Morph. I, I, I like that ban more. I, I do think it's just an easier to execute strategy with the Morphling as opposed to going for the Troll. Like there are, or not for the Troll, for the Faceless Void. I feel like there are scenarios where uh faces void can just lose the battle into a troll warlord but we'll have to find out storm spirit and what is going to be the other mid ban for slate nice. dude i mean i actually don't hate the idea of banning it there is also the potential for like an Arc Warden or something cheeky like that, but then that really opens up a Faceless Void pick. Maybe something like uh, Void Spirit. Because I think they're looking for an initiation who can jump the back lines and like the silence could be really good. The lane into Lashrak kind of like meh, but it would give you some jump. It would give you the control from Remnant and possibly an orchid sometimes we see that built or just like the agonims the aoe silence would be really good versus these heroes it just depends if you think you can get out of that laning stage yeah and that's the hard thing with the last right the spell spam is so heavy mm -hmm. you don't really even want to pick things like an ember into it oh ban slardar so they're anticipating a potential a tiny melee and they carry can go for life stealer melee carry double radiance build God, I hope not. I mean, the infest ags is pretty good for troll. You trade ult for ult. That's it's true. actually such a massive problem for troll warlord. That is a good point. And you know you're laning into tiny hoodwink. So with the rage, once you pick that up, unlikely to die. Freeze up your shadow demon to go make stacks for Leshrac, Batrider, Brewmaster. Could you could Ooh. you just pick Enigma here? Yes! Oh! Okay, sorry, I, I like wasn't looking at the game for a moment, and I'm like, <laughs> wait a minute, just pick Enigma. This is like the lane counter to Life Stealer. Yeah, I'm. Hmm, I understand why they removed Slardar, but yeah, leaving in the Enigma because they banned the Storm. Hmm. This will be tricky. Shadow Demon's this not is the gonna best be at dealing game. with Enigma. Yeah, I, I feel like Enigma should be able to just hold the lane out here, and, and be okay. It does do mean it's either. Does mean it's Tiny Mid who has to play into a Leshrac, which might be a little miserable. He might be able to get some denies early on, uh, mm -hmm. which would help just because of tree grab damage, but. You likely can leave this Enigma bottom solo after like level three or four and start to either like stack on the Hoodwink or rotate and maybe try and put pressure on this Lesh. This is going to be interesting. This will be a fun yeah. game. I think both carries are not going to have a great game, right? You have Brewmaster, Batrider, which is a fantastic combo to, to slow down the Troll Warlord. And then, of course, Lifestealer, direct lane counter by the Enigma. Oh, man. I don't know. This one's going to be cool. I think you can do any kind of like lane swapping stuff, but I don't think you want to. I think you want Brew and Bat Rider together because that's such a such an easy to play lane. Yeah, I don't know. We're going to have to look at the both side lanes, I guess. 
and uh, see how it goes, and then also consider how, how well Tiny does. So I guess all three lanes. We're watching the whole game of Dota, believe it or not. Guys, just get an extra set of eyes. All right, you're going to need it. I will say the mid lane for Les should be pretty good, and they have had a really good win rate on this year on the tournament so far, and maybe Schwan can blow this game like wide open. Maybe he's the one who can actually create the tempo, find rotations, and killing this Enigma and freeing up the Life Stealers game. All speculation we'll have to see, obviously, as uh, we get underway here. It is game three, the final game of the evening between Talon and Boom. The winner will advance to the round robin group stage. The loser will have to play another day of Dota. Thirty seconds to battle. Not gonna get this observer. It's pretty deep. Deep uh, observer placed by Talon. It's like under the mid tower. Don't often see it, but it is. It's one of the ways to keep that mid <laughs> mid observer alive. Pays off here. That's a that's a really interesting one. Okay. They do have the numbers on the bottom side here. WS on the Brewmaster needs to be a little bit the careful. Yeah, he's gonna back off. Okay. You never really want to give up a first blood at the runes nowadays. We've talked to some players about it. I think pr primarily like OG <laughs> being like, how yeah. much does like a first blood affect your lane? Uh, BZM, well, you know, obviously a player who loves doing interviews. It's like his favorite thing in the world. Um, mentioned, you know, sometimes the first blood doesn't matter if you're in a good matchup, but if you have a bad matchup, it is, you're like begging your supports for help. Yeah, they're pretty impactful nowadays. And especially in this bottom lane, which is like pretty close. Like I think top Enigma, as long as he's not out of position, should have a pretty good time, especially as he picks up a couple levels. Bottom lane, I do think Brewmaster Batrider should have a good time, but there's much more counterplay potential from this safe lane compared to the other side because Crystal Maiden and Troll, they're strong heroes. And if you go out of position too much, and you, if you slip up, they could definitely get kills in this lane and change the dynamic here. Oh, without a doubt. Well, I'm excited to see how this one's going to play out. I think for the most part, they should be very happy on the top lane here. But yeah, I think bottom lane is going to be the, the scary one for me. We'll just have to see what they can do. It's the level two timing that always catches people off guard. And right now it's definitely favoring the side of boom in this bottom lane, but we'll see what they can do. Mid pretty even actually tiny having really good CS these first waves as expected with the tree grab gets a lot more difficult once Lash gets that second point in the lightning storm. But for now he's got to be pretty happy. Make sure that camp stays blocked. <laughs> Shattered even has seven tangos. He already knows what's happening here. Yeah. You get harassed out by Eidolons and Acorn shots, and he's just going to keep feeding his life stealer tangos. He's doing a lot I mean, of half the... pulls top. This is. I think uh... that's what you have to do, right? Mm hmm. If you could stack and work with it, all the better. But this is pretty much. Hoodwink's one job is like, do not let them do too many pulls. He's trying to contest. Ponyo's doing a good job so far managing to find some of these half pulls. But uh, eventually Enigma will pull this lane back. And as long as you either send an Eidolon or Hoodwink blocks the camp, right? It's a... Uh, there's not really a way to get it back. Man, lane's going... Kind of as expected, honestly. A lot of denies on the Enigma. Troll Warlord kind of free farming at the moment. Um, I think part of this is that Crystal Maiden effect you've talked about. Just how good she is at dealing with heroes like Batrider. Mid lane? Lesh rack in the mid lane. A rotation from Night means first blood for Slatums. A toss back. Does the work. Okay. 
That's how you secure his lane. Meanwhile, top lane Illich, they're looking to maybe get aggressive, but he's under his tower. His Eidolons are about to split as well, so you have to nice bail. <laughs> yeah. yeah that, that's a good disruption plus fortify to keep the creep alive under the tower to make sure your creeps weren't like pushing forward and that could have been some aggressive potential. But this is like this is what you can expect from Boom because you can leave the Enigma alone here. That means Knight is free to block camps, stack, roam mid, and you don't really know which. They actually even had observers here uh, to try to like scout this, but I guess still caught off guard a little bit. I don't know if he smoked. I, I, I think he that. TP'd. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, he TP'd in and set up for like an avatar. avatar. Dude, this troll's CS is like borderline perfect. 29 and 5. That is nuts. Cause is a very good carry player. They're doing it again. Avalanche, the toss pulls Panda into the tower. Schwan takes a couple of last hits from the, or a couple of hits from the tower. And again, it's just so That's easy so for them sick. to execute Pakaz needs to be careful bottom no this is their moment to maybe get aggressive on the troll warlord he's got 12 stick charges and a healing lotus he's gonna be able to bait them with this potentially as the bat rider will go down first because he's got that mischance onto the brewmaster he's got whirling axes as well tries to plant a tree to block him off but the cinder brew's coming man he knows he doesn't have any hope of kiting this one out so Bash. he's trying to pop the stick dude a um <laughs> so close. Good pursuit from the Brewmaster, though. Action everywhere. That's such a, such a sick play mid, because you think Hoodwink has... Oh, Hoodwink just got me with that TP play, right? She doesn't have TP again. But now you actually just bring the Crystal Maiden, who like just steps out of sight and then immediately TPs. So he just was not expecting that at all. And it's actually the downside of his like super defensive Observer under his own tower. He can't really see very far into the possible teleport rotation they can see the like the rotation where you walk over but twice getting caught off guard by that avalanche toss and now that's why you see a very aggressive ward placed at this time they're like all right we're tired of this <laughs> never we can again. see the the spot behind those trees now on the right side so not as easy but yeah, I mean, that's uh, that's huge for Boom early on. I will say killing Pakaz is at least a silver lining because he's having an amazing game already. Um, yeah, he at least got a kill on Batrider before dying, so he doesn't feel too bad, but... Oh, uh, you probably can't... bottom for this. Tiny. He has an Amplify good. Damage Rune. He's gonna pop him, throw him into the creeps, and Pakaz is here as well, excuse me? A Creep ganking I? safe no. lane. Crystal Maiden with the root finds the Batrider and Troll Warlord trying to just stay on top of him. Whirling Axes in one second, but Slatums with a double kill. Finding the Amplified literal damage. best rune. How does he oh, do it, Oh, they are looking so strong right now. Slatums is... Cr he's... Over a thousand gold in front of this Lashrac. And he's trying to play for the wisdom room. Dude, he's gonna Rune get Master it. even saw it. He knew. He like he could have beat him there, but he saw that amplified damage rune on Tiny, I think, and he's like, no. I c I don't know. Did he not? I feel like he should. Maybe he thought Bat Rider could get it. Yeah, I think well, because he was that, expecting Bat. Yeah, because that's such a good steal from Tiny, who's now gonna find another kill. Dude, the XP difference on the supports here is gonna be absurd. You're like Knight is almost level six. He's five and a half. Panda five and a half. You have T Ponyo who's barely uh, closing in on level four, and your Batrider is even further away. Like uh, you're gonna have a sharpshooter that's just gonna come out of nowhere and start killing your heroes. Dude, they're actually higher level than the Brewmaster. Both of them. <laughs> oh, you hate to hear that. V Tune took the time to go grab the Wisdom Rune, so that is that's really good for them. They they could have been in such a bad spot. I mean, you're right. It could have been like two level six supports already. Imagine that. I They're still really, really close. Wow. Yeah, Slatum's actually having such a good game. He was thinking of getting a win lace, like, oh yeah, it'll help me like transition. He's like, well, actually, I just I just keep getting killed, so I'm pretty close to a blink maybe i should just keep doing it now gonna steal an enemy stack as well 
think he's gonna just straight rush the blink and then just blink avalanche toss sharp sh shooter who do you not kill with that combo ponyo guesses right on the illusion massive win for him there is Likely ganking troll otherwise, but again ganking troll warlord avalanche off the mark but ponyo he has no spells here he's gonna clean him up you do manage to grab the crystal maiden towards the mid lane so something going the way of the lashrak here who does have those four points edict all this happening though you have a really farmed enigma in the off lane who is a basically debating between buying out of vlad's or just going blink dagger as well or a midas or a Midas, but hopefully not that. <laughs> <laughs> Brewmaster is going to go for a Spirit Vessel. Pretty interesting. We sometimes see like urns to proc the Cinder Brew yourself, but often they just go for the Radiance there. Tiny's a pretty tanky hero, and Troll reducing his regen can be pretty good. But I'm still a little surprised he's not just rushing the, the Radiance. Yeah, I am too. Well, big stacks cleared up Dyer's for Slatums, closing in closer to that tower blink dagger. Fallen. It's about 300 gold away. And Schwan needs to be careful. Again, a, a single avalanche could set up a kill for him. He is going to be under a ward onto the right side. So he should be fine. In comes the support duo from Talon. They're actually bringing in the Brewmaster as well. Nice disruption. The split earth is there. Sharpshooter doing a lot of damage to Schwan. Avalanche toss is not going to be enough to finish the job. And they will finally bring down this tiny. Great rotation. All five heroes to the mid lane to do this. It feels like a lot, but it also feels necessary. They definitely needed a win of some sorts to start getting some momentum back. And... Brewmaster's been doing decently. He wants to get an urn of shadows charged so that when he does finish the spirit vessel, he's already got some. Plus, like, even when you're behind on Brewmaster, your ultimate is just so powerful in the early game, right? You don't. He actually didn't even have to use it there, but you want to threaten it, possibly get something out of it. They have the catapult down here. Maybe they can try to take this bottom tower with that ult. One thing to note as well with the life stealer. He's going to be the one that picks up the Radiance this game. We've saw another team go double Radiance, being like, eh, well, so what if our Brewmaster has Radiance? It's still a good Radiance game. We'll just double dip on it. Didn't end up working. So this time, he's going to go Vessel. Life Shiller is going to go to the Radiance. And I, I kind of like this idea a little Dyer's bit more. That's true. Yeah, I forgot about the, the potential issues with double Radiance. So it looks like they decide it's not worth it. They want the they want a different build from the, the Brewmaster. They scan top. They actually know people are up here looking for this life stealer, and they are smoking bottom to Pakaz. Who? It would be a fantastic kill, but you, I mean, this is not like you have a blink dagger on a lash. This guy's level five, not even have a lasso. You don't even have demonic purge yet. Finally, gonna get it off the creep waves or off the uh, ancient camp. So. Maybe this is just a farming smoke. Mid lane, blink reveal out from Slatums and Illich. Both of them decide to pick it up immediately. Looking for the Batrider sharpshooter. Gonna connect barely an op main clearly from Night. Oh, Bushwhack comes out trying to save Illich. He cancels it's the black the hole. Cancel. Oh no. That one feels bad. And now Slatums Avatos does connect onto Ponyo. Knight getting ran down onto the backside. He has a freezing field. Panda on the high ground will get caught barely just in time before the Bruce Blick connects. And, uh, well, looking for Lesh. Panda in trouble as well. This is a fantastic fight from Talon as Picaz is also kind of out of resources. Slatums. The Blood Grenade comes out as well. They're going to try and run him through. And they might be able to. He gets a regen. Toss out, going for the TP, no he makes it. Okay. Oh, that's your underleveled support coming into play there. He's still five and a half at 12 minutes because of the game they've been having. Definitely a much needed fight for Talon to at least pick up some of those kills. I'm tr I was trying to see if he canceled Black Hole or if it got canceled. I think he canceled. I think he saw he was going to die no matter what. And so he was like, eh, I don't want to do this. But Knight bottom lane, Bushwhack here onto the Brewmaster. The follow up should be more. I mean, this guy is tanky. And, you know, Enigma not particularly known for having a ton of damage. Radiance middle tower is under attack. At least not without Black Hole. Yeah, either needs this, the Eidolon split or the Black Hole for sure. Yeah, I wanted to. Right before that fight, 
That fight actually probably delayed it since I think it took a while for Bacos to get a kill. But he was on track for like a 12 and a half minute battle fury, which is pretty insane. He still has it. Like, even after that fight went a little bit awkward, took a little bit of time to pick up a kill, but he's got it now, finishes some stacks, immediately has like another thousand gold. So you are going to have a troll warlord. He's going to have uh, a lot of farm. You've got a shadow demon. You got the brewmaster lift. Maybe that's Dyer enough. Yeah, I mean, this game was kind of spiraling out of control with how fast Boom were gaining an advantage. I mean, they were about 4,000 gold ahead at nine minutes. It's now 2,000 at 14. So Talon have done a great job at pulling this one back together. Uh, V2, with an, he, I think, just realizes that he is under the very like big threat of a Blink Tiny. So he snags the Arcane Rune, BKB TPs out. Um, Enigma will force someone to come defend mid most likely but they are scouting top lane through the jungle bottom tower is under attack all right well mid lane tower i mean that's gonna fall here very soon a lot of island damage treating the mid tower for the bottom tower i think you'll feel okay about this He's gonna find Bat Rider. He's trying to farm up his blink, but gonna be set back just a little bit more thanks to that death. It is a space, quote unquote, for the team to finish up the bottom tower. Maybe not too bad. So Enigma is just going BKB, which I think is the correct decision. We see a lot of Enigmas go for like Vlad's drums, just kind of play this aura builder. A lot of times that's because you're playing into a hero that can specifically counter Black Hole. Things like Vengeful Spirit, Rubick. There is none of that in this game. It is a lasso on a Batrider, and that is not going to happen. <laughs> you know? Until he gets his Aether Lens and uh, picks up a cast range item. Maybe then. Uh, there will be the disruption, so you can't you can't cancel the Black Hole, but you can maybe, maybe save whoever gets a Black Hole. But as long as you grab multiple heroes, then I mean, you can't save them all. That is true. Maybe that should Control. be. Maybe we should give him a an Axe or a Shard AOE disruption. Okay, let's not get ahead of ourselves here. <laughs> this hero is already very good. It's true. Does not need any buffs right now. <laughs> Only at Pro Dota, finishes though. up the Radiance. Struggles in the pubs. That's true. Radiance at 16 is not too bad. I don't even know where the hero is. There it is. Okay. <laughs> it was stuck in the sky and ends up dying anyway to the sharpshooter. So he finished his blink dagger right before he died. It's actually not a costly death at all. So I think he's okay with this. He's got a smoke. So maybe they can try to surprise. Surprise boom. They think they Dyer's killed him before he got his blink. They know uh, he's been farming it. You guys. I intentionally died to fool you. Dude, Troll is just getting so fat. Almost has SNY done. He's gonna be able to just immediately torment her at the 20 minute mark, or we could see him go for the Roshan if he wants. But usually that first battle transfer tormentor is pretty worth it. Oh, what? wait, what? He gets the blink cancel onto the Batrider Lasso. Great bushwhack at the very end. They've got the... Oh, Pillage with a nice black hole onto two. Can they kill the Brewmaster in time? The Avalanche is there. They've caught Schwann as well. Four dead... Three heroes dead behind the tower. Sladems, what was that? How did he do this? What in the hell, man? I... How does he... Did the smoke did he pop? See like I Hold on, hold on. I gotta see this. What in the, what in the vac is that? Oh my god! <laughs> that I have is no idea. Like maybe he reads it perfectly. It's like guys, they're gonna do it. They're gonna Spaming go for it. But... Dude, I don't even know. I need to go look at his like player perspective afterwards. That was insane. That toss. Okay, it was actually a hard target anyways because that was a shield rune tiny under his own tier one, pretty deep too. I'm not uh, but I guess they felt pressured to find a kill, and Tiny would have been a great kill. Uh, but that insane toss baits them in even further into the, the black hole. Troll has been so active. Pub carries. Take note. He's 
been so active, joining these fights, picking him a lot for his team. He's 2-1-8. and eight. It's 18 minutes in. Still top net worth. Still has over 200 CS. He got the best tier 2 jungle item as well. Vampfangs is cracked on this hero. So he is super stoked. Radiant are scanning. Well, BKB done on the Enigma. Black Hole on cooldown for another 90 seconds, but my goodness, that was... I, I, like, I'm still speechless about how that actually happened. Slatums will find the Brewmasters to quick Avatos, just messing with them here, whips them again. Dude, Slatums is really feeling it right now, I can tell. Control into the Roche pit. We'll pop the Battle Trance this time. I'm surprised. It's just to get it done faster. I think he's tired of wasting time, but Avalanche Toss Slatums has found the Batrider once again. He's down to so little HP. He's got the Malefice inside the Midnight Pulse. He should go down. He does. On the other side, Panda Freezing Field trying to do as much damage as he can. Keep himself alive as long as possible. As here comes Troll. There's the Primal Split. Slatums when Avalanche Toss just destroys the Shadow Demon. And can they bring down the Wind Panda? They can. They know exactly where this Brewmaster is going to be in just a couple of seconds. The toss on forward. The Whirling Axes will be there as well. And good night, Brew. Evasion, It's only man. a matter of time. The Evasion, he's brewed up. But yeah, they've got too many stuns this time. Eventually, they'll get him. Troll did Roche in the middle of that, too. Immediately TPs in, joins that fight. So, I don't know. This is an insane, an insane timing. 10K at 20 minutes. That's not even the worst we've ever seen, but this troll is so scary. Lifestealer. Lifestealer is the most farmed for his team, but fighting into this black hole and the troll. Like, you have to man fight the troll, but you also can't be black holed in the middle of that. It's it's really tough. Then there's gonna be like tiny too who's like doing a lot of damage. This is such a good smoke. They know if they can threaten this tower, they can easily take the tormentor and Talon want to fight. You don't have Bruce split, but you have the BKB black hole and because well instead they just toss in the lash! He's so deep and now the lasso will find the tiny, but they're just biding their time lash, healing through it with that bloodstone as much as possible. Disruption out from Ponyo and now Illich, this is his time. Is he gonna go for it? Nice freezing field. The black hole catches him, but guess what? Because he's gonna join the fight. Vtune on the run, protected for the moment with that, you know, rage. But the Malphus is back out, and Illich is just trying to chase him all the way into the base. They take down two. They lose nothing. I thought we were about to see something we've seen a couple times, which is where. Teams have an early lead. They're pushing the tier two. This tier two specifically, actually trying to get in positions like steel torment or stuff like that, and then they they throw extending too far. It's still a tier two tower, still pretty strong, all of that. But the fact that Tiny is able to just TP uh, out, they like waste their initiative. <laughs> guys, careful. Tormentor is a definite raid boss. They will be able to take it now on the side of Talon. That being said, okay, Knight is also waiting. Oh, that would have been a. S oh my he god! Stole it! He did it! He stole it! No way, dude! Come on! Oh, what in. I can't believe that. Is, is that some next level mental bait? Like, first, we go, we get our Crystal Maiden killed, we back off, we make them think they got it, then we snipe it from them. Holy I shit, can't... the acorn shot. Oh the my acorn! God. Dude, no way does he get that. That is absurd. He gets it for himself, too. Well yeah. earned. Very well earned shard. Oh, my goodness. Mid Boom is doing some insane Knight, stuff The blink, the lasso. He gets that ensnare, or the root, and you got a life stealer stuck in here. VTune's like, I don't want to be here, guys. Like, I can't get away from a troll warlord. So V2, gotta be careful. Protected by the Glimmer Cape for now. The slow does connect because he's gonna continue the chase now, looking for Ponyo as well. Gleipnir is out. Pakaz is in. He pops the BKB. V2, no chance at all. Oh boy. They're forcing everything on Talon, and I they're just not getting anything.
Lushrak is trying to cheese this tier 2 tower. He's uh, using Diabolic Edict from Fog of War. That is the uh, the state of this game for him. It would be a good pickup. Because uh, uh, any direct fight is not working out for them. They even just chase V-Tune literally across the map. They get him right yeah. before Rage is up to... I think it's like one second off. Yeah. He probably gets you see him pop it like right before he dies, but yeah. at that point you're not getting away from the troll. So, speaking yeah, of which, he's gonna pretty... try the tormentor again. <laughs> Round two. Okay, he gets his own. Not the best shard, but I guess on a core tiny, tiny it's, okay. it's actually not that bad. Yeah, I think it would be nice on the crystal maiden, but what can you do? Crystal maiden oh. finds less track. He does have a TP. He's not going to be able to use this. He is in, in so much danger. Yeah, Panda will just pop the freezing field to do what damage he can. He's definitely dead here. Aegis does get claimed. There is a black hole available for Illich if he wants to use it. And yep, that'll do it. Black hole on to two. No save from Ponyo. And guess what? Batrider dead on the backside to a rotating tiny. All set up from the Crystal Maiden once again. They're just so far ahead, man. It feels impossible. The Hoodwink has passed everybody on the side of Talon and Networth. This Crystal Maiden. How can, how can her team be so far ahead? Crystal Maiden's still down here. <laughs> Help her out. Get her some farm, guys. Yeah, I don't know. And when, when Hoodwink's this rich, the Light near Mage Slayer, I mean, that's part of your damage issues, too, right? You're trying to do this into a troll and then your magic damage is getting reduced lesh getting hit by mage slayer is so devastating too well bkb finish up on slaydoms what items can the side of talon pick up here to try and keep themselves in it like manta finished up on the life sir which is necessary of course this game because of malefice being such a a headache for this hero They're grouped up in the top lane here, but uh, some bad news for you, Talon. They are ready and waiting. Troll Warlord finished up an Aghanim Scepter. That is so good. The self dispel as well as the offensive dispel. That can get rid of the brood up pretty easily. Okay, so maybe when you're sieging high ground, Troll Alt brings him way too deep in the base, then you lasso him in. The fountain? Oh, okay. okay. That could do it. Yes, yes, yes. Otherwise, Radiant I don't know. If you like isolate one hero, the blink lasso into less rack damage and life stealer hitting is the kill. But oh my God, Dude. slayed him solo kill right there. Um, yeah, that's the issue, right? Which is you need boom to split up, and they're not doing it. They recognize like, what if we just a click down the lane, stand behind Picaz? Cause don't press your ultimate because uh, you might go into the fountain. What yeah, do they do? I mean, there's not a lot. Like, you kind of just have to like slowly stall out this game and try and get to some item timings, but I'm not really even sure what those items are. Like, you need a BKB on your Lesh. Uh, your Brewmaster needs a lot more than just a Spirit Vessel. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. And your life stealer getting a basher, I mean, that doesn't really help you a whole lot. Not against a hero like Troll. What's Brewmaster's next item? Like, I mean, Brewmaster late game is pretty annoying. Maybe you drag, is there a way you can drag this out super long? I think he has to go like Aeon Disc, honestly. He has to be able to get his ult off. Yeah. Oh, he's queuing up a Radiance. All right, we're going back for the Radiance. It's time. I don't even hate it because, like, he has to creep cut for, like, 20 more minutes, I feel like. And that'll help him 
do so, but... Okay, they're going to trade Roshan for a Tier 2. If that. It's going to die real fast. Right. Yeah, they know it so quickly. They're scared. Like, you don't know if people are TPing back, and then you get Blink Avalanched again. But Boom, I like this. That Boom is playing it safe, and they're like, just all stick here. We could make that kind of play. But that is also how we end up throwing. So, like, if we just stay as five and move, like, through the map together, we're really strong, I say, as we split up. 3v2. Looks like they're just going to try and shove bottom a little bit here. I, I mean, honestly, you have you have an Octarine, BKB, Blink, Enigma. I think they're just looking to fight. Uh, you can't really stop this black hole from coming out, so... I guess they saw Leshrac top, so they were like, we can just go, split up, find people who cares. How are they going to fight us without Leshrac? And a How are they going to fight well. us with Leshrac, actually? Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Hoodwink letting the farm slip. Now only ahead of one core. Dyer's Ridiculous, Knight. What are you doing? I can't believe it. This guy's slacking. Haste. Radiance top tower is under attack. All right, last outer tier two tower down. So, Talon, the map shrinking by the second. I think Troll Warlord just wants to wait for MKB. We've seen how annoying it can be playing against a Brewmaster who gets like brewed up and stuff. So for him, he's just like, yeah, I'll get my MKB. There's Radiance as well. That's just annoying. At that point, he can kill pretty much any target he gets his hands on. Yeah, he can he can probably finish it in another minute, at which point you'll still have about two and a half minutes with the, the Aegis, so not a huge deal to wait a little bit. Alright, they're smoked up, heading bottom. Trolls already cleared out this whole jungle though. And he is just regrouping with his team topside. Well, maybe not. You're just gonna walk right into him. This is not the hero you wanna find, Talon. <laughs> oh no. Oh, uh, they just don't see it at all. Okay. I think they also... So, they need to find one hero, but I'm pretty sure they're like, there's no way he's just on his oh, own. Oh, the bait no. with the illusion! Lasso's down. Gleipnir catches basically everything. And your Shadow Demon is dead. He does have buyback. Dude, what a sick play from Knight. This guy is styled on this series. To credit. Oh, wait, they're not done. Sorry. Hold on. The toss back. That rider trying to get to safety, but there's just too much damage from the long range spells. There is no safety. Yeah. Talon was trying to do something pretty cool there, which is that they saw Troll leading the way, so they wanted to step around and try to catch someone, like, following the Troll, I think. But. It turned out there was a bigger gap than they thought, so they just kind of like run with the whole enemy team as well as initiate on Illusion. He's forced to BKB. These split Earths are becoming very annoying. And because is like, all right, dude, whatever. Have your base. I don't care. Backs away. That Rider coming up soon. Why they didn't he get the second range fortification, form? though. <laughs> Why did he step back in range form? He was like standing in the split Earth. I don't know. More armor. I guess so. It's a power move, maybe. It's like, I'm stunned. What of it? Alright, V2 going back for the Aghanim Scepter. Again, I feel like this is the item he has to build against a Troll Warlord. If he goes for the Battle Trance, you can just infest him, disarm him for pretty much the entire duration. It's like 6.5 second Battle Trance, like 4 second infest or something. Um, mid lane. I mean, they're going for the wraparound here. You kind of have to do it. Who's the target? Goes in, finds though. Knight. No! He actually just missed with the Flame Break, and he's dead. Black Hole out from Illich just finds three. The Brewmaster is one of them. Oh, no. Leshrac in trouble. Pops heals to buy some time. Disruption as well comes through. Avalanche just tosses them away. Panda with a nice freezing field zoning them out. V2 trying to just finish off the Crystal Maiden. I mean, yeah, you got something, but at what cost? Illich, will he get bashed? He does. He's going to go down. The buyback's getting put to good use here. Because still very scary. You need to be careful. He does have an Aegis for another 30 seconds. Avalanche toss. Batrider's dead again. Because continuing the chase, looking for the Shadow Demon. The toss damage from Tiny just clips him up. That's a dieback on the Shadow Throw it Demon. In. 
He is going in, but your troll warlord is scary. BKB still there from Slatums. Yes, they've got him held in place. The toss back V tune has to infest to get away. An ultra kill for the tiny. Try to TP out. He gets bashed. V tune not gonna let that happen because now has to disengage. The run will be there. All five buybacks from Talon committed here to defend their high ground but still ends up being Radiant's an even trade. Yeah, you get the gem, but you have no buybacks, which means after everyone on Boom has respawned, maybe you wait for Black Hole if you want to be really safe, but all you need is a single kill and you're pretty much good to go. That was a real value basher in this fight. It stops Crystal Maiden ult, it stops Enigma TP, and then it stops Tiny TP. That is as value basher you could ask for. Yeah, they're trying to get the RNG make this game close. I don't know if that's enough. He's gonna need to do that like five more times. Yeah, that's true. So, because is queued up a Radiant Satanic, I, I think mostly just to deal with the Spirit Vessel, potentially, but also just giving him that basically a second Battle Trance in terms of lifesteal. I think the initiation You're still 30K from Talon... Oh, yeah. God. The initiation from Talon, I think it was a really good attempt, but I think they initiated too soon. I feel like they needed to see better heroes. Specifically, the Enigma, I think, is the one you have to find. And they jump on someone else. Turns out they jump right next to an Enigma. And then they all they all have to panic run away from the Enigma. And he just gets an easy black hole. And then they try to fight off of that. But it, it requires buybacks at that point. So even as you find kills, it does, doesn't feel that great. Especially because in the end, I don't think they took any... I, no towers, Roshan wasn't up, anything like that. So can't get anything out of it. I guess you held your high ground, so I guess that's what they got out of it. Well, they get a lasso onto the Crystal Maiden. Pakaz is here, gonna try and offer some assistance. Panda actually gets knocked out. Avalanche toss comes through, doing a ton of damage. Panda will die, but Pakaz, he set his sights on the Lesh, the disarm out. Doing what it needs to do. Can't keep alive, but the black hole's there! No, Illich just locks him in place. v on the run. Can he make it? He will not. Tiebacks onto three. And Brewmaster, his ult's expired. Freezing field out from Panda. His buyback of revenge. Brewmaster will meet an early grave. And now, Talon, that might be it. We might be seeing Boom as the second team. There it is, the GGs are out. They will be the second team to join Entity at the next stage of this event. Oh my god, Slade and Bro Chill! <laughs> you already won, man! <laughs> that one was about sending a message. All right, very impressive from, from Boom there. We weren't sure how those lanes were going to go. It felt like, oh, that's a really good Brewmaster pick. And then like, oh, wait, that's a really good Enigma pick. So how is it going to play out? But some really sick rotations to the mid lane. Because um, I think Lestrag was like, he was getting there. He could have been the the focal point for his team. But first they teleport the, the Hoodwink in for the toss combo. Then they bring the Crystal Maiden in from there. It just felt like Slatums was all over the map, turning all the lanes into his favor. Because I think bottom... You know, it was, we were getting some Brewmaster results there, but not after Tiny came and killed him. So from there, oh man, that was that was a great performance by Boom, along with some crazy plays, like the read on the Batrider initiation, and then the, the shard steal, absolutely nuts. It really did feel like everything came up Boom in this game. Okay. And Are we going to see it in the I, replay? I, we will see it in the highlights here, I'd hope. But it's one of those things that, like, there was so many plays from them from the beginning that made this game so good. It was the double TPs from the mid lane, right? Like, getting the first kill onto Lash with a TPing Hoodwink. And then the second kill onto Lash with a follow-up TP from the Crystal Maiden immediately after. Like, those completely changed this game. Like, Lesh goes from being pretty solid in net worth to behind the Tiny. And Slatum's just runs away from there he finishes the game 19 2 and 18 an absolute beast of a performance that was a first pick tiny two or like pick response to the shadow demon 
No, we're going past it. Yeah. Oh, Maybe. bummer. It's crazy. This is only 20 minutes into the game, right? Like we're, we're 21 minutes in. They're like taking these fights at the enemy tier two, and there's just nothing you can do about the black holes this game, right? Illich has BKB and Blink. Like, there's not a lot of options at this point. You can save one hero, but like, what's the point when they respawn or not respawn, but like reappear and the team's dead, right? So a lot of great black holes helped by the fact that. Picasso is just literally running in, same as Slatums. It's like, yeah, I get I get to take my time, right? It's not the, the type of Enigma game where you feel pressured to find the perfect initiation. They're just like running in, causing chaos, and you're like, I'll just go in when it's convenient. Okay, now a couple heroes, I'll go. I'll help my team out, I suppose. So really get great performance from, from all of them. Yeah, dude, I just... <laughs> I'm just still in shock of the Tidy Toss back. Like, that actually broke Boom's back so hard. Or uh, actually, Talon's back. Yeah. They really crushed like, their game. Because that could have been a turning point. Like, if they do find a kill. And again, I'd say maybe they force that a bit. Just like in this this play later on. That I think it's the one we're watching right now. Um, feeling the pressure of, like, we have to find something. But Tiny, although the most valuable, I think he had a shield rune at that time. He was pretty deep under the Tier 1 tower. I think just a bit forced from from Talon there, uh, along with, I maybe caught a glimpse of Firefly or something, I don't even know. Maybe he saw, maybe he was like, try hard checking auras on creeps and he's like, oh, they're here? I don't even know what they had, but spamming toss as soon as, uh, as soon as uh, the Batrider blinked in, immediately toss back. Yeah, Insane. I mean, a lot, I, I, will, I will say this, you and I have actually been able to cover a lot of South American Dota recently, and I think a lot of people watching this tournament wrote off both the south american teams they're like what is this region boom heroic they're not they don't stand a chance this is going to be easy eliminations they are the first basically the first team through already uh for south america and heroic is now sitting at two wins as well so the region stepping up love to see that big fan of what these guys have put on today and uh i'm excited to see what they're going to say in the interview because i will they like panda is such a good insight into this team i would say so hopefully that's who we end up speaking with but uh we are going to go to a short break everyone and then we will be back with an interview here from boom esports so stay tuned we'll talk to y'all sort uh shortly What's up, everybody? Welcome back. As promised, we got an interview with Boom Esports, and it is the one and only Panda. Dude, welcome. How are you doing? 
Oh, congratulations. Yeah, I can hear you. We're can great. you hear me? Okay. All right. First off, it's awesome to see you again. Congratulations on uh, an amazing run through the tournament so far. You guys have swept your way into the next stage. Um, how is like kind of you and the team feeling coming into this tournament and your performance so far? I mean, we were kind of sad because we didn't make it to the tournaments that Heroic played, but we still yeah. are pretty excited to play the tournaments where invited or we qualify. So it's still uh, really good for us. It's really, really fun and really exciting for all of us. Yeah, you guys, uh, one of the like definitely one of the top teams coming out of SA Heroic is just behind you guys in the tournament seating. Um, you guys have played against them a ton, obviously, in, a ton in these qualifiers. But how does it feel playing against a bunch of these other regions that you don't get as much practice against? Uh, it's really good cool because it's really hard to compare yourself because we're only playing against Peace Coast or maybe Nouns, sometimes Shopify, but there, it's really rare to do that. So it's really hard to compare ourselves if we're good, we're bad. But it seems like a heroic nouns are playing well, so I think we're not so bad. Yeah, you guys, <laughs> you're the first team to make it through, basically. You and Entity tying uh, that race. But, uh, Zach, what do you got? All right, you know I got to ask. Team comms, what's going on in that game three when Tiny instantly tosses back the Batrider on that blink initiation in the mid lane? <laughs> no, he was just he was just gonna kill the wave, and he was like really fast to react. So he was panda, 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 uh, just uh, keep him, panda, panda, panda. That's how we killed him. That was insane. I think I think I also saw it. chat was all amazed at that. It was instant reaction, and then later on the snipe on the uh, the shard as well, the tormentor kill. Were you guys really excited about that one? Yeah, I didn't notice this at first. It took me like. Five ten seconds, but yeah, that was pretty poke from night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was great. Um, so then, thinking about it as a whole, this uh, you came in here two zero, uh, so you just needed to win this series. Was your mentality we should just continue to try hard as best we can, qualify right away, or are you open to like experimenting because there's a bit of room? What's kind of your mental approach as you come into this? No, we take every game as seriously as a final game because we need to win every match. We don't want to giving giving games away. Uh, if we're not going to be people playing the tournaments, we're going to be playing streams anyways. So hopefully we get some streams with our better teams in the, the next phase. Maybe they want to play with us so we get some good practice. But if we don't, we're just going to be watching and enjoying the games. I love that. That's a cool mentality. Just being like, you know, you know, worst case scenario, right? We get to enjoy the games and uh, have some fun. But yeah, I mean, you guys have definitely proven yourself so far. You guys looked so strong in this uh, tournament. I will say uh, game one was definitely a little bit rough. Do you have like an idea of what kind of went wrong? Was it mostly draft related or was it like some execution uh, as well? Let me check what that draft. I need to see what did game I play. One. I play CM. <laughs> uh, I play CM all the games. So. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I think we got owned by the by the shaman. He played really well okay. on the hero, and they had like shaman. We, shaman. We shaman to, Omni. Yeah, they had shaman Omni. And they could just burst any one of us if they get a catch, and we didn't play that well. Uh, so they defeat us. They we were like, okay, shaman is a. He's making our draft and our hard, life's really hard, so let's run it. That makes sense. Yeah, we were wondering if that was it because games two and three, you adjust, you draft, you ban the shaman in phase two. This last game draft was looking interesting because you guys blind pick the troll into your carry matchup, and we're like, that's that's bold. Uh, the Enigma last pick though seemed to work out. So, what was your thought like in the draft here? Like, were you planning to move this tiny to the mid lane even into a Uh, I don't want to reveal too much, 
y cosas oh, que van a revealing yeah. ahorita más. But, like, we're confident about our heroes, so we're like, just pick the troll. I was a little worried because picking troll into not seeing the matchups is a kind of risky, but we were confident, so we did it. Hey, that's all that matters. Confidence seems to trump all right now. You guys are looking really good. Zach, any uh, final questions for Panda? No, I I won't make you reveal the strats. So we're excited to see you in the next group stage. It's uh, It's been tons of fun watching the games. Thank you, guys. I want to thank everyone that is supporting us, the team, and everyone of my teammates. Let's keep watching our games. We're going to be making them fun for you, and we're going to try hard every game. Dude, absolutely. Thank you again so much for joining us, you guys. Uh, best of luck in the next group stage. Hopefully we get to talk to you again. All right. Thank you, guys. See you. Yeah, he's always yeah, really fun to talk to when it comes to interviews. I He's... Uh, yeah, I feel bad. Maybe I might have asked a little bit too much, deep diving into their strategies <laughs> okay. a little bit, but... Um, yeah, they just feel confident. Like you said, they're like, yeah, you know, it's risky, but we think we can do it, and it paid off. Yeah, it's it's so fun watching their games. I don't know how anyone can hate the region. The games are always tons of fun, and uh, I think they showed it there. They they've got some strong performances. Really looking forward to see how they do in the the next uh, stage. So these are the teams that qualified so far: Entity, Boom Esports. No teams. No, some teams are out. I did not see. Nine pandas and rest farmers are eliminated already. Okay. So those are the two teams that have been removed from the tournament. Uh, I believe Nouns and PSG Quest is still happening on the other stream. Maybe that's the last series of the day. Yeah, they're in game two. But um, this is kind of where we're at. So it's been a fun day, though. Yeah, we had some uh, really cool games. Uh, looking forward to tomorrow. I believe we'll be watching the teams who might qualify again. Um, but yes. tomorrow there yeah. will be even more eliminations than today. Three teams go home tomorrow. Yeah. Three teams will qualify, right? It's basically you have six teams that are going to be at two and one and six teams at one and two. Um, two teams qualify, two teams deleted. I, I actually love the Swiss stage format. This is one of the coolest formats I've seen in a long time. I hope other tournaments take notice of this. I hope the next, you know, elite league, if we're doing another elite league, uh, they do something like this again. This has been a really cool format. I think all the teams like it. I think players uh, are would prefer to play less games, but way more impactful and way more meaningful games. So I think it's cool. Seems like it so far from the people we've gotten to talk to, uh, though I think everyone we interview is on the winning side of it, so maybe maybe they're enjoying it a little bit more. Uh, but we're not done yet. If you guys are enjoying the series, the the formats, all of that, then definitely make sure to follow all the channels, which I believe we have a graphic for here. Yeah, definitely make sure to follow all these. Show your support if you're enjoying the tournament, enjoying the Dota, and like Ricky mentioned, the B stream still going. We still got a game over there, so this stream will be done, but. Got a little bit more action there, and we'll be back tomorrow. Yeah, it's going to be uh, interesting to see which of those teams will be in the qualifier and which team will be in the elimination game, right? So uh, important series for both those teams. We'll see what happens. But for you and me, it's been a fun day. We will uh, be back tomorrow, though, but that will do it for this stream. I want to say thank you guys all so much for tuning in. A big shout-out to Fissure and to ESB for putting this event together congratulations to entity and uh, boom for qualifying already my name is cryptic i've been here with z quixotics we hope you all have a wonderful night we'll see you tomorrow